So, hey there to all you fine folks on this fine day. How are you doing? I thought I would do a video intro. Hey there to all you fine, fine folks on this fine, fine day. I hope you are doing excellently. <laughs> oh, man, these late days. Th this has been, the days have been interesting, but at the same time, woo, yesterday was a long day. It was a good day. It was a fun day to watch, but my God, a 12-hour day. <laughs> Hey, Tristan Lee, thanks for the two. He's back, the tug, indeed. One other thing. <laughs> hey, what's up? I see you, Matt Rainwater. How you doing, buddy? Uh, man, there are a lot of people in there. Deborah, what's up? Heather Painter, Red Witch, God's Cat, God's Cat, indeed. <laughs> oh, man, though, I am ready for this. I got to... I Yesterday was amazing in a lot of ways. Like, the most amazing part yesterday to me was the fact that she actually admitted to charity donations like people who have just tuned into this they don't understand like how long of a road that's been like i remember picking this up in 2019 that's when i started talking about this case you know and again people have done that longer i'm not saying anything with that but i remember in 2019 she was still bragging about charitable donations to the public. And then Depp's team was like, yeah, you know, about that. Can, can you provide us some proof that that actually happened? Now, that doesn't sound like much, does it? It doesn't sound like a big request, but it was. It absolutely was. She stopped talking about it. She did everything she could to stonewall. That's what she leaves out. She was not forthcoming with it. In fact, you had a uh, or rather a uh, lawyer. I'm sorry. Let me take this back. You had her lawyer in California. See this. This spans three courtrooms. It spans L.A. It spans Virginia. We're looking at, and it spans New York. There are three judicial areas that are involved in this case. In the California setup, that's because um, the divorce settlement and all of that took place in California. Well, in the, the California setup. You actually had the judge get so irritated with them about things like charitable donations and stonewalling that they bawled them out for like 10 minutes. And it was amazing. By the way, if anybody has a, like, again, I am, uh, I'm still transferring all my stuff over. I'm looking for two items tied to charity. If you have been keeping up this case for a while and you have documents like the PDFs pulled up, I'm looking for two things. Number one, I'm looking for that, which it popped up in the New York uh filing so in the new york in i think it was the first new york filing you had a, a transcript from la that was attached to it i, I want to get a hold of that because i want to go over that because i think it's funny and uh number two i'm looking for the first time there was a time when she was fighting charitable donation she was fighting it i believe it was in virginia and she she brings up how it's it's not uh it's not applicable here. You know, it's before the decision to bring it in. And it's just, it's a fascinating document. I would love to review that with people. If you've got those two, mail me granularheaven at gmail.com. G R A N U L A R H E A V E N at gmail.com. If you want credit for it too, tell me. I will shout you out on the channel or whatever. If you don't want, tell me too. <laughs> Pituitary user, thanks for the two there. Thanks for that super sticky. Appreciate that. Healthy Gaming, thanks for the five. Just wanted to say hi before I go back to work. We'll uh, watch this when I get home, though. Hey, enjoy that. You know, this will be a good day. This will be a good, fun day to watch. I just, I get the feeling. I get that feeling. It's going to be a wonderful, wonderful one. I'll ask Laura B. Yeah, I mean, Laura's at the at the um, courthouse and stuff, though. I was just wondering if anybody had it on them, you know? Cause some people might. <laughs> Big D, thanks for the two. Cheers from Croatia and Germany. Appreciate you. Hey, props to Croatia. Props to Germany. Love all of you folks. Love you all. I love the fact that we can unite worldwide and talk about something. You know what? If we can overcome this, this is the thing. If we can stop arguing about politics and menial BS and we can focus on an issue and we can stop dividing, you know, because I notice, like I, I see people that are prominent supporters of jd that uh they they have me on block lists because oh my god you know i don't like their politician or whatever that's fine you can you can do that but if we can get past that kind of stuff if we could actually unite on causes we are a force to be reckoned with 
the media has had to respond to us. Of course, they call us bullies and monsters because they don't know what to do because we rule this world. <laughs> this is ours. YouTube, one of the biggest, this is one of the biggest community. Let's, let's call it the communal square. You know, in uh, all times of your, you would step to the communal square. You'd shout out something at people that would listen to you. That's what this is. It's big and we own it. <laughs> And if we can get past the division and we can get together, because we, we're divided by like 0.1% things. But you know what? 99.9% .9 of stuff we agree on. So we can unite around that. Let's stop letting people divide us. Let's, like I said, we're strong. Look at this. Look at the noise behind it. It's amazing. Dr. G, thank you. Welcome. Thank you for the membership, too. And welcome to Tugs Thugs. Appreciate that. Hey, Brian K., thanks for the 20. Uh, prepare for a public execution, friends. Indeed. Can't wait to see the feathers and fur fly everywhere. You know, I, I was surprised by this. I heard behind the scenes. I, well, I saw behind the scenes proof of, let's call them Amber Heard Circle, making fun of Camille before all of this. You know, Camille Vasquez. They were, they were calling her the kid and stuff. Camille is actually a 37-year-old professional. <laughs> and... Dry roasted those suckers, and it was funny. Sir Abby, thanks for that. Well, thank you. Welcome. Thank you for the membership, too, and welcome to Tugs Thugs. <laughs> Appreciate you. Appreciate you. I see. Eugene Knight, thanks for the five. I don't know how she iced her black eyes all night before the Corden show when she uh, testified. She's passed out all night until her friend came over. Yeah, that's what I was talking about yesterday. You're exactly right. By the way, we're gonna do a we're gonna do a shirt. We're going to do like a, I stepped on a B shirt. It's going to be like a B with a, with a Johnny Depp face or something. We're working on that now. <laughs> it's going to be funny. You borrow his right crotch. Thanks for the five. Camille, your honor. We'd like uh, to move. Exhibit 69 at evidence. Miss Heard, is this a photo of your fadge? <laughs> Yuck, look like a chump. Well, oh, gross, gross, gross. I deny. I deny. <laughs> Yuck. Crystalline 75. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you for the membership, too. And welcome to Tugs Thugs. Appreciate that. Horowitz Feinberg and Horowitz. Thanks for that. Apes together strong. Exactly. That is exactly the way. I mean, if we can we can do that. Oh, man. I mean, we when we get together, we are strong. Pituitary user. Thanks for the five. Camille, angel of retribution. Indeed. Debbie Doles, thanks for the 10. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you, Tug. God, uh, thank you, Doug, for all you do. I appreciate that. You know, I um I've just I've I've been fascinated with this case. I think just like anyone else out there, I think uh, uh like the difference is when I picked up the microphone, I was very lucky and people backed me. So I appreciate it. Tracy, thanks for the two. Thank you for stopping the politics. I know, bro. Like I, like, I'll be, I'll be honest about it. I hate politicians. <laughs> they don't, they don't serve me or you. You know, they, they serve, uh, they serve people that are above our pay grade. So I don't ever want to argue with you over politics. Like if we argue about politics, if you and I we discuss it, we can be friends still. You know for sure. But those are perfect world arguments. We don't argue about like all of the details that come into it. I'm in mental health and I see how the money and government works. And I don't like any of them because none of them follow through with what they say. So, you know, I, I don't I hate that because, again, we, we miss our we, we miss our true calling where we can be united. Kudos. Thanks for the five. Getting to Camilla shut down Amber's lies yesterday was so satisfying. It was justice for Johnny. Indeed. Gabriel Badwolf, thanks for the nine. There are more of us than them in this case. We've shown them to the media. That's true. The internet is a genie in the bottle. They're desperate trying to shove it back in. Sometimes that doesn't work. That's right. They, this is the biggest suppression I've ever seen of people, too. Suppression of the news, suppression of the media. And all they did was make us louder and stronger because we figured out how to get around them. It was amazing to watch. Like, I love seeing the social aspect of that. Okay, and thank you. Welcome. Thank you for the membership, too. Welcome to Tugs. Thugs as well. Appreciate that. My Beavers unit. Thanks for the two. Hey, Tug. I'd like a tool. LOL. Can't wait for today. Use it sparingly. FJ. Thanks for the five. Will AH's team be held accountable for obviously looking at social media and addressing the things we talked about? No, which you, you have to bring that up and you would have to prove it. And there's the problem. You would actually have to prove it. So probably not. No. 
fill of paint. Because if you if you bring that up to the judge and you're wrong, ooh, hell to pay, you know. Vella Bank, thanks for the 449. Howdy, Umbrella. Hello from uh, Glasgow, Scotland. Hey, props from Tennessee here. As a DV and SA survivor, I'm beyond angry. Yeah, with that, that oh God, yes, she is. She is a facile imbecile. I, I would, I would, I would say yes. Belated happy birthday. Thank you for that too. Yes, she is a moron. Casey, thank you. Welcome. Thank you for that membership too. Welcome to Tugs Thugs. That picture is funny. I like it. Look at that expression. Scott, thank you to the five. Keep it up. Well, hey, like I said, you folks, you, you make it fun to cover. You make it fun to cover. Where's the mod love for Gail? Hey, all you mods are loved. I, I threw I threw a couple extra wrenches because uh, there were a couple of people that wrote too, and I didn't write them back about that. Again, no, with mods, I don't like people being ba banned just to throw it out there I, what i do like is i like um to have uh, all of our comments come through so youtube holds about uh, i'm gonna say ten thousand comments at least per stream and i want you all to have a voice so gary hitchcock thanks for the buck no statement plenty of statement in that thank you hey heisenberg kennels how you doing thanks for the two there defendant Three, this is an mpeg of me doing a grumpy <laughs> indeed there have been some oh god some of the stuff like like her her audio her proof is such a ridiculous thing it's so ridiculous isn't it hey john o'connor thanks for the nine hey tug i hope uh age is blatant lying does not ruin it for the true uh for the next genuine case of abuse that may not be taken seriously unlikely but possible go tug well it's definitely she's going to do damage to uh to to people and that's part of this you have to be very careful you have to tell people that this is not a this is not a commentary on women this is not a commentary on domestic abuse survivors as in don't believe anyone it's a commentary on a specific person faking stuff and it, it also it deals with the idea of false allegations you know you, you've got to be very careful and people need to understand that you know and a lot of people they don't they don't they don't get into it they don't they don't really care you know yeah you're right raven thanks for the 20 there good morning thank you for all your hard work and bringing it all to us hey thank you all for being here cyborg what's up cyborg by the way let me see you got a you got a wrench too if you like uh comics cosplay gaming and one and a half hot chicks doing dumb shit check out red valkyrie on youtube i like red valkyrie by the way i like them specifically uh for sure so if you if you like any of that uh cyborg will put a, a couple of links in the in the chat if you like that uh check them out because uh, they're a fun channel i like them quite a bit then do nothing thanks for 10 hey tug can you make an objection hearsay shirt with sustained on the back let me write that down maybe you know since it's just work we could probably do it. You know, words are easy. Uh, we could probably do like a little sim a symbol or something. We have a little uh, judge. Objection. Let me write that down, though. Let me say it with the uh, stain on the mat. I'll see. I'll see if we can do that. I've been working my guy. <laughs> we did, a, we did a, a grumpy one yesterday, which I thought was funny, personally. I had fun with that one. Uh, Amy said, Tenant, thanks for the 20 there and the super sticker. Thank you for that. Denise, thank you. Welcome. Thank you for the membership and welcome to Tugs Thugs. Denise Clark, custom art. Thanks for the 10 there. Andy reported on Amber wearing a B on her left earring away from the jury yesterday. Did you see that? I saw where he talked about it, and I haven't had time to verify. Has, have people verified that? That's that's true. I mean, again, Andy's Andy's good people. I, I believe his his reporting. I'm not saying, oh, no, but yeah. And a bow, thanks for the two. You were almost mentioned. You were almost mentioned. <laughs> I felt like we were going to get mentioned yesterday. I know we're, uh, so I know for sure that we got brought up in deposition. And I found out where, you know, um, that person had, uh, has not been, we, we didn't get to hear their deposition. So that would have been an interesting, or their questioning, you know, and that would have been fun to hear. But it is what it is. You know, uh, Eve Barlow's given us enough shout outs over time. I mean, if you, um, <laughs> you got to remember, that's, e that's, uh, that's, uh, 
Amber Heard's girlfriend, you know, and it's it's really funny when you see. Uh, so this is directed specifically like, again, for a long time, like there are a lot of people that cover this now. But for a long time, there was a handful of channels that covered it. And I don't know, size, loudness. I'm I can be an a-hole sometimes, <laughs> too. I don't know. Wh whatever. I attracted these people's attention because, you know. Maybe, I don't know, like I said, whatever it was, but uh, it was weird because finding out in the aftermath that Eve Barlow is indeed Amber Heard's girlfriend, it's funny to be like, I might not have a cool, really cool name like that umbrella guy, but I do happen to be a legendary journalist. Somebody put up like, she's not a journalist. Remember in that document where they were, where they were, where they're kicking her out of the courtroom, but uh, it is interesting, like looking back and knowing but for real, for sure, legit, you can confirm. Amber Heard took shots at our channel, and we got hit nine times on this channel. Nine times I got struck. Like, some of those strikes, by the way, some of those uh, came in sets. So, like, I got hit by three at one time once. But still, <laughs> it was nine. It's just insane there. You say, hey, Elvin, thanks for the two. Greetings from Germany. That's avian oh avian so okay avian by the way avian thank you for the two <laughs> greatest for germany like my southern doesn't allow me to I'm, I'm i'm not like southern southern here you know a lot of my a lot of my compatriots around here are like you know why don't we get out on the patio and play us a little banjo down 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 <laughs> I'm not that southern yet, but I, 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 I love it out here. I love this place, and obviously, I'm from here, you know. So when I'm laughing about that, that's a that's a shot at myself as much as anything, you know. Where are you going, city boy? <laughs> uh, Got to throw in a little deliverance there. Mm. Uh, but it still comes through. It still messes me up <laughs> on enunciation. One of my favorite enunciation problems, by the way, and people you thought it was hilarious. In the U.S., we don't use the word row. We use the word row. So uh, to remind myself, I started making things like this early on, you know, because I would say, oh, they got in a row. And people would be like, no, it's a row. I'd be like, oh, man, you know. So I, I would make me a little song. And I would I would sing it something like this. Row, row, row your boat. <laughs> Gently to your sheets. What is that chocolate mess that Amber heard a scream? Oh, gross. Excrete gross. Why did I say that? I Sometimes I'm like, my wife's like, why do you say some of this stuff you do live? <laughs> you have no filter. <laughs> oh, Lord. <sighs> oh, but anyway. <laughs> Scott, thanks for the five there. And the super sticker. Appreciate that. Oh, Lord Total, thanks for the two. Camille is straight up bulldog. She is indeed. John O'Connor, thanks for the... Uh, the nine eight tug. I hope uh, AH is blatant lying. It's not real. Oh, God, I got that one. Thank you, though. Thank you. I did get that one. I was catching like the ones I missed in that that little area there. Um, but yeah, Denise, I don't know about the B thing. Like, I didn't look at it for sure. But like I said, I trust his his coverage on it. I like Andy. Andy also, you know, Andy was falsely accused. Andy of Popcorn Planet. Like he 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 had his his life ruined by people because of the same thing with that. So if anybody has something to say, like Andy does for sure. Oh, look, we're going to have fun again this morning where they pick just random images to play until like the beginning. So they're, they're starting their, uh, I'm going to pull this up behind us while we're sitting here, but there's not any actual coverage with this, just to say, this is, um, <sighs> This is the live you live you if you if you don't know what I'm talking about. So this is a broadcast through the through the Internet. Right. It's it's live broadcast in. And they they like to live broadcast people arriving. Let me go ahead and set this up because I can hear cars arriving. Uh, but I don't even know if these are new, <laughs> the new arrivals. The way that they do it. Yeah. Yeah. Unloader from the jail. It looks like she's coming over from the jail. I'm going to turn my mic input down. 
Let's say that. I don't. I think this is one from yesterday. <laughs> they play these. This is the live view, by the way. They play it. So. Yeah, that's the one from yesterday. Good job. That's coming from the courthouse, though. They're the ones that play it. So that's the courthouse feed. But that's not brand new. It figures. PJ Quinn, thanks for the five. Actually, yesterday she testified. Here, let's let's watch that one. God, they're uh, they're laggy today. Here, one second. There we go. Present lags on their side. I'm gonna I'm gonna get everything situated for sound real quick. That's why. I, the one thing that's weird, too, okay, with this clip, I don't know if many of you are headphone users or not, but they're only playing audio through one side. <laughs> it's driving me nuts. <laughs> like I said, that's the feed through the, the live view, though. Because you can see them go back to the live view switchboard afterwards. I'm like, just play the freaking show. <laughs> well, there we go. Yeah, just play the feed from inside the courthouse. We don't need all that other. We need all that other mess. Here, I'll be checking the sound. So if you're, if you see me messing with stuff, I'm making sure the sounds all the way up, and uh, we're just getting situated. There we go. I noticed that they were uh, broadcasting though, and I, I don't like missing anything. One second. There we go. Freaking YouTube keeps getting stuck. There we are. It's terrible about getting stuck sometimes there. Fixed it. Ha <laughs> ha. That umbrella guy. Troubleshooter. Bam. <laughs> uh, I'll catch some more super chats in just a second. I, like I said, I'm just making sure that everything's set up. And I'm going to turn my mic relay down a lot today. I want to I wanna ask you folks to do me a favor. I want to ask you folks, I'm going to turn this down, like I said. Um, give me one second. I'm at 32. I'm going to turn it down to about 15. Can you can you hear me okay? Because their coverage is so low that sometimes when they're not near it, you know, you come in like booming with a booming voice, and I do not want to boom over it. So I want to make sure. Can you hear me okay? All right. Am I Am I really loud? I shouldn't be too loud. I should be pretty good. All right. Thank you, folks. I see you, too. I'm going to, what I need to do right now, I'm going to have to do something real quick because I see the little bot bots coming in. I'm going to have to put this on subscriber commentary mode, okay? What all that means is you have to be subscribed to the channel for one whole minute. <laughs> That's the only stipulation to that. But i got to put it on because I see the little bot bots trying to come in. And what that is, they really are. They, unlike uh, their accusations about bots, there really are bots on this freaking platform. They spam weird links and stuff. So it shouldn't even slow you down, really. If you're not subscribed, if you are, if you're brand new to the channel too, appreciate the heck out of you. Hey, we keep getting... I never thought we'd have thousands of people watching this trial live, but that's where we are because it's amazing. Judge, it looks like it's coming in. Let me see. Let me catch a couple of super chats there. Supreme Jeff, thanks for the ten. Jeff here. When it rains, it pours. Mister Umbrella would uh, never protect that sir. Aquaman Starlet from her own flood of lies. That's indeed true. Look at JD today, by the way. Like you know, he always seems like he's in a good mood. He was in a good mood yesterday. Because <laughs> you know what, they were winning yesterday. If if they continue the onslaught like they did yesterday, she's done publicly. I mean, there, there is no coming back. Twitter, you still have like thousands of people that still shill for her because they'll be like, this is a, oh God, there was a, there was such a sexist term they were throwing around. Let me, let me, let me pull this up because it's a, let me, I want to get it right. But they were throwing around this, this anti-male term and it was just, they were calling it instead of sympathy. This is that Dr. Charlotte Proud. They were throwing on the word empathy. 
oh, H I empathy. You know, you you feel bad for a man who's abused. <laughs> what a monster. Oh, what a sexist. Denise, thanks for the tea in there. No statement, but plenty of statement. If I miss you in that gap there, I will get your super chat, by the way. I would definitely do. Juju, curious. Thanks for the five. Please check your mail. Thanks for all you do. I will for sure. And Lewis, thanks for the five. I'm surprised Camille wore white to, white today because it's a bloodbath and she'll be slaughtering her in cross. That is very true. Yep. She should have just came in just like a <laughs> she should have came in like a, a, a what's his face Patrick Bateman you know from um, from American Psycho you know when he's uh, he dances in and he's got his rain jacket on when they're gonna play like hip to be square you know he's like hey Paul do you like Huey Lewis cool. that'd be cool hey Amber do you like Huey Lewis <laughs> and they smack her on the head with a mic you know because you can't you can't be volatile like that Rikiko thanks for the five if you need a mod I'm here every day duration. Yeah, maybe, maybe I will. Let me see. There you go. Like I said, use it sparingly. <laughs> you know, Don Campbell, thanks for the 449. Between the uh, the trial, your channel, and people, I'm uh, sleep deprived. Yes, oh, me too. I'm like, oh my God, I'm so tired some days. <laughs> <laughs> watch it from slightly it's still at times but i can't miss today i know like I, I i'm addicted to this too i'm absolutely addicted to it so tell everybody we're live today too like i said this is going to be cross this is a this is an important day so make sure you tell people that we're live and i appreciate the heck out of you showing up you know, uh, if you, I, I hate to say this is not channel beneficial, but if you like panels and stuff, there are other channels for that. I will throw in some commentary here and there, but I like to hear what they're saying. So, you know, there are some places that just talk all over it. I don't, I don't want to do that. You know, I hate that. Kelly Hogan, thanks for the five. Playing into the angel of vengeance. Camille, it's a warrior in white. Did you notice the light itself was bathing? Like, I thought that was funny. Like the light came down yesterday. It's like, woo. <laughs> aura of light good morning Tug. thank i by the way kt thanks for the five good morning Tug. thank you uh, so much for all you do looking forward to camille's wrath the wrath of camille that'd be a good movie they should make a they should make a um, show with that lewis thank you welcome thank you for the membership too welcome to tugs thugs cindy the cringy hey how's it doing uh i i, I, I like names like i can remember they just stick out in my head Thanks for the 10 there. No statement, but plenty of statement and support. Appreciate you. Who did Camille just hug? I don't know. Maybe I should pay attention to the, the show. You know what they need? They need like a... They need like some more cameras in there. You know, like all over the place. Hey, Matt Rainwater. Thanks for the 20. How you doing, my friend, by the way? Subscribe and like, guys and gals. Yes, do two things, if you would, please. Like this thing i mean that it's free and uh subscribe to the channel so you can comment you know y'all's bluegrass buddy so the judge is coming in do we have any preliminary matters before we have the jury we'll course. cover preliminary so we'll go back to uh muted mic of course yeah camille i mean she came in in total white you know you gotta think okay there's a there's a thing called industrial psychology or consumer psychology. It's taught there are certain colors that dictate, like you don't want to wear red in because red it does it 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 emotes it evokes a certain emotion through people. You know, I uh, I thought about going into IO for a little while, and I hate saying that because IO till it right, but that's what it is industrial organization is what it is. You know, industrial psychology, and uh, I found it fascinating. I mean, there's billions of dollars spent. Like, why is your coke can a certain color? And but colors that you wear. They uh, they promote strength. They promote calm. It depends. And, you know, you should look that up. Celtic Warrior Poet, thanks for the five. Tug, shout out to Anna, that Star Wars girl in chat. Hey, Anna's in the chat. Hey, what's up, Anna? Anna's a good friend, by the way. We uh, we uh, live uh, we live stream on um, on Flashcast all the time. Flashcast, by the way, I've got to shout that out. Yellow Flash 2. I'm there every Saturday night, but that Star Wars girl, if you have not checked out her channel, good people. Always fun there. Want to give her a shout out for sure. 
I mean, you have Camelot 334. I mean, we have the whole crew there. Enjoy it. You know, everybody from Ricadia, Yellow Flash, again, giving some Yellow Flash some love because if you like what I do here, like he drops videos every day, and I would not have covered this case. Or I may have later on, but I wouldn't have come in when I did, which is the perfect time for me. I was between subjects, and um, he was like, yo, get on this, <laughs> you know. It was a lot more colorful. I, I, like I say, I consider the guy my friend. So it was a lot more colorful when he said it. But uh, he was right. This would be something. And then from there, I looked at Incredibly Average. And I just tumbled down that rabbit hole. So Yellow Flash, too, if you haven't checked him out. Because that, that Star Wars girl, check her out, too. Bells in your head. Thanks for the five there. I love how Miss Vasquez kept her voice calm. While uh, Turdface tried to rant off and answer questions the way she wanted. I love Vasquez. I liked it. I, she she remained calm. And see, they kept insulting her behind the scenes. Again, they were calling her that girl and all this. You know, it was demeaning language. It was meant to to minimize. Like, I, I got to see. I, I've i been lucky in the fact. Here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you know a little secret. Uh, they're, um, and I'm, it's okay if I say this, too. <laughs> they they have uh, groups behind the scenes. I've, I've done videos, and Andy Popcorn Planet did a video talking about all the weird stuff that goes on behind the scenes, how they dox, they file false police reports, all kinds of crazy stuff. Well, they have another leak there, a really close to the brim one. And all these people sit around, and uh, this includes people like Eve Barlow and other folks. They sit around, and they, they would demean, you know, uh, Camille there and you know again they treat her like she's young because she she looks young and new at this she's not she's like 37 and she's a professional and she she butchered them on the stand for it like that's what you want you never want them to see you coming never let people see you coming when shines thanks for the 20 there I'm glad it jumped on the tugboat the tugboat mm -mm. Bailey Ann, thanks for five. So is her sis going to testify? What's up with the Earl, uh, Elaine Barkin? I think that's her name. Uh, she was an ex. She's going to testify that once upon a time when uh, JD was using her as a little bit of side action that uh, <laughs> that I'm serious about this. Like once upon a time, he threw a bottle and she saw it. <gasps> oh, my God. One person out of a million. He threw a bottle. Did he hit you or anything? No, but he threw a bottle when he was mad. Stupid. The sister, yeah, she'll testify. That's the way it looks. Um, chicken permission, thanks for the five. Watching Amber get destroyed almost makes me feel bad for her, but not much. Thanks for covering this. I wake up at five and anxiously wait. Oh, me too. Hashtag me too. <laughs> yeah, I feel. A, I would feel bad if it weren't for who it was. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Kelly, thanks for the ten. I feel. I feel embarrassed for Amber Heard. I don't feel bad for. Her. I feel embarrassed for her. Kelly Jensen, thanks for the 10. Um, AH team doing everything to waste the court's time. So JD team loses precious hours. Yep, that's what they want to do. Cheryl R., thanks for the five. I sent pirate bingo. Did you get it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got I to gotta, I gotta post the pirate. I got to post the bingo cards. Uh, Blue, thanks for the five. Where's the pledge button? I see donation, but I prefer Amber's uh, version. LOL. Uh, love the channel. Uh, there's a, okay, so the, the pledge, <laughs> that's funny, the pledge button. If you want to do the join button, the join button is, uh, if, if you're on an iPhone, I think it's different. But if, uh, we're going to be playing two cards today, by the way, okay? So I reposted both of them onto, uh, onto uh, Twitter. There's a pirate card, and I can't I can't link both of them. There's one pirate bingo that I, I thought was really funny, but there's two of them actually I like. So I put them both at on Twitter. If uh, and I'll I'll post one in the link or the chat. Give me a second. But we're gonna we're gonna have some new bingo. I like the symbols for the pirate bingo. I think it's funny. And I can't pin that with my freaking. There we go. All right. So there's a pin one there. Hey, Sarah Croft, thanks for the five. Hi, Mom. Yes, my mom is watching, too. Hey, Sarah's mom, how you doing? My mom's watching, too. <laughs> oh, there are 10,000 of you people out there. Thank you for that. Like I said, if you uh, if you enjoy the content, 
Think about subscribe. You know, it's funny too. I was I was telling my wife this the other day. It's been amazing. Like not just with super chats. You, you know, we get we get PayPal contributions. And I told her, you know, what's funny is Amber Heard withheld seven million dollars from charity. We take uh, we take like PayPal contributions, and we usually use those for charity, like a lot of it, unless somebody says it's for something else. And it's usually an average of about a hundred to one hundred and fifty dollars that you can actually sustain somebody that's about been removed from their home, like a kid or something. It's amazing. So with three point five million dollars, think about how many people she removed help from. You know, like I said, we try, we use uh, we use about a quarter of the channels. Uh, of the channel's uh, earnings for local assistance. We live, uh, Johnny Depp, he, um, he talks about the Appalachians. You know, he talked about poor areas. He's from Kentucky, you know, which is a poor area. We're from Tennessee. <laughs> so it is also an impoverished area. We live in an area with about 13,000 people. We have over a thousand children in poverty here. So, you know, I, I, I empathize with his upbringing for sure. drink there Woo. sarah's mom props to sarah's mom <laughs> oh, i'm in a particular mood today you know these uh i thought i would be like holy god <laughs> an hour and a half extra the, the thing but it but you know what it hit during amber heard's side of stuff and all of their witnesses like i'm ready i'm ready for these people to get wrecked not just amber man i want to see her sister get wrecked too because her sister helped set up this lie this narrative elaine's already mad she's like she's got my cats look uh, freaking uh camille is laughing and elaine is like have a look at her she's like rah, 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 rah. <laughs> <laughs> you can see her. <laughs> She's like, uh, I'm going to slather you at Amica and I'm going to get my cats. I've trained them. There won't be any bruises because that Amica, it'll cover it. And the judge is like, you got to be kidding me. Amica cream don't work that way. The judge is looking at her like, you crazy. <laughs> I love it. I mean, her head is just, she is going a mile a minute. She's like, wah, 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 wah. <laughs> the judge looks disgusted too. Like she keeps looking down and then she'll look up and she'll put up her eyebrows. She'll be like, oh yeah, yeah, I am listening to you. I swear I'm listening. Oh, <laughs> uh, the judge is like, no more. I don't want to hear your lip. <laughs> She's waving her hands. She's like, you're getting spittle on the bench. <laughs> uh, Objection. Uh, here, say, say. Don't say it here. <laughs> All right. Are we ready for the jury? All right. Oh, she probably was like, "I'm calling that jury in now." I don't. Give, I don't give a crap. <laughs> I'll look at her. She's gonna be like all smiles and stuff. Then she gets up there. You know, when she implanted the cheek implant, she should have gotten like a tear duct implant where she could like, when she rubs it with a, with her tissue, like tears come out and they look, <laughs> that would have been amazing. Hmm. She decided channeling Dr. Evil yesterday was a bad idea. She tried, <laughs> decided to go with something else. Ready for kickoff? Yeah. Are you ready? Oh man, Camille, man, All she's right. like she is glowing over there. All right. That next question. She's gonna catch the light. Good. All right, here we go. Good morning, crazy lady. Good morning, Camille. Good morning, Miss Heard. Good morning. Your relationship with Mr. Depp began in October of 2011, right? That's correct. And you previously testified multiple times under oath that the first year of your relationship with Mr. Depp was the best of times, right, Ms. Heard? That is correct. You testified that as far as you could tell, Mr. Depp was sober that first year. That is correct. That's what I used to believe. And that the first year was, quote, magic. Yes, I always uh, estimated it was about a year. But now you've told this jury 
that Mr. Depp was being violent with you throughout 2012, haven't you, Ms. Hurd? No, he took a break in the middle of 2012 when he was sober. You told them that he was hitting you in 2012, though. Is that right? He was hitting me in 2012. He just took a break in the middle. He was smashing things around you, right? He did. And you told them that Mr. Depp was in and out of sobriety in 2012. That is correct. You told this jury that in two, quote, in 2012, I was in the beginning stages of this, just learning these patterns. I was learning that drinking kind of correlated with the violence, end quote. Is that right? That is correct. So it was during these cycles of violence in 2012 that you gave Mr. Depp a knife as a gift. I gave him a knife, um, I think for a birthday present early in our relationship, I believe it was around 2012, but I'm not certain. We've seen a picture of that knife, but I think we should bring out the real thing. Master Deputy Halusa, Master Deputy Sheriff Halusa, may I please have you show the knife to Ms. Hurd? God, that is a huge, look at that thing. Yes, that's it. Good Lord. That's the knife you gave to the man who was hitting you, right, Ms. Hurd? I wasn't worried he was going to stab me with it when I gave it to him, that's for certain. But you gave it to him while he was abusing you, allegedly. I gave it to him that year. Master Deputy Sheriff Lusa, will you please show the knife to the jury? That's a big knife. Thank you. This is the knife you gave to the man who would get drunk and violent with you, right? This is the same knife that I gave him as a present in 2012, yes. Now, Ms. Hurd, I'm going to need to talk to you about what happened in Australia in March of 2015. You've testified that at some point during the incident you described, you witnessed Mr. Depp bashing a phone against a wall, right? That is correct. You testified that the phone was breaking into pieces. I was watching it disappear. And Mr. Depp smashed it, I think your word was smithereens. Yes, that is correct. And according to your testimony, this was a wall-mounted phone in the bar area. That is correct. Let's take a look at Defendant's Exhibit 1820. Oops. Here comes the here comes the picture of the phone that isn't smashed, by the way. Miss, I believe this has already been admitted into evidence. If we could have it published. Oh, Herd is mad. You can tell it in her face. She doesn't like this. Yeah, a lot of people don't. A lot of people don't know there's pictures of the phone that you actually exists. You saw this exist. photo during your direct examination, right? That is correct. And you testified that the wall-mounted phone that you saw Mr. Depp smash is on the wall on the left. That's correct. So if you were looking at this picture, the wall, the wall-mounted phone would have been behind you on the left-hand side of your shoulder. But it's not depicted depicted in this photo, correct? Whoever took this photo of standing right in front of where that um, mounted phone was. That's convenient. Um, the pieces <laughs> of the phone Mr. Depp smashed aren't in this picture either, right? You don't see it because it's whoever took this photo standing in front of that. Whoever took this photo, it's Mr. Ben King, correct? That's what I believe. Yeah. Mr. King testified under oath in this trial, right? That is correct. And he testified that there was no wall-mounted phone smashed to smithereens that he had to replace, correct? I didn't hear him testify to that, no. He did. The counsel elicited it. I disagree with that representation. You also saw this picture. Actually, can we please bring up Defendant's Exhibit 1821, which is also admitted into evidence? You also saw this picture during your direct examination, correct? That is correct. And so this is the bar area to the right of the wall-mounted phone you just described. If you were facing in that direction, if you're facing this direction, it would be behind you. This phone on the counter isn't the phone that got smashed to smithereens, is it? No, they brought that out um, during my testimony in the UK as well. And I said this in the UK trial as well, that that is not the phone, obviously, because that one's not smashed and it's not wall-mounted. Yeah, so there are two phones in the bar area. There, there was a wall-mounted phone. I don't know if it was decorative or what, but it was what, like it looked antique. 
large and antique. And and what the large and antique one that's not depicted in any photograph, including ones you took, is the one that Mr. Depp damaged, correct? That is correct. I only took pictures of the mirrors. So there is no picture of that damaged phone? I didn't take a picture of it, no. Okay. So back to the phone smashing. You watched Mr. Depp smash the phone, right? That's correct. I watched it. And you testified that you were, quote, watching the phone every single time he pulled his hand back, end quote. That's correct. And according to you, this is when Mr. Depp lost the tip of his finger, right? It is my best guess. I didn't notice his finger come off, obviously. I was um, watching him smash the phone and watching the pieces break while he was doing it. Well, it's not your best guess, Ms. Heard. That is my best guess, yes. Okay, let's go back to my questions. You submitted a declaration under the penalty of perjury in this case. Do you remember that? That is correct. Okay, let's look at that declaration. <laughs> two phones now. There are two phones in that area, baby. Not one, two phones. Right back to back. But one was decorative. Thank you. God, this is brutal, man. If I weren't so amused, this would be painful to watch. <laughs> Thankfully, I am. If we could direct your attention, Ms. Heard, to the page uh, 14 of the declaration. Is that your signature? Yes, it is. And your signature appears right under the statement, quote, I declare under penalty of perjury, under the laws of the state of Virginia, that the foregoing is true and correct. That is correct. And this is dated April 10th, 2019. Correct. Now let's look at paragraph 16, which is on page five. The way, the way she denied her writing on those mirrors, I'm surprised she didn't deny her own signature. Specifically line 10. Quote, you write, testify under oath. While he was smashing the phone, Johnny severely injured his finger, cutting off the top of it, end quote. Did I read that correctly? Yes, that's correct. So you testified in this courtroom that after Mr. Depp smashed the phone, he held you down on the countertop by the neck. Do you remember that? I'm not quite sure of the exact sequence of things, but yes, both of those things happened. Well, we'll get to the sequence. And this is when Mr. Depp supposedly assaulted you with a bottle, right? On the countertop, he assaulted me. So Mr. Depp was able to get you on the counter, right? He held me down by my neck. And hold you down by your neck. That is correct. And he grabbed a bottle, according to you, by holding you down by the neck, correct? I'm sorry, can you clarify what you're asking me? While Mr. Depp is holding you by the neck against the countertop, he grabs a bottle. That's your testimony. No, those two things didn't happen at the exact same time, no. While he, so he's holding the bottle, is that your testimony? He While holding, holding my... you down by the neck? Sorry, what was your question? Your testimony is, Ms. Heard, that either he has the bottle before or after he's holding you by the neck on the counter. Is that your testimony? He held me by the neck on the counter. Where's the bottle? That he has At what with? point? While holding you down by your neck. When he was assaulting me with the bottle, it was in his hand. Was it in his hand before or after he holds you down by your neck? I was being held down while he assaulted me with the bottle. When he puts you on the counter, does he have the bottle in his hand, yes or no? As I have always said, I don't remember exactly what happened first, or I don't remember the sequence. I just remember being aware that I was being assaulted by a bottle while I was on the countertop. So he penetrates you with this bottle. But you don't know how he got the bottle, right? That is correct. And he did that right after he lost the tip of his right middle finger. Again, I don't remember the exact sequence of those events. We'll get to the sequence. And while he was on eight to 10 MDMA pills, right? Yes. <laughs> Let's talk about the sequence. This is the sequence of events you testify to in this courtroom. That he smashed the phone to smithereens and then assaulted you, lost the tip of his finger, and then assaulted you with a bottle. Yes, that's the sequence of events. 
that you testified to in this to be, courtroom. To be clear, you're putting it in order when you say words like, then I have never claimed that I can remember the exact sequence of these things. This was a, a multi-day assault that took place over three horrible days. Ms. Heard, the worst thing ever Ms. Heard, happened to me. I we're don't not remember Ms. Heard, the exact that's not my question. My question isn't about the three-day assault allegedly that occurred. I'm just talking about the sexual assault that you now allege occurred. Yes, okay? correct. Let's talk about the sequence. Silence. Lots so of you silence. Testified. Actually, yeah, I know. I just realized that. We gave it to you yesterday. Court transcript. God, she is brutalizing her right there. It's a, it's glorious. Yes. She seemed to remember every little detail, like carpet and everything else. I just day fine. Day in front of you. Uh, day sixteen. Yes, yes. of court my deposition. Yes. Mm -hmm. No, of the court transcript from this trial. Oh, yes. I, I didn't realize that. Yeah. Okay. Let's look at the transcript. So you testified on page, I'm getting there, 4506. Right. Okay. And it, the reason that we need to go through this, Ms. Hurd, is because we understand that these are very serious allegations that you're making, right? It was horrible. What happened to me? Yes. Okay. So let's go through them. Page 4506, line 2 through 3. I sit here now. Apologize. You testified on page 4506. This all started when Mr. Depp took 8 or 10 pills of MDMA right? That is correct. Okay. Then directing your attention to page 4518, line 19. You talk about Mr. Depp smashing a wall-mounted phone, correct? That is correct. Okay. Then on page 4519, at line three, you testified that while Mr. Depp is smashing the phone, he is screaming, quote, I fucking hate you, end quote, right? Yes, he, he was screaming that among other things. And further down on page 4519, same page, lines 12 through 19, you talk about how you watched Mr. Depp smash the phone to smithereens, right? That is correct. Then, continuing on on the same page, 4519, line 20, you say something really important. Quote, at some point, he's on top of me. No phone, but screaming the same thing, end quote. Right? I just remember the sound, yes. But you remember, and you testified to the jury, that he didn't have the phone in his hand anymore. When he was assaulting me with the bottle, right. he had the bottle in his hand when he was punching the wall with the phone, he had the phone in his hand. When he was punching the wall next to my head, he had me by the throat. He did a lot of things that night. So you're acknowledging by this sequence, not my words, your words, Ms. Heard, that you testified to this jury that Mr. Depp smashed the phone to smithereens before he assaulted you. That's have, the way, that's the sequencing in which you testified, correct? I have never testified to a sequence. talking about that sequence. Then on page 4521, starting at line three, you testify to being bent over backwards on the bar, right? Okay. Oh. 
Yeah, got to save her a little bit, right? Oh, we need to approach. Why? Because, well, she's being asked about the details. She could remember perfectly. Again, she could remember the shade of carpet. She could remember the smell of things. She's having all of these reclaimed memories. She told us about the sequence, about what exactly happened. And now she never claimed a sequence. These were just generalized memories, I suppose. Strange how that's working out today. Again, you know, it's it's very convenient. They set this stage, by the way, yesterday because they knew, they knew that they were going to get brutalized on cross. That's why yesterday, right before Camille took over, she said, I can't remember the exact sequence of things. And, you know, she went in and tried to, uh, she tried to take apart anything that people have been talking about online because, again, she knew that she was about to get taken apart. Oh, it's kind of glorious. <laughs> oh, anybody in their right mind, when they look at this, can say, like, like she doesn't act correct as far as somebody that has gone through massive trauma. You know, that, that's why when they talked about malingering, that's why she came up. Directing your attention, Ms. Heard, to page 4521, starting at line 3. Whatever they crossed on didn't work testified out. testified to being bent over backwards on the bar, right? That is correct. And then feeling pressure on your pubic bone like Mr. Depp was punching you. Yes? That's what I thought. And then further down on page 4521, and on to 4522, two, you testified that you were concerned Mr. Depp was using a broken bottle on you. Yes? That was my fear. Okay. That's what I remember feeling. Ms. Heard, I'm going to show you Defendant's Exhibit 1816. has already been admitted. Oh, the bottle. You saw this picture during your direct examination, right? I did. And you testified that this is a picture of the bottles that were next to Mr. Depp on a desk when you found him drinking in the morning, right? That's correct. And this was the morning after Mr. Depp had allegedly sexually assaulted you, right? It was the morning after he did assault me, yes. And if I understood your testimony correctly, you testified that this is the maker's mark bottle that Mr. Depp sexually assaulted you with. I was never sure it was, but it was definitely that shape, felt like that shape. She just said you it. testified in this courtroom that you had not seen this bottle until Ben King provided these photographs, correct? And not in the course of the trial. I hadn't seen the photograph. You claim you had serious injuries after this alleged incident, right, Ms. Heard? Depends on what you would call serious for me. Um, you know, having a sore jaw and some bruises uh, at the time of my relationship wasn't that serious. Um, okay. Let's testify. Relative. Let's focus on the testimony that you gave about the injuries. Mr. Depp, as you testified yesterday, wears rings on every finger, right? Sometimes. I mean, often. And certainly in the later part of our relationship, that was more normal than not. But if he's filming or something like that, of course, he's not going to have his own jewelry on. Your testimony in this trial was... Quote, I don't know if I've ever known Johnny not to wear rings. Correct? Do you need to put your microphone on, Miss? Thank you. Objection, Your Honor. <laughs> Improper impeachment. If she's going to ask her question, then she has to show where that was and then I'll overrule the objection. Go ahead. Thank you. Your testimony yesterday was, quote, I don't know if I've ever known Johnny not to wear rings. Right, Miss Heard? That's what I testified to, yes. Okay. And he was wearing rings on every finger in Australia, correct? Not all the time, not literally every single ring, every single day, but he often wears rings. Not often, Miss Heard. Your words are, I've never known Johnny not to wear rings on every finger. That is what I testified to. Okay. And you testified that you bled as a result of this sexual assault, correct? That is correct. All right. And you testified that your forearms were cut. My forearms and my feet. And your feet were sliced up. That's correct. And you testified you had a bruise across your jaw. That is correct. And there is not a single medical record reflecting treatment for any of those injuries, is there, Ms. Heard? I didn't seek treatment. And the day after you sustained all these injuries, Dr. David Kipper came to the house in Australia, right? Well, he came the third day uh, along with security. The day after you sustained these injuries? 
Ms. Dr. David Kipper came along with nurse Debbie Lloyd, correct? Well, the that fight went into the morning, like early hour morning. So technically that last day. Dr. David Kipper is Mr. Depp's or was Mr. Depp's uh, physician, right? I believe he still is. But yes. he was at the time. Yes, that's correct. And he was also your physician. He also saw me. No, not saw you. He was your physician, correct, Ms. Hurd? Uh, Johnny was the client, but he also treated me. All right, that's so not how it works. Please pull up. Do you remember giving testimony in this case in a deposition, Ms. Hurd? Yes, I do. I've given a couple. If we could please uh, pull up the deposition transcript, uh, day two. Um, at 589 lines six through eight. May I approach? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so she just told you about how she doesn't need treatment for being dragged through glass, being cut from head to toe, having her face broken, choked, slammed, beaten, violated with the bottle. Um, Your Honor, we're going to play Ms. Hurd's deposition for the jury. Uh, lines day two, page 540, lines six through nine. We have permission to publish it. Excuse me, I, I'm sorry. Day two, page 589, lines six through eight. All right, could you just give us a minute to get Of course. There? 589. I'm sorry, what were the lines? Page 589, lines six through eight. Did you say 540 or 589? 589, uh -huh. lines six. Right. Through eight. All right, thank okay. you. Thank That's you. Fine. I have no objection, Your Honor. And he was your doctor at this point, right? Yes, he was. Debbie Lloyd also came to the house that day. Yes, she came with Kipper. Yeah. Miss Lloyd is a nurse, correct? That is correct. Malcolm Connolly also came to the house that day. Yes, that's correct. Mr. Connolly is one of the security guards, correct? That is correct. You had known Mr. Connolly for years at that point. Yes, that's correct. You flew back to Los Angeles the next day with Ben King. Is that right? I can't be certain if it was uh, the next day or the day after, but somewhere around there, yes. And the day you arrived back in Los Angeles, you saw Travis McGivern, correct? I don't recall seeing Travis, no. You don't recall Mr. McGivern picking you up from the airport with Ben King? I don't remember that, no. And the same day, you also saw your own nurse, Erin Barem Filotti, that day, correct? The day you arrived in Los Angeles? I don't recall if I saw her that day. You saw Ms. Filotti's testimony in this case by video deposition, correct? That is correct. And you heard her testify that she saw you the day you arrived back from Australia on March 9th, 2015. I believe she testified that she came to dinner where I was with friends, yeah, I believe that. So she saw you that day? I believe that evening I saw her at dinner. Okay. And then you saw Aaron Baran Filotti again the next day for a private meeting, didn't you? I, I'm not sure if, if, that, if that's what she testified to, I'd have to just see the records to know. You heard her testify according to her notes. She met with you privately on March 10th, 2015. She met with me at some point upon my arrival, but I don't remember the exact date. And when you were in Australia, Ms. Hurd, you didn't take any pictures of the injuries you claimed to have sustained, right? I did not take any pictures, no. But you did take two pictures. Of the mirrors. I took two pictures of the bathroom mirrors. That um, was the master bathroom where I was. Let's please pull up Defendant's Exhibit 374, which is already in evidence. Man, my bingo card is crazy. Picture, right, Ms. Hurd? Yes, that's correct. And this is a mirror in the bathroom in Australia? That's correct. And this black paint on the mirror is from Mr. Depp? That is correct. He wrote on the mirror in black paint after his finger was cut off, right? Uh, yes, uh, I only know that because there was blood as well as paint. So you took this picture after Mr. Depp had injured his fingers, correct? This was while I was packing, when I was leaving. That, that's, that's a yes, I right, the photo. That's, what's the question, I'm sorry. You took this picture after Mr. Depp had injured his finger. That's correct. And you took this picture after you had allegedly been assaulted by Mr. Depp, yes? That's correct. Yet you didn't capture yourself in the mirror, did you? I don't 
see myself in the mirror, no. Let's please pull up Defendant's Exhibit 375. Hmm, that's a good point, actually. The one piece of evidence- took this picture as well, right, Ms. Heard? That's correct. And this is from one of the bathroom mirrors in Australia? That's correct. So this is also a picture taken after Mr. Depp had injured his finger? That's correct. And this is also a picture taken after you had allegedly been assaulted by Mr. Depp? That's correct. You didn't capture yourself in the mirror in this picture either, did you? I do not see myself in the mirror in that picture. Is that because you didn't have any visible injuries on you? It's because I was taking a picture of the writing. Let's talk about the writing on this mirror. So the writing and black paint is from Mr. Depp, correct? It's all from Mr. Depp. And it's your testimony under oath that you did not write the red text that says, quote, call Carly Simon, she said it better, babe, end that's, quote. That's correct. Because if you did write that, it means that your husband was walking around the house bleeding from his amputated finger and you're writing snarky messages to him on a mirror, right? I don't know what your question to me is, I'm sorry. Let's please take a look at Defendant's Exhibit 1830. I believe this, pic this picture is also admitted into evidence. She is getting tore up on cross. This is a picture of the same mirror, right? That's correct. But you didn't take this picture. No, I did not. This is the one that Ben King took. And I don't see him in the mirror either. Oh. He's, I don't believe he claimed he had injuries, though. Is that right? I did not hear uh, Ben King talk about his injuries, no. Okay. So you would agree, Ms. Heard, that the black text on the mirror says, quote, <laughs> she loves naked photos of herself. So modern, so hot. I had not read that yet. I mean, before, but yeah, that's what it says. But you were taking pictures of the text, but you had not read that before? I haven't seen this. It didn't make sense to me at the time when I read it in person. Okay. Again, Mr. Depp wrote that. Uh, I don't know who else would have. So Ms. Heard, just to be clear, it's your testimony that Mr. Depp also wrote the message in red about Carly Simon saying it better, right? That's correct. You know Carly Simon saying the song, You're So Vain, right? I was told that. So it's your testimony that Mr. Depp was writing messages to himself in the mirror back and forth. The best I can describe it is it looked like a crazy conversation. It was on the walls, it with was himself. on shades, it was on cushions. It's your testimony, the co crazy conversation was with himself. That's what it looked like from the bloody messages I found. And you would agree with me that in this photograph, the red text has been smudged with black paint, right? Yes. Let's please pull up, if we can, Defendant's Exhibit 35, excuse me, 375 again. Box smudge isn't in this picture that you took, right? That's correct. So Mr. Depp must have not liked his own message to himself. I'm not quite sure what was happening when Ben took that, the, his photograph, no. Let's please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 343, which is already in evidence. And yeah, it looks like. a portion from 157.21 through 158.54. It's a recording, Your Honor. At least five bathrooms and two bedrooms I went to. To 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 avoid talking to me. To, to avoid escape, working the, out. That's to the, escape the fight. You don't escape the fight. You escape the solution. No. You escape the solution. No. You s escape figuring it out. We cannot work it out if you run away to the bathroom every time. Listen to me. Listen to me. A boxer can't go 12 rounds without a fucking minute break. I'm not not giving you a minute break. You do it at minute three at the beginning of an argument. No. There are rounds, man. And when it gets too fucking hairy, the ref splits them apart or whatever. But I'm, I'm, all I'm saying is you, 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 you can't have a solution if the argument just keeps mounting and mounting and mounting and mounting. I fucking go to the, into the bathroom and sit on the floor. Bam, bam, bam. Here you come. I come out. Fight, fight, fight. Crazy. Escalated. I go, I split again. I go to another fucking bathroom or a bedroom or something. 
Knock, knock, knock. Bang, bang, bang. You kept coming to get me. Every. This is what really happened in Australia, isn't it, Miss Heard? Uh, I did knock on a bathroom door on the first night. Not a bathroom door, five bathroom doors and two bedrooms. Uh, is Johnny that not right? is not an accurate historian of what happened during Ms. Heard, that uh, Ms. Heard, of time. I'll guarantee Ms. Heard, that. that's not my question. Five bathroom doors, two bedrooms. That's what you knocked on. I that's what there. actually happened in Australia, isn't it, Ms. Heard? I was there. So that's I remember it. I knocked on one bathroom door. I came on the first night after he decided to take the, the bag of MDMA. Ms. Heard, Ms. Heard, I'm going to move to could... strike everything after I knocked on one bathroom she door. She can't do that. She's answering the question. Uh, not quite, so I will sustain the objection. Okay. Exactly. Just answer the question, okay? It's yes or no. She's arguing like she's she's getting combative. She's losing her the temper. we just listened to. That's exactly what happened in Australia. Mr. Depp lost the tip of his finger after you threw a bottle at him. Isn't that right? That is incorrect. You're the one who assaulted someone with a bottle in Australia. Isn't that right, Ms. Heard? I didn't assault Johnny in Australia. I didn't assault Johnny ever. I couldn't. And then after he was injured, he had to hide from you, right? That is in incorrect. Five bathrooms, two bedrooms. That is incorrect. And you would pursue him. That is incorrect. Because he was avoiding talking to you, right? He did that first night when and he was I avoiding, tried to talk to him about the drugs. And he was avoiding working it out. No, he was uh, avoiding agreeing to not fight about the drugs. You weren't scared of him at all, were you? I have a, uh, a mixed relationship with Johnny and one in which I'm scared, one in which I love him very much. I'm not talking about your mixed relationship. That night in Australia, after you cut off his finger with a bottle, you weren't scared of him at all, were you? This is a man who tried to kill me. Of course, it's scary. He's also my husband. Ms. Heard, I'm going to show you what's been marked as Defendant's Exhibit 371. I do not believe these have been admitted into evidence. No. Okay. I don't have them. We can scroll down, please. No. Ms. Bretterhoff, if you don't have your microphone on, I cannot hear you. <laughs> you still don't have it on. Redacted. Oh. I need to take a look at the unredacted for a minute, Your Honor. God, does she not know how a microphone I'm not admitting works? It into evidence yet. I would like to just okay, talk to the witness about it. I could. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Heard, I'm going to show you what's been marked as Defendant's Exhibit 371. Do you recognize these text messages between you and uh, Dr. Cowan? I don't recognize these, no. Who's Dr. Cowan? He was um, my therapist that uh, was recommended to me from Dr. Kipper. Uh, he and Dr. Kipper worked together. He was your therapist at the time, correct? That's correct. And you had been seeing him for almost a year in March of 2015? Uh, My guess would be about six months at that point. Not one tear, not bringing up the horrible the things. Text messages are in gray, correct? Your Honor, I'm going, I'm going to ask that she show her the unredacted so that she can see the text exchange back and right, forth. If, you if can, she wants to talk absolutely. about All right, moving we'll the unredacted sure. later. Good. Thank you. Pull it up. No true anger about being questioned on her her horrible experience in Australia. Just a little snide, snippy comments. Interesting. Like I say, no tears in the reliving that moment. Seeing these unredacted messages, does this refresh your recollection that these are indeed communications between you and Dr. Cowan? Yes, that's correct. Doctor, your text messages are in gray, correct? Yes, that's correct. And Dr. Cowan's are in blue? That is correct. Okay. You see the text message at the bottom of the page from March 8th, 
2015 at 8.29 p.m.? Yes, that's correct. March 8th is the day that you were allegedly sexually assaulted by Mr. Depp in Australia, correct? That is correct. So on March 8th, 2015, you were in Australia? That is correct. And Mr. Depp's finger had just been cut off, right? That is correct. And you write to Dr. Cowan, quote, I feel so lost. I can't talk. I don't know if I'll ever be able to change, end quote. Did I read that correctly? That's correct. You weren't able to change, were you, Ms. Heard? I very much wanted to leave the relationship I was in, but I didn't have the power. I didn't feel I had the power to leave. I knew I was in a very toxic relationship with Johnny, and I knew I needed to change that. I knew it was, at this point, horrible for me. And I'm I talked to my to therapist admit, often about that. Exhibit. So it's always Johnny Depp's fault. 371 as redacted with just Ms. Hurd's messages. All right. Your Honor, I object because she has left out the next two lines from Ms. Hurd that clarify even further. And I also think Ms. Dr. Cowan's. Uh, could you Your Honor, may we please yeah, approach? Yeah, approach. Just... Yeah, uh, that, that is that is no. She cannot. She can't say you can't you can't put that in because you left out. Uh-uh. So, that, that is not how that works. That is not how that works. It's the same thing with you playing a three second snippet of a four hour conversation. <laughs> they don't like that. Are, are they telling me? Are they saying lie by omission? Well, that if you look up lie by omission in the dictionary, I think there's a picture. It says, see hashtag me poo. <laughs> I mean, seriously. Like the judge is like, come on, cat lady, get this on. Look, she's dragging her computer up there with her. I mean, she's crazy. Camille's up there like, come on. Are you kidding me? Look, Heard is trying to look over at the jury and be sympathetic. And she just looks, oh, she just looks crazy. She just looks absolutely crazy. Johnny's got a little bit of, Johnny's got a little bit of uh, picture making to do. That's what I would do. I would do something to keep myself entertained. Maybe Camille, uh, maybe, um, maybe Camille threw down a B and, uh, and Elaine stepped on it this morning. Would it be mean if I said that, uh, well, you know, as far as that B story, I think I've seen Camille, uh, step on a B today. <laughs> She's stepping all over a B. <laughs> uh, is that mean to say? Hmm, I guess not. God, these people are so desperate, though. They are so desperate to keep that out. So, Your Honor, I'm going to move to admit Defendant's Exhibit 371 as redacted. All right, 371 in evidence as redacted over objection. Yes, ma'am. If you can publish that to the jury, thank you. So you write, Ms. Heard, to Dr. Cowan, I feel so lost, I can't talk. I don't know if I'll ever be able to change. Right. And I said, I clearly can't figure this out, meaning the relationship. You didn't say that. You said, I did. Not the relationship. Your text messages. Clearly, I can't figure this out. I feel so lost right now. What I was saying to him. No, no, no. Ms. Heard, Ms. Heard, Ms. Heard, that's not my question. The text. Just the text. That's exactly what, you what I was saying. What you texted. Clearly, I can't figure this out. I feel so lost right now. That's, that's what, what I was I saying. saying. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Heard, you contend? Your Honor, just for clarification, so those two next lines did come in. They are in the redacted Okay, copy. good. All right, thank you. Ms. Heard, you contend that there's another incident of abuse in March of 2015 after you and Mr. Depp returned from Australia. Is that correct? That's correct. And this is, incident took place on March 23rd, 2015? That's correct. And this supposedly occurred in the penthouse at the Eastern Columbia building? That's correct. You had found text messages between Mr. Depp and another woman, right? That is correct. So you confronted him about cheating on you? That's correct. And this was about two weeks after you had returned from Australia? That's correct. So this is shortly after Mr. Depp supposedly sexually assaulted you with a bottle, right? 
It was two weeks after he assaulted me, yes. And you decided to confront him about cheating on you? Um, I, I didn't decide to. I, 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 I wanted to. Mr. Duff's finger was freshly injured at this point, right? He had a cast on it. The top of his right finger had been cut off two weeks prior. That is correct. And he had a pin in his finger, true? I don't recall when the pin was placed. A skin graft? I'm not quite sure he had several different procedures and they were kind of spread out over a period of time. So I don't remember what happened and when One of those exactly. procedures was to treat the MRSA that got on his finger too, right? At some point I knew he had an infection. And his right hand was in a bandage, right? It was casted. So it's your testimony that Mr. Depp was able to attack both you and your sister with his hand in that state, right? That is correct. He had a hard plaster cast on it. Debbie Lloyd was present in the penthouses when Mr. Depp supposedly attacked you. Isn't that correct? That's correct. In fact, you claim that Mr. Depp threw a Red Bull can at Ms. Lloyd that evening. Yes, that's correct. And you put in a sworn statement to that effect in the UK case, right? That is correct. But that's not true, is it? That's what happened. You know what a deposition is, right, Ms. Heard? I've had several, yes. Yeah, so you know what it's when someone provides testimony under oath. That is correct. You're aware that Ms. Lloyd was deposed in connection with this case, correct? That's true. And Ms. Lloyd's deposition testimony was played earlier in this trial, right? I'm going to object, Your Honor, may we approach? All right. <laughs> I was I was looking back through uh, some of the other text messages that didn't get in. I found one with James Franco. You were hoping for my opinion on James Franco piece. I'd rather you didn't stoop to that level, but you've already told me how much you uh, like that material and that it's not a money gig, so it's quote-unquote art. I'm not going to tackle that greased-up pig. No, man. <laughs> you don't have to do that film. You really want it, obviously. I'm going to sleep. That's supposed to be his, like, oh, my God. He's, like, so mad about James Franco. It's fascinating. It's interesting to see the reality versus the fantasy because she constructed so a very... deposition, Ms. Heard. you know it's when someone provides testimony under oath, right? That's correct. And you're aware that Ms. Lloyd was deposed in connection with this case? That's correct. And Ms. Lloyd's deposition testimony was played earlier in this trial? Yes. So you heard Ms. Lloyd testify under oath that Mr. Depp never threw a can of Red Bull at her. I can't remember uh, if she didn't rem if she didn't recall that or if she said it didn't happen. I don't remember. I vaguely sense she didn't recall anything. So it's your testimony that Miss Lloyd would forget that Mr. Depp, very famous patient of hers, threw a can of Red Bull that nearly missed her, according to your version of events. To be fair, I just don't remember if she said when she testified that she didn't recall that incident or if it didn't happen. I don't remember what she testified to, but I have a vague sense that she didn't recall much at all. She recalled and she testified in this courtroom that Mr. Depp never threw a can of Red Bull at her. That was her testimony, wasn't it? I don't recall what her testimony was with regards to that one incident, no. You actually filed a complaint against Ms. Lloyd's nursing license right before she was supposedly deposed in this case, didn't you? Uh, oh. No, I don't, I don't believe I did. Are you aware that someone filed a complaint against Ms. Lloyd's nursing license in connection with her care of Mr. Depp for failing to report abuse? No, I had no idea. You're the oh. first person to let me know about that. It's your testimony under oath, that wasn't you? That is my testimony. I didn't even know about that until now. Travis McGivern was That's also big. present when Mr. Depp supposedly attacked you, correct? He walked in at some point. And you heard his testimony that it was actually you who punched Mr. Depp. Isn't that right? It's always been my own testimony that I hit Johnny. And, and you who was throwing things at Mr. Depp. I hit him in defense of my sister. I didn't have anything to throw at him. I never threw anything at him. I hit him when he attacked me and my sister, specifically when he moved for her. That's when I hit him. So it's your testimony under oath, you threw nothing at Mr. Depp. Mr. McGivern's lying. I have thrown things at Johnny, no, no, to no. be clear, not but not that things. occasion. That evening. Not that occasion, not, not on that occasion. So it's your testimony, Mr. McGivern, imagine that you were throwing things at Mr. Depp from the mezzanine level down towards where Mr. Depp and Mr. McGivern were standing. Well, he certainly wasn't gonna say it about his client.
I like how she denies she's the client. You kept a journal together, didn't you? Yes, we did. You wrote each other messages in that journal, right? That is true. If we could please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 91. I'm only going to be showing you certain portions of this, so if we could please call this Plaintiff's Exhibit 91A. This is the journal that you and Mr. Depp kept with each other in electronic form, correct? That is correct. And if you, if you could scroll through, these are all entries that you made in the journal, correct? <laughs> is it done? Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm going to move for the admission of Plaintiff's Exhibit 91A, and I've gone ahead and redacted Mr. Depp's writings as he, on hearsay grounds. I'm going to object here on the move. Okay. All right. More complaints from the cat lady. Can't have this thing moving too fast, you know, because they, the, they respect the court's time. Oh, man. Hurt is getting snippy. She's actually losing her composure. And that's funny because it's already happening. Can you believe, though? She tried to take out Debbie Lloyd's license. That's the, that's the uh, nurse that was there in Australia. Hmm. Maybe that sounds like a good video because I know a lot about who that is. So maybe that would be a very good one to discuss there. I mean, that, like I said, that's crazy. She's trying to take out... Uh, She's trying to take out witnesses. Like, see, I found out here. Here's something I know from, let's just say, a source. There have been witnesses in this case. There is FBI involvement because of witness intimidation. That's right. Not a joke. For sure. 100% know that's true because witnesses, they are uh, they are having crazy things. I can't, I'm not going to say who, uh, but they are witnesses that you would know by name. And they are uh, people that belong to JD. We are talking about real life intimidation. Because God forbid they tell the truth, right? Let's start with the first page. It's a picture. Your Honor, I'm, it's a picture. They haven't given me the pages yet. I'm writing them down. Okay. Sorry, Judy. Let's write them down first. Thank you, Your Honor. Yeah, all right. If we could please publish this to the jury. Let's see what kind of thank you. Over let's, see, let's see what you got for us today. This is a picture that's on the inside cover of the love notebook, correct? That's correct. And this is a picture of you and Mr. Depp. That's correct. And you're in Australia in this picture, aren't you? Yes, but that's much later once we returned. You can see that Mr. Depp's right hand is bandaged, right? Yes, that's correct. That was after it had recovered significantly. That's not what it looked like uh, during the incident we were just talking about. So this is a picture after the events in Australia in March of 2015, correct? Yeah, yes, that photograph was taken months later. Can we have the jury look at that photograph again, please? Hmm. Let's now turn to page three. This is a note you wrote in the journal to Mr. Depp, correct? That's what it looks like, yes. This is actually the first note you wrote to him in this journal. I don't remember what the first note was. The date on this note is May 22nd, 2015, correct? That is correct. That was during our honeymoon period. So this is just a little bit over two months after the events in Australia in March of 2015, right? That's correct. We were back in a honeymoon phase. That was the period of sobriety I spoke about yesterday. When Mr. Depp, after Mr. Depp had allegedly assaulted you with a bottle. 
right? It was after the stairs and it was after the Australia incident. Yes. Oh my God. And he got clean and sober and we went back to Australia. So it's also two months after Mr. you punched Mr. Depp because you allegedly thought he was going to throw your sister down the stairs, right? I hit him when he swung at my sister. And this is written months later. Yes. You thought he was going to throw your sister down the stairs like he had thrown Kate Moss down the stairs, right? He swung at Whitney and I had heard a rumor, oh. a vague rumor about that. Vague rumor. And so it's what I thought of. In this first message to Mr. Depp in your journal, you write, quote, true love isn't about just the madness of passion or instead picking the safety of peace. No, it's about having both, falling madly in love with your friend. That is what has surprised me perhaps the most, that I have seen in you the true bones of friendship and respect. But of course, I still, perhaps more than ever, want to rip you apart, devour you, and savor the taste. Fret not, XX Slim. Yes, she would call that. Note. She would call did that assault. That yes, you did. And you're slim, right? That's correct. Mr. Heard, I'm now going to ask you to take a look at the very last entry you wrote in this journal, which seems to be from April 8th. That would be April 8th, 2016, correct? I'm, I'm not quite sure. I don't see the year written on there and I don't recognize it yet. It would be a couple weeks. April 8th would be a couple weeks before your birthday though, right? That's correct. Just to confirm, this is a note you wrote to Mr. Depp, right? That's what it looks like, yes. And on the second page of this note, you wrote the following. Quote, I'm sorry I can get crazy. I'm sorry I hurt you. Like you, I can get wicked when I am hurt, when I feel provoked, shattered. And last night I was. I felt abandoned about the Lily Rose thing, felt absolutely bewildered about your not coming home on my last night here, and was heartbroken and angry after many attempts in vain on my part to rectify the situation and make amends on the last night of what was otherwise a gorgeous trip with you. I'm so sorry for my part. None of this is meant to be an excuse for hurting you. Because the truth is, nothing is. There is never a reason good enough to hurt you. You are the last thing in the whole world who deserves it. Last person I ever meant to hurt. I love you, Steve. I am forever yours, Slim. Did I read that correctly? That's correct. Mr. Reed, let's take a look at Defendant's Exhibit 423, which is already in evidence. This is a picture of you with what appears to be straight red marks on your arms, correct? Those are scars from the broken glass. And they're straight and red, right? I, um, I disagree with how you characterize that, um, but they are red, yes. And they're on your left arm? Yes, that's correct. And sir, do you have a history of cutting yourself, don't you? I do not. You cut your arm once as a teenager, isn't that right? No, I said I wanted to. Um, when I was put on birth control pills when I was a teenager, I got, I felt crazy. And I said I felt suicidal. So it's your testimony under oath that you didn't report to Dr. Hughes, your retained oh, psychologist, God. that you had cut yourself as a teenager once? I said I had told my mom that I wanted to when I was a teenager. Ms. Heard, we heard some testimony from you yesterday about a trip you and Mr. Depp took on a train in Southeast Asia. Do you recall that? Yes, that's correct. That was when you and Mr. Depp went on your honeymoon trip, correct? That's correct. And that was in July of 2015? Yes, that sounds right. Let's take a look at Plaintiff's Exhibit 162, which is already in evidence. You were here in this courtroom, right, Ms. Heard, when Malcolm Connolly testified to taking this picture? That's correct. This is the picture. This picture shows an injury to Mr. Depp's face, doesn't it? I disagree. I've seen this, this is, picture. Uh, okay, Ms. Heard, I've seen I this got picture the answer. Thank before, you. and it, you he's not injured in it. 
He's not injured in this picture. Mm -hmm. That's your testimony. Fine. This one is uh, photoshopped. Ms. Heard, I have your answer. Thank you. Photoshopped. This is the only photograph from our honeymoon that shows someone with an injury, correct? That's not true. We haven't seen any photos of injuries to your face from that train trip, have we? I don't believe my face was injured on that trip. Let's take a look at Exhibit 91A at page 46, going back to the Love Journal. This is a note from you to Mr. Depp, right? That is correct. This is a note you wrote on July 22nd, 2015. That is correct. And it starts off with the words, my husband, happy honeymoon, right? That's correct. Ms. Heard, please take a look at Plaintiff's Exhibit 91A at page 67. This is another note from you to Mr. Depp in your journal, right? That is correct. And this one is dated August 1st, 2015. That's correct. And you write, that's enough. You've held this book hostage long enough. Although I can't wait to read my note, I also couldn't wait to tell you how much I adore you. What a beautiful, extraordinary, magical, memorable, wonderful, stunning, surprisingly evolving and impulsive adventure. I couldn't have imagined a more gorgeous honeymoon. I love you more and more every passing day. XX Slim. Did I read that right? That is correct. Let's take a look at the journal entry starting on page hmm. 68. This is another entry from you writing to Mr. Depp, right? That is correct. And this one's dated August 2nd. That is correct, yes. And this one is a longer one, so let's go to where it ends on page 70 of the journal. And you write, quote, I hope that things said in anger and pain were just that, and that you miss and love me too. And that is what matters most to you. You may say you stand by everything you said and did, and that there is nothing you can learn from this, but I don't feel that way. And it's important for me that you know that. I love you and I'm sorry. I miss my warm, loving husband, XX Slim. <laughs> that is correct. And sad, the word sad is crossed out. That is true. Next, we have a journal entry from you on page 89. This one's, this is another note from you to Mr. Depp. That is correct. The whole book is love notes. Mm -hmm. So this is dated August 15th, correct? That is correct. And here you write, quote, my love, why do we fight, ever, why? I love you more than anything else. Are we that uncomfortable with being vulnerable? Were we scared or is it something else? I don't know, but I'm sure of one thing. And if it's that I can't imagine living, that I can't imagine my life without you. I love you, I will do better, I am sorry. X, Slim. Did I read that correctly? That is correct. Your testimony, this was a love journal. That is correct. It was primarily love notes and, and you know, apology open. notes from you to Mr. Depp. The book was more of a love note book. Um, and part of that communication, obviously, since we fought so much, uh, it was important for me to, um, you know, try to nurture as much peace as we possibly could. And when things were good, they were really good. And it was also an opportunity for you to apologize to Mr. Depp for your behavior, isn't it? I think it's important in every relationship to apologize when you're trying to move past fights. Let's look at an entry from August 17, 2015, starting on page 90. Here you write, quote, 
I'm sorry I shook the wheels so hard. I'm sorry we've tested the shocks and brakes to this point. God damn, I love you, Johnny. I love you. I am tied to you forever, you know that? So I'm tasked with making this work for that reason and many others, of which there are many. Let me try to fix this. Let me try to patch this. Let me try to make your heart better. You deserve it. Hell, maybe even I do. I need you. We need each other. You're my cornerstone, my heart, my all. You are my life. I hate it when we fight. I hate having you hurt. I hate that you're hurting. I love you more than anything. Let me prove it. I need you. I love you. Slim. Should I read that correctly? Yeah, another example of me trying to fix it. Oh, God. He's always trying to fix it. Fix it by apologizing for your bad behavior? I tried everything. I tried apologizing. I tried reading. I tried therapist. I tried everything to fix it. But yet you couldn't change like you told Dr. Cowan, right? I couldn't change my relationship. Let's talk about December 15th, 2015 again. Aaron Filotti, your personal nurse, saw you two days after the incident on December 15th, 2015. Isn't that right? She did not see me as in a medical visit. She just dropped off meds in the late at night. She saw you personally though. Right? She physically saw me, but did yeah. not see me in a medical sense, the way a doctor might see a patient. She did not see me in that way. She was your personal nurse, right? She was a nurse assigned to me. I didn't hire her. Johnny did. She was assigned to you. And so when she would see you, it would be physically in person, in your home and traveling, correct? She would sometimes see me as like a medical professional would. And then other times she would just drop off meds and physically see me like as in with her eyes. You testified that during the incident on December 15th, 2015, Mr. Depp broke the bed, correct? That is correct. And more specifically, you described that he broke the bed frame with his boot while trying to get purchase. That <laughs> yes, that's correct. Let's take a look at Defendant's Exhibit 509, which is already in evidence. Ask her where the blood is. Ask her who cleaned up the murder scene. If we could please have that published to the jury. Thank you. Now, sir, this is a picture that you indicated depicts the broken bed, right? That's exactly it. And it's your testimony that Mr. Depp caused this damage to the bed with his boot, right? He did. Is that a pocket knife on the bed there? I cannot tell what's on the bed. Oh. Did you use that to damage the bed? Uh, I did not damage the bed. Johnny's boot did when he was punching me. I could feel him slipping. Amber, Mr. Amber, Amber. also testified that there was blood all over the pillows on the bed, correct? On the pillow top, yes. That's correct. But you didn't take a picture of that, though, did you? I did not take a picture of this. About a week after the December 15th, 2015 incident, you went with Mr. Depp and his children to the island of the Bahamas. Is that correct? To celebrate See, Christmas? It, uh, the, the incident was on the 15th, and we went on the 23rd, I believe. While you were there, you did a photo shoot with Greg Williams, correct? Uh, a few days later, I think the photo shoot was about two weeks after this assault. Let's please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 99. This is a photograph of you on Mr. Depp's Island shortly after December 15, 2015, correct? Uh, no, this was taken weeks later. On the island, on that trip? It was taken on the island. On, on that, that trip. trip? Yes. Weeks later. Weeks later. December 15th, you traveled to the island December 23rd. That's your testimony? It's my recollection that this picture was taken on New Year's Eve or the first day of the year. I think New Year's Eve. And this is the photo shoot with Greg Williams, correct? That is correct. I'm gonna to move to admit and publish. No objection. All right, 99. All right, here you go. This is gonna be, look, you can see there's a lot of these pictures too. please have a zoom in to Miss Hurd's face. Thank you, Tom. 
Amica cream, baby. Bahama. Bahama sunshine. She told us that clears all bruises. Let's please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 100. I'm going to move to admit and publish. No objection. All right, 100 in evidence. You can publish. Ms. Heard, this is another picture of you from that photo shoot, correct? Yes, this is the same photo shoot that you asked me about earlier, and this is um, several weeks later. Uh -huh. If we could zoom in on Ms. Heard's face. Convenient, huh? Tom. Let's please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 101. And I'm going to move to admit and publish. I need to zoom in. Uh, can we just have the foundation photo, please? This is a picture from the photo shoot we Ms. Heard that was taken on the island. This is the same photo shoot, yes. Then no objection, Your Honor. All right, 101 in evidence, good publish. <laughs> she is getting destroyed by her own vanity. If we could please scroll, zoom in, excuse me, Tom, on Ms. Heard's face. Is your testimony, Ms. Heard, that you were wearing makeup for this photo shoot? That is correct. It's a photo shoot. Oh, salty. If we could please pull up Exhibit 102. Uh, Ms. Heard, is this another picture from the photo shoot? I can't exactly tell from the background. It looks like it's a, the same thing, but I can't really tell without it being this zoomed out. This is a picture of you though, right? It is a picture of me, yes. I'm gonna to move to admit and publish. All right, any objection? I'm not gonna object because she identified herself. I just, if she could identify uh, when it was taken, that would be helpful. But I'm not is, gonna object. I'm not no, gonna object. No, objection. no objection. Okay, there we go. 102 in evidence, you publish. This has been brutal. This is what happens when you take uh, feelings and confront it with facts. Ms. Heard, this is yet another picture of you from that Greg Williams photo shoot, correct? That is correct. This is from the same shoot. I'm going to move to admit and publish. No objection. All right. 103 in evidence. Publish. And again, if we could zoom in on Ms. Heard's face. And finally, if we could please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 104. And Ms. Heard, this is a picture of you from that photo shoot, correct? Again, this is the same photo shoot weeks later. Uh, I'm going to move to admit and publish. No objection, Your Honor. All right, 104 in evidence. Thank you. Again, if we could zoom in on Ms. Heard's face. Thank you, Tom. Hmm. You testified that you and Mr. Depp got into a fight while on the island in December of 2015, correct? That's correct. And this all started because you perceived Mr. Depp as nodding off during the trip, right? I thought he was passing out again in a similar fashion to what he had done uh, the previous year. And, and when he nodded off, he spilled wine on you, correct? Yeah, two, three times in a row. You testified that Mr. Depp's son, Jack, was there when this happened, right? Mm -hmm. At the beginning, he was there. He was there when Mr. Depp allegedly spilled wine on you two or three times, right? He was there for that because he offered me help. Right. You also testified that Mr. Depp then sexually assaulted you in the bathroom, correct? That's correct. And you testified that after this, you needed to get away from him, right? That is correct. So you ran out of the house. That's correct. And you admit you threw something at him, right? I did throw something in at him to get away. You sat in this courtroom when Tara Roberts testified, right, Ms. Heard? I did. She's Mr. Depp's manager on the island. Yes, that's correct. And you heard her testify that she witnessed an argument between you and Mr. Depp on the island in December of 2015, right? I, yes, that's correct, yes. And you heard her testify that Mr. Depp was trying to escape you, right? I don't know if, she, I don't know if she characterized it like that, but that was the gist of it. She, she kind of, 
misrepresented then, it to seem like that, yes. She misrepresented it. How convenient. That's correct. Okay, and then you kept apologizing to Mr. Depp, right? That's what <laughs> How no, convenient. That's Robert correct. said. Begging him to come back to the house with you. That's not correct. Clawing at him. She used those words. That's not correct. When she interrupted us, Johnny had me by the hair. Yelling at him. We were screaming, both of us, but uh, I don't know what she um, would have heard. And that you, she observed an injury on Mr. Depp's nose from something that you threw at him, right? I don't know what she observed. You also heard Ms. Roberts testify that she included all this information in a sworn statement in the UK in May of 2020. Isn't that right? That is correct. You put in a witness statement in response to Ms. Roberts' statement in June of 2020. Isn't that correct? In the UK? Um, I made several, I did several, I think seven witness statements and each one contained different information as per recent filings. That's what counsel has you do in that. In and that in response to case. previous filings, correct? including testimony from people that contradict your story? Sort of. So what you have to do is your counsel asks you to respond to things and you put it in a declaration of sorts. And that happens back and forth over the course of preparing to go to trial in that country. And that's what I did. So that was your fifth witness statement submitted in the UK. I don't recall which one I was asked to comment on Tara Let's, Roberts' testimony. I'll remind you. Um, if we could have Ms. Hurd's fifth witness statement from the UK. Yes, ma'am. Uh, she has a lot of memory lapses all of a sudden. I thought it was only abuse that made her stop remembering. Huh. Thank you. Maybe it's all that wine. Directing your attention is heard to page six of your fifth witness statement. It's here that you describe the December 2015 incident, correct, on the island? Uh, I haven't read through the statement. I just don't know if I had commented on it before in a previous witness statement. As I said, there were several. But starting on page six, Ms. Heard, you describe the incident that took place on the island, correct? That's correct, but what I'm trying to say is I'm not sure if I'd describe it in full okay. in this statement. Okay. I'm going to show you your confidential schedule to the fifth witness statement that accompanied the fifth witness statement in the UK. Yes, ma'am. God. I'm telling you, Amber's going to accuse her Camille of abuse because she is she is just assaulting her right now. How dare you use my own words against me? In the confidential schedule to your fifth witness statement. Paragraph one on page 21. You describe Mr. Depp sexually assaulting you in the Bahamas of December 2015, right? That is correct. And that's the first time you ever claimed that Mr. Depp had sexually assaulted you in the Bahamas. That is incorrect. You only submitted the confidential schedule in the UK claiming Mr. Depp had sexually assaulted you after Ms. Roberts had said that she saw you on the island chasing, clawing at Mr. Depp. Isn't that correct? Oh. That is incorrect. If we could please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 394. Your Honor, um, this is another recording I can represent to the court. This only contains Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd's voices. Um, I'm going to move to admit the entire recording. I'm only going to play from 11744 through 12002. 
All right, any objection? Um, which which plaintiff exhibit you're on? Three, three nine three four. nine four. I, I think I have no objection. All right, on. I'll go with that. All right, three nine four in evidence. Thank you, Your Honor. What things have you been doing? Working on the estate, trying to change the last several times. Hence, screaming when I spilled wine accidentally on you for falling asleep and screaming in front of my kids and freaking Jack out. And that's trying. That fucked him up, you know. I'm sorry I fucked your son up. No, oh, it's it weirded him out. He'd never I'm so sorry I, I fucked your kids up. He didn't fuck my kids up, but I'm it so was sorry. pretty fucking it was pretty fucking weird for him, you know. Because I jumped up and screamed at that point. No, that's that's the reason. Yeah. You're right. I'm not surprised he's I'm sure that's terrifying. I don't need your uh Your clever uh, comebacks. No. You think you're controlling yourself? You think you're controlling yourself? Your characters become so clear, especially when you use them. It's embarrassing for you. I'm going to walk away now because you're actually making it, making me see you even with words. And believing me, I'm not going to be calling you at 3 o'clock in the morning after I have an ambient and think, I'm going to just fucking forget and move on. Trust me. Is gross by you using these words. I've done nothing but be here for them in a good way. And if you take that for granted, fine. All right. You're right. Meet a woman who would not jump up and scream if she if you've been spilled on three times in a row. And I hope I hope you're happy with whoever that is, because that would be a special kind of fucking person. Okay. It's you and Mr. Depp in that recording, right? That's correct. And you're discussing what happened in the Bahamas in December of 2015, right? Uh, no, that's not correct. We were discussing a part of it. You're discussing when you screamed at Mr. Depp in front of his children, correct? Uh, no, we were talking about a part of that argument. Including when you screamed at Mr. Depp in front of his children. That's not a fair characterization of what happened. Mr. Depp says you screamed at him when he accidentally spilled wine on you, correct? I realize that's what Johnny said. Yeah, and Mr. Depp tells you that this freaked out his son, Jack. Johnny often used other people to back him up in our arguments. You don't seem too concerned about that, do you? I had a lot of concerns. You don't seem, you don't mention Mr. Depp sexually assaulting you in this recording, do you? That was not the point of that conversation. If I had gotten into the details of what happened, to me with him, it would have been another fight. You just accused Mr. Depp of, quote, using his kids, right? And that recording- would often use other people, yes. <laughs> and you challenge him to find a woman who will not, quote, jump up and scream if she has been spilled on three times in a row. That is correct. Not a woman who would put up with sexual abuse, right? I was pointing out uh, the ridiculous nature of him expecting me not to react to something that basic. Your Honor, would this be a good time for a break? I'm... All right, we can do that. That's Thank fine. you, Your Honor. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and take our morning recess for 15 minutes. Do not discuss the case with anybody. Don't do any outside research. We'll see you in 15, okay? What have you folks thought of that? This one, man, 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 man. Come back at 1047 then? All right, 1047. Thank you. All right. Oh, my goodness. We got some stuff to talk about today. Oh, my Lord. Today has been brutal. 
Oh, she is denied everything. Like she actually, I took a lot of screenshots of what she was talking about. By the way, we just created something new. <laughs> I want to show you too. Since everybody loves a good B story, you know, I made something for all you wonderful people out there too. Let me pull this up and I'll put it in the, I'll put it in the chat in just a second. Oh my goodness though. Like that was brutal. I mean, Camille has brutalized her. We've got a 15 minute break. They will be back in just a moment. I'm going to, I'm going to pull up some, like I said, I'm going to pull up some screenshots to talk about those because as some of these, especially the Island gig shots, they are definitely bad for her like these. I mean, look at this stuff. Like again, she supposedly been brutalized. Now she says, well, these are weeks after man. I mean, her face has been destroyed. Remember, she has been destroyed. And yet, at the same time, you can't find any evidence. That's that's the problem with her her story. And this is the problem with a lot of stories like this. You know, when you're talking about fakes, like people react. <laughs> Let me show you something real fast. OK, so everybody loves the I stepped on a bee, right? So <laughs> we, <laughs> we were working on something goofing off. Check this out. I stepped on a bee too. You like it? Oh, look at that. I think she stepped on a bee. And <laughs> look at that. I think it stepped all over it. And it had a stinger. And you know what? The bee stepped back. Babies. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Look, he said, uh, he's like, yeah, I got your bee right here, son. I got your bee indeed. <laughs> I'll put a link to that at the at the top of the chat. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i have so much fun like I, I i usually don't do merch for the the items that are there remember too if you pick up merch from me that as i said our profits for merch go to charity i can't control proceeds but i do control profits let me hit that uh this is untrue emma thank you welcome thank you for the membership too welcome to tugs thugs appreciate that <laughs> just wiggling through life thanks for the five please i'm begging slow the chat down just a wee bit i love watching it move though i mean it's so fun like watching eighteen thousand people like like this you know it's always a reminder seeing just how many people have come together to watch this thing like i love that i love that is that a pledge <laughs> yeah that's a pledge since i didn't actually donate it yet but you know what it will be a donation too <laughs> don't cry baby thanks for the five it's game over for the turn case closed indeed indeed Sano, thanks for the 10 at this point it's less he said she said more than she said everyone else said that's actually a very good point too let me um like there was a there was a good point that was brought up of something that caught her off guard and it was the the paintings. By the way, did you notice she changed her beer bottle, I mean her her alcohol bottle story? So when she was on the stand, she told us that she had a recovered memory in which this specific bottle was indeed the bottle that was utilized on her. It wasn't a possibly. She was very descript in saying that this was indeed the bottle. Now she is about faced. Now she has said, "Uh, uh, you know that's that's not, that's not it." I just I was shocked. I was shocked to see her like she, yeah, she made it up. Is that Brick Crew? Is that right? Thank you. Welcome. Thank you for the membership too. Welcome to Tugs Thugs. Appreciate you. Just amazing. Like she doesn't remember that. Like that was a big one for me. That was a big one. But there was also another thing that really does con uh, really combat with the uh, the state of, of her narrative. And that's um, that's this idea of the writing on the mirror. OK, she always she keeps saying rather that the writing on the mirror is and it doesn't actually say call si Carly Simon. It says call Carly Simon mom. You've got to remember, Johnny Depp's mother was very, very sick at the time. She was actually, uh, you know, she was she was in the last year of her life. She had been battling uh, illness. He he was very close. He had a, a very tumultuous relationship with his mother throughout life, but he was very close to her at the same time. He was taking care of her. She weaponized things like that. She was like, call your mama. 
she did it better. Like it's it's a it's a dual statement. It's a you're so vain statement attached to a shot at his mama. That's what I believe that is. But you notice Johnny Depp is so into the moment, right? That he doesn't okay, there's all this other writing. Yeah, everything else here. Notice he doesn't do anything to that other writing because it's clearly his writing, right? But the uh, this writing he blacks out. Why does he black that writing out? Because it's hers. She's gaslighting him. Why does that matter, by the way? Because that means that in this moment, she was not an unwilling participant. It's actually somebody in the moment that was fighting with people. And that, yeah, that changes up everything. So let me, let me, let me find a, there's one other piece of, of evidence that goes with that too. And it's about access. You know, she, she kept saying that this writing, you know, of course it, it had to be done by JD. Okay. But at the same time, she couldn't have been gaslighting him. She couldn't have been doing any of that because of course JD was, uh, he was locked out of the room, you know. She was over by herself, okay. She makes sure to say over and over again, I barricaded myself in the bathroom, right? She's barricaded away. I mean, you can see all of these statements. Here's the problem with that. Here's the uh, layout to the Australia area. This is where this area over to the side, the master in suite. You see that around the red line? Let me zoom in on it. That's where those pictures are found. They happen during the night, right? Miss Hurd says that she goes upstairs and she locks herself into the master bedroom. Now, you notice the walls. Let's just trace this really fast. You notice how this rolls around? There are solid walls outside. There is no entry unless he's doing a spider shimmy all the way up the wall and trying to get in through the balcony. Right? Unless he's doing that, he has no entry way whatsoever. So how? Riddle me this. If she's locked in the bedroom all night long for an entire 12 hours, not bleeding to death or anything else after she's been violently accosted, you know, she's basically been put through the grinder. How did JD get into the bathroom to make those pictures? What that means is that she wasn't locked away in that bathroom or in the bedroom at all. She was a participant. In fact, she was an aggressor in that, which she admits in the audio that ended up being recorded, she admits that she trashed a whole floor there. Like she is absolutely guilty in this. The lies, they just keep coming. And it's amazing because they're, they're just falling apart. Luna, thanks for the 10. Camille floats like a butterfly and stings like a bee. Like I said, you know, Camille, uh, you know what? I actually believe that story about the, uh, about the, about the dog and, and everything, because I too just saw somebody step on a bee. <laughs> Camille was like, squish, that bee's gone, baby. Hey, <laughs> uh, some thanks for the five. How could someone be so stupid these lies the whole time that it's over? That's true. Very true. If I miss your comment, by the way, I will come back to you. Just wiggle through life. Thanks, five. Ah, shite. Do I talk with my lawyers or do I go pee for an hour after all my nervous drinking? Uh, mega pint B, indeed. <laughs> uh, Tristan Lee, thanks for the five. My effing white terrier stepped on a B and died. Oh, no, cool. Good dog, too. Slept uh, by my feet. Oh, that's sad there. Shout out to my Elsa. That's sad, actually. That's very sad. Shout out to Elsa. Desi, thank you for that membership. Let me, let me start that one over. Desi, thank you and welcome. Thank you for your membership too. And welcome to Tugs Thugs. <laughs> I hate it when I get that out of whack. Sorry about that. Susan, if I miss somebody, like I said, if I miss you in that, uh, you know, we'll come back to you for sure. Everybody gets red. Everybody gets red. Susan, oh, thanks for the three and the super sticker. Ciao, that's sexy. Ace Lopez, thanks for the five. Jim Ross, good God almighty, <laughs> that killed her. Scott is my witness. She's broken in half. Well, somebody stopped the death match. Well, it does feel like a death match, doesn't it? And you know what? This, is, this has to be the performance of her lifetime. Like, she should be out there. This is her career. She has given away everything. Really, 
This is the remnant of her career. Remember, she burned down her entire life going after Johnny Depp. She flips the script and says that it was really Johnny who ruined, you know, that went after her and was ruining his life. But no, 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 no. Warner Brothers, for example, they outright admit. I did a video on this uh, this morning. I've done a video on it a few times, actually talking about it. By the way, I feel like the media owes me an apology. She admitted yesterday that uh, that. Warner Brothers has indeed canned her. They, they've removed her. That, that's how you get canned. They remove your time. You know, they, uh, they, they basically erase you. That's how they fire you. They don't fire you by coming out and firing you. They fire you a different way. Yeah, the media attacked quite a bit in there. And yet, and yet, right? No, thanks for the five. Uh, heard is uh, Claire Bennett from Heroes. Exactly. Exactly. No one heals that fast. Exactly. You know, I just rewatched Heroes not too long ago. That's, that's funny. I like that reference. JT, thanks for five. No statement. Please, statement. Thank you for that. Leah, thanks for the five. The Bravo. Hey, thank you. Thank you. I, I'm Bravo for her, for sure. Katrina, thanks for the 15. She had affected these kids. Camille needs to go harder. Her son is now traumatized. Uh, his son, rather, is now traumatized because of her. Please point out winning moments, hope, so my blood pressure drops. Can I, uh, can they use a, just audio? Good job. Uh, by the way, you, you've got to, here's the thing. You can't go too hard. You have to, you have to walk it because she is claiming sexual assault. You can't be seen as an aggressor. You have to be seen as a truth seeker. It's a very fine line in that. She is being aggressive. I mean, she's absolutely being aggressive. And there have been, like I said, there, there have been multiple things. Like, like it, this is right now, you know, I feel like it's like this. Right now, we've seen everybody loading up, bringing their... Uh, bringing their team forward, you know, they're like, yeah, let's, let's, let's enter this, <laughs> let's get it done. And there's old Amber in the middle. She's like, yeah, yeah, I bring my, wait a minute. You mean we didn't, we're not supposed to wear our big shoes? <laughs> How do you think the jury will feel about the fact that Amber is being combative toward a good portion of the cross-examination while Johnny didn't, uh, was it during this portion of his questioning? If it comes across as, as petty, then they'll take that into account. You know, you got to remember, like, what they're hearing is the story about sexual assault. And you would be mad if you were questioned. The way that she's doing it, though, is not, it's, it's a different kind of, it's snide. It's not a, how dare you ask me these questions, you monster. It's a, I'm better than you. I'm totally better than you. <laughs> That's my best valley girl. Like, totally. <laughs> Eduardo thinks the vibe about the movie lines, which would be great to uh, watch someone bring that up. Oh, God, I'd like to see every movie line at the end, right? And I think for the two, her story keeps changing. It won't stick. That's true. She just changed it on the stand just now. <laughs> Radar CP, thanks for the five. Miss Always Innocent Fancy Pants. Doesn't look very happy. Buzz, buzz, Amber. I think you're getting stung. Nice. B earring she was wearing. Yep. Like I said, get your, get your shirt on if you want. <laughs> Matt Raymar, thanks for five. Is it too late to use the ballet video? Supposedly after her feet were cut? Nah, they can just keep circling back. Like you want to, you can keep hammering her and hammering her however you want to. They can circle back. Like when they, they want to keep taking apart her her stories. They want to keep questioning the uh, the reality of what she said. So it's perfect, like I said, to circle back over and over again. You just got to be clear in what you're doing. Casey, thanks for the five. Watching this at work, getting the work done. <laughs> Not even concerned because this is awesome. If I ever need to call out someone on their bull, I'm gonna I'm gonna channel say hey, uh, yes, I'll channel Camille there. Yes, you are right. You are very right. Uh, is where thanks for the five shout out uh i'm sorry shout out to turds pr team who's clearly watching the stream too seeing her get destroyed indeed god it's got to be painful right ah thanks all right hey oh my god i'm sorry Whew. as anytime i see a my mind goes to h that was terrible though let me let me like no bad <laughs> Bad that umbrella. Bad that umbrella. How dare you say somebody is an A-H. <laughs> oh, I need my booing sounds for that one. Come on. <laughs> exactly. Bad umbrella. All right. <laughs> uh, 
Ike GB packing when the taking the first photograph, then uh, red lipstick covered in audio. She screamed, I don't want to go. I don't want to pack. I know. Like it, it all conflicts, doesn't it? Paul, thanks for the five. I've been doing all my best Dale Gribble memes <laughs> ready for today's cross. <laughs> That's funny. Dale Gribble. Crystal, thanks for the super chat and the upside down face. Appreciate that too. God, she's a she's such a nut though. Rusty Shackleford, exactly. I'm gonna hire Rusty Shackleford for my defense. I feel like she ah, here you want to know my favorite part of this, actually. It was it had to do with the uh with the phones. So the phone incident where Johnny Depp supposedly chops off his finger, right? You have this phone presented here. Now, what they're trying to tell me is there are two phones, not one, but two phones in this little bar area. She was saying that if we remember, this is like a like an inverted L, like an L that has been uh, flipped up and over. OK, so just think about it as an L shape, like we're walking around the corner of the L right here. She's saying on the other side of the L, there is a phone there. So you have two phones in that that area here. Uh, give me a second. Now I heard somebody bang around with the audio, but apparently they haven't gone live again. But she's saying that. Let me see. No, she's saying that. Yeah. And on top of that, this was probably my favorite part. They brought out the knife that she brought Johnny Depp. I thought that was amazing. They're like, so you bought this gigantic knife for him while he's beating you. And she was like, I wasn't afraid of him stabbing me then. Like, what? Wait a minute. But she said he was hurting and trying to kill you. I don't understand. G Pet, thanks for the tip. My husband got punched. Oh. They're talking for the jury. All right, let's get them back. Let's bring up everything. Give me one minute here. Where are you? All right. So anyway, we'll see that jury come back. It's going to be fun times. I mean, this is brutal. This has been a brutal watch. It's been a lot of joy, though. Thank you. You'll be seated. All right. Your next question. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Hurd, you've testified repeatedly that you were concerned about Mr. Depp's substance use during your relationship, right? Yes, that's correct. And, but you weren't concerned enough to stop using drugs and alcohol yourself, were you? I did not use drugs when I was with Johnny, like in his presence, aside from the times I testified about with you. So you weren't concerned enough to stop using drugs and alcohol the times you've testified to in front of the jury, right? As I testified to earlier, I took drugs um, in Johnny's presence on those two occasions um, early in our relationship in 2013. So you never changed your own behavior to support Mr. Depp and his sobriety, did you? I did a lot of changing to support his sobriety. I tried everything that I could possibly think of. But you drank wine around Mr. Depp on a regular basis, correct? I did drink wine. And you took Mr. Depp to Hicksville to do, quote, laffy drugs like mushrooms, end quote, right? That's correct. And you testified that despite what supposedly happened in Hicksville, you decided to take MDMA with Mr. Depp on a plane to Russia in June of 2013, correct? As I mentioned, those are the two occasions. You testified that this was the last time you would make that mistake, right? That is correct. And when asked if you would ask Mr. Depp to get you MDMA in Australia, you said that was, quote, ridiculous, right? That is correct. Because you had learned your lesson the hard way on the plane to Russia. Russia, yes, that's correct. Uh, yours and Mr. Depp's wedding in the Bahamas was in February of 2015, right? That is correct. So that would have been after the Russia flight. Yes, when I did um, 
when we had mushrooms on the island for my hen party, my wet bridal party before. We were not with Johnny. I was not with Johnny at the time. It was your wedding with Mr. Depp on the island, right? To be clear, we were both on the same island. We just weren't around each other that evening. We had kind of separate parties, a bridal party and a groom's party. And, and your wedding was a month before Australia, correct? That is correct. And you arranged to have drugs at your wedding, correct? Uh, like I said, we had mushrooms um, for my bridal party beforehand. On the island for your wedding? Before the wedding. On the island? On the island, yes. Okay. Can we please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 1262? This is an email you sent on February 1st, 2015, correct? That is correct. Uh, yes, that's correct. I'm going to move to admit and publish Plaintiff's Exhibit 1262. Any objection? Sure. Your Honor, if we could please have Ms. Hurd's email published to the jury. All right, 1262 in evidence. This is a schedule for your wedding weekend, right, Ms. Hurd? No, it's not. It's a proposed draft of a schedule. It ended up being quite different. Do you that. see where it says 7 p.m. rehearsal dinner? Yes, I see that. And the next item on the list says, quote, after dance party and drugs and music, end quote, right? That is correct. So you plan to have drugs at your wedding to someone you characterize as a drug addict? To be fair, we were gonna have separate parties as I mentioned. So a bridal party before this, the schedule ended up changing quite a bit. And this is a draft clearly that was sent before there were a lot of changes made. The bridal so party- So your original the idea, Ms. Hurd, Ms. Hurd. Your original idea was to have a rehearsal dinner with your husband, the drug addict, the monster, um, and then do drugs with your girlfriends on the island after your rehearsal dinner? I realize that's what the email suggests, but that wasn't no, a plan. No, it's not what it suggests, Ms. Hurd. It's what you said in that email. Right, but what I'm trying to say is that the schedule ended up changing. We ended up doing the little... So your original idea it, was to do drugs... Before. Yeah, your idea, original idea was to do drugs on an island after your rehearsal dinner to the drug-fueled monster that you were about to marry, right? The, the, as the email suggests, there, were going, there was going to be weed on the island. This does not reference the cuddle puddle that I just referenced to you. You like to do drugs on special occasions, right, Ms. Hurd? I have before. And, and you did drugs again for your 30th birthday, right? That is correct. That was a huge mistake. The 30th birthday dinner was on April 21st, 2016. 
Yes, it was the day before my birthday, correct. You testified that Mr. Depp was running late to the celebration, correct? That is correct. You asked Mr. Depp to bring you alcohol when he arrived, is that right? So the utility closet where we kept the wine was right by the elevators. And I also told him he could bring in a joint. I wouldn't bite his head off if he did. So that's a yes? That's correct. I, I told him I wouldn't be angry. Let's look at plaintiff's exhibit 1263. Your Honor, I'm going to ask to show, first of all, this one hasn't been produced. This is not, it's a brand new trial exhibit, so I don't have it. I'd like an unredacted copy, and then I'd like an unredacted copy to be shown to the witness. Sorry, do you have an unredacted copy? We can, we can make one, Your Honor. Okay. Your Honor, may we approach about all this? Right. That's funny. I muted myself. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> no, you know, the narrative. I, I actually like the uh, the narrative about uh, about the marriage, because if you really start thinking about the fact that she's marrying someone that she says is a monster that turns into this terrible thing anytime he ingests substances and she's giving him copious amounts of drugs. Well, <laughs> you tell me, does that make sense? It's, it's just, it's nothing stands up to scrutiny. That is the problem. Again, when you, you listen, you can't just openly believe because look what happened. It took, uh, when, when her op-ed came out on the 18th, Disney announced two days later that they dropped him from Pirate 6. As we've heard in this trial, he was going to get $22.5 million for pirates. And I can confirm. I know there are a lot of sources out there saying, hey, he, uh, he's coming back. I can confirm. I have, a, I have some very good sources. I can confirm that Disney has not spoken to the man at all. They haven't spoken to him since the beginning. They are not in talks right now. Now, um, what's his face? Uh, Bruckheimer. He's always been in the, the Depp camp. But he's a Disney employee, but he's always talked about wanting him back, always thought he would be good for it. But there is no negotiation going on. Like, I always hate those fake rumors because they, they're they not just fake hope. That's ugly enough. They, they tell you to support a company that, why should you? They, they have agendas outside of, uh, outside of anything. I, I just... I just don't support them, period. I don't say boycott pirates. I say boycott these companies because you don't need them, you know? And I, I try not to, I try to verify that, but that is an absolute fake rumor that has been going around. It's not true at all. I'm going to show the unredacted messages to um, counsel for Ms. Heard on the laptop because I don't have a hard copy. Okay. Yeah, could, could we, we, let's pause for a minute. What's that? Yeah, we'll pause. <laughs> Every time I think they're back. Every time. It's like, no, no, no. Sorry about your luck. <laughs> I go to mute out and, uh, and then it goes back to something else. Elaine is, she's trying to slow down the, uh, the assault and that's what it is. This is an assault. She's trying her best to slow this down and she hasn't really been able to yet. 
She hasn't been able to stop that yet. Wow, people must have liked the, I believe, six of those uh, is old. If you didn't see her, our new shirt, it's tagged in the top. Oh, my God, it's funny. I love it. So, Ms. Heard, I'm only going to... Your Honor, I'm going to object to asking questions while I'm looking at this. No, if you could give her a moment, please. Sure, thank you. <laughs> I'm going to uh, object to you speaking at all, Miss um, Cat Lady. You could tell the judge at the beginning of this, she looked like absolutely disturbed by her. Like, why are you speaking to me? <laughs> Please stop. I don't blame her either. I think she would annoy me a lot. But it was funny. It just it looked funny the, the way the, the judge was talking to her this morning. The judge kept looking down at at, at, at the desk in front of her and then she would look up and she would catch herself and she'd start moving her uh, her eyes like yeah 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 and she'd she, she'd force herself to move her um, her eyebrows and stuff you know like when you're you're intently listening it was really funny to see okay thank you all right thank you So it's any objection 1263 as redacted? No, no, Your Honor. All right, 1263 in evidence. So, thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Heard, directing your attention to the plaintiff exhibit 1263. This is a text message that you sent to Mr. Depp, correct? That is correct. And, and you sent this message to Mr. Depp the day you had your 30th birthday dinner, right? That is correct. And you write, quote, hey, baby, bring up something to drink and or a joint. I'm in if you are. See you in a minute question mark xx did i read that right that is correct and then the next day you went to coachella and consumed mdma and mushrooms right miss heard i did johnny was not there for that okay. let's talk a little bit more about your 30th birthday you testified about this incident multiple times haven't you that is correct but yesterday you told this jury that you were not called upon to provide a detailed accounting of all physical and sexual abuse by Mr. Depp until February, 2020. Is that correct? I testified that I had not been able to do so until February, 2020 in uh, uh, outside of the context of a cold deposition. Actually, I, I misspoke. February, 2022, this year. Right, sorry, I, I did the same thing you did. Okay. And you did, oh. some, you did that in something the same. interrogatory. Is that correct? The interrogatory response was the first time that I could do that outside of the context of being asked certain questions in the deposition. And, and you testified about your 30th birthday in this interrogatory, correct? I believe so, yes, yes. Nonetheless, you testified to a new detail about your 30th birthday for the first time in this courtroom, didn't you? Uh, no, that's incorrect. A sexual assault, no less. I had just not placed when that happened. I was never, I was never sure if that was the same time that he did that on the night of my birthday. And I maintained that as well in my deposition. You told this jury that the evening of your 30th birthday dinner, Mr. Depp quote, grabbed you by the pubic bone, pubic area, end quote, end quote, pushed you down, right? That is correct. This detail isn't in your interrogatory response, is it Ms. Heard? That detail is in my interrogatory response, yes. Let's pull up your interrogatory response. If we could please bring up um, Ms. Greta Hoff. May I approach, Your Honor? Yes, ma'am. All right. So they're going to ask her about, hey, you know those, uh, you know those details that you gave before? Yeah. You never added that. Again, she just keeps adding new tales. You know? Because why not? And she needs to be called on it. And that's what they're doing. Good. We can go to your interrogatory responses at page 57. These are signed under the penalty of perjury, correct? That is correct. And you testified again to this jury that this was the first time you were given an opportunity to write down everything and include all your evidence, right? That is correct. Okay. So let's go to page 57.
At the top of page 57, Johnny and I were not in a good place. I begged him to make my birthday dinner. Do you see that? That is correct. Okay, so starting on page 57, you start describing your birthday dinner, correct? That is correct. On page 59 of your interrogatory response, you write, fourth paragraph down, Johnny grabbed me while holding me down and I remember him asking me if I thought I was so tough. He asked me three, four times up close to my face. You're so tough. Are you such a tough guy, huh? You think you're so tough. What are you gonna do now? I stood up at some point after getting off the ground. You see that? That is correct. And then you write after. I remember crying. I remember feeling exhausted and frustrated. And it hit me, meaning the realization of how sad it was that I was going to wake up tomorrow on my birthday without him. That's correct. Where in this interrogatory response, Ms. Hurd, you describe Mr. Depp, quote, grabbing you by the pubic bone, pubic area, and pushing you down. On page 64. Where? Page 64, uh, one, two, three paragraphs down. Johnny grabbed me once, did this taunting thing on the side of the bed in penthouse three. He grabbed my vagina and held me there, asked me if I was so tough. You're not describing what happened after your 30th birthday? I am, I just had not prescribed it to that date with the limited evidence I had at the time, only in the course of looking at the evidence, preparing for this case, have I put those two pieces together. Oh, so she recovered memory again. What happened. Another recovered memory. She found somewhere she could link it into the... Uh... You were upset that Mr. Depp was late to your 30th birthday, weren't you? I was. You knew Mr. Depp had a scheduled business meeting or a money meeting that evening, right? No, I knew he said he did. I didn't know if he had one. Addicts lie all the time. So you didn't trust him? I took it with a big grain of addict salt. And Mr. Depp texted you that evening to let you know he'd be late, correct? Yes, he did text me at some point. It was a big deal to you that Mr. Depp was late to your birthday dinner, wasn't it? Yeah, it, yeah, it did matter to me. And you were upset he was late. I was, I was hurt. And when he finally did arrive, you felt quote, invisible to him, right? I did. The day after your birthday dinner, you and your friends went to Coachella to celebrate your birthday. Is that correct? That is correct. You made a video driving to Coachella with your friends, didn't you? That is correct. I'd like to pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 1264. And for the record, Your Honor, this only has um, music without any words on it. And again, it's a new one, so I'd like a copy of it. Let it's going it. to be played. There, There is no sound other than a Maybe song. A yes, sir. God, their volumes. <laughs> I was using something else to try to increase the volume even more. Like I've got it at magnified 600% and it still feels low to me. <laughs> I swear. I mean, it's okay. It's, it's good. But I wish the, uh, you know, all courthouses are apparently like this too. It's interesting. She took a story though. She said he grabs her by a certain region. Oh, well, now... Hey, let me just add it to this story. I couldn't remember what what story it was attached to. Like, you don't remember something like that, really? Like, when it happens? You remember the, the look of musty carpet, but you don't remember when that happens. Any objection? Any objection? No, you're on. All right. Okay. 12, 16, we could please publish this to the jury evidence yes, with a sound.
Mm. This is a video you made when you drove to Coachella with your friends for your 30th birthday, right? That's correct. I'm not quite sure which one of us made the video, but that's correct. You're featured in that video, driving. That's correct. And it's set to the song Miss You by the Rolling Stones. Is that right? That's correct. And that was a message for Mr. Depp, wasn't it? No, that's ridiculous. You consumed drugs at Coachella, didn't you? Yes, I did. And you took MDMA and mushrooms at the same time? I, I did, yes. And it made you feel sick, right? I felt horrible, yes. So you left Coachella? Yes, that's correct. You testified yesterday that, yesterday that when you left Coachella, you left with, quote, your entire group. That is correct. And you were, quote, never alone with Starling, right? That is correct. You weren't anywhere near him? Not alone, no. You sat here when Starling Jenkins testified that he collected you from Coachella when you were sick, right? He picked up my entire group. And Mr. Jenkins testified, quote, I collected her, got her in the vehicle. She didn't want anyone else to know that she was sick. Take her back to the Parker, which I assume was in reference to the hotel, alone. I took her to 7-Eleven where I retrieved hydrating fluids, Advil, and let her have those. Got her back up to the Parker, got her in the suite, and then went back to pick up everyone else. You were there when Mr. Jenkins testified, right? Yes, he was wrong. So it's your testimony that Mr. Jenkins is lying. He's just wrong. I don't know what his intentions are. He was just wrong about that. We were a big group of us. I wasn't alone with him. Isn't it possible that you don't remember correctly because you were sick from taking MDMA and mushrooms at the no. same time? Uh, I remember everything about that night. Okay. I'd like to play for you plaintiff's exhibit 1229, which is already in evidence, at 1720 through 2128. Can hear it. I don't want a divorce. I never wanted a fucking divorce. I never wanted a divorce. I didn't want you to fucking go to Coachella without fucking talking to me. Because I left you because you, you were fucking... You fucking hangmakered me, man. You came around the bed to fucking start punching on me. Why? That's what really happened the evening of your 30th birthday, isn't it, Miss Heard? No, Ms. that's incorrect. Mr. Depp was in bed, and then you came around the bed and started punching him. That's incorrect. You don't deny that in the recording, do you, Miss Heard? I'm not having that conversation with Johnny. I'm not denying anything. I'm not saying anything. I'm not having that conversation with Johnny. I was trying to get out of that hotel room. Uh, that was a mediation attempt. That was the recording you just heard. It was us meeting in a hotel. But you're talking about your 30th birthday. No, we're not. And you're not talking about going to Coachella and... Johnny's talking about that. I am not arguing with him about any of that. Right. You don't deny anything, do you? I'm not talking to him about that. I'm going to... Um publish exhibit or ask that the witness be shown exhibit 1265. This is you and your friends at Coachella, correct? That is correct. I'm going to move to admit plaintiffs 1265 and publish it. No objection. All right. 1265 in evidence. You can publish it. 
That's no injuries to you. Are there, Ms. Heard, visible in this picture? You cannot see any visible injury, no. Thank you, Tom. Ms. Heard, you remember during Mr. Depp's examination, a number of recordings were played, correct? That's correct. And in one of those recordings, you told Mr. Depp, quote, I hope to God Jack's stepfather teaches him more about being a man than your fucking, your fucking left nut, end quote. Do you remember that? I do not remember what exactly I could hear of that recording. I remember I heard, heard myself make a mention of uh, Jack's new stepfather or potential stepfather, I can't recall. Jack is Mr. Depp's son, right? That is correct. And I believe that the, I was referencing a marriage that his ex-partner was going to have or getting into, I suppose. You were referencing that uh, Jack's new stepfather would teach him how to be a man because Mr. Depp couldn't. I right? don't recall exactly what I said, but it was something to that effect. Let's listen to some of what happened before you said that uh, to Mr. Depp. Um, if we could please play Plaintiff's Exhibit 397, which is already in evidence. And for the record, it's at 3504 through 3547. And then the next clip is 3635 through 4308. Everything's fine so it doesn't go your way. I mean, when it doesn't go Doc, your way, I'm in trouble. Yeah. I, mean, you know I don't need you. I don't want your kind of woman. 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 I might have. So my you. Mistake. I wish I had fucking had. Oh, yeah. I wish I fucking had. I wish I fucking hadn't bought into any of your fucking lies, your bullshit, your sober fucking presence, your fucking goodness, your sweetness, all the lies. I wish yeah. I hadn't bought into the months of you being you. I wish I hadn't bought I into I promises. Bought I wish I hadn't fucking thought I could have a gift with bought. you. You're a fucking kid yourself. I wish I hadn't bought into any of the lies you sold. Talk about. Fake bill of goods. Let's You're the biggest baby fucking. With fucking producer You're the biggest shit. fucking seller of fake fucking bill of goods. Let's Talk about something. presenting yourself as something. I did myself God. as a fake Suck seller my of goods. Suck my I dick. fucking you uh, you you left nothing and I've left suck everything. So suck, suck your dick. Yeah, go on. Which is probably your next suck. move because it's what you fucking move. <laughs> Classy. Oh. I don't know to do with your fucking oh, what section. Do you need something. We'll go get it, man. Because I need something from you. Go on. Huh? Fucking fuck you. No shit, I do. Suck your dick. I don't want to. Try it. It's going to be all you can get. No, it's not really true, Amber. Actually, it kind of is. It kind of is? What do you sound like? You know what's going on? Yeah, it does. Oh, is it? What is it? No, I'm sure yeah. Rochelle's available. Uh, Call her up. I'm sure know. she's available. <laughs> Maybe she is. But... I'm sure she is. We'll see. I'm sure she is. I'll let you know. Oh, I'm sure she is. I'm sure her for her yoga vlog. <laughs> that fake laugh. That fake oh, laugh is she... too much to take. No, I'm sure she's. I think uh, it's so, so disgusting. I'm sure she's great. I'm sure she's great. <laughs> I'm thinking that you can give me some no. of the best performances. No, no, you're right. I don't. It's all about performance. It's about performance. <laughs> How oh, am I? I don't regret. I don't regret. Oh, what else? What else do you do? Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. What else? What else other things do you want to add to your to fucking so life? He says, you're what? Oh, no, I want to know. I want to know. Get out of your Uber's I'm kind of waiting. Go get it. 
Yeah. Wait, is there no other place for you to run in your 15 other houses? We have to go run. Come on, go be a real married man who deals with your shit the way that a man does. Go run to the next house. Oh, Every no, man no. does. Yeah. Go. Don't run do. away. I know it's hard your to look at yourself. You're fucking ridiculous clown. It's hard. Panicked fucking clown. It's hard. It's hard. You're screwing everybody it's else over. Thing. You're, you're right. Fucking, I tried. That's what I do. You're the most spoiled <laughs> fucking brat. Yeah. And you've got everybody out here almost oh, full, but it don't right. last you're long. Right. I've been sorry. here a lot longer you're than right. you. You've got to figure it out. You don't you have to figure out what you have to <laughs> offer as opposed to going out and getting your kicked out. You're right. That's what I do. Well, yeah. Okay. Let me do it. You're right. You're Excellent right. Chair. Back to that. Well, I wonder what we else. <laughs> I wonder what else we can reach for in the last six minutes. <laughs> oh no, it was four years ago. You're right. Yeah, I'm sure there's other things we can. <laughs> so loud. No, I'm not laughing. Or, uh, no, matter of fact, I'm laughing. not laughing. I'm not. It's oh. so serious. I'm sure you can find other things. Oh. <laughs> no, I know. And stripping. Yeah. Well, there's always no. that. You can write. Right. You can write a book. You can write a book. I know. You can write a book. Oh, is this gonna be good for your book? Oh, should I have you sign an NDA for your book? You don't your book. No, no. Is this gonna be good for your book? You is this gonna be good for your book? Hey. I'll write hey. I'll write I have a good one. idea. I'll, I'll be one. somewhere of your journal. You don't want to sell out or anything. Let's sell you journal. Oh, wait. Hey. Hey, you know, no, yeah, you're not what? No, 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 you're not selling you don't out. Sell out no, magic, no. You don't yeah, sell out. no one does oh, ju- 21 man. drug street when they're in their 20s. No, you're right. That's not selling out. No. When you're in your 20s, you should really know what you want. Like I selling your journal. I know. <laughs> if, you didn't, if you didn't know who the fuck I was. You're right. You can sell your journal to a real young guy. <laughs> Or, oh, I'm sorry, 50, 56, 2, 51. I don't know. It doesn't matter at this point. I don't think so. I don't really think so. But you're right. I mean, hey, at least I didn't do like a TV show where I'm part black in my 20s. God, that would be like embarrassing. Wow. If only I was with someone in their 50s that could point that out to me. Imagine not if you're right. You're going to play a non sexualized object. Okay. Yeah. Wow, you're right. You got me. You got it all figured out. I don't even know what movies I've done. If only you you haven't like, even taken an interest. If only I could you be know, like. But I had to if watch only your I fucking, could be like. I had to watch your <laughs> fucking wreck and you trying to like. You are a joke. You are a joke. You are a joke. You are a joke. Yeah, I'm the joke in the industry, Amber. <laughs> I'm the joke. I'm the joke in the industry. <laughs> The reruns of all my bullshit are playing too loud for me to hear you. I'm gonna just go and pedal my way back. Sorry. I can't hear you. Oh, she's gross, boo. Aquaman. Oh, <laughs> 21 is whatever it was. I was I like, who you were. I was 20. No one cares. <laughs> Aquaman. Wash that piece of shit. Wash that piece of shit. Uh, your jealousy is so tragic. Your jealousy is so tragic. Fucking like thinking that I'm going on a road with a band. I can't hear you. You told Mr. Dip to, D- Dap to suck your dick multiple times, didn't you? Yes, I did. You tell him to go run to his 15 other houses, right? That's correct. Because that's what he would do when you behave like this, isn't it? Eventually he would go and stay in one of the other houses. You call him a sellout, don't you? I was expressing frustration uh, about his criticism of my career and how many problems that caused within the dynamic of our relationship. Yes. So you call him a sellout and a joke? I called him horrible, ugly things, as you can hear. Sellout. We spoke to each other in a really horrible way. Pretty sure we just heard you speak to him in a really horrible way. You called him a sellout. I just disagree. Right, Heard. Um, you called I, him a sellout, right, Miss Heard? I called him a lot of ugly things. And a joke. I called him a lot of ugly things. You called him a joke on that recording. 
You called him a washed up piece of shit. I think we both called each other that on that uh, occasion, yes. Mr. Depp mentions Aquaman, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Mr. Depp got you that role in Aquaman, didn't he? Excuse me? Mr. Depp got you that role in Aquaman, didn't he? No, Miss Vasquez, I got myself that role by auditioning. <laughs> oh, that's Mr. How Depp that works. says, quote, your jealousy is so tragic. I heard him say that, yes. You were the jealous one in this relationship, weren't you, Miss Heard? I think he was indicating I was jealous of his career. But now you've twisted it to say it was Mr. Depp that's the jealous one. Johnny's always been very jealous when I worked, when I did anything, friends. Yes, he's always been very jealous. Mr. Heard, I'm going to ask you to take a look at Plaintiff's Exhibit 120E. This is a series of text messages uh, between you and Mr. Depp. That is correct. Um, I'm going to move to admit and publish these text messages. Um, Mr. Depp's messages have been redacted. All right, any objection? No, Your Honor. All right, 120E in evidence, you can publish. Starts with a text message from you to Mr. Depp on September 26, 2015, right? That is correct. And you write, monster is back. This is him. Did I read that right? That is correct. And then in the next message, you write, quote, ran away, first sign of trouble. This is not the man you promised you would be. Did I read that correctly? That is correct. Then in the next one down, you write, promise, swore to me you would be. That right? is correct. The non-monster. Ms. Heard, you're talking about Mr. Depp running away from you at the first sign of trouble, aren't you? No, I'm, um, I'm recognizing the clues at this point when he would run away at the first sign of trouble. Often that was a clue for me to know that he was back using again and that we were about to enter the next phase of the cycle. And you describe his running away from you as the monster, right? That wasn't what was a monster. The monster was the man who beat me up. The running away was just a, attached to that. It was a sign, a signal to me as a clue, as somebody trying to put together clues um, that we were entering into, into that phase. In these messages, Ms. Heard, exactly. monster isn't Mr. Depp doing drugs, is it? It was always um, the man who did drugs and beat me up. Yes, that's always been the monster. But that's not what you're saying in these messages. That is exactly what I'm saying in the messages. You don't describe Mr. Depp being violent, do you? I do not describe that in this text message, no. So it's a cowardly monster this time? No. Okay. And going down the page, you write a long series of text messages to Mr. Depp that don't get a response. Is that correct? That is correct. You write, come groan, face the shit, and we can do anything. You go on a little later to say, please come home. Let's apologize to each together. And continuing on page 77, you write, not go to bed mad. And then you say, sound okay? Sound like the priority in the long run? Come home. Don't be the monster. Be the man, please. Please call me, please. Continuing on page 78. You write, I don't want the monster. I need my man. I need to talk to you. Please, Johnny, don't force me to be something else to you. This is taking me for granted and I can never stop before this turns into something far darker describing yourself in that text message, right? The exact opposite. I'm trying to interrupt him starting a new cycle where he starts using again. He's I'm not trying responding to you, to... Ms. Heard. Yeah, that's why I'm trying yeah. to desperately stop him. Please answer the phone, you say. Doesn't this mean anything to you? And it goes on. And I won't read all these messages, but you're saying, please answer over and over again, right? It was very important to me. I was running out of time and I was trying desperately to stop him. He wasn't with you, Miss Heard. Exactly, which is how I knew it was about to get a lot worse. 
he would leave, use, and come back way worse, with way less reality, with more delusions. He'd be more drunk. He'd I'm be gonna more move to strike everything plans. after. I was trying to stop the that. answer to her question. Yeah. Your Honor, she was responding. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll overrule the objection. That's fine. Thank you, Your Honor. This is a situation where you were trying to get Mr. Depp to pay attention to you. Isn't that right? No, I was trying to stop him from using. And because he ran away from you at the first sign of trouble, you call him a monster. I right? was trying to stop him from turning into the monster. The drugs are the, are the key that opened the door. Who was the real monster in this relationship, Ms. Hurd? Lives in Johnny, half of Johnny. It's not all of Johnny. The other half of him is wonderful and beautiful and the man I love. I'd like you to take a look at Plaintiff's Exhibit 120F. There's another set of text messages between you and Mr. Depp. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. I'm going to move to admit and publish. Any objection? No, you're on. All right, 120F in evidence. You can publish. This is a set of text messages, and it's from October 2015. Do you see that? Yes, I do. In fact, you sent all of these messages to Mr. Depp on October 22nd, 2015. Isn't that right? Exactly. The same thing was happening here. And again, I'm not going to read them all, but you start off again by trying to get Mr. Depp's attention, right? You write, please come home. I was trying to stop another bender. You write, please come home, right? That is correct. Please answer. Don't break us up. Please answer. Please. And continuing on page 97, you write, give me some peace of your heart. Please, no fight, I promise. Please. No fights. Please just pick up. Please give me two minutes. I'm dying. Please. And continuing on page 98, you write, please come home. Please come home, Baba. I am so sorry. Actually, you didn't say Baba, you said baby. Apologies. And it goes on. Did I read those correctly? That is correct. That was another time I'm trying to stop another twist off. This is what would happen when Mr. Depp would try to take some space from you, right? No, this is what would happen when Johnny had moved into the next phase of the cycle, decided to use, no, and uh, our Ms. lives Heard, were getting a lot worse at that Ms. point. Ms. Heard, I'm talking about your actions. This is what you would do to Mr. Depp when he would leave you. You would harangue I would, him. I would try is that to, correct? You would, would harangue try, him. Your Honor, at least let her answer the question. I'm just interrupting. That's fine. Go ahead and answer the question. Uh, I do not think uh, I would characterize my behavior that way. I was trying to stop him from using. You were texting him incessantly. Isn't that correct, Ms. Hurd? It was imperative for my life. Ms. Hurd, it was very important to me. My question is me. much more simple. You were texting him incessantly. I would yes try or no. everything to Ms. get Heard? a hold of him and so to stop yes. the cycle. That's a yes, right? I would try everything to stop the cycle. It was that important to me. And he's the monster for not responding to you. That's not what made him the monster. For no. needing space from you. The monster was not the guy who needed space. The not monster was who drugs. he was when he came back. Not for doing drugs, Ms. Heard. Not for being violent. Just for needing space. That's when you called Mr. Depp the monster. Incorrect. Let's listen to Defendant's Exhibit 598C, which is already in evidence. And let's not do this anymore because I'm really getting frustrated. And I'm really, really, really sick of this Please argument. Stop. I'm sorry. Okay, so let me go and you go and I'll speak to you in a couple hours. Okay? Okay? Stop. Okay. Why are you saying stop? Because May I so, go? Please, it causes me so much stress when you leave, when you walk away from me with that. It's like you're, you don't understand how much worse you're making this. I can't believe it. Please, you're making it worse for me. Okay, I'm sorry for you. Please, I'm only trying to tell you to let you know you're causing me immense stress right now when you walk away like that. There's no reason to be mad. Well, I'm then say goodbye. I haven't walked away. You're not saying goodbye. You won't let me fucking leave. Let me leave. Stop rushing me. Stop pushing me in the corner and then poking me with a stick and then saying, why are you saying the words you want me to say? Stop poking me. Stop rushing me. Stop throwing me against the wall. I'm going, what? You don't like that wall? You don't like the fucking wall? Stop pushing.
pushing me. Remember? I'm not pushing you. I'm rushing you. I said, I need space. I don't want this conversation anymore right now. I need space. And I will take my space, whether you like it or not. I will take it. And you will take your space. But if you keep halting I'm not doing this and continuing I'm not the rhetoric, continuing it. I'm begging you to stop. I don't. Okay, stop. I'm just. I'm stop. Stop. Now I have to go. Okay? So we will speak to each other in a couple of hours. Okay? I hope you have a, some kind of revelation that makes you feel better. You know? I hope I do too. But uh, we'll just see when I get home. We'll just talk or we won't talk or we, you know, we'll finish this or we won't finish it. But this is not love. Well, this is not happiness. You this stop. is not. This Please is... stop doing this. Please, you're causing so much fucking stress. I'm going to die. This eight, I'm going to fucking die. You're causing me so much stress. Please stop. Please. I'm. I feel like I have a heart attack almost every day. Please stop. Please and, and stop doing, doing why, it. Please stop. He's so fucking mean. Why are you fucking with me? Bully. Stop. Please stop. I've been begging you not to fight. I just said, can we please have a normal argument? Just even a normal conversation. Fucking like normal argument. And for the last hour, I've been begging you to please just leave it at that. Let's just go on with our night. I would have been able to come in with you. We would have been able to let it go in a few minutes. It would have been fine. It would just if we allowed ourselves to have fucking normal arguments. Please, you're killing me with this. You're killing me. You're killing me. Fucking killing me. You're killing me. Fuck. Sean, could you, uh, please, I want you to just go, I want you to take your medicine or whatever. I'm sorry that I've upset you. Yeah, I think, thank you, Sean. I'm ready to go. Thank you so much. I'm really sorry. I'm really ready. Thank you. That's you and Mr. Depp in the recording, correct, Mr. Depp? Healing me. You just won't let him go, will you? That's not true. We were outside of his studio and he wanted to go and use. It was a pretext. The, oh, God. The, the claim that he was upset with me was a pretext so that he would go and go on a bender. I knew that pattern by the time this recording happened. Is your testimony now that you were outside Mr. Depp's studio? I believe that the was recording going to go was... Use? Excuse me? He was going to go use drugs? That's your testimony now? We were outside his studio, his man cave house, if you will, in the car, I believe, during that recording. And he was going to go inside and use. That was the pattern. And as you can hear from my voice, I'm very, very, very scared of entering into the next cycle under under what I had been conditioned to understand we were at at that point in our relationship. That's not true, is it, Ms. Heard? Mr. Depp was trying to go inside his house to see his daughter, Lily Rose. She might have been over that day, but so that's not your what testimony he was getting now. out of the car to do, and that's not what I was stopping him from doing. Hmm. Let's play the beginning part of that recording where Mr. Depp tells you that he wants to go inside to see his daughter. Oh, caught in a big fat lie. And let's not do this anymore, because I'm really getting frustrated. And I'm really, really, really sick of this argument Stop. I'm sorry. okay so let me go and you go and i'll speak to you in a couple hours okay okay stop. okay why are you saying stop because may i so go we'll circle back to this but it's your testimony that you were outside mr depp's studio we were in the car you were in the car outside mm -hmm. of mr depp's studio that's correct and he wasn't telling you, please let me go inside my house to see my daughter. He was indicating to you that he wanted to go inside to do drugs. That's your testimony. I know my testimony is that I knew what he was going inside to go do. Okay. I knew what stage of the cycle we were in. I knew the patterns by then. And I was desperately out of time trying to interrupt that cycle. Let's go to May of 2016. Uh, yesterday, Ms. Heard, uh, Ms. Bredehoff, your attorney, showed you certain pictures um, 
from May 21, 2016. Do you remember that? Yes, I do. If we could please pull up defendant's exhibit 710, which has already been admitted in, into evidence. Ms. Hurd, you testified yesterday that this is a photograph taken of you on May 21st, 2016. Do you recall? Yes, that's correct. Keeping this exhibit up, if we could please do a split screen, Tom, and also pull up defendant's exhibit 714, which has already been admitted with redactions. Ms. Hurd, you testified yesterday that this is the photograph that was also taken on May 21st, 2016, correct? Yes, although the one to the right might have been taken the next uh, day. I can't be sure. The reason I say that is because there's light in the background. So it looks like it was taken in the daytime, which means maybe it was the next day. Didn't you testify that you uh, took different lighting pictures in different lightings on May 21? That is correct. Yes. And, and you're wearing two thin necklaces in this picture on the right. Is that correct? That is correct. And you testified that these pictures were taken the same night. The one on the right looks like it was taken in the daytime because I can see the daylight behind me. But you testify that they were taken the same day. Uh, I don't know if I, I think I testified that they came from the same incident of the same day, not necessarily taken on the same day. Let's please pull up defendant's exhibit 712, which has already been admitted. Uh, you testified yesterday, this is another photograph of you on the night of May 21. That's correct. And keeping this exhibit up, can we please do a split screen and also pull up defendant 713, which has already been admitted. Ooh. Ms. Heard, you testified yesterday, this is also a photograph of you from the same night, correct? That is correct. You testified yesterday that the only difference between these two photographs is that the light was turned on. That's what it appears to be, yes. The light is on on both of these pictures, though. Isn't that right? It looks to me like the one on the left has the vanity light, the makeup lights, you know, the more yellow hued ones that go around the mirror on. And then the one on the right looks like it doesn't have those. Isn't it true you just edited these photographs? No, I've never edited a photograph. Ooh. Did you just enhance the saturation for one of these photos to make your face look more red? Uh, no, that's incorrect. I didn't touch it. You were sitting here in this courtroom when Mr. Isaac Barouche testified to see you, seeing you the week after May 21, 2016, correct? I was here. Mr. Barouche testified that he saw you on May 22nd while you were changing the locks of your penthouse. Do you recall that testimony? I do. I just don't know if he was right about the date, but I do remember him saying that. Testified it was his birthday, the day after his birthday. I believe it was. Mr. Barouche testified that he saw you repeatedly in the days following also. Correct? That's correct. And Mr. Barouche testified that he saw no marks or injuries on your face. Correct? That is what he's testified to. You were also here in this court when Mr. Sean Bett testified to seeing you on the evening of May 21, 2016. Is that right? Um, you were here. That's correct. Mr. Bett also testified that he saw no marks or injuries on your face that evening. Correct? I realize that's what he said. You were sitting here in this courtroom when Officer Melissa Sines testified by deposition about being called to the Eastern Columbia building on May 21st, 2016, right? I saw her testimony, yes. And you heard Officer Signs testify that she did not see any injuries on you that night, correct? I heard her testify she did not consider this injured. No. Ms. Officer Signs testified that she met with you and she did not see any injuries on your face. Isn't that correct? She did not consider this injury. Ms. Heard. My question is a bit more nuanced. So is my answer. Ah, uh, she doesn't want to say what that what the truth is. She doesn't want to say. See, she wants to say, "Oh, well, she doesn't agree what she saw was an injury." See, that's the game that they've been playing. Nah, she didn't say that. She said, "I saw no injury," and they presented photographs, and they were like. Well, what about this? Do you consider this an injury? No, 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 no. Like I say, they're gaming words, you know, because they're desperate. You know, they don't have truth on their side. So semantics, semantics must be on your side. You know, semantics, I guess, fall somewhere into listen and believe too, right? Amazing. I mean, it is amazing. This is a, it's, it's become a game because again, they don't, what else do they have on their side? Like you've seen their evidence 
or their lack thereof. They have pitchers that that have uh, that have the saturation increased fully. So when you uh, when you look at them, yeah, boy, they uh, they truly they truly look clear now. They look pristine. They also don't look anything like the uh, last trial. See that side by side they showed you the pitchers on the right that were not sat, didn't have the saturation turned up. Those are the raw files. They were turned into UK twenty twenty just like that. But suddenly. The pictures have become clear, beautiful. And also, you know, with the shadows, the shadows are so deep that in certain portions, Amber Heard's missing parts of her neck. I mean, it's it's that deep because she oversaturates it. But hey, you know. Mom, can we put these down, please? I think they might be confusing the witness. My question is more nuanced. You sat in this courtroom while Officer Signs testified that she saw you the night of May 21, 2016, face to face and didn't see any injuries on your face. Isn't that correct, Ms. Hurd? I believe she was testifying about these photographs and she said that I was not injured in them. Is it your testimony under oath now that Officer Signs testified that she saw injuries on you when she saw you in person on May 21? Sorry, let me clarify. I was testifying that I know that that's what Officer Science said, that she didn't consider my red puffy face injured. That's what she said. The red puffy no. face. That was your counsel's question, correct? That was she her said, testimony in the UK. That's incorrect, and you know that, Ms. Heard. I disagree. She's, she's, she's gaming. For you that Officer Science didn't see injuries on you on May 21, 2016. Isn't it doesn't matter right? what's convenient for me. Right. Officer Tyler Haddon also testified by deposition about being called to the Eastern Columbia building on May 21, 2016. And he also testified no injuries on your face on May 21, 2016. Isn't that correct? They both said that they did not consider me injured. They did not see injuries on your face on May 21, 2016. Isn't that what their testimony was? What their testimony was is that they did not consider what my face looked like to be injury. They didn't consider what they walked on in the house damage, but it was. You were sitting here when Officer William Gatlin testified by deposition about being called on May 21 to the Eastern Columbia building, and he also did not observe any injuries on you, did he? And he that's what he testified to. He didn't even know which one I was. No, I think we all saw on video camera, you identify yourself, isn't that correct? I had to because of how far away he was. He didn't even know. He didn't even know who he was. But after you see. identified yourself, he looked at you. Isn't that correct? From a distance, yes. And he didn't see any visible injuries either, did he? I don't know what he saw. He testified that he didn't see any visible injuries. Did I he? would believe that he didn't. Yes. You were also in this courtroom when Alejandro Romero, who worked at the front desk at the Eastern Columbia Building, testified about seeing you on May twenty fifth, two thousand sixteen. Isn't that correct? That is correct. I think he said the 25th. Yeah. And Mr. Romero testified that he didn't see any swelling or bruises on your face when you were talking to him at the front desk. He wouldn't have. No, he wouldn't have, even though he had a habit, because his parents taught him correctly, to look into someone's eyes when speaking to them. Isn't that correct? I know that's what he testified to. Yes. You testified yesterday that you sought a temporary restraining order on May 27th, 2016, because you wanted to change your locks. Do you remember that testimony? Yes, I do. Those locks were to the penthouses at the Eastern Columbia building. Isn't that correct? That's correct. You changed the locks to the penthouses on May 22nd, 2016. I attempted to. That's why you felt comfortable having James Franco over the evening of May 22nd, 2016, Ms. Heard? I do not know when, I do not know when James came over. Okay, let's remind you. Can we please pull up Plaintiff Exhibit 304, which is already in evidence, and play from 254 through 
<laughs> looky, looky, Mr. Franco. Mm. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Yeah, if people haven't seen this before, this is the, the day after Johnny Depp supposedly did these horrible things. She was going to weaponize James Franco. She was going to use him like that. We'll talk about him on break. That's you and Mr. Franco on May 22nd, 2016, right, Ms. Hurd? That's correct. And you're taking him up to the penthouses, aren't you? That's where I live, yes. And it's past 11 p.m. at night, isn't that right? I'm not quite sure of the time it looked it looked like that. Why don't we pull that video back up? Twenty two fifty one. Almost midnight, right? That's uh, or excuse me, almost eleven o'clock at night. Exactly. You knew Mr. Depp was out of town the week of May 21, 2016, didn't you? I don't know what I knew of his schedule at the time. You knew Mr. Depp was out of town on May 27th when you went to get the domestic violence restraining order. Isn't that right? I don't know if I knew that at the time. You knew, you knew Mr. Depp was heading out on a European tour that week. Isn't that right? I'm not quite sure what I understood of his schedule at that time. You knew he wouldn't be back for weeks, right? No, that's incorrect. Let's uh, go back to that recording. Uh, defendants exhibit 598. Uh, you testified that you and Mr. Depp were in the car outside of his studio. Is that right? Yes. And you were trying to prevent him from going into his studio to do drugs, right? Uh, yeah, to effectively start another cycle. Right. Not that Mr. Depp was just trying to go into his house to see his daughter, right? His daughter might be one of the people that was in the house at that time, but that's neither here nor there. That Your testimony is now him from entering a cycle. Your testimony is now that Mr. Depp does drugs in front of his children. Well, first of all, I know he does. Um, second of all, it wouldn't have mattered. It wouldn't have stopped him from wow. his friends, which is the problem, not whether or not his daughter was there. Okay. Um, let's play, please, defendants 598 at 4948 through 5035. 5035. I'm not. I'm itching. I don't want to be doing this. I, I want it just to. Why don't either. you just say, okay, baby, I understand. I'll go home and you do your thing, hang out with your daughter, and then I'll see you in a couple hours and we'll talk about it. Is it that difficult to say that? Or you just fucking hate me and you want to be shitty about it? Please. Just fucking. It's not that difficult. Okay? I don't want to stand here in a driveway and argue with you. Okay, well, I'll see you in a little bit, okay? Please? Please. Just let me know if you're going to go somewhere. Just let me know, please, so I know. And almost an hour later, you're still arguing with Mr. Depp outside, right? I don't know how long that argument lasted, no. Ms. Hurd, you testified about seeking a domestic violence restraining order against Mr. Depp, correct? Yes, I have. And how you wanted to do it discreetly? That's correct. That you wanted as much privacy as you could have? Yes, that's correct. And how you walked out to a sea of paparazzi and cameras and photographers, right? That is correct. And how this overwhelmed you? It was overwhelming, yes. Because you didn't want this attention on you? That is correct. If we could please pull up Defendant's Exhibit 800, which has already been admitted into evidence. This is a photograph of you taken inside the courthouse when you obtained the DVRO, correct? That's correct. And your friend Raquel Pennington took this photograph? Yes, that's correct. Because you needed to document your time at the courthouse getting a DVRO? She just took a picture of me. I, I, I'm assuming it was um, in relation to my divorce, yeah. 
If we could please pull up defendants exhibit 801, which has already been admitted into evidence. Mm -hmm. Ms. Heard, this is another photograph of you taken inside the courthouse, isn't that right? That is correct. Were you having a photo shoot inside the courthouse while you were getting a DVRO? I would not characterize it that way, Ms. Vasquez. You have a mark on your face, right, Ms. Heard? Yes. You didn't use your bruise kit this time to cover it up? No, it was the only day I actually walked out of my house without makeup on. I had to be stopped. My best friend saw me in the bathroom starting to put makeup on and told me not to. Please pull up exhibit one. That's plaintiff's at one. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Yep. Apologies. That's fine. It's already been admitted into yes, evidence. You wrote this op ed, right, Ms. Heard? She destroyed her. With the help of the ACLU, yes. And that's what you testified to in this courtroom, right? That is correct. And this was published on December 18th, 2018, correct? That is correct. Aquaman was released on December 21st, 2018, right? That is, yes, that sounds correct. And that was your first big blockbuster, big budget role, right? I, I disagree, but it was the first time I had like a, a leading role in a movie of that size, yes. Well, second time, yes. What was your first time? But the first one was the film I talked about before. I mean, yesterday, um, Justice League, it introduced the character. so. You know, technically, it was the second one. But you were the love interest in Aquaman, correct? That is correct. Now, at least parts of this op-ed are about Mr. Depp. Isn't that right? It's about what happened to me after. You sat here during opening statements when your attorney argued that the context of your statements in this op-ed matter, correct? That's correct. So let's go through some of that context. He wrote here, quote, friends and advisors told me I would never work again as an actress, that I would be blacklisted. That is You're referring correct. to your accusations of domestic violence against Mr. Depp in the statement, aren't you? Uh, can you repeat the question? I'm sorry. You're referring to your accusations of domestic violence against Mr. Depp in the statement, aren't you? I'm a, in general, I'm referring to being associated with domestic violence. And you're referring to what you claim happened after you got an ex-party domestic violence restraining order against Mr. Depp in May of 2016, right? Are you asking me if that's what I was writing about? That's what you're referring to, correct? Can you just give me the question again? I'm sorry. You're referring to what you claim happened after right. you got an ex-party restraining order against Mr. Depp in May of 2016. That's correct. You also wrote, quote, questions arose as to whether I would be able to keep my role of Mira in the films Justice League and Aquaman. This is also referring to your accusations of domestic violence against Mr. Depp, right? This is referring to what happened to me after I got my TRO, my restraining order. Against Mr. Depp, right? That is correct. These questions arose only after you accused Mr. Depp of domestic violence in May of 2016, allegedly, right? Yeah, from the time I got the TRO, the case. being associated with domestic violence, that's what it's a reference to, yes. You also wrote, quote, imagine a powerful man as a ship like the Titanic. That ship is a huge enterprise. When it strikes an iceberg, there are a lot of people on board desperate to patch up holes, not because they believe in or care about the ship, but because their own fates depend on the enterprise. In this op-ed, you're saying Mr. Depp is a ship, right? I'm making an analogy to a powerful man as a ship. The powerful man you're referring to in this analogy is Mr. Depp, right? Uh, I was talking about a bigger issue, actually, than just Johnny. I was talking about what we, as a, um, as a country, were talking about at the time of writing this, which is when powerful men, in general, do something horrible or something they shouldn't, how there is a system in place to protect them, clean up after them, maintain them uh, afloat. You know, this is a reference to not just Johnny, it was about what was happening as a culture when we were addressing a lot of Me Too issues for the first time. The iceberg is you in this analogy, right, Ms. Hurd? 
Um, I would not say that. I had that had not. That was not what I intended. No. So, this is another reference to your accusations against Mr. Depp. Uh, no, this is about what happened to me once I left uh, that relationship and got a TRO and became associated with domestic violence. But it's your testimony that this op-ed isn't about Mr. Depp, right? It's about what happened to me after. That's it's correct. It's about your experience after obtaining a temporary restraining order against Mr. Depp, right? That is correct, among other things. But it's not about Mr. Depp. It is not about him. Mr. Depp is making it about Mr. Depp, right? Ironically. It's kind of like <laughs> that Carly Simon song, right, Ms. Heard? I don't know what you mean. Let's talk about the defamatory statements in the op-ed that you also claim are not about Mr. Depp. Then two years ago, I became a public figure representing domestic abuse, and I felt the full force of our culture's wrath for women who speak out. This is about Mr. Depp, isn't it? No. You wrote this in 2018, right? Exactly. And two years prior was 2016, right? That's true. Okay. That's correct. So it's not about May Johnny. Two, it's about Heard, what happened to me Ms. after. Heard, my question was May of 2016 is two years prior to December of 2018. Correct? That's correct. All right. May 2016 is when you publicly accused Mr. Depp of domestic violence, right? I got my restraining order at that time. And you publicly accused Mr. Depp of domestic violence. Yes, that was in, attached to my restraining order. So yes. May of 2016 is when you sought a restraining order against Mr. Depp. That's correct. Correct, and, and I had to May, provide testimony for that. Right. And May 2016 is when you walked into court with a mark on your face to obtain that restraining order. Yes or no? That was the day I walked into court with a bruise on my face. Yes. And you were photographed with that mark on your face, weren't you? I walked out to a bunch of photographers. Yes. May 2016 is when you told the world that Mr. Depp had physically abused you during your relationship. Isn't that right? That I had to provide testimony as part of my restraining order application, yes. And that's how you became a public figure representing domestic abuse, right, Ms. Hurd? From that point on, yes. That's when you claim you faced our culture's wrath, that's right? That's when it started, yes. But it's your testimony under oath that this statement is not about Mr. Depp. It is uh, not. It is about what happened to me afterwards. That's okay. the more interesting, was the more interesting thing for me to write about. The next statement reads, I had the rare vantage point of seeing in real time how institutions protect men accused of abuse. This is also about Mr. Depp, isn't that right? Not just about him, but he is included in that, yes. He's the man you accused of abuse two years prior to this op-ed, isn't that right, Ms. Hurd? Yes, but I wrote this op-ed in the context of many men at the time that were public figures or in this public eye being accused as well. So it was a reference in general to a larger phenomenon, not just Johnny. Not just Johnny. Not just Johnny. Okay. No, not just Johnny. And then, hmm. right, I spoke up against sexual violence and faced our culture's wrath. This one's also about Mr. Depp. I did not write that. Well, you've accused Mr. Depp of sexual violence in this very courtroom, haven't you? Yes, but I, I was intending to keep that private when this was published. I, I, I had not pub publicly ever accused him of that. I'm going to move to strike everything after the word yes. No, I'll overrule the objection. Go ahead. You may not have written this title, but you published it, didn't you? I did not publish a title. I, I retweeted the article that included the title in it because that was the article. Let's pull up, please, Plaintiff's Exhibit 3, which is already in evidence. This is a tweet from your Twitter account on December 19th, 2018, correct? That is correct. Your Honor, I'm, oh, it's already in evidence. It, it is in evidence. Yes. Thank you. So on December 19th, 2018, you tweeted, quote, today I published this op-ed in the Washington Post. Did I read that right? That is correct. And the tweet includes a link to the op-ed we were just looking at, correct? That's correct. And you can see that the title of the op-ed in your tweet is, quote, opinion, Amber Heard. I spoke up against sexual violence, right? Yes, you don't get to change the title of the article you're retweeting. And that's the title that you put on your Twitter, correct? I did not put it on my Twitter, no. You linked it to your tweet. I, I retweeted the article. But you published it. I retweeted a link to an article that I wrote. 
and you published it on your Twitter account. All right. I retweeted it. You testified yesterday that you didn't have any control over the title and just now of the op-ed when you retweeted it. Is that correct? That is correct. This wasn't a retweet though, right? Uh, a tweet? Perhaps not retweet. I don't, I'm not quite sure. It was a tweet. It was a tweet. I misspoke. Excuse me. Tweet, not retweet. You included a link to the electronic copy of the op-ed in your tweet, right? That's what I was trying to say earlier, um, and I might have misspoke. It's like I, I'm trying to attach it. Right. So you included a link, right? Yes, to the that's correct. Okay. That's correct. So you must have seen the title of the electronic version of the op-ed before you tweeted it, right? I may have. I just didn't notice it. Not very careful about what you publish, are you, Ms. Hurd? I just didn't notice the title. You didn't need to include the link to the electronic version of the op-ed in your tweet, did you? How else would I have linked it? Well, you didn't need to include the link to tell the world that today you had published this op-ed in the Washington Post about women who are challenging their rage and about violence and equality into political strength despite the price of coming forward, right? I couldn't attach it with a paper clip. No, but you didn't need to attach it at all to tell the world oh, that you had published an op-ed. No, the goal was to, to tweet about it and to provide a link so that people could read it. The op-ed is in your name, right? That's correct. So if you had noticed the title of the electronic version of the op-ed before you included it in your tweet, you could have asked the Washington Post to change it. Isn't that right? Uh, no, that's not. But you didn't do that, right? You never asked the Washington Post to change the title. I didn't notice it and I didn't ask them, nor do I think I needed to. At the bottom, do you see that there's another tweet from December 19th, 2018? Yes, I do. And in this one, it reads, I am honored to announce my role as an ACLU ambassador on women's rights. Did I read that right? That's correct. So you announced your ACLU ambassadorship the same day you posted the op-ed on your Twitter. I think right? that was always the plan is to attach the article with the, uh, the announcement that I uh, was an ambassador. They just admitted it was, it was part of a hit piece strategy. Your Honor, if, if I may, uh, would this be a good time to stop for lunch? No, it's too no. early. Okay. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> we got to keep going at least till 1230. Okay. That's Thank, you. Thank you. Ms. Hurd, you testified yesterday about your counterclaim against Mr. Depp in this case. Do you remember that testimony? Uh, yes, I do. Your counterclaim is based on three statements made by Mr. Depp's attorneys, Adam Waldman. Is that right? Uh, that's correct. Okay. We looked at those three statements yesterday, right? That's correct. And the first statement was from an April 8th, 2020 article, right? That's correct. And that's Defendant's Exhibit 1245 that's been previously admitted. Please pull that up. Thank you. If we could please publish that. Thank you. We can scroll down to the eighth page. Mr. Depp's, excuse me, Mr. Waldman's statement is buried on the eighth page of a 12 page article. Is that right, Ms. Hurd? I don't know how many pages are here. Well, let's, this is the eighth page. Let's go to the 12th. Let's pull up, please, Defendant's Exhibit 1246, which has already been admitted. And if we could please go to Mr. Waldman's statement on page 10. And go on to page 11 of a That's Mr. Waldman's statement, right? That is correct. Okay. Uh, I think it's um, Mr. Waldman speaking on behalf of Johnny, yes. You don't have any evidence of that, do you, Ms. Hurd? This is Mr. Waldman's statement, right? I think it's included in the article as well. That this is Mr. Waldman's statement, correct? Uh, that a, a representative or an attorney, I don't know which word it says in the article, but it says it says very clearly that they're speaking on behalf of Johnny or representing Johnny. Um, can we please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 8818, 881A, excuse me. 
Excuse me. If we could please go to page eight of this article. Sorry, Your Honor. May I just All approach? Right. Yes, ma'am. Do you like how she just admitted on her own freely that the ACLU conspired with her, giving her an ambassador role? Because otherwise, how can you destroy Johnny Depp's life? It's fascinating when you start uh, the uh, Rolling Stone actually put out an article, the same person that put out a hit piece and tried to wreck his life. They put out an article recently talking about the conspiracy between Elon Musk, the ACLU and Amber Heard. Sorry, Ms. Heard. Sorry, Your Honor. Um, let's go ahead and take this down, please. Thanks. You testified yesterday about how your reputation was before these three statements were made, correct? Uh, yes, I did. You testified that your career was going very well before. I think I said the trajectory was positive, yes. You testified you had a global campaign for L'Oreal, right? That is correct. You testified you were waiting on a schedule for Aquaman 2. That is correct. You testified you were scheduled to do a press tour for the TV show The Stand. Press obligations, yes. And then you testify that after the articles, you were no longer actively involved in the L'Oreal campaign. Isn't that right? They suspended using my uh, material. And that you were no longer involved in the publicity surrounding the stand after the articles, right? That's correct. And you didn't hear anything about the schedule for Aquaman 2? Correct. Ms. Heard, you have no evidence that Mr. Waldman's three statements are the reason you are allegedly no longer active in the L'Oreal campaign, do you? Um, well, I mean, other than my awareness that they can't use me because of all of the online um, attention not generated. And you have no evidence that Mr. Waldman's three statements are the reason that the Stan media opportunities allegedly stop, do you? Yeah, I know they couldn't attach my name to their promotional materials because of the online stuff. In fact, there was a lot of reasons why you were no longer active in these endeavors. Isn't that right? Um, I disagree with that. Reasons that had absolutely nothing to do with Mr. Waldman's statements. Isn't that right? Uh, I disagree with that. There was a lot of publicity about your relationship with Mr. Depp around the time Mr. Waldman made the three statements at issue, right? Uh, I do not recall. A lot of really negative publicity for you, Ms. Heard. Isn't that right? There's been an ongoing smear campaign, yes. An ongoing negative publicity. Smear campaign. campaign. So orchestrated smear campaign. Orchestrated. No evidence of that, do you, Ms. Heard? Just look me up. You'll see. Let's take a look at some of that. All right. So Amber Heard's bad PR and ruining her is is an orchestrated smear campaign. If you need proof that um, if you need proof of the personality disorder, the diagnoses about the. Uh, about the issues of taking everything, warping it, making it into something it's not, you know, turning everything into a, a strange conspiracy. Again, she can not accept any blame. She went after Johnny Depp. She wanted to destroy his life. That 
she knew she was going after one of the biggest, most beloved stars in the world. First of all, that's going to have blowback no matter what. Then people start looking into the case. When they look into it right away, they see that there's no evidence in any of the items that she's she's presenting. They're not questionable. They seem like out and out fraud. She doesn't think that that's the reason that they, that she had her career destroyed. She thinks that it's an orchestrated smear campaign, and she claims this in her in her counterclaim. She actually claims that Adam Waldman and Johnny Depp are have an army of bots that have been actively utilized with the intent purpose of destroying her life. In fact, they tracked sixteen thousand users online. They were going to dox 200 of them. Doxing means taking your personal information and putting it out into the public. They asked Twitter for 200 users' personal information. Where they sign on, where they created it. They would know where, like if you signed on at your mama's house after you made it, whatever, you know, I mean, your workplace. They wanted all that information. They doxed 80 plus people attached to Johnny Depp. And they were going to start doxing regular people. When that fell through, they pointed the finger at three people online. They said Adam Waldman and Johnny Depp have been orchestrating a hit campaign, and they've been contacting media and social media personalities, including Incredibly Average, including on Twitter, that Lord, uh, real Lord of B. And first, right there at the beginning, they included yours truly. <laughs> That's right. Apparently, can't get away from the bot campaign. Can't claim that I'm a bot because, I mean, hey, you know... Uh, User unknown. <laughs> so uh, what did they do? I got to come up with something else. But yeah, I am uh, I am now part of the official, uh, <laughs> the official counterclaim narrative. <laughs> What's fascinating about that, too, is that someone like Amber Heard or anyone, they could they could hit me up anytime. They could uh, they I have an open email. They could have uh, sent something because everyone can contact me. Uh, but no one gets to own my voice. So Amber Heard has a problem with that. That's all smear campaign. If uh, if you put out something against her, if you talk about something else, that can't be her fault. I mean, you've seen this case. That's why it had to be public. Because the what she did behind closed doors in the UK is she managed to present, you saw how she acted. You saw the theatrics, but you know what? No one else would have. You had one judge that decided how all of that fell. Right now, she's presenting that in front of millions of people, and it is a different thing altogether. It's amazing, though. She just admitted that the op-ed was about Johnny Depp. She said that she was writing about multiple powerful personalities individuals not just johnny so she admits it's about johnny though she also admitted that uh the timeline this was about right what happened to her afterwards after she filed the tro there are three components to this case that have to happen the the article has to be about johnny depp you have to look at it and be able to make the inference as a user or as the average user, as the, as the ordinary person, I say user because pulling it up electronically, that was the title that they were talking about. Pulling it up, you have to make the inference that it's about Johnny Depp, number one. Number two, you have to say that it cost him $50 million, and you have multiple people that have testified to that. You had the Pirates of Caribbean, Houdini, easily $50 million in work that was lost, lost revenue there. And then you have to um, determine whether or not uh, Johnny Depp is an abuser, because if he's an abuser, then she would have the ability to talk about this. It would be a free speech fundamental right. That's why she keeps clinging to free speech, which is fascinating to me. She clings to the idea of free speech while saying that, like myself or yourself, if you talk about this, we're all part of an orchestrated smear campaign. So it's all free speech. It's all good gravy, baby, until uh, until it comes down. <laughs> Till it comes down to your speech. Again, it's all about her. Free speech, you know, it matters or it doesn't. And, and on top of that, the free speech, free speech, it shouldn't be stepping out and saying, that person right there, 
that person sexually abused me. Where's your proof? I don't have any. You just have to believe me. And if you if you don't believe me, well, there shouldn't be any blowback. There shouldn't be any, any issue. I mean, that that's the that's the the fine line we walk. We want to be able to see hashtag me too should be able to you, you should be able to have people come out and say this happened to me too. Yeah, sure. And you should be able to uh, to receive empathy. You should be able to receive support. But when you point that at somebody and you say, this happened to me too, and they did it. You're, you're well a powerful weapon. And she did it knowingly. She, she had a, a vast political organization in the ACLU. They talk about them as a nonprofit. No, they are a, a powerful political entity. They are powerful. They have an army of lawyers on their beck and call. They tried to get themselves involved in this case as a concerned party, too. Before all of this stuff came out about what they had done, they filed – I forget what the petition is called, but they filed this petition to allow themselves to be able to assign lawyers or sign support or whatever to the case, pretending that they had no actual connection to the case. They try to worm their way into it. Like a lot of people don't don't know the it, they they also you don't realize like how much work it took to get uh the ACLU information in the hands of uh, Depp and his team. The Virginia judge subpoenaed said yes. There is a there or Virginia judge okayed a subpoena saying yes. Johnny Depp can subpoena the information about the charitable donations and what went on. They wouldn't turn it over. They were going to drag their feet until the trial came up. They've been dragging their feet for years. So Johnny Depp had to go to the New York Supreme Court and ask the New York Supreme Court to make a ruling, forcing them to do it. When they, when they got that ruling, the guy that you saw the, uh, the taped interview with at the beginning, he was uh, – they didn't want him – to be the one that came forward and testified, even though he was the one who had direct connection with Amber Heard, because in my opinion, they were afraid of what he would say under oath. They were afraid he'd give away too much. They wanted a stand in. They said it was inconvenient for this guy to come in. You know, it, it was too burdensome for them. They said they wanted a stand in. So again, all of this stuff is too burdensome for all these people. Burning down some dude's life, you know, making him again, they wanted to make him the face of violence against women. They weren't going out and just accusing him of something. They wanted to make him the face of the Violence Against Women Act. That was the intent purpose. When you look at the op-ed, it's aiming at the Violence Against Women Act. It's trying to influence Congress to take her word, to listen to her, to bring her before Congress, to let her speak, to tell them about what was going on in her relationship. Again, he would have become the face of that if it would have gone correctly for them. They would have absolutely they would have they would have burned down his entire existence. And and they did I mean they they hurt him pretty badly. But they conspired to uh to launch that around the release of Aquaman. Warner Brothers full well knew about that. That was one of the reasons why they did not want to bring her back for Aquaman 2. This is stuff you might not know there. They didn't put that in writing, but I'm telling you from behind the scenes, this is what I'm hearing. You know, and I, I've got some, some pretty good sources with Disney and, and Warner. You know, uh, sources, uh, sources will tell you all kinds of stuff uh, because companies don't treat them right. If a company will hire fire a guy that makes in $13 billion plus with pirates, I'm not just including the movies, but merchandising and on, if they'll fire that guy, then think about how they treat their regular folks. So they'll tell you anything. And one of the reasons they didn't want to bring her back was that. But another reason they didn't want to bring her back, according to sources, is the uh, is the fact that she's terrible to work with. Like, like you could you could just imagine how bad that would be. You know, because it, it's all gravy, baby, until you tell her something she doesn't like. And if you if you think that's wrong, then go and look up what she added to her evidence. She added, she was told expressly, don't bring up Warner Brothers, don't bring up Aquaman. She did. She, bring, she brought them all back into this again. 
And she brought up James Wan, Jason Momoa. Your patience. Anyway. So, Ms. Hurd, my last question to you was that there was a lot of negative publicity for you around the time that Mr. Walden made these statements. Isn't that correct? I believe that they were made. Uh, I mean, I believe that the statements kind of kept being attached to new defamatory or, you know, um, articles that were like smear campaign sort of attack articles is what it. Okay. Let's go through some of the articles that were out in the press. So plaintiffs exhibit 1267. I could just publish that just for the witness. That would be great. Thank you. This is an article published on February 2nd, 2020. And the title is hashtag justice for Johnny Depp trends after Amber Heard admits to hitting actor in audio clip. You see that? I see that. And if we can go to plaintiff's exhibit 1268. This one was published on February 3rd, 2020. It reads the title, Amber Heard admits to hitting Johnny Depp in recording. Yeah, that's that? when his lawyer leaked an edited tape. <laughs> Ms. Heard, do you see the title? Amber Heard admits to hitting Johnny Depp in recording. Do you see that? I see the title. Okay. We could please go to plaintiff's exhibit 1269. This one was published on March 17th, 2020. Amber Heard slammed door into Johnny Depp's head, reveals new audio. You see that? Yeah, these are more of the PR plans. Let's go to 1270. This one was published on March 31st, 2020. Amber Heard to be sacked from Jason Momoa's Aquaman after Johnny Depp's controversy reports. Do you see that? I do. We can go to plaintiff's exhibit 1271. See the title that says Johnny Depp says ex-wife Amber Heard sliced his finger off and it quote erupted like Vesuvius. Vesuvius. I just don't know when that was. Um, I've never seen that article. You can go to 1272. This one was published on May 29th, 2020 and it says when Amber Heard confessed to smashing a door into Johnny Depp's head, clocking him in the jaw. Do you see that? I see that. Going to 1275. This one was published on July 15th, 2020. Amber Heard stole my sexual assault story. ex aid tells libel trial. Do you see hmm. that? Kate James. This was Adam Waldman as well. It doesn't say Mr. Waldman. That was Kate James. Kate James also says she often received abusive text messages from Johnny Depp's ex-wife, doesn't it? I just know because he threw down the article. Miss Heard, isn't that what that Mr. Says? Waldman threw the newspaper Ms. Heard, at me afterwards. Miss Heard, that's not my question. What my was question, your question is sorry. The title of the article says Amber Heard stole my sexual assault story, ex aid tells libel trial. Kate James also says your Honor, she opened the door <laughs> by saying it was Adam Waldman. I'll sustain the objection. Next question. Okay. Let's go to plaintiff's exhibit 1276. Amber Heard admits to hitting fucking baby Johnny Depp in court audio. Do you see that, Ms. Heard? That's correct. Okay. Let's go to 1277. Published July 28th, 2020. Amber Heard's sister thought she was going to kill Johnny Depp, claims a witness. Do you see that, Ms. Heard? I see that. In 1278. 
published on July 28th, 2020. Johnny Depp was the victim of, a, of abuser Amber Heard, London's High Court told. Do you see that? I do see that. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Go ahead and take our, our lunch recess then. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll go ahead and take our hour lunch recess at this point. Do not discuss the case with anybody and don't do any outside research. And okay, we'll see you in an hour. Adam Waldman threw a newspaper at her. I'm going to find out about that. Oh my God. If I can find out about that, that'll be awesome. I'm going to see if what I can find out about that. She's like, Adam Waldman threw a newspaper at me. <laughs> oh my God. Please tell me that's true. Adam Waldman, you my Back hero. One thirty-five. Then is that fine? All right. Thank you. I, actually, I, I I believe Adam Waldman wasn't actually throwing a newspaper at her. He was trying to paper break her because he was afraid that she might mistake whatever stand that she was on or something. She might mistake it for a bed. And you know exactly what happens when she gets close to those. He was like, "No, you may not do that. You may not." <laughs> oh my God! He threw a newspaper at me. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious oh my god i that's some good stuff oh the the claim that they're mentioning though stealing my story they're actually talking about kate james so kate james uh you you heard about her before right with uh give me one second you heard about her uh her claims about how uh, Amber Heard was mean, how she was she was kind of a monster to work for and on. Well, one thing you weren't allowed to hear. Actually, there were a couple of things you weren't allowed to hear. You weren't allowed to hear how she uh, Amber Heard also lied to Homeland Security. We didn't hear about that. That came from Kate James. Ooh, sounds amazing, doesn't it? And you also didn't get to hear about how uh, Amber Heard stole Kate James rape story. Would you like to hear about that now? Would you like to hear it from the words of Kay James? Because yours truly will pull that up for you. And we will talk about it since uh, since Amber Heard doesn't want you to hear about that. I think it's actually important to talk about. Are they done with Cross? Oh, God, no. <laughs> no, no, no. They're not done with Cross. They are not at all done with Cross. They're just going to lunch. Cross isn't over, though. They're just like, we got to go eat. All right, so there were two, there were actually two witness statements of Kate James. They popped into the UK 2020 trial. The first one, okay, there was, there were two parts of that that were kind of interesting. One part of it, so Amber Heard had a, had an assistant named Samantha McMillan. Samantha McMillan, here we go. Samantha McMillan was in the U.S. illegally. Now this goes to, uh, impeaching character you know you want to you want to say that this person's not trustworthy or not the blurry and it is blurry this is just the way it shot this is a this is a letter to homeland security in the united states because samantha mcmillan was not a u.s resident amber heard writes and says yeah she actually uh she doesn't she doesn't work with me. She's just a friend of mine. You know, she should be here. Like, it isn't a big deal. She's never lied. You know, I don't know what's going on with that. She out and out lies to Homeland Security about what's going on. Again, delivers a letter to them. Uh, there's there's an attachment also that's a check. You can, you can see it on the side there, but I don't want to zoom in on it because the platform is such an idiot about stuff. So you can see it right there. That's one thing. Now, the worst thing, though, is the stealing my rape story. Stealing my rape story comes from, give me one second, I'll pull this up. <clears throat> it comes from a second witness statement, okay? Beverly Dixon, better be careful, Umbrella. After Amber lose, lost everything, she'll sue you for ruining her life. <laughs> you know what I say? Bring it, sue me, you know? Topher, by the way, thanks for obviously Is Camille done? No, no, it's not. They're not done. They're not done. I don't think so anyway. <laughs> like unless they just abruptly were like, all right, I'm done. You know. They were in the middle of uh asking. I mean, they 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 brought up some important stuff. What what they've been brought up, there are three, there are three items that you have to have brought up. And then we'll we'll hit this Kate James stuff. Okay. You have to have number one, 
is the article about Johnny Depp. Even though they kept saying over and over again, they don't use his, his name. That was a big point. Uh, their defense, Amber Heard herself brought this up, and uh, she posted an Instagram post about this right before the trial. She was trying to influence jury, which uh, which got her a lot of gur from, from Ben Chu and Johnny Depp's folks. Actually, let me show you that real fast, too. Okay, so there's three parts to this. There was the number one, the is it about Johnny Depp? She goes in trying to influence, you know, she says... I'm going to go offline for the next several weeks. As you know, I'll be in Virginia where I face my ex-husband, Johnny Depp, in court. Johnny is suing me for an op-ed I wrote in the Washington Post, in which I recount my experiences of violence and domestic abuse. I've never named him. Rather, I wrote about the price women pay for speaking out against men in power. I continue to pay that price, but hopefully when the case concludes, I can move on and so can Johnny. I have always maintained a love for Johnny. And it brings me great pain to have him bleh, bleh, <laughs> gross. I maintain a great love for him while I accuse him of running me around by my vagina and assaulting me with a bottle. After you've been away from your abuser for this long, where, where would the love come from again? How would that happen? You would still maintain love for them? You have got to be kidding me. Like that, it's unbelievable stuff. It, I mean, it's absolutely unbelievable what she puts in there. But I, and um, it brings me great pains to have lived out our details of our past life together in front of the world. So she put that out there saying, you know, it's not about him. Well, she just admitted that it was about him. She said it was about, it was about several men in power, several, not just about Johnny. So she admitted that it was about Johnny Depp. The second part to that is, did it do damage? Like I was saying at the break, did it damage his career? And we have found out that there have been, uh, there's been the loss of several opportunities, but certain opportunities we had number one, Pirate Six, number two, Houdini, that's $50 million alone. New no, thanks for the five. Now that her pet Elon owns Twitter, she'll have plenty of proof. You and others are all bots, indeed. Now it's actually been stalled right now, though. That's the one thing. Like the the buy through has been stalled, so no buy through yet. You know, it's still up there, there. But the third part is that Johnny Depp has to be a. If Johnny Depp is an abuser, then she would be allowed to talk about this anyhow. Because it would fall under free speech. That's why she clings desperately to the idea right now of free speech. Even though she doesn't believe in it. I can tell you she doesn't believe in it because she's taken aim at my fundamental free speech rights. To talk about a case where I'm talking about a public, uh, a public uh, high profile celebrity. Yeah, I don't have those. Uh, I don't have those free speech fundamental rights. Not, not according to her. You know, that, that, that makes me part of some grand conspiracy to ruin her life. Like again, <laughs> you see how free speech matters until it uh, until it actually applies to something that you don't like. Then it's got to go right out the window, right? But anyway, so one of the things they mentioned there at the end was Kate James. You know the the article where where uh, Adam Waldman supposedly threw a newspaper at her. Now, as she notes here, this is Kate James. When I was 26 years old and traveling in Brazil, I was violently raped by an unknown male at Machete Point, having been woken by a perpetrator while sleeping alone in my dwelling. This ordeal went on for five or six hours, and I narrowly escaped with my life. This torturous experience of such extreme sexual violence has haunted me ever since and permanently changed the trajectory of my life to this day. Over the years, I've shared this incident with many close friends, family, and therapists. In 2013, my, uh, Miss, Miss, I'm 2013, let me, Silver, thanks for the five, powerful men, <laughs> be very afraid of Elon, James Franco, etc. Thank you, Tug, exactly. Powerful men, James Franco, of course, too, has been accused of a lot of stuff, but hey, we'll get back to him in just a second. So 2013, Miss Heard became aware of what happened to me as I talked about it to, with a friend of hers in the apartment. She then summoned me to the office where I was on the couch. She questioned me about it. She was curious to how I coped with it on a daily basis. 
and suggested I buy a gun. This is where she's farming for a story because in 2013, all the way back then, she was thinking about the rape claim that she was building. Again, I think I personally, you know, and some people are like, well, you can't you can't make claims like that. You can make inference. You can you can take inference from something. If somebody goes into the bathroom, uh, they come out, they're they're sniffling everywhere and they have like white powder all over their face. I can make the inference that they were in there, you know, busting up a little bit of, of the cocaine. You know, I can make inference. So from what I, I see here, I make inference. But anyway, so I was shocked. The suggestion would have a gun around a small child. I responded that I chose to see myself as a rape survivor, not a rape victim. And that is how I found my own way to cope. So seven years later, 2020, I received documents pertaining to my involvement on behalf of the claimant in this case. As I, as I looked over those documents... Much to my utter shock and dismay, I discovered that Amber Hard had, in fact, stolen my sexual violence conversation with her and twisted it into her own story for uh, into her own story to benefit herself. This, of course, caused me extreme distress and outrage that she would dare to attempt to use my most harrowing experience in my life as her own narrative. So, Kate James, that's what they're talking about. The article there. They're trying to say, Adam Waldman, Adam Waldman. Uh, actually, Kate James made that statement about you. And really, at the end of the day, she says that all of this negativity, all of this stuff, it's the uh, it's the byproduct of someone else. No, no. It's the byproduct of Amber Heard being Amber Heard. People, people want to pretend That they're not responsible. Here's the counterclaim. They keep mentioning it, so why not mention the counterclaim while we're here, okay? This is actually the counterclaim, right? In the counterclaim, again, she repurposes this. It's, it's astounding how she repurposes this document, too. She's going to make comments about bots and everything else, but before that, or after that, rather, when this fails, part of this will get shut down. The bot claim gets knocked out of the courtroom. She repurposes this. She says that Adam Waldman was actually in contact, and Johnny Depp. They were both in contact with media and social media sources. And then the social media sources, they named three sources. They named the real Laura B on Twitter. They named Incredibly Average, or that Brian fellow. And at the top of it, right in the front there, like front prominently displayed, they name yours truly. So the three villains of this story for her, since she couldn't take out uh, 200 people, and I'll show you what she was trying to do. She decided instead to take out three people that she just didn't like. Her and Eve Barlow have been trying to take down over and over again. And that includes yours truly. Like I said, my channel has been hit nine times since I've covered this. Nine times copyright or uh, community guideline strikes they've had they've hit it i had to pick up a what they call it a multi-channel network like th this tells you how bad this is so and they they do their job effectively so there but i have to i have to pay somebody to make sure that i can get my stuff reversed because they will advocate for me it costs me 10 percent of everything i make on youtube i have to pay it just to make sure i can stay on this platform because otherwise those people would knock me off this platform guaranteed so I have to pay 10% of everything just to make sure I can continue to report this stuff. Like, it's crazy. Yellow Flash had to do it too. I mean, I'm not alone in that. You know, other people get targeted as well, but man, I mean, getting hit, woo. Pablo, thanks for the five and the laughing dog. But yeah, she's she's so full of it, you know. Dark Fantasy, thanks for the two. She's setting herself up for a lawsuit by Warner. Oh, she's going to, she, they're going to dump her, you know. Instant Karma, thanks for five. Tug, please give me a promo code. I'm buying the poster. Love your channel. Promo code. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't issued any promo codes. That's the, uh, um, I've never issued a promo code. Like, I just never thought about it. Maybe I'll do that one day. I don't know. Maybe I'll do that with a new product or something. I did put up a, a new, uh, I've just never, I've never done it. Actually, I've never merchandised so much. Like, just to, just to be honest, I've never made so many shirts and stuff, but I'm having fun with it, you know? If you uh if you missed our new shirt, by the way, 
I hope people do check it out. It's pinned to the top of the chat. We will we'll look at this counterclaim in just a second, but I do want to mention this while I'm thinking about it. We made a um, – so I'm sure you've heard all the jokes about I stepped on a bee. Well, I feel like uh, Johnny Depp stepped on a bee for sure. <laughs> Did that have a double meaning? No, of course not. I was talking about the bumbly kind. But, yeah, she stepped on a bee, didn't she? Ching. So we have a new shirt in there, you know. I believe Depp. <laughs> oh, you're so fucking umbrella guy. Oh, God. oh, it's terrible. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, but uh, that's tended, pinned at the top of the, the chat. I think they're funny. We have all kinds of shirts and stuff. If you check them out again, you pick up our stuff. Profit. I can't talk about proceeds because proceeds I don't control, but profit that goes to. It goes to that one place she wouldn't put anything. That goes to helping out our community. We have a small community here. Our community, it's um, it's very impoverished. That's one thing I liked about the Depp uh, story. He comes from nothing, you know, and we come from the same kind of areas. <laughs> yeah. But it's pinned at the top of the chat. Uh, this is D07. Thanks for the five. Uh, I think the world wants to see Amber drop a on the stand <laughs> will your eyes be ready no like i said i think uh i think adam woman if he really threw a paper at her he was just trying to paper break her that's what you do uh, that's what you do before you step on a bee <laughs> wait 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 no no that's not what that's not how that works god spring johns thanks for five it really doesn't look good when she gets snarky and argues with camille yeah just my opinion she's just not taking accountability for anything oh uh, yeah that's it like she doesn't take accountability for any of the relationship or anything so here's the uh, counterclaim again oh oh before i forget if you're wondering so the counterclaim is for whoops i skipped way too far the counterclaim sorry about that this is not my normal copy i had to pull it up real fast so you know the uh the counterclaim is for a hundred million dollars all right like no joke it is for a hundred million dollars why is it for a hundred million dollars you might ask listen to this here it's because johnny depp wanted 50 million and she deserves twice that amount it seriously says that awarding amber heard compensatory damages of not more than 100 million dollars twice the amount jd asserted against her so she she's like he wants that i want double i mean that's literally her claim <laughs> uh, everyone uh, dixon thanks for the super chat and the sticker i appreciate that i mean what is up with that you know what is that oh, i just love it she just wanted to she just wanted to be nasty there. So anyway, she uh she makes a lot of claims, but my favorite claim is about the bots. So listen to this. As early as 2016, JD admitted his intention was to destroy her career, stating, for example, he wanted her replaced on that WB or Warner Brothers film referencing the blockbuster hit Aquaman. To accomplish this task, he individually and through his representatives and agents in Virginia <laughs> has created controlled, manipulated, and or, uh, I'm sorry, controlled and or manipulated social media accounts created specifically for the purpose of targeting misheard, computer-controlled social media accounts, and or groups of inauthentic accounts controlled by a single agent to amplify content misleadingly. So that's saying, everyone that's against her is a bot. <laughs> Megan thinks of the vibe, I want to see it. A T of Camille as a priestess using a legal pad to cast spells and smite AH. That would be funny. Yeah, he okay. Now they say she says the reason she knows this is true, by the way. These accounts exhibit behavior, which includes but not as limited to the following. They have high retweet to retweet ratios and numbers implausible for authentic human users. They create they're created, attack her, then are set to inactive to avoid suspension. They utilize common language patterns and timing indicating broad uh, coordination they offer they often offer little or no personal information suggesting computer control or a single individual controlling more than one count at the time and they republicize the content of one another at rates and consistencies that belie 
authentic human control. So, you know, you share your friend stuff. Uh uh, you're a bot. You don't put a freaking, you don't use your real face. You're a bot. I mean, you see how it goes through. Then they go through the reasoning for it. And, and some of the reasons are hilarious, actually. I mean, they're so dumb. Like, I'll come back to this here. But look, like, okay, they say two accounts here IFOD.net and my Grindenwald are responsible for approximately 50% of the targeted attacks on her. My Grindenwald account uses its platform to amplify anti herd ha hashtags and false information being disseminated by, uh, about her. Da, 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 da. Then they say, though, as evidence of the origin, it routinely tweets the statements of J.D.'s agent or attorney, Mr. Waldman, on a near daily basis and often praises an otherwise unknown attorney, even going so far as to say, I love you, Waldman. <laughs> so saying that in one of these high profile cases that you like what the attorney's doing, that proves you're a bot, right? Uh. Shabaka Wookie thinks it's 279. In Tusk, JD's nose is really a D. Yeah. <laughs> did she see that? Uh, it is. I did that video the other day talking about how they were they were discussing it. It shows you like his humor and stuff, too. You know, so you can have fun. Stop. Thanks for the 20. Even Joan Crawford st stopped when Cut was yelled. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, Joan of God, thanks for the nine. Hey, Tug, can I point out how disturbing the long audio section was with her laughs and berating? Oh, God, that was so nasty. It was so long. It contemptualizes itself. It was just gross. She does not uh, sound oppressed or scared, uh, scared. Scary human. Yeah, she's, she's an abuser. She's an abuser for sure, you can tell. Rita, thanks for the five. I fall to pieces when I get caught in my lies. I get caught. In my lies, <laughs> I can't sing very well like that. I'm too got it too flat of uh, my voice is too deep for that. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, thanks for the 18. I don't understand the part regarding you need to uh, pay. Sending this, I've been following you for a few years. I completely miss that you need to pay. I'm so sorry. What do you mean, like to pay? I'm. I'm Oh, 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 you're talking about, yeah, yeah, no, no, see, um, no for coverage, okay, to explain that, we get flagged, okay, and to tell you how, how, how YouTube works, all right, when you get flagged and you, you say, whoa, I need to, I need to argue that, you get a frontline worker that, they don't care, they're going to review all your stuff and go through it for context or anything, 99.9% .9 of the time, they're just going to stamp and say, Psh, you're out. Okay. You need somebody that can talk to somebody that matters. That's where a multi-channel network comes in. They can get you past the front line person. They, they're not doing you favors, but they're actually presenting what it is. Like I'm covering a case. I'm not making fun of people or hurting their career or doing anything crazy. I'm covering something that is celebrity. I'm allowed to do that. I follow all the rules there. So I had a uh, wind flagging, for example, that they flagged a live stream so much that somebody I used to take my live streams down and delete them. So you couldn't flag them anymore. Right. Well, then they managed to get one flagged, even though it had already been deleted. They flagged it so much when it was active that they hit it. And once it was deleted, I couldn't. So retroactively, I, I couldn't appeal. I was like, that's not right. You know, I can't even talk about this. So I, uh, that wouldn't even give me an appeal. All right. If you get three strikes on here, you're out, you're done. So uh, the MCN can contact somebody about it. But in order to do that, in order to keep that as part of the platform here, I pay 10% of everything that I make from this platform to that just so I can keep going. So, yeah. I already pay, uh, I already pay 60% of uh, ad revenue or 55%, I think it is actually, of what the channel gets to YouTube by itself. They get 55% of all ad revenue that comes in. Um, then you pay taxes and stuff. So, I mean, you, it, I'm not saying we don't make money. We, we make money from it, but it's just astounding. It's like, man, why do I got to give away 10% after the fact? But that's the reality. And they do a good job. They do. I actually like them, you know, but, but that's the reality of it. Martin, thanks for the super chat. No way she could still win, right, Tug? Ah, uh, she can still win. I mean, the jury is the one who decides. That's the problem. You and I don't get to decide. Like, the jury gets to decide. Well, thanks for the five. You've been following this for a while now. What do you think uh, is one major thing that the jury is going to have to get in their minds 
going to have on their mind when making a verdict? Well, they're going to have to answer those three questions, like I said, and they're going to have to decide that they're going to have to decide that J.D. was not an abuser. I think like I think there are certain I think it's been described well enough that they should be able to look at it and say that he's not an abuser. But I mean, when you look at all the like the pictures, I think they would have the pictures in mind. I got anything. The thing that sticks with me the most are, again, if you're claiming a broken nose and I see a picture of you and you don't have swelling and you're telling me I covered it up with makeup the next day. Really? You know, but anyway. OK, so what her does here, you can see her. She'll she'll make claims about Russian bots. They have certain types of signatures that reflect Russian origin. She's calling anybody that's anti her Russian bot. And she gives a few examples. What she does on Twitter she subpoenas the records of oh, spiral down things. Dude, my cat's got copyright claimed yesterday. <laughs> People will do that. I mean, it's ridiculous. Like you get stuff like that. Fake copyrights, you, you fight them, you know, fight those suckers. Uh, but she hired this place called Bot Sentinel. You know that, uh, you know that lady we talked about that was uh, going to do the hit piece for NBC? Um, <laughs> But if you don't know this, so there was a reporter contacting everybody. They contacted me as well, which I told them that, you know, they could eat, <clears throat> you know, because I don't talk to mainstream journalists, especially ones that uh, that are not trustworthy at all. They can they can eat it. But they were retweeting this one guy. It took me about half a minute to figure out, like, where they were coming from, because, well, first of all, they're mainstream. But second of all, I looked at their Twitter, and they were posting this guy named Chris Bozy, B-O-U-S-E-Y or S-Y, I can't remember exactly how it spells it. He runs a company called Bot Sentinel. Amber Heard hired Bot Sentinel to track anyone that mentioned her at the beginning of all of this. And they ended up tracking, in the first way, they ended up tracking around 16,000 users. Again, I'm rounding, so, uh, you know. But, uh, they end up tracking around 16,000 users. And the way that they do that, like say I post something and you like it, or say you retweet it or you commented, they're, they're tracking you there too. It's not just me commenting. It's you commenting or doing anything. Well, based on this, they end up subpoenaing Twitter for the, for the information behind 200 individual Twitter users' accounts. They want to know where they were created. Like they want to know your your ISP, like where your home is, where where your uh, where you're signing in from. They want to know everything about you. Uh, Fon uh, Fonz, thanks for the five. Camille needs to crack down on Amber's outburst of over explaining, like Rottenberg did to Johnny by interrupting her. She's been like, been, I mean, she's been trying to hammer her for that, and. You know, the judge gave a couple of those. Like, she didn't have open-ended questions on a few things. She asked her a yes or no question, and she overexpanded. Like, yes or no is yes or no. She didn't ask her anymore there. And the judge actually gave a few. And I thought that was actually kind of a garbage thing. She allowed her to continue on with it. But, yeah, I mean, they do, that. you know, they step on them anytime they do that. But, anyway, so the, uh, so Twitter's, given a subpoena for again over 200 200 users and to say what they would do with your records amber heard ended up dumping the there was a document that johnny depp felt filled out that had the addresses and more of all of his witnesses everybody that he knew that you know needed to be involved well Amber Heard, he he uploaded it redacted right well they get unredacted copies they ended up turning that document in with another filing and didn't redact it. So it ended up going public with all of his, like Isaac B, his address went into the public. Johnny Depp's sister, her address went into the public. J.K. Rowling, although it's already known, still, it went into the public. So if they would do that to these huge people that could have a, a bearing on their life, that, well, how, how do you think they would treat you as just an ordinary person? You'd have no benefit. They'd try to destroy you. But Twitter was like, hell no. <laughs> hell no. That's crazy. AJ, thanks for the five. Hey, brother. Hope you're well. How could Amber possibly win? Depp's team have been destroying all of her arguments. It seems like no one's buying it. Well, the, the only way that they could is if the jury buys into something. Like, like again, 
jury's always <laughs> jury's the best way to go. But at the same time, a jury of your peers, as I've said before, think about some of your peers. How many of your peers have you met? Like some of your peers are probably the dumbest people in the world, right? I mean, if you think about the lowest IQ person that you've ever ran into, you know, that just goes through their day, they could be on that jury. Do you think that the case makes sense to them and it overwhelms Amber Heard's fake crime? Do you think that they believe that Johnny Depp never put a hand on Amber Heard ever, ever, that he was not a domestic abuser? They can't say that it was mutually combative. It has to be she is the aggressor, which I, I firmly believe. But did they get that across in their case? That's what you have to ask yourself. And when it comes down to the thought process of a handful of people, well, that's a scary idea, right? So that's that's where it comes from. DL, thanks for the five. Need t-shirt, lost in space robot. <laughs> Ew, gross. Ew. I was looking at your little uh, symbols there. Yeah, I got your message. Message understood. <laughs> gross. Diana, thanks for the five. No statement, but plenty of statement and backing. Thank you. So she goes for that. Like she also she also made other claims which were kind of awesome she claimed that this was part of a breaking okay so her counterclaim was based on a bunch of stuff and it all got thrown out except for three statements she wanted her to count one of it she wanted to say that this is all about free speech all right that's still part of her claims she's talking about free speech she wanted to claim defamation and defamation per se now, remember, part of defamation for a high-profile person is actual malice. It was actual malice committed. And, you know, there's a specific definition for actual malice, all right? So when you, you use that term, it's not just some, some floating term out there. It, it, it has a meaning. You know, it's been defined. Actual malice is with knowledge that a statement was false or with reckless disregard of whether it was false or not. So you didn't care if it was false or you knew it was false. Like that burden is high when you're talking about with a star. Now, at the beginning of her claim, she had all types of claims. But at the end, the robot, the bot thing was stripped away. You know, if you look, I mean, look at all these statements she tried to use. You see all this crap here? Like, this is all statements that she put in. She also, again, the bot thing, she actually said the bot was a violation of the Virginia Computer Crimes Act. <laughs> She's crazy. But what remains of her, her, her entire document here are three statements by the lawyer Adam Waldman. Now, they say that the statements by Adam Waldman were made it was like it was like Johnny Depp paid her paid him to make those. And that I don't I don't see how you can make that argument. Adam Waldman is allowed to have his own opinion. Adam Waldman believes this is a hoax crime. That's why he works for Johnny Depp. He believes that this is a hoax crime. He put this entire case together because he believes that this is a hoax crime. And he made statements in the press as such. Adam Waldman is not Johnny Depp. He's not acting. He's not. Uh, he's not Johnny Depp's hand. He doesn't have his hand up his butt. You know, being being uh, manipulated. He's he's doing things on his own. But they boiled all the statements down that they put. Again, there's an army of statements in here. They boiled it down to three statements that Adam Waldman has left. There's no way. There's no way that they will. There's no way. Kel Forrester, thanks for the five. It seems to me she's missing a few nuts and bolts. Robot jokes, indeed. Uh, Pain Mystic, thanks for her. five. Tug, need a shirt with Adam Waldman with a rolled up newspaper chasing a grumpy drop in. <laughs> yeah, uh, you have to be careful. You can only go so far with that. You can only go so far. Yeah. <laughs> Christopher George, thanks for the five. Uh, she makes Sean Young look hot. <laughs> Indeed. Filmmaker Daniel Clements, thanks for the five. You think AH is knowingly scheming? Yes. Or, or is she actually so crazy or distorted? No, I don't think she's a, she thinks she's a victim. No, no. I, I think, well, I think she's, okay, we're talking about the mental health, um, 
diagnostic for her. Now, the mental health diagnostic, again, should never be used as an excuse, right? But it 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 should be used as an observation tool, understanding. The person behind that, you know, with her diagnosis, which she, she vehemently says is not accurate, by the way, but the diagnosis that, that you had Shannon Curry talk about, that would it was a personality dis diagnosis it's saying this ingrained is the way that they act and they interact with the world you know again personality is what you put forward how people perceive you in life personality disorder is well defects within said personality so she had uh she had two diagnoses added and instead of using the diagnoses rehashing all of that Let's say instead they boil down to two things. They they boil down to number one, a terror of abandonment. And if you listen to those, you heard her the oh my god, you're killing me, Johnny, you're killing me. That 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 fits perfectly. It fits perfectly. It's this this terror of abandonment and a manipulation. She is a high functioning manipulator. And when I say high functioning, you need to understand. I'm not talking about I'm 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 talking about she she does she knows what she's doing first of all and she's very good at what she's doing too just to be honest you know uh she's not like functioning at the level of say a schizophrenic that has no idea what they're doing uh Evo Cyber Nation thanks for the five look up Ann Rand yeah that's one of uh Amber Heard's idols. Anne is from Russia. Anne's a narcissist and it's social and believes in self uh, selfish ambitions. I think she just takes uh, anything that she can. I, b I believe I, I I don't even have to look at people like that. Again, I, I look at the dis. I think I can look at Amber and just look at. Her. <laughs> we need an outside. But, you know, I mean, we can look at. Yeah, this is somebody they like the model. She's a she's a gold digger. She's a gold digger. <laughs> that is all she is. And in the in the UK, they denied that. But look. She kept that. She kept part of that that seven million dollars that she said she was going to give away from charity. She kept it. She had another person pay for it right from go. She jumps from Johnny Depp. She jumps over to Elon Musk, telling you she didn't love Elon Musk. By the way, she was just using him for that loot crate. You know, she was like loot crate upgrade. You know, because she knew he had a lot of money. Now he wasn't the richest man in the world at the time, but he had lots and lots of money. Now Jennifer Howell who was best friends with uh, with Whitney, who would be, who is Amber Heard's sister. God, I, it's so much blah, blah. It sounds like high school. She says that she talked to Amber Heard's mom. They were good friends. You know, all of these people were good friends. And she said that Elon and Amber actually had a big legal altercation behind the scenes. And it was over embryos. She wanted to keep them and have a baby. And Elon was like, hell to the no. <laughs> but they had created embryos together. That's what they were saying. Raquel, thanks for the five. Defective robots. That would make a great shirt. Uh, since she keeps calling people bots. I am a robot. <laughs> oh, there's so many. There's so many. But yeah, Elon. So if you look at the baby thing, I, I said I'd mention this today, okay? And again, this has nothing to do with the baby. Just want to be very clear about that. This has to do with timing and suspect, you know, crazy stuff. The voice, thanks for the 449. Tug, please take a look at the message I sent you. At break, just that James knew. I make meme photos of her. I'll check it out. Um, but, and thank you. Um, Look at the timing, though, okay? You had the first trial that was going to come up. Right before the first trial, within less than a month before the first trial, she has a kid. Now, she doesn't have the kid by uh, her. She, she, didn't, she didn't have it herself. She had it via surrogate, okay? So she planned the child. Like, this was a planned birth. And again, nothing wrong with that. But I think it was the ultimate trump card because you've seen her bring up the child multiple times on the stand. I'm a mother. I'm a mother. I've got other things to do. I'm a mom. You know, it's a weapon. It's a weapon. It always has been. How much did it cost Amber to buy the baby? Uh, how much did it cost Elon? <laughs> That's what I wonder. Okay, thanks for the two. No. <laughs> 
Yeah, Pops, thanks for the two there. What's uh, AH's biggest mistake so far on the stand? The bottle is a big one. That stuck with me. You know? I think that stuck with me. I don't know about you, but when she denied the bottle, that was a big one. After making such a big deal about it. Robert Boone, thanks for the five. Do you think it's possible to get uh, <clears throat> possible for Waldman to get under suspended once the case is over? Uh, a rocket man will never under suspend. I bet you money. Like, he'll never do it. I would be shocked if that happens. I'd be shocked because it's not in his interest, you know? Like many of these people, they don't believe in free speech. They believe in speech that benefits them. You know, my free speech, not anyone's free speech. So I don't see them ever doing that. You know? Harley Willis, thanks for the 10. Amber infuriated me when she said she, donations in her name weren't included in the pledge. Didn't the ACLU represent, uh, representative include them? Yes. In the breakdown for how much had been paid towards the date? Yes. He did indeed. So she was lying through her teeth. You were right. Mickey, thanks for the five. Check, check out the DUI guy. Yeah, I've, I've I've checked him out. He's there and talking about the jury. I've been checking him out. I have for sure. Yep. I'm glad you mentioned that, though. If you see somebody I need to follow like that, definitely mention them. But I have been uh, I have been keeping up with them. I've been looking at them on the uh, on the um, channel stuff too. But yeah, I think the the jury. Like, everybody's curious about how, you know, the, with the jury, everybody wants to know what's going on there. And I'm part of that, just just, just to be just to be honest. Like, I I want to know about that, too, you know. So, pins, caps, and band-aids, things for five. Someone, please, blast gold digger. My, <laughs> exactly. As she leaves the courthouse after uh, Johnny Boy wins. Yeah, she ain't nothing but a gold digger. That's right. Suffer Jim, thanks for the 20. AH has been able to get away with getting uh, the lies up till now because of the way she looks. Yes, we need to stop using the word monster, referring to bad people. Justice for innocent people can't be out. We need to, we, we need to, uh, I, I think what we need is we need clarity in something. We need to be able to, to truly say, like, if a person is a sexual abuser, they need to be, like, that's the problem with these words. These words matter. You know, these words matter and calling someone like uh, a rapist, for example, like you can see why you don't want to be called that. Right. I mean, come on. Thirty six hundred Smitty. Thanks for the five. Great job on the coverage. Hi, Jamie and Rob. How's it going, Jamie and Rob? Hey there, even. I hope you are having a great day. Greetings from Belgium. Well, greetings return from this little bitty land in Tennessee. Appreciate you, though. Again. Hi, Jane and Rob. I hope you're having a great one. It's it's surreal, like doing shout outs on shows. Like this is weird that there have been like eighteen thousand. That's that's bizarre to me. I mean, again, it's it's such a all of this is so bizarre. You know, it's bizarre. You pick up a microphone one day and talk about something, and people they talk about it with you, and it's just like I said, it's 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 crazy, and it's it's interesting. It's interesting how much impact that we can have if we unite and do something. Aaron thinks the five shirt idea. Adam Waldman holding the newspaper, shouting at a dog that pooped on the bed, but the dog has Amber's face. <laughs> Indeed. Eddie T thinks it at the end. Will you do a video on AH trying to revoke Debbie Lloyd's a nursing license? Sounds interesting. I'm going to look into it. I'm going to see what's there. Yeah. I'm going to see what I can find out. How's my bingo card looking? Yeah, yeah. Let's pull up my bingo cards. Let's Let's look at them together, actually. I have my own personal play bingo card, but let's let's pull up our bingo cards together. I don't know if you guys have been playing or not. But let's look. If you haven't been playing, you should. We have two bingo cards. Let's let's look at both of them. Okay. It'll take me just a second to roll back to them because my God, there's so much going on. Okay. So we'll look at the we'll look at the pirate bingo first. All right. Let's check it out. Give me one second. All right. So here's Pirate Bingo. Mm -hmm. Liar, liar, pants on fire. Yes. I claimed liar, liar, pants on fire. Of course. That is uh, that is one that has already been done. You'd say there'd probably been. Uh, <laughs> let's just say if. Uh, <laughs> let's just say if she walked through like a Jordash. Um, <laughs> a a Jordash factory, that whole sucker would have burned down if we're talking about pants being on fire. I mean, my God. 
That woman can help a lot. That's all she does. Is the liar, liar, pants on fire? Yes, very much so, Matt. As far as um, as far as texts concerned, yes, we have had multiple texts brought in. She is gone with that. Yes, indeed. The poopy on the bed. Hmm. No. Nope. The police. Yes. The police were brought up as well. So we have three across the top. I don't remember poop being brought up. Do you remember poop being brought up? I don't remember that. Tug should be on the bingo card. Uh, we could Every day we could play witness bingo and everything else. We need a new card for each time. Crying. She has not cried, actually. Fascinatingly enough. So we have three across the top. You know, um, Twitter, Twitter has not been claimed. That's it, it there. Money, money was indeed brought up. So I roll, I roll is brought up too. makeup, bruise kit. The words bruise kit were actually brought up, you know. Weasel, thanks for the super chat. Just sent you an undeniable proof that both picks presented are not two picks, but one email. I'll look at that in just a second, then. Give me one minute. $100 million. I don't remember $100 million coming up there. Um, okay, the Jason Momoa pick. I'm going to call that Aquaman. I'm not going to say that's, uh, that's Jason Momoa. I'm going to call that Aquaman. And that I'm, I'm going to give. That is an Aquaman. We have objection, of course. It's come up. We've got the free one. Like still, there, there's no, uh, there's no win yet. Oh, well, donations were brought up today. You know, they talked about donations, so that would actually be, so across the, um, across the third row, that would be a win for that one, right? You have the Rocket Man. The Rocket Man was not brought up yet. You have the elevator. Uh, would that be James Franco? I didn't scratch, scratch that one off. So there, Amica Cream. You have Botox which was not brought up as an excuse. The drawings, they were. The staircase incident, we haven't, uh, we have had to, so that one was knocked off. Injuries we had. Um, we actually have had two. You could have scored a bingo across the top or across the uh, middle, and you could have also scored a bingo across the bottom. That's the way I'm looking at that one. I hadn't filled in one of the two blanks. So bingo baby with that one. Let's look at the other one too. So I was playing two cards today. All right. Where's the other card? Here it is. Here's the other card. I love JD. Yep. We got an I love JD right off the top. So she did give us an I love JD. Creepy too. Her love is crazy. Whew. I wanted nothing. We've gotten an I wanted nothing today. So that was actually good too. I pledged. So you would have the, the whole top row would be out because she lost her temper. She makes constipated faces. <laughs> She's alluded to unseen evidence. Looks at Johnny. I don't remember her denying any affairs, you know? New, no, thanks for the five. Twitter was mentioned regarding her tweeting the article. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. So we could have had that one, too. I forgot. Okay, so you're right. You're right. Twitter was mentioned. You are right. You are right. Raquel, thanks for the five. Got to head to bed. Loving partner is calling me to do so. Not tug and chat. We'll have a good one. Catch up on the case later. Appreciate you. Let's see. So... Looks at Johnny. She did look at Johnny. You can catch her. She stares at the uh, the jury a lot, too, trying to sway them. Johnny always looked forward. You notice? He always looked forward. She didn't. Denies a fair. I don't remember a denied fair, though. Makeup. Makeup Bruce kit. That was brought up. Talks over Queen Camille. Yep, that happened. Magical ice. I don't... Did she bring up swelling and I? Yeah, she did bring up ice because she said ice and makeup. So she did bring that up. Blames Johnny's security? Yes. She is blaming every time she gets a chance to throw them on the bus, she does. Uh, the turd space, we got that. Uh, wait, does that mean mention her or does that mean mentions the poop? I'm confused about the turd space. <laughs> you know, that's usually a free space, but how long till it's back on? I, I, they'll, I don't know, they're at lunch. So they get an hour of lunch. I mean, we're listening to it. I have it pulled up in the background. I can hear it like when it comes on and I switch over. My microphone's down for like my my microphone's down at eight. If I turn it down anymore, I won't have any volume. Like they're at. I mean, look at this. Like check it out. Let me see if I can 
photograph this. Like, I can't turn my volume down anymore. Like, I have no more seven to give. I mean, like, check this. I mean, for real. Like, check this out. Like, no joke. Like, they're so low volume. Like, this is all I got. Check it. So, this is my, my voice inlay. It's at eight. Like, if I pull it up out of 100, I normally broadcast at 73. And I've turned it down to eight. Like, I'm having to set against it to uh to broadcast if i move away you can't actually hear me like it you see what i mean like I, that's just me pushing the microphone over to a safe distance <laughs> it's just their audio so when we when we broadcast the the thing let, let me show you what we have to do all right so we're broadcasting i'm using um from the whatever feed we do there's an there's an extension on um on here Check this out. So there's an extension. It's called Volume Master. See that right here? Volume Master allows you to turn the volume up up to 600%. And I'm turning the volume up to 600%. So that, that's where it's at. That's how low the volume is on the in the courtroom. So, I mean, there's just like, there isn't a, there isn't a, a, a good fix for it. I, I don't really know what to tell you. Um, and in the... Um, in the general inlay from um, from Streamyards, like it doesn't go down any lower either. It's just a mess, you know. <laughs> Roman, thanks for the ten. One pirate on pirate bingo. What is the one to the right of free space? Having too much fun here. All right, let me let me pull pirate bingo. Okay. I mean, sorry, like I don't mean to deafen you. I you know not to argue. I'm just saying I can't. Like there's no way I can. Uh, that's donations. That's donations is what it is. Yeah. See, that's why I turned it down. Yesterday I had it on 26% and I was listening to it because I, I, I pulled it back up and I thought, man, that's still loud, you know, the, the inlay for it. So I pushed it all the way down to 15 when we started and I still thought it was loud. So I pushed it down to to uh, eight. I tried four, but I couldn't hear myself. <laughs> like It just did. It, it just died out. So it's like, Lord, what do you do? I'll try to swing the microphone out more and we'll see if it comes in. tug email man i've got like you know for my email uh, i've got like a god i've got like 67 8 uh, god no what does that say because i skipped some since uh since our break since noon i have 73 emails <laughs> so uh, that's what i mean like it's hard to it's hard to figure out what's going on with that let's see that's why I don't write back everyone either. Because I'll pull them up and oh yeah, the uh the different pictures. Uh the photo not photoshopped versus photoshopped. Actually, yeah, I that's that's the okay, let's bring up the picture thing real quick. I think that's a very uh a very good point to bring up. So they were talking about Photoshop versus or not Photoshop, but they were saying cl they, they turned up the clarity filter. And one of those was indeed the same picture. Like when I posted it again, let me pull this up. Because I, I thought when I screenshot it, I thought, what the? Oh my God. I heard a rumor. So here's a real rumor I heard. You want to hear something funny? I heard a rumor that the, um, that I'm just going to call it, say it this way. Okay. You, you take this how you will. I heard a rumor that the newspaper story about newspaper getting thrown sounds like it was real. <laughs> she he wasn't lying. <laughs> He may have tossed on an actual newspaper editor. Adam Waldman, you freaking crazy fool. <laughs> I love Adam Waldman, dude. Like, he is one for... I, mean, I, I freaking love Adam Waldman. Oh, my God. So, the newspaper thing is legit. <laughs> uh. Oh my God! All right, let's talk. 
Oh my God. I'm trying not to laugh here. Well, that's beautiful. So yeah. Um, one of the things like I, uh, again, you can take sourcing as you will. Anybody that talks about sources, you can be, uh, you can be, um, you can be, you know, careful. You can doubt, but I mean, again, you know, I've, um, I produced the Vince Jolivet, uh, uh, dep uh, not deposition, but his witness statement that that wasn't public. Yours truly had it. <laughs> so where did that come from? Did I miracle it up somewhere? I miracled it with amicable cream. You know, uh, the the uh, Eric George depot that where'd that come from? Miracled it with amicable cream. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I got, I had emails from uh, Adam Waldman emails from Twitter. I got from a source and I had permission to talk about those, which I did. I thought that was an important conversation too, because they didn't just target Adam Waldman. Adam, that's important, by the way. I always hate diminishing that. Adam Waldman paid a high price to be in this thing. Adam Waldman was targeted ruthlessly by very powerful people like crazy things but when he was suspended from uh from twitter it's easy to gloss over that and say well they've targeted jd no they targeted jd and they targeted adam Walton, both of them it's 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 a mess and new thanks for the five amber steam song should be <laughs> don't trust me <laughs> yeah that, that that would work out all right, look at the, okay, this is what they were questioning between her pictures. See, the reality of what they saw, like when the police went in, it looked more like this. And if you're, if you're looking at that, you got to remember, when the police talked about it, they said that she had pink, pink cheeks and puffy eyes. Amber Heard put this in. And even with this is the clarity turned up all the way. You can tell because you can see the uh, the design for the necklace. The necklaces are just blurs and stuff. You can't tell what they are. Although that is a different necklace. You can absolutely tell that is different. You know, this is different earrings, no earrings. So you can tell that she has changed. So between that, like she does this little shuffle where the other day she did indeed say that these were taken on the same day. But now she says, well, they were taken apart from one another. You know, they weren't they weren't taken together. You know, again, you, you've got to believe her, guys. you got to believe her. You've got to listen and you've got to believe. And people used to like just throw fits about me saying that you can't listen and believe. I used to hear that all the time. But th this is this is the perfect example of what listening and believing gets you. Oh, I saw this. This was funny, by the way. So uh, Legal Mindset posted this. I thought this was really funny. Check this out. Give me a second. He was like, <laughs> what her nose used to look like. <laughs> what she claims it looked like. Like, it's so freaking shit. <laughs> oh, his nose of anybody's. Look at that nose. Oh. And what it looks like now, it's Pinocchio. <laughs> She's saying, when Johnny got me, that's what my nose looked like. But what it really looks like is Pinocchio nose. <laughs> oh, my God, that's hilarious. Mm. Stephanie Nelson Davis, thank you and welcome. Thank you for the up graded membership and welcome to the tuggernauts appreciate that <laughs> i love some of the memes that have come out of this for sure <laughs> somebody messaged me just a minute ago they donated to paypal and they were like don't use this for charity <laughs> <laughs> I was saying though earlier, okay, like we live out in the like we live out in the sticks where everybody's poor, man. Like they're poor out here. So like PayPal oftentimes, you know, that puts money like right where I can get to it. Like YouTube, I can't get to it but once a month. So it's you know, it takes a while. But PayPal, I can get it right away. And um it costs uh usually like if like if somebody gets removed from a home or somebody has a need, usually you can fix it up anyone like a starter kit unless they need a bed or something um you can uh usually do that within a hundred bucks so usually I, I average 100 to 150 bucks is what the you know go buy a coat or go buy pants or whatever that's why i like paypal like somebody was like don't use that there 
Because I, I was saying that. I thought that was just funny. I uh, I like to use that for it. But anyway, so these are these are amber herds off the island. Off the island pictures. Now, she claimed on the island, again, that Johnny Depp, he held her hostage. Hostage behind a bead curtain door, noted it out. Like, we, we, you, you got to think back to his testimony. In his testimony, we saw a layout to his, uh, to his beach home. You remember that? In his beach home, we saw a bead door, right? It was like a, like a little closet looking area. And it had a, a like a little entry and a bathroom. <laughs> and she said, you know, she was held hostage in the beaded off area. Apparently she couldn't get out of the beaded door by herself. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this stuff is, I mean, come on. That's pretty funny, right? But while she was there, Here we go. I'm pulling up a, another deposition, by the way. I'm saving one is what I'm doing. I love the depositions. I love reading depositions. Actually, I I don't I don't just like reading depositions. I like um I like the fact that they allow you and I to uh to actually look at this stuff outside of it. I'm probably gonna put Tara Roberts stuff in since we have pictures and stuff. I'm probably gonna do a, a video of her again. But these are the pictures of her after claiming that she'd been assaulted. This is a photo shoot. You can see the, you know, the photo shoot pretty well. There are also color pictures. They didn't introduce the color pictures. They introduced these, but there are color pictures too. And color pictures, like, like she looks tired, like worn out in those black and white pictures, you know? Like uh, somebody I somebody I know is around said, well, what's this right here? Well, there's bags under her eyes. She looks rough, but because if you look at the color, there are no bags. You're like, well, you you don't you don't see that detail is what I mean. You know, I'm sure they're there, but you don't see that detail. Apart from all the alcohol, because she drinks so much, she probably just worn out. She lives she lives hard. You know, like, like if you you know not not to be mean, but if you were if you drink to that level, my God, you know, you're, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to damage your skin. You're going to, you're going you're gonna to be tired. Here's the, here's the color pictures. So see, like you can look at her. Actually, we could save one of those. Let me save one so we can blow it up. So you can see her face in that because that's probably the best way to look at her. Actually, I'll be glad once, once all these cases are over, I'll be glad to uh, scrub my damn computer and get all these pictures of Amber Heard away from me. Cause I never want to look at another damn picture of her face again. Never want to see her again, ever. You know, that will be one joy from all of this. I can scrub her out of my life and I will never, ever see her again. Because I had no interest in her before. The only thing I have interest in is talking about this freaking case <laughs> and getting justice. You know, seeing justice. Because, ugh. But I, I wouldn't have known who she was without Johnny Depp. I never would have known who she was. 2012, thanks for the two. I worry AH trying to snort the uh, lane lines in traffic. It's funny. Those, those, not the white lines. That's not what it means. You know, thanks for the 449. You can make a t-shirt that says, no, I didn't say that. You misheard. <laughs> oh, it's funny, actually. You misheard me. Yeah, her tactic. That is funny. Misheard me. That is actually funny. I like to play on words. So looking at this picture, though, like when you zoom in, like again, it's going to break up somewhat. But look. Like you could tell there are no injuries. And I mean, you could see, like she said, I think the most telling picture, if we're talking about any picture with proof, it, the Tokyo ones are probably the best because the Tokyo ones, you can see Amber Heard. I mean, you could see her clearly. You can, you can see almost like everything. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty ridiculous. You know, she has a, she has like a open back dress they were talking about. And in the open back dress, she keeps looking backwards in it. And she was saying, the reason I keep looking backwards is because I'm afraid that the bruises are showing. And let's see. 
pulled up one second. So here's this picture. This is the picture. Like, well, give me one second. I'm pulling it up. Actually, I'm pulling it up off my own timeline. That's hilarious. I did a search for the Tokyo one, and it linked me to uh, it linked me to myself. <laughs> uh, it linked me to my own Twitter. So that's hilarious. I did a search for my own Twitter page. <laughs> but here, look, you can see like how far down it plunges all the way to her butt crack. You know, I mean, it does. Like, that's just reality. Some dude at Tonku, thanks for the five. Amber has said he had multiple, she has had multiple firsthand experience of abuse from powerful men. Who are they? That's a good question. That's quite a good question. Are they back? I'm not seeing them back. I hear feedback. Yeah, here they come. Here they come. What you'll have is the, um, the court, here, I've got them. But the the channels that have a uh, the channels that have a uh, camera in the courtroom will go live first, so they actually are allowed. But then you'll have the what we're looking at is what they call the live view feed, and the live view feed um, it takes a minute to go live, but we've got it now. But yeah, in the the UK, I mean, I'm rather in Tokyo. Like she's wearing a dress; you can see her butt. Forgot to mention the part where Amber said, Depp, her honeymoon. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that that Tokyo, you remember the the photograph where uh, Johnny Depp has a, an injury to his nose? You can tell there's something off with his nose on their Tokyo uh, on their Tokyo uh, honeymoon. And she said, well, that's that's Photoshop. It's Photoshop. I mean, come on. Matt, thanks for the 449. How many days we think will cross the last? I don't want it to end. Uh, I don't know. It depends on where they want to go with it. I mean, they could go another day possibly, but it, it depends. Like you want to you want to tear apart everything you can aim at. And they're going to have rebuttal too. You've got to remember that she's going to actually be asked rebuttal questions as well. So I don't really know how far that will go. You know, I don't mean to be vague in that. I just, you know, uh, it goes until they, they decide it doesn't go, until they get all the questions that they were aiming at in. Wow, that's cool. So I got a, I got $110 in, um, in PayPal donations. So I will, I will probably use that to, there's a, there's a situation that I, I heard about down here where um, there was a a kid removed from um, from their home and brought in. I don't think they have uh, money to – I don't think the place that takes them in, I don't think they have money to put them up. I don't – I mean, they they have – they have to because, I mean, what else do they do? I, I, you know it's crazy in a place like where I live. Say CPS removes a kid. You know, the state has to take them for a minute. They don't have beds. They, they have such an overflow. So churches usually help out and stuff. And um, private private people. I try to help out with that. Try to help out with uh, physical needs like clothes, food, you know, stuff like that. And that money's just right there. So that'll be good. New thanks for the five. We shouldn't label her a monster. We've all seen Monster Inc. <laughs> Monsters are much nicer than her. Yeah, we actually like monsters <laughs> better. Stephanie Nelson, thanks for the five. Watching her lie so flirking badly makes me actually uh, have panic attacks. She's an abuser because I've seen that look before. Yeah, I've worked with, uh, like I said, I have work in mental health and I have worked with many a manipulator and many a user like this. I've worked with the people like her that do exactly what she's doing. Some of them, um, some of them are exactly the same as she is. You know, the only difference is um, it, it, she brings up mental health uh, or she brings up, you know, going to the therapist and stuff like it's an insult because she didn't go there as part of treatment. She went there as part of her manipulation tactic. She went to destroy Johnny Depp and she thought, you know what I can do? I can weaponize this person that has to listen to me and they have to believe me. It's their job. So she managed to do that. 
Like she didn't go to get help. Like there's a big difference when I say, uh, you know, that that's why when they were bringing in therapists and they're talking about like Dr. Cowan and this person and that person, it's really irritating because as Shannon Curry said, and she was very right about this, it's, it's unethical to use a therapist because they are your advocate. Like if you come in and you were to see me as a therapist, I'm there to believe you. That is where I do believe and listen and believe. As a way to help you, you do listen and you do believe. Now, if you come in with some kind of claim that, uh, you know, obviously shouldn't be believed, you know, uh, like, I don't know, the the Eiffel Tower sexually abused me, then, you know, then we'll look at other diagnostics, you know, but... Let's see. No, thanks for the vibe. She's uh, banking on the plausible deniability and feigning ignorance. Yeah, she 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 pulled that in there, you know. She pulled that in there for uh, to make sure that her her uh, her story can never be locked down. Yeah, they're getting ready to go back. They're having a sidebar here, so that's what we're still talking. By the way, Sarah, thanks for the five. Ah, better give it up. All the witches get caught and burned at the stake. She needs to stop making it hard for other victims and survivors. That's exactly right. She needs to stop the crap. Charlene, thanks for 20. Your coverage and commentary are phenomenal. Thanks, Tug. Hey, thank you all. Appreciate you being here. I'm a 16th. I just tell people, there's 15,000. If you tell people we're live again, Aquaman. <laughs> That's a good idea. Sorry. Did they already bring in the jury? Oh, okay. I thought they were saying they already brought in the jury. I was like, when did they do that? I didn't catch that. <laughs> yeah. I thought I missed the jury coming in or something. Or they brought them in beforehand. Man, I can't stand her. Wow. Thank you. Somebody else donated a, a hundred bucks. Like I said, we can help. Like I say, that'll help. Uh, that'll help somebody directly. So thank you. I'm not trying to plug it that way either. I'm just saying that's the reality of it. So thank you for that. All right. Thank you. You can be seated. All right. Your next question. Uh, Tom, may I please have you put up uh, Plaintiff's Exhibit 881A? Ms. Hurd, I'm going to ask you to take a look at Plaintiff's Exhibit 881A. Um, this is one of the articles containing the counterclaim statements by Adam Waldman. Is that correct? I haven't seen the article yet. Okay. Why don't we go to page 8 of this article? Adam Waldman, Depp's lawyer, said afterwards, quote, Amber Heard and her friends in the media use fake sexual violence allegations as both a sword and shield, depending on their needs. They have selected some of her sexual violence hoax facts as a sword, inflicting them on the public and Mr. Depp. Do you see that? Yes, I do. Is that one of the statements that you allege are defamatory? It's defamatory? That's, that's correct. Um, can we please go to Plaintiff's Exhibit 881B? And if we could go to page 10 and 11. In exhibit, Plaintiff's Exhibit 881B, Depp's lawyer Adam Waldman said the various discrepancies prove that nothing heard and her friends said about the events of May 21, 2016 could be considered credible. Quite simply, this was an ambush, a hoax. They set Mr. Depp up by calling the cops. But the first attempt didn't do the trick, he told the DailyMail.com. 
The officers came to the penthouses, thoroughly searched and interviewed and left after seeing no damage to face or property. So Amber and her friends spilled a little wine and roughed the place up, got their story straight under the direction of a lawyer and publicist, and then placed a second call to 911. But even this didn't have, oh, apologize. You're fine. Okay. We had sidebar already. Wow, that was quick. Again, you know, they're afraid that they're going to have a, they're afraid that they're going to have something actually get said that, I don't know, means something. So <laughs> they're like, no, no, don't let it happen. I love that. I love the fact that they're, they're that scared of, of Camille and what she's doing. She's asking the right questions too, by the way, she's absolutely been asking the right questions. The right questions are, did you lie about this? Yeah, you did lie about that. Cool. You know, well then Johnny Depp wins. <laughs> it's very much the, uh, uh. Now she admitted though. I mean, for real, like all joking aside, she, admitted that the op-ed was about JD. She admitted that she was writing about sexual violence and someone like JD, JD and others. She said, not just Johnny. So again, like what, what more do you need as far as admissions go? You know what I'm saying? Like she is tarred and feathered herself. I love it, by the way. I love the fact that she could be so monumentally stupid as to allow herself to uh, to get caught that way. And Camille has had to spend a lot of time. I, I wonder. Do you think? What do you think? Cat lady smells like. I mean, seriously, like, I'm, I'm not joking. I'm being mean. I mean, what do you think she smells like? Do you think she smells like mothballs? <laughs> I'm not trying to be mean. Do you think she smells like mothballs? I'm serious, though. Do you think she smells like mothballs? Hey, Trisha, thanks for the 25. Tug, is it my gadget or is the filming blurry? Coming out not clear. Check your um, check your settings. If you check your settings, you can adjust the quality. The quality is actually uh, is actually not bad. Uh, I've got pretty good quality on the. If I set mine to advanced quality, I have to go in and reset my quality on. Uh, there's some. They have a little bit of blur just off of their production value. Uh, That's part of, you know, the, the in-house court thing, but it's not bad if you, like I said, you go in and you uh, just make sure your, your value is set to the highest quality available, which is typically, you know, quality's good. Yeah, there's a, I mean, there's a little bit of, eh, to it. She has a little bit of, <clears throat> well, you know, they have a little bit of indistinct in there, but it's not bad. Like if you watch, uh, if you watch videos of the trial, like if you go in and you look at like thumbnails of it, you'll notice that they're actually not very clear. <laughs> okay. And if we can please uh, pull up plaintiff's exhibit 881C. All right. Let's see what we got here. And go to page 11. This is another article, Ms. Heard, where you argue that uh, Mr. Waldman's statements are defamatory, correct? I don't know if this is taken from that article because I can't see the article in full. It's page 11 of the article. And the statement reads, statement say okay. 
We have reached the beginning of the end of Ms. Hurd's abuse house against Mr. Depp. Is that correct? Is that one of the defam what you claim is one of the defamatory statements sent by Mr. Waldman? I believe so. Okay. Thank you. Adam didn't defame any of these people, by the way. Sir, you're not aware themselves. of any career opportunities that you lost as a result of Mr. Waldman's statements, are you? Well, it's kind of hard to point to the jobs you're not offered, right. to the gigs you don't get. You were not replaced in Aquaman 2, were you? They released me from my contract, and I fought to stay in it, and they kept me in it. I just don't know how much I'm in, actually, of the final cut. And you She's testified yesterday told that L'Oreal actually extended your contract in April of 2020. Is that correct? In part, they extended and, it and held me. And you testified yesterday that L'Oreal extended your contract again in November of 2021, correct? Not exactly. They extended it because it couldn't use me or any of the materials uh, for me. And that extension was for 20 months, right? That's correct. Ms. Hurd, you testified yesterday how Mr. Waldman's statements, quote, torture you every day. Do you recall that testimony? I do. And then, um, and that you look at them every day. I look at the um, online attacks, the media, you can't avoid it, to be honest, that those statements are often attached to. I don't look at his statements every day. And you testified that you just want to move on with your life, right? I do very much want to move on with my life. But you've gone out of your way to engage with Mr. Waldman on social media, haven't you? Yep. Uh, I have made a comment, I believe, once. I did not, I would not characterize that as engaging with him. Let's please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 1266. <laughs> Getting called on your nastiness. I. She. You, your microphone. Your microphone. I, I don't have this yet, so I'm asking for it to right be there. given to okay. me before. It's a photograph. I think it's just a. Mm -hmm. This is your tweet, right, Ms. Hurd? That is correct. I'm going to move to admit and publish this tweet. Objection. I'm sorry. Is you, what's the objection? I'm sorry. Relevance. All right. I'll overrule the objection. 881C in evidence. Can we please have it published to the jury? Yes. I'm sorry, 1266, I apologize. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. This is from March 26, 2021, right? That's what it looks like, yes. And this is after he made the statement you claim, the statements you claim are defamatory, right, Ms. Hurd? 21, yes. Ms. Hurd, you tweeted at Adam Waldman, quote, yes, Mr. Waldman, I may be wearing makeup on this occasion, but on every occasion you will still be short. Did I read that right? Yeah, she mocked him. Yes. See, she went after Adam Waldman. Oh, you're such a tough guy. We can put this down. Thank Look, you. she thinks she's she thinks she's a Billy Bob That's badass. Right. Since your relationship with Mister Depp ended, you have completed your level three sommelier training, haven't you? I haven't completed it yet. You're I just on stopped. level two. No, I'm on level three. You also have had a baby, right? I have. And you enjoy being a mother more than anything. You still love to cook. I do. And you love to hike. Taking a break on hiking for a minute. You have friends, right? I do have friends. And you spend time with those friends? Occasionally, when I can. And you exercise regularly? Every day. You just filmed a movie in March of 2022, isn't that right? Yes, the one I just shot in Guatemala that I spoke of earlier. And you have, um, you had a major role in a major film that's scheduled to be released soon, is that correct? Aquaman 2? As I said, I don't know if I will even be in the final cut or how much I will be. It was difficult to stay in the movie. You struck Mr. Depp multiple times during your relationship, didn't you, Ms. Heard? There were many times I had to use my body to defend myself, and that included swinging wherever I could. If it meant I could get away, absolutely. If it meant a, a difference between a sore face and a broken nose, you bet I would. You That's bet. your testimony under oath that you never struck Mr. Depp as the initial aggressor? Well, I, he was holding me against the wall by my neck. You know, I might be the first person to have been the, the, the first one to slap 
which happened in Australia, you know, and he was choking me, but I wouldn't say I was the initial aggressor in that situation. You got physical with Mr. Depp often during your relationship, didn't you? I had to defend myself as best I could. Um, didn't seem to make much of a difference. You just couldn't control yourself, could you, Ms. Heard? I tried to defend myself when I could, um, but it was after years of not defending myself. Can we please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 356? And Your Honor, portions of the ex exhibit were entered into evidence yesterday, but we moved to admit the entire recording. All right, and wait. I can confirm that there's no other voices besides Ms. Hurd's and Mr. Depp's. And I intend to play um, from 129.27 to 130.07. So I have 356A in evidence. Is any objection to the, the entire 356 coming into evidence? Oh, if you may, if I may. Okay. Hold on just for sure. a moment, Your Honor. I have to check on something. Which one? for now and we'll double check our notes on that because there was one that had something in that that we couldn't go and i just can't right. find my notes on that right, right we'll now. just call it 356b for now that's fine and thank you your honor could you just give me the the times again yes of course okay. one two nine twenty seven to one three zero zero seven all right and i'm told that we already have a b so you have to be 356c okay thank you thank you your honor See that I'll be perfect. I can't promise you I won't get physical with that. God, I fucking sometimes get so mad. I lose it. I can fucking promise you I'm going to do everything to change. I promise you. I'm not going to go around divorce. I will not say divorce unless I leave. Unless it's it. And then I hope you leave me. I'm not going to. Me too. I will leave you. It's fair. I can't do it. You know, and I think honestly, if we hold each other accountable to that, it's fair. Ms. Heard, that's you and Mr. Depp on that recording, correct? That's correct. And you told Mr. Depp, quote, I can't promise you that I won't get physical, end quote, correct? That, that's correct. He was and accusing me of instigating something in the situation I explained yesterday. And you also told Mr. Depp that sometimes you get so mad you lose it, correct? That's correct. I also explained the context of that fight yesterday. Isn't that exactly what you told Ben King on your way back from Australia? That you get so mad you lose it? Absolutely not. I know that that's what Ben King testified to, but I never had that conversation with Ben King. Uh -huh. If we could please In play. Meantime, I'm sorry. Um, I checked and I have no objection to the entirety of 356 oh, coming so in. So 356 in its entirety will be in evidence. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. We could she wanted to just play interrupt. From what's now been admitted, Plaintiff's Exhibit 356 in its entirety from 705 to 743. I'm not going to be in a physical fucking altercation don't. with you. Then don't. You fucking hit me last night. You fucking. What about all the other times you spit? Hey, come on, you cannot act like that. It's about that. It's well, not. Well, on a plane, I can't spit. No, and you hit back. So don't act like you don't fucking participate. I pushed you. I'm not going to get into the details of that fight. You and I both know that you split when there is no physical violence involved. And that you do it at me, like at the very beginning of fights these days. And if you split and you go into a different room and you don't actually leave that house, it does nothing but perpetuate the fight. And you don't actually do it respectfully. You don't. Ms. Heard, is that you and Mr. Depp on this recording? Yes, it is. Can we please uh, pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 343? And I believe that one's been admitted already hmm. to evidence. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. And just for the record, um, we're playing from 24601 to 24720. I said to Travis, I said, Good. no, I said to you, hey, okay. tell Travis okay. what just happened. Oh, you told me to do it. You yeah. told me to. You said, go do that. So no, tell, tell him what you said. And I lied. And that you punched me in the You're fucking right. thing. And you, you figured it all out. And you said, no, fuck that. No, I didn't. What the fuck are you talking about? And I, I watched you, you lie. And then I, I didn't punch you, by the way. You, I'm sorry that I didn't uh, uh, hit you 
across the face in a proper slap, but I was hitting you. It was not punching you. Babe, you're not punched. Don't tell me what it feels like to be punched. You, you know, you've been a lot of fights, been around a long time. I don't know. Yeah. No, I, when you fucking have a close You face. didn't get punched. You got hit. I'm sorry I hit you like this, but I did not punch you. I did not fucking deck you. I fucking was hitting you. I don't know what the motion of my actual hand was, but you're fine. I did not hurt you. I did not punch you. I was hitting you. How are you? How, what am I supposed to do? Do this? I, I'm not sitting here bitching about it, am I? You are. That's the difference between me and you. You're a fucking baby. Because you, start you are such a baby! Grow the fuck up, Johnny! I did start a physical fight. Yeah, you did, so I had because, to get the fuck out of there. Yes, you did. So you did the right thing, the big thing. The, you know what? You are admirable. That's you and Mr. Depp on that recording, right, Mr. That's correct. And you said you hit Mr. Depp, right? Yeah, I had to hit his body to get Ms. him Hurd, out of the door. My question was, you said on that recording that you hit Mr. Depp, right? Yes, I did. And you accused him of being a baby for not wanting to be in a physical fight with you, right? Incorrect. I accused him of being a baby for complaining about me hitting him when he was trying to get through the door. I was trying to barricade. Can we please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit uh, 368? It sounds terrified, Again, doesn't she? I'm terrified. Just Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd. We call you a baby. I'm, I'm going to move for the ex entire exhibit to be moved into evidence. All right. Any objection to 368? Uh, I don't think so. No, Your Honor. All right. No objection. 368 in evidence in its entirety. This is a shitty lot. Any, anyway, I opened the bathroom door when you were knocking on it. After a few times, I opened. And, you, you know, you just commit. He just kept going. You just kept going, kept going. I tried to close the door three times, you know. Please, please, just don't, you know, and then wait. And then, then I, 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 I accidentally, I swear, when I was trying to close the door, I guess it scraped your toes. I, I didn't, I, you know, I didn't mean to do that. And I bent down and you either pushed or you kicked. I think you kicked the door open. I mean, so the door, yeah, more open. So that it would I hit did. me. And it hit no, me. I, wait, I didn't mean wait. to. I didn't know it that. It hit me in the fucking head. But I did not mean to do that. I, I don't know what to I was about. bent down behind the door. I did not do anything to I did not kick a, a door or push a door so that it would hit you. I did not. I, I swear. I, I don't even, that did not. It was not my intention. I, I think I remember when the door scraped my toes, I, um, I, I reacted, but this whole the door thing i i remember I, I never did that that wasn't on purpose i might have done it on accident okay but so let's say that was an accident i, I then stood up i don't even know if i said i mean i might have said like what the fuck what, you know whatever because i just been hit in the head with the fucking corner of a door i'm so sorry i did not i'm sorry about and then i stood up and then you fucking clock me. I, I remember hitting you as a response to the door thing. Mm. Mm. And I'm really sorry about hitting you with the door or, or hitting your head. I did not mean to, nor... You didn't uh, mean to hit me in the head with the door, but you meant to I did punch mean, me in the jaw. I meant to hit you, and I... I I did not do this thing with the door. I, I do remember. I did mean to hit you. So that you didn't yeah. mean. The door? No, God, no, I didn't. And but punching me in the in the jaw. I didn't. Did. Okay, I'm sorry. I hit you. I did mean to hit you, but it was in a res, in response. I just reacted in response to my foot. I just reacted, and I'm sorry. It's below me. Your foot. Well, that was why you punched me. Yeah. But. But I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I. What's your blame, Johnny Depp, for that? Mr. Depp on that recording, right? I that's was correct. barricaded. And Mr. Depp was hiding from you in the bathroom. Incorrect. Isn't that right, Ms. Hurd? Incorrect. Well, Mr. Depp said on that recording, I opened the bathroom door when you were knocking on it. Does he? he? I don't know if he said that. And I, I didn't hear that. And Mr. Detail. Depp said, when I was trying to close the door, I guess it scraped your toes. 
He says that, doesn't he? Correct. And then you kicked the bathroom door into his head, didn't you? No, I didn't. And, and I then you punched him in the jaw. Defended myself in that audio. You can hear it for yourself. Right. And then you punched him in the jaw. I also did not do that. I tried to make that clear on the audio tape too. So, in futility. So Mr. Depp said, you meant to punch me in the jaw, right? Are you asking me what he said on the, yeah. on the recording? Yes, he said that. And then you respond, I meant to hit you, didn't you? I, as I explained yesterday, I was trying to get him off the door. And you said, I remember I did mean to hit you. Meaning the door, the door was on my feet. You've I reacted this, instinctively to that. Yeah, you've heard this audio before, haven't you, Ms. Heard? Yeah, we've already had this trial before. Yeah, you've played, it was played for you when you were deposed in 2016 in connection with your divorce from Mr. Depp, wasn't it? That's one of the times I've heard it, yes. Okay. So you've had plenty of time to think about how to respond to this recording, haven't you? I don't know what you mean by that. Well, let's take a look at how you responded to it the first time. Can we please pull up what will be marked Plaintiff's Exhibit 1261? The next thing that I'm going to play your, your to Honor. you okay. uh, as Q. Right. Oh, if you want to come. Uh, she just admits again she co-opted that story this has happened multiple times actually she started saying that she was hiding in the bathroom from johnny depp she was barricaded you heard her just say that right that that she barricades herself in even though it is well established that johnny depp runs from physical fights he doesn't like physical fights you know i mean that's a because like he said if you let somebody push you and push you and push you, that's how you start a physical fight because people will push you until you blow up. Like that is a tactic that a lot of manipulators will use on, especially on men. They'll push and push and push, try to get a visceral reaction. They'll try to get a, like a yelling or a, or a, an explosive physical reaction. And it's, then they can, they can do whatever they want. They own them afterwards. They can call the police or do anything. But he talks about it barricading himself in the bathroom. She talks about punching himself in the face. And now she's the victim in that story, too. Meanwhile, her proof is with words monster. If she mentions monster, that means physical violence. But if, uh, if she actually admits to physical violence, then that actually is somehow the monster Johnny Depp. <laughs> it's, it's such a convoluted web that we hear about. I'm glad that this is live. I'm glad that people actually see this. Like I said, I, I started covering this in 2019 because when I looked at it, I was, I was stunned by this stuff and just more and more kept coming out. So um, I will. So your honor for reference, and I will provide a copy of the deposition, Ms. Hurd's deposition in the divorce. It's uh, page 372 lines, starting at line five through 377, line 12. All right, I think. Okay, I have the next copy. May I approach, Your Honor? Yes, ma'am. I thought they called for another sidebar <laughs> for a second. Thank you. They're handing out. They're impeaching her with their own testimony. Because again, what you have to do is prove that she's a liar. Your Honor, if you prove that she's a liar. Can we please play? Can we just get to that page, make sure everybody's at the oh, could you could you say the page number again? Yes, please? absolutely. Page 372, lines five to 377, line one is what I have. Twelve. Right. Line twelve. If we could have a moment, Your Honor, to read it before it's played. Hey, chat, would you do me a favor? Give me a shout out for my wife there. Say, hey, Miss Umbrella. <laughs> yeah. Give her a shout out. She patiently doesn't complain while I, uh, while I do this every day. And I've continued to cover this for a million years.
Okay. I, 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 I still don't think it's an impeachment, Your Honor, after reading it. I'll overrule objection. Go ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. If we can please have it published to the jury in the gallery. All right. The next thing that I'm going to play to you uh, as cue. Would you listen to this, please? <laughs> Look at th this is her 2016, by the way. So that, if you were wondering what I was trying to say, is that was her 2016 divorce statement. Look at how she carries and comports herself. If she had PTSD, that would have shown in 2016. But if you go back, and you can look that up, by the way, if you've never seen it before. Maybe we'll play a little bit of it after the trial. But uh, yeah, you can tell. Like, there is no PTSD. And they can do a pro they can do it through reading the deposition, Your Honor. They don't need to do that. They asked him to take it off the screen. <laughs> People got to see her like that there. Oh, they they weren't happy about that. They weren't happy that because you actually got to you got to see her in her deposition. And you just get to see how like nasty and vitriolic. Of course, I'm sure they fought tooth and nail to keep that out. And apparently they they weren't supposed to get it in, but they did. So people got to see her real time and how she looked. Okay. I think that's funny. That's fine. Thank you. I have no objection. Can we please uh, start it over? Okay. So I guess they are. Are they going to let them play it? Because she wanted them to read it. The next thing that I'm going to play to you. Oh, here we go. We got uh, as Hugh. Oh, oh. Would you listen to this, please? Elaine got burned there. Let's get on. So you told him in that uh, uh, excerpt that you hit him with the door, but did not intend to hit him. Correct? Did you say that? I uh, I said whatever I said in that recording. Okay. I don't. Um, when you play it for me, it's hard for me to remember every single. And that's a recording marked as exhibit the punch. Uh, Q. It was Q. Just played. Q. Would you continue to listen to exhibit Q? <clears throat> Are these from the same day? Uh, um, I, I reacted, but it, this whole the, the door thing, I, 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 I never did that. That was in my purpose. I had done an accident. Okay. Let's say that was an accident. I then stood up. I don't even know if I said that. I might have said, what the fuck? You know, whatever. Is that 
stuck in the head of the fucking water of the door. I'm so sorry, I did not. I'm sorry. And then I stood up. Okay. And then you felt the clock. I, I remember hitting you as a response to the door thing. Yeah. So on the tape, you tell at that? Johnny Depp that she you did about it. to hit him. And it also misrepresents, and misrepresents okay. what actually happened, which is him trying to get into a room. I'm trying to keep him out of <coughs> And then he runs the door over my toes, trying to get into the room. I tried to push him out of it, which is what the hit is referred to. And Johnny, whenever he was injured or touched at all, was referred to it in these ways of punching or clocked or whatever. And whether you didn't discuss it with him or not, the last thing you do in, in talking to him afterwards or trying to reconcile with him is to get into what the definition of those words mean to him. It's never, I never even addressed it. He would, if he was ever pushed, it was, it was a quote. He called it a, a cold clock. I mean, it's just very dramatic. Isn't it true? Smiling and nodding. As that audio is recording She's laughing. is being played in your deposition, aren't you, Ms. Hurd? Not smiling because of the audio. I'm smiling because of what's happening around me. You even roll your eyes at one point, don't you? I was sitting opposite a whole table full of lawyers who were snickering, laughing, and rolling their eyes at me while I was talking. Uh-huh. Someone else's fault. Is there something amusing about kicking a door into your husband's head? No, I was rolling my eyes and commenting on what I was experiencing at that time. In recounting yeah. the story. Is there something amusing to you about punching your husband in the jaw? That is not what I was smiling about. And no, I do not think it's amusing. Ms. Hurd, you testified yesterday that all you want to do is move on. Do you remember that testimony? Yes, I do. Yeah, your exact words were, quote, I just want him to leave me alone. I want to move on with my life and he won't let me. Do you remember that? Yes, that is correct. That's not true, is it, Ms. Hurd? It is very true. You just haven't been able to move on with your life, have you? From Mr. Depp. Well, I'm here, aren't I? In fact, on October 11th, 2018, you actually commenced an arbitration action against Mr. Depp for defamation, didn't you? Um, I don't recall that, no. Your Honor, may I approach? May we approach? Ah, uh, this may be interesting. So in 2018, her arbitration action for defamation. I'm going to hear more. I'm curious. So 2018. Arbitration. Action. I do take notes. <laughs> She she's tried the the defamation before. It it's just it's astounding to me. Well, plaintiffs exhibit two one nine. Oh, show me. Give me that sexy stuff. Give me that sexy evidence. And Miss Heard, if you could please read to yourself the first page of exhibit two one nine. All right. God, she's slow reader. You didn't read a whole page there. There's no way. And if you can also read to yourself the second page of Exhibit 219. Unless it's in crayon or something. There's no way she read a whole page there. I'm just telling you. And if you can scroll down, Tom, again, Miss Heard, just to look at that page.
Camille's like, come on. Come on. I'm ready to take it out. And then scroll down to the next page, please. Got all those people there. You know, none of those people. Somebody was asking her all one side for her and one side no. There's like a, the a a row of people behind her that's there to for support of her team. And the rest uh they have you see how there's empty aisles? They don't have anybody on her side. The rest of those people are there just to watch the trial. And you know they didn't come there to support her. <laughs> that refresh your recollection, Ms. Heard, that you did, in fact, in October of 2018, two months before you published the op-ed in this case, that's the subject of this case, you initiated an arbitration against Mr. Depp for defamation? It's not my understanding I initiated an arbitration. I, it's my understanding that our lawyers sent a lawyer, I mean, a letter to his lawyers after he called me a liar again, effectively, in an interview. And that's two months before your op-ed that was published in December of 2018, right? That is correct. And that's six months before Mr. Depp filed a case, this case against you, correct? That's correct. So you fired the first shot, not Mr. Depp. I disagree, we sent a letter. Thank you. Ms. Heard, isn't it true that you once filled out a customs form falsely so that you could get... May we approach? Okay. Uh -huh. This is going into the... This is going into all of the, the fun stuff. You know, we're going into talking about uh, Homeland Security. Little known fact. She actually defrauded Homeland Security, lied to them about something. She had a, I was talking about this at break. She had a, uh, she had an assistant named Samantha McMillan. Samantha McMillan is from the UK. She lied about Samantha McMillan saying that she was just a friend visiting, even though Kate James, her former employee, turned over not only the letter that was written to Homeland Security, but also checks proving that that was her employee. All of this speaks to impeachment of character. If she lies about one thing, she'll lie about a thousand things. And yeah, I mean, that that's exactly why you bring all of that up. So I'm sure that's what they're, that's what they've got to be talking about. I mean, if there's something else that they have there, wow. <laughs> Cat lady. Lord. God, could you imagine trying to defend Amber Heard full-time, like if that was your full-time job, can you imagine how miserable and alone you would be? Like if you look at the two teams, like Depp's team looks like, a, they don't look like, they don't look like they're attending a funeral, you know? Amber Heard's team, they are. They're attending the funeral of her, uh, of her false allegation, you know? Live before a studio audience, we get to see her career die. <laughs> you know I mean, uh, by the way, um, the mainstream media, I believe, owes me an apology. Um, and I would say that to Amber Heard, Eve Barlow went on, because months ago, I reported from sources at Warner Brothers that she was done at Warner Brothers. She had been cut out. They were, they were talking about cutting her out of the movie. She was fired. I, I, as I said, they were even thinking about dumping her footage. I talked about all of that stuff. And these folks, they called me a liar, a bigot, a sexist. <laughs> I got hit pieced by some journalists. Yeah, I'll take my apology now. <laughs> it's amazing. That's why you never listen to the mainstream. Because the mainstream, like, they don't know anything. They just, uh, they listen to the PR from companies. Warner Brothers was trotting out uh, Peter Saffron, the producer of Aquaman 2. And he was talking about how they loved Amber Heard. They thought she was the best for it. But secretly, behind the scenes, they not only 
didn't think that they weren't even going to they they waited until two weeks before the extension on her movie clause was up and they decided hey we'll bring her back in but they weren't initially i mean they were going to bring her back in and they she tried to blame johnny depp about that too she just tried that yesterday and i did a video this morning showing you warner brothers themselves debunked that they debunked it in a court document they said that johnny depp was not the cause of it she was the cause of it so i dropped a video on that this morning if you missed it Ms. Heard, you testified yesterday that when you left the courthouse after obtaining the domestic violence restraining order against Mr. Depp, you walked out to, quote, a sea of uh, paparazzi and cameras, right? That's correct. You testified that you were surprised to see the sea of cameras. That's correct. Because it was quiet when you went into the courthouse that morning. And the divorce had remained under the radar up to that point. You testified that no one knew about your divorce, so you thought it was going to stay that way, right? No, I always figured it would come out. I just trying to buy time. You knew the media had been alerted that you were filing for divorce, right, Ms. Heard? No, I just knew that it was impossible to do that privately. So you could just hope it was a matter of time. You, you knew filed. they were going to be there, didn't you? No, I did not. The I mean, I assume, I assume since it's a public building that there is that likelihood or not likelihood, but possibility. But um, I was, you know, I was, I was shocked. Your publicist, Jody Gottlieb, was there at the courthouse with you, wasn't she? Yes, she was. So you anticipated that you might need your publicist? I thought the filing might make, um, well, I was told the filing was public, that it would be impossible. There's no way for you to do a, a, fi a private filing. And then the second that I filed for the TRO, it would be public news. I didn't expect all these photographers and cameras to show up at the courthouse in real time, but they did. If we could please uh, pull up plaintiff's exhibit uh, 1280, which is a clip from your divorce deposition. And you have at uh, page, if I can alert you, you have the transcript there, page 74, lines 22. You said 874. 74. Line 22 through page. 75, line 13. Seventy-four, line twenty-two, through seventy-five, line thirteen. Your Honor, may we approach? Okay. I was sitting here talking and my mic was muted <laughs> like an idiot. <laughs> oh, Lord. I muted my mic for a second. I was sitting here listening to them, but I forgot I muted it. I was watching Camille. That's why I didn't notice it. I was watching her uh, her interact with, uh, with, with Elaine, trying to see just how, like, Camille hasn't been combative, but Elaine, I mean, she's combative when you go up there. It's hilarious. Boomer, yeah, I am. <laughs> uh, I boomer all kinds of stuff up, you know. If we could please play and display to the jury, plaintiff's exhibit twelve eighty. Ms. Hurd, did you send a text message to Jerry Judge on May 24, 2016, telling Jerry Judge, quote, I'm desperately trying to reach Johnny, 
She looks like a sociopath. Really important. Please tell him. I remember sending the text message that is in front of me right now to Jerry. Uh, and I would like, I remember sending this because I wanted to tell Johnny or have him told by Jerry or someone who knew him or was close to him. Basically, I didn't want him to find out online that I had or was about to file or I had already filed for divorce. I wanted him to know verbally. So I was trying to reach him through a third party to tell him. When I say reach, I'm specifically saying I would like him to know information coming from me or coming from Jerry, from me, so that he finds out about the divorce filing or my intention to do so from some other source other than TMZ, which was alerted. You slipped up there, didn't you, Miss Heard? You let it slip out Whoops. that TMZ had been alerted to your filing of the domestic violence restraining order, didn't you? I disagree. Oh. That's not what I'm talking about. TMZ is the same outlet that you released the video of Mr. Depp attacking the kitchen cabinets the day before this deposition was taken, wasn't it? I didn't do that. I don't TMZ know how owns to do that. The copyright to that video now, doesn't it? Oh, I have no idea what TMZ owns. Did they owns. pay you for that? I never got paid for it because I had nothing to do with that. So TMZ was just lucky in getting the inside scoop to your divorce from Mr. Depp, huh? I have no idea. It is not, that's not my area of expert, TMZ. expertise. I wouldn't even know how to do that. And also, what does that get me? If I wanted to leak things about Johnny, I could have done that in a much more successful way, in a bigger way for like years. Not when years. you were extorting him for $7 million. I got a fraction of what I was entitled to in the state of California, entitled. by the way. What extortion? Tossa Van Reeves, your ex-wife, right? Oh. That's right. She's my ex-partner. She's the one that told, that you told this jury Mr. Depp was jealous of, right? Yeah, well, that there was a 2013 fights in, around March, yes. You testified that he tried to burn one of her paintings, right? That's correct. You testified he tried to burn um, one of your favorite paintings that she did, right? I don't know if it was one of my favorites. You committed domestic violence against Miss Van Reed during your relationship, didn't you? No, I did not. Ooh. You assaulted her at a Seattle airport in 2009, didn't you? No, I did not. And people saw that. That's not true. And it was covered in the press. Isn't that true? It was, a, it was planted in the press by Johnny's team two days after I got the TRO. You were arrested. Uh, not coincidentally. Can you please pull up plaintiff's exhibit 1279? Yeah, one person in the courtroom has actually been arrested and spent the night in jail for domestic violence. Guess who? Uh, guess who that is? It's not Johnny Depp. See, she was arrested in two thousand and nine. Yeah, she spent the night in jail because of domestic violence, but they didn't press charges because she wasn't from the area there. They thought it would be too much of a hassle. But she was definitely, you can look it up, Tasha Van Rie, 2009. They say that he planted the story. Article displayed for the witness. This is an article from two years ago, correct, Ms. Hurd? I don't know when this May was. May of 2020. That's not when it came out, no. This story started getting planted in, after I got a TRO, after I got a restraining order against Johnny. The headline says Amber Heard Objection, allegedly Your struck. Objection, Your Honor. I, I think Your Honor ruled she can't say that. Could you approach again? She can't say what exactly? She's the one who brought Tasha Van Rie into this. She is the one who brought Tasha Van Rie in. She opened the door by talking about former relationships. The title reads, Amber Heard allegedly grabbed, struck her ex-girlfriend at the airport, doesn't it? Yes, and that's not true. May we approach? Okay. One per like I said, one person in that courtroom has been arrested for domestic violence and domestic assault. 
one person in that courtroom, I'm talking about through the parties, spent the night in jail for it. And guess which party that was? It wasn't her answer, by the way, was that the people who arrested her was a misogynist and was a homophobe, right? Well, it turns out that there were two cops that arrested her. There was a male and a female. And the female came out and said, well, you know what? I'm actually a lesbian. Not only am I a lesbian, I, I'm a uh, full-blown, everybody knows this, lesbian. <laughs> like, I am fully out. Everyone knows it. So, yeah, their argument that this was a, this was a hit, that just doesn't fly. So the article, the title is Amber Heard allegedly struck her ex-girlfriend. Already... No, oh, 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 Thank you. If I may start over. Amber Heard allegedly struck her ex-girlfriend Tossa Van Rie at the airport in 2009. Did I read that right? Yes, this is another example of the smear campaign. So Mr. Depp is not the only domestic partner you've assaulted, is he, Ms. Heard? I've never assaulted Mr. Depp or anyone else that I've been romantically linked to, ever. No further questions, Your Honor. All right, cross-examination. Oh, well. I'm sorry, redirect. Ms. Heard, so did Ms. Van Rie come out? After that article came in to make a public statement, it was false. Of course, you did. objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. I, Your Honor, I should be at least be <laughs> overruled. Thank you. Of course, she did. Okay. Now, let's talk about the TMZ alerted. Explain to the jury what you meant by the TMZ was alerted. Uh, so, when you make these kind of filings, meaning divorce, uh, marriage, things like that, they are public record. And so when we filed for divorce, when I filed for divorce, I asked my team to file in the most discreet way, literally to put it under a stack of papers and file it at the end of day. So it kind of had more of a shot of being missed by the paparazzi and by TMZ and those sorts of publicity outlets. I believe that we had been remarkably lucky following the divorce that it wasn't picked up and that it gave me a, a precious few days um, of, of, of peace at that really fragile time. When I found out that they were going to run the story or that they had the information, I was trying to get a hold of Johnny to clarify that I did not do this in a punitive way. I didn't want him to be mad at me. I didn't, you know, I didn't want him to find out in that sort of context online. And who had connections to TMZ? Objection calls for speculation. Uh, do you know? I do know. Johnny Your and I Honor. spoke about it. Your Honor, it. calls for speculation. The objection. Did Mr. Depp tell you about who had connections with, Ms. with TMZ? Yes, we talked about it. His lawyer, Laura Wasser. Okay. Now, I'm going to start at the very beginning Wait, here. Wait, so Laura Wasser planted an anti-Depp story? About why Mr. <laughs> Depp won't or can't look you in the eye. And she read out, or she played a tape in which Mr. Depp said, you will not see my eyes again. Do you recall that? Oh, look at her trying to mock him. And that was during the mediation process in July, correct? That was Objection the leading. first one. Sustained okay. the leading. Well, when was this? That was in July of 2016. That was the first mediation attempt. We met after that, and Johnny very much looked me in the eye. Please tell the jury about the next meeting after he said, you will not see my eyes again. We met in the lawyer's office. They gave us a moment. Johnny kissed me again, held me. I cried. He cried. And then we had a short exchange and he put a note in my pocket that said, I'll love you dead or alive, my Slim, with his new phone number on it. I'd like to bring up, Michelle, if you can, Defendant's Exhibit 1. 581L. Oh no, he he uh you you remember that you remember that uh audio that they played where Johnny Depp was threatening self-harm? You remember that? <laughs> yeah. So they're like, oh, you know, here's him uh here's him saying that he would have some relationship with her. This Objection, Your Honor. Okay. May we approach? Yes, yes ma'am. Hmm. I wonder what this is. See how this goes. <laughs> it's interesting. They they chose. Uh, I thought they did a good job on cross. They could have taken apart more pictures. They could have taken apart more evidence. But it seems like they tried to let things stick into the jury's mind instead of boring them. 
to tears. You know, uh, Rot Rottenberg spent a million years going over uh, Johnny Depp, it felt like. You know, he kept him on the stand. He kept going after him. And it's an interesting, like I said, it's an interesting uh, choice to to go with the less is more approach. They didn't, they covered everything. They didn't have to drill and drill. They brought up pictures, but I would have torn a bunch of them apart Could myself. Could you tell the jury what the coaster was that he slipped into your pocket, what it said? He said, I love you forever, my slim, dead or alive. And what, if anything, did it have in addition? His new phone number. And, and to be, just so we're clear, on how many occasions in that second mediation did Mr. Depp look you in the eye? Um, many. Okay. And when Ms. Vasquez asked you Do we have if proof you of this? knew why Mr. Depp couldn't or wouldn't look you in the eye here or in the UK, you said, yes, you know. Why? Please tell the jury why. Because he's guilty. He's, he's, he knows he's lying. Otherwise, why can't he look at me? I survived. I survived that man, and I'm here, and I'm able to look at him. Oh, yeah, like it's kryptonite. He can't look you up at all. You asked about a bruise <laughs> that was on your arm uh, from March 15, 2013. Do you recall how long before the picture you had sustained that bruise? I do. How long? Two weeks. You were asked a number of times by Ms. Vasquez if you took pictures from your incidents earlier in the relationship. Yes. Why didn't you? It was something I started doing only kind of incidentally. You know, I was commenting to my best friend. I was looking for support from my mom, things like that. I, you know, there, there was... I'm ashamed to say never a thought that, that this would happen. I mean, not until December and my best friend taking pictures of me to capture it. Did that even, that wasn't even a thing. It has been suggested by Ms. Vasquez to you in your questions that you didn't tell anyone about the abuse until the TRO. Is that true? Objection, Your Honor, leading. All right. What if any... All right. Who did you tell about the abuse during the time it was happening? Objection, Your Honor. Leading That's not offered to, it's, and it's, hearsay. It's, sustained. Your Honor, it's prior consistent statement. It's, it's leading. It's there. sustained. Next question. Okay. It's already been sustained. She's still arguing what, with anything, the judge. What did you tell to anyone about the abuse? Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. I'll sustain. Your Honor, Your Honor, may I approach? That's moment? fine. I thought, uh, your honor just said three times stop it and she just keeps going and now she's going to go throw a fit to the uh to the judge she's going to go have a fit in front of her it's funny that elaine's biggest uh enemy is her i love watching her melt down it's hilarious i mean she's so bad at this stuff If you watch Amber, like, again, you notice that that first day she had meltdowns on the stand. She melted down. And then after that, never cracked another tear at all. Through the entire cross, she never cried at all. Like, don't you find that fascinating? I mean, again, it, with, with PTSD, if somebody, if you felt like they were attacking you, they're attacking you with the most horrific ordeals there. You wouldn't react with a little snark. Like this stuff would come flooding back. Like again, she, she, the malingering diagnosis works. And I say that as a professional. I don't say that as a YouTuber. I look at her. She's a fake. I mean, it's just so phony. It's so obvious. Yeah, come on. Go over I oh, mean, I wish I could have seen that whole file. Oh, she wiped her nose and put it on the documents. Did you see that? She 
she booger planted her documents. Ms. Heard, how many people have you shared the fact of abuse prior to 2015? Objection, Your Honor, leading how calls many? for hearsay. How many? Overruled. Oh my God. 714,221. Roughly about 10. Because we're going to kill Can Johnny Depp. Yes. Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. I think she can. It's not offered. It's just to show that she Get mad. had that she Get mad. informed people before. They're suggesting. Objection, Your Honor. Can we approach? This is again inappropriate. It's inappropriate. It's exactly what it is because you have Elaine testifying. She's sitting there. She's testifying. She's putting the narrative in and pretending that it's an objection. Even after the judge rules on stuff, she's still testifying. That's what she's done this entire case. And I'm glad to see Johnny Depp's team going after her hard for this. She was given way too much leeway in the beginning. Like they should have done that from the beginning. They should have torn into her. They should have never given her any. Like after opening, they should have tore her apart for it. Now, you were asked um, whether you had consulted a medical doctor about any problems with your nose, correct? That's correct. And you indicated that you, in fact, had after the divorce, Objection correct? leading. I, 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 did, did, you, did you or did you not consult an ENT after the divorce? Objection leading. Did you produce medical records to the defendants relating to this? Objection. Identity. Leading calls. Right. I'll sustain the objection. Thank you. And, and Next question. Your Honor, right. we could Let's, be, uh, witness could be instructed not to answer until I right. lodge my objection. Wait for the objection, could, please. Could we bring up defendants exhibit 1077? They're trying to enter. See, they've still entered that into the minds of people. Document? My, my screen is black. Oh, sorry. Yes, I do. And could you tell us what it is? That's the uh, what my ENT, the ears, nose, and throat doctor, um, told me was objection, my, Your Honor. Here, the damage. All right. I'll, when there's objection, please stop okay. talking. Thank you. All right. I'll sustain the objection as to hearsay. Okay. Uh, I, I'm. Uh, the ENT couldn't tell you what happened when something happened. She's saying she had her nose. You were asked if this is a bunch had, of garbage. It was suggested that you had not produced this in discovery. Is that true? Objection, false? Your Honor. Leading. Your Honor, she, and, she absolutely so did it's, that. It's leading. It is leading the question, though. I'll sustain mm -hmm. the objection as to leading. What, if anything, did you do to produce medical records to the defendant, to the uh, plaintiff in this case? I turned over all of my devices, and they had a, um, the, Johnny's team had a third party or someone they selected as a third party go and pull all relevant documents from those devices, which I handed over. That's you not medical records. I, I, hundreds of thousands, I believe. Maybe. Didn't maybe they say medical? Honor, lack of foundation. Okay. Didn't right, they say medical records? Question? Like they don't pull medical records and from your you, devices. What, if anything, did you produce to the plaintiff in connection with your consultation with an ENT specialist Relating to your nose. Objection. Leading. Sustain. What, I foundation. Said, what anything, hearsay. What, what if anything? It's not the cure-all. It's sustained. <laughs> She's telling her to stop. Tell her to stop. The, ju the judge needs to do something about this because it's gone on for like six minutes. When did you see an ENT specialist? 2017 or 2016 or 17. And as a result of that consultation what did you learn about your nose objection your honor hearsay i'm not asking her to tell what they said yeah i'll sustain the objection <laughs> she's so mad look at her face <laughs> what if any production did you make to the plaintiffs of your medical records with the ENT. 
Objection, Your Honor. Lack of foundation. If you only, if you only have foundation. Do you know whether the records, medical records, uh, from your EMT were produced in discovery? Objection, in Your Honor. Lack of foundation calls for speculation. I'm just I'm I'm asking. Overruled if she knows. Thank you. Yes. And do you rec do you recall? <laughs> Look, she's so, I'm fine. Um, <laughs> she's so mad. She's what, talking to herself. If anything. <laughs> did the oh medical my. records reflect? Oh my God! It hurt me. Objection on her hearsay. I'll sustain the objection. <laughs> do you have injuries? Oh my you know? God! Yes. Oh, this Please is so good. To the I'm going to die here. I have um, I'm gonna object a bunch of scar to tissue. The, I'm going to object to the extent it calls for hearsay and lack of foundation. Oh, overruled. And improper expert opinion. Well, I, we'll she can certainly testify to it. We'll, we'll see where it goes. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. I have um, a significant amount of scar tissue in my nose. Objection, Your Honor. And I'll sustain the objection. <laughs> <laughs> what if any difficulty do you have breathing? Objection leading. What yeah. if anything? And that does cure it. No, it doesn't. But oh, oh. it doesn't. The judge said it doesn't cure it. Look, she's so mad. <laughs> I have um, a significant amount of trouble breathing at night, and I I've been putting off having surgery for it. Here's the question, though. So she broke her nose and walked around with it. I broke my nose three times, man. And it sucks. It hurts. Asked she just shrugged it off. About December 15, 2015. And Ms. Vasquez suggested that you did not report the abuse or the injuries to Aaron Falati. Do you recall Objection, that? Objection, Your Honor. Leading. I'm entitled to go into what Ms. Vasquez is. Objection is leading. I'll sustain the objection. Okay. <laughs> Stop arguing with the judge, Cat. Like, look, she's so mad right did now. Did you report? What, if anything, did you report to Aaron Filotti about the abuse you sustained on 12 15 2015? Objection <laughs> leading <laughs> and hearsay. Look, she's getting. Oh my God! Please, please, God, let them put the camera on her. Please, God, put the no. Uh, I I don't want much in life, God, but please, right now, would you turn the camera around and put it on the cat lady because I need this. <laughs> she is having a meltdown. She's talking to herself. She's like, Oh my God, how do I make this work? <laughs> oh my. Mm. Oh God! Like seven minutes of oh yes, please. They look. She's freaking out. Look, she's freaking out. So look, she's like, I've got these documents here, Judge. This is my courtroom. And the judge is like, Who the hell do you think you are, you crazy cat lady? Oh my God! Oh, thank you, God. My prayers have been answered. There really is. <laughs> Either that or the cat, if the camera person, if you're listening to me right now, <laughs> oh, geez, like Camille is staring at the seal, like, oh my God, are you kidding me? Are we still doing this? I could do this for like at least half an hour. Like, if they want to keep doing this dance for half an hour, I could do it because it's funny. It is, it is funny. I could deal with this for a while. <laughs> I mean, she is freaking going nuts over there. Oh, my God. Could you imagine dealing with her in, like, your day-to-day -day life? Hey, hon, I went to the store and... Ah! <laughs> uh, she probably has a little tribunal of cats and freaking stuffed toys that sit around. Uh... She goes home and she preaches cases to like her 16 bottles of Amica cream. <laughs> and they all have like a little cut out masks of Amber Heard. <laughs> oh my God. I bet you she has a Camille Vasquez voodoo doll. I, I bet you money she does by now. Oh my Lord. It's my birthday gift. Yeah. 
It's my birthday, and I'll laugh if I want to. You would laugh, too, if you were shown this. Ooh. <laughs> oh, my God. Ugh. Look at what's your face beside Johnny. And she's like, oh, my God, is she still talking? <laughs> she she looks like she's gone to hell. <laughs> she's like, oh, my Lord. Mm, this is killing me. I'm going to die. <laughs> she is still going nuts. I uh, It's been... <laughs> I wrote down a number when we started this like four minutes ago, and she is still going nuts over there. Look, her head, her head's bobbing around. The judge is like, you can't bring that up. What she's trying to do, see, it's a it's a BS claim anyway. She wants to say she went to an ear, nose, and throat specialist after the relationship, and the ears, nose, and throat specialist said, yeah, you've got a problem with it. Your nose has been broken. Now, a devi I had a deviated septum from where I did break my nose. But you could get that from all kinds of stuff. It could be from birth. It could have all kinds of issues. You know what? When I broke my nose, I knew about it. It wasn't fun. <laughs> it wasn't fun at all. It hurt. It wasn't the breaking of the nose as much as the nose being broken plus the breaking of the nose. All of it sucked. And it hurt. <laughs> it hurt a lot. Oh, my God. Yeah, she did. She chose this hill to die on, man. She's like, forward! <laughs> uh, this is why judges hate her. They do. They hate her. Like, there's a there's a, a minutes that was attached to one of the New York documents. And in the minutes, the judge balls her out in L.A. I mean, she tears her up. And she does it for, like, um, I'm going to say, I'm going to say that she does it for... I don't know, a good 10 minutes worth of reading. Like, I mean, it takes forever to go through it. But she does it so much that Elaine actually asks the judge to stop. I mean, it was pretty brutal. <laughs> hi. Hi, everybody. <laughs> okay. uh. We got the people in there, like, just chilling. Man, you know the lineups, too? If you look, like the people lining up to get into the courthouse, they've been lining up uh, for at, at night, like late at night across the road. And they've been doing like an honor system. They've been writing a number on their hands and doing an honor system where they cross back over. Because there's only 100 slots for people that can get in. Oh, it's so good. She, Jesus, man, she's been there for, God, she's, she's almost taken 10 minutes of this. <laughs> they had to get a legal aid. The legal aid was like, uh, you know, um, we, we, we do have Xanax. <laughs> we do have a horse tranquilizer if you'd like to take the cat lady down. That's what the judge should be like. Have the bailiff come in and take her out. Did you tell Nurse Falati on 12-16-2015 about the injuries you sustained from the 12-15-2015 attack? I did. Um, I believe I sent her pictures, too. Okay. Um, and did you text with Nurse Falati on 12-16-2015 about the injuries that you had suffered as a result of Mr. Depp's attack on you on 12-15. Yes, she guided me through a concussion check. <laughs> An online concussion check, bad. She didn't and go did in and have one. did you tell Connell Cowan about the injuries you sustained? Objection, Your Honor. He's You're a saying? shrink. It's a prior consistent statement. Right, I'm going to sustain the objection at this point. Uh -huh. <laughs> We're going back down this road. Do you recall Dr. Laurel Anderson testifying that she saw two black eyes? Objection, Your Honor. Leading. Sustain is leading. Okay. <laughs> what, if anything, do you recall from Laurel Anderson's testimony in this case about what she observed 
on 12-17-2015. Objection, Your Honor. This is outside the scope of cross-examination. It's prior consistent statement. I'm going to sustain the objection. It's observation is for the 12-17, the same day. She's still, the objection. she's still arguing with the judge. Okay. Ju judge, when are you going to do something about this? Seriously, I, I think it's hilarious. Like I said, she's melted down again. <laughs> she's going for another sidebar. <laughs> oh my God, this can't be real. This is like a bad comedy skit. This is like if Saturday Night Live was still funny, this is be what they would do for real. I mean, this is like comedy gold. Oh my God, it's hurting me inside. <laughs> she she can't she can't get a question in. I mean, we sit here for almost fifteen minutes, and she hasn't managed a question yet. Oh my God! When in December did you see Dr. Laurel Anderson? Objection! I, lack of foundation. Overrule. I saw her two days after the attack. So on what day did you see her then? Um, that would have been the 17th of December, 2016. And I told her what happened. Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. No, sustain the objection. And when did you uh, see Dr. Connell Cowan? I saw him the next day, December 16th is my best recollection. Let's jump to East Asia for a moment. Um, and we saw a number of pictures. She had to give up. <laughs> um, what, if any, motivation would you have to claim that Mr. Depp was kneeling on your back, knowing you had a backless dress? Objection, Your Honor. I'm leading. I think I can bring calls for speculation. It's still, it's still leading. I'll sustain the objection. What kind of question was that? That's a garbage question, for real. It's garbage question. Why would why did you say that Mr. Depp was kneeling on your back in East Asia? In the closet of the hotel room in Tokyo, um, I said that because it happened to me. And it would have been much more convenient if I was making it up to not include that detail, knowing I had a backless dress and I walked a press line and got photographed. Right. Now... We've heard testimony about Mr. Depp uh, making a total of 65 million in 2015 and 2016 from his experts. Objection, Your Honor. Why leading? You, I haven't asked hearsay. I mean, why did you not ask for 32.5 million from Mr. Depp? What, Your Honor? Seriously. Leading. I said, why did you not ask? I'll sustain the, the objection. the objection to leave. Next question. Why, why can I just ask, why did you not ask for 32.5 million for Mr. Depp? Because I don't Asked and answered, relevance. Oh, overruled, good. What relevance does it have? I didn't want it. I realized that that's what I was entitled <laughs> to, but I didn't want it. Why not a billion dollars? That's important. She asked for 20 million. She wanted $14.2 million set tax-free. Let's talk about that. The tape <laughs> recording that was played that has you laughing quite a bit. Can you tell the jury what the context of that particular <laughs> tape recording was? I was being a monster. I don't really um, recall a whole lot about what was going on. I know we had been fighting kind of ad nauseum and in this sort of loop, if you will. And I'm doing my best to um, not show my pain. That's what I was trying to do. Just trying to be tough. Not show what kind of pain I was in. Okay. Now, Ms. Vasquez asked you about how you got your role in Aquaman. Could you please describe to the jury how you got your role yes. in Aquaman? I auditioned. Not Johnny. I auditioned. I worked really hard and I went to where we were filming the, the first movie, Justice League. I went, I think, five or five and a half months early before filming commenced when I heard that they wanted to fire me. And so I put myself in the job. Objection, gym. Your Honor, hearsay. Sustained. 
<laughs> keep it away. I worked, really hard. <laughs> I worked really hard on that and had to prove myself. And I did that for, even though I was only filming for six days, I was there for six months. Just worked my butt off. That's what why. What if any role did Mr. Depp play in your getting Aquaman? He tried to have me fired from it. Objection, Your Honor. Speculation. All right, I'll sustain his speculation. How do you know that he tried to have you fired? Objection, from? Your Honor. Calls for speculation and hearsay and lack of foundation. Founda I'm trying to lay a foundation. All right, if you lay a foundation. I saw it. I saw the emails. I saw the text. I'll sustain the objection as to hearsay. Next question. You were asked about Isaac Baruch and why he and and that he saw no marks. What is your recollection of your interaction with Isaac Baruch during the week of May 22nd? I saw Isaac when I was coming or going, meaning I was leaving or arriving to the building. I saw him at a distance. We did not have a, a in-depth conversation, nor would we. Um, and I told him actually right after it happened what his friend Objection, had done. Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. I, I don't think it's offered to prove the truth of the matter or pursued it. I'll sustain the objection. Next question. Okay. Stay away from what was said. <laughs> Can you just tell us what, what interaction you had with him and, and his opportunity to observe you with absolutely no makeup? Objection, That's Your impossible. Honor, leading. That was objection. very leading. Please describe for the jury your interaction with Isaac Baruch during the week of May 22nd. She already lit. Well, not only did I have makeup on, but I, I did attempt to kind of let him know what happened. Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. I'll sustain the objection. Next question. <laughs> you were asked some questions about Officer Melissa Science's testimony. What, if anything, do you recall relating to Officer Melissa Sines' testimony relating to your injuries. Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. Your Honor said I could redirect after the cross-examination. Look, she's like, are you really arguing with me here? Are you seriously going to act like that? Like, look at the team there. It's just, they're, they're like, she's crazy. Uh, Chu is like, oh my God, what a nut job. Really, though, how much how much leeway do you give her before you crack down on her? Like, like how long do you let this happen? Like I said, I could watch this for a while because I think it's funny. <laughs> it's like the three stooges all packed into one stooge over there. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, at the same time, you know, you can tell, like, they're getting tired of it. And they should be. It should be because the judge should, after a while, the judge should step on this and be like, yo, this isn't, this isn't acceptable. You need to figure out how they're, you know, you got to practice law. They should have been doing this to her the whole time, though. Honestly, they should have been doing stuff like this to her from the beginning because she, when, uh, at the very beginning of the trial, they didn't do anything. And it was frustrating that first week. As Camille has taken over more, like they have been what aggressive. Do you recall of Officer Sines' testimony in this case relating to your injuries and the property destruction? I recall her saying that she didn't feel that my the state I was in um, was enough of an injury to her, or wasn't. That's not what she said. Seeming to her. Okay, and. What about the property damage? She claims she did not see any property damage, but I walked with her over broken glass. So I <laughs> I don't know why she's saying that. Did it cut your feet up like Australia? What, if any, interactions did you have with Alejandro Romero during the week of May 22? I spoke to him briefly. Objection, Your Honor, to the extent it calls for hearsay. O overruled at this point. I spoke to him. I just, I spoke to him briefly in passing as I was entering, maybe when, when I was exiting the building, but always when I was on my way out or in from being outside, meaning makeup, I had makeup on always, as I do. Why did James, why did James Franco visit you on the evening of 5 2016? <laughs> Objection, calls for speculation. Do you know? Yes. Please tell us. 
because he was my friend and he lived next door, quite literally lived next door. And I had frankly exhausted my support network with my usual friends and was happy to welcome as much friendship at that time as I could possibly. Did he bring an overnight bag? Why was he bringing an overnight bag? The video showed uh, him laying his head on your shoulder. Can you describe for the jury what the interaction was without saying what was said, what the interaction was that led to that? He, uh, after seeing my face, put his Objection, head Honor, on my calls shoulder. calls for speculation. That doesn't call for speculation. It does. He sees, the, it, he, sees yeah. he, he touched no. the side of my I'll face too. The objection. And, and okay. Okay. Again, Your to, Honor, if we can instruct the witness. If to, you could wait till after the objection, please. All right, next what, question. What did Mr. Franco do uh, on the elevator before laying his head on your shoulder? <laughs> he, gonna he sucked my face. the side of my face and responded to what he saw. I noticed we don't have James Franco here to ask questions. We talked about the, uh, you were shown a bunch of uh, newspaper headlines and there was one in particular referring to sexual violence. Uh, what, if anything, did Mr. Waldman do to you relating to that article? Objection, Your Honor. Lack of foundation calls for speculation. What did he do to her? Unintelligible. I I don't understand well, the question. Overruled. We'll see where it goes. <laughs> uh, he was carrying the paper that had that headline on it that he leaked and threw it at me at the UK <laughs> trial. We were unfortunately <laughs> sat kind of actually literally next to one another with COVID spacing in between us. And he threw the paper down at me as he sat down with that on the cover. And where was that? In the UK at the UK trial. Objection, Your Honor. This is beyond the scope. That's not beyond the no, scope. Overruled. What does this have to do with anything, though? Why Adam Waldman threw a paper at her? And Mr. Waldman. Because like, for real, it's funny. a liar and a hoaxer and that this was an elaborate hoax just to get Johnny. Objection, Your Honor. Here's so you called him short and made objection. fun of it? Next question. Next question. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> she can't even think of what to say. I don't have any more questions, Your Honor. Right. Oh my God! She's so. Your okay. She just quit. <laughs> she quit. That's fine. She just rage quit. <laughs> I could right, not ladies, believe. Let's go ahead and take our afternoon recess then for fifteen <laughs> minutes to not discuss the case. Oh my God! Research, okay? Camille just made. Amber Heard's attorney rage quit. Oh, no, oh my God, that's amazing. I've never seen any kind. Oh my God. Oh, <laughs> that hurt me. I got to tweet that when you're going. Is, Amber Heard's attorney. Is your next witness a live witness, remote no, witness, or deposition? Just rage quit. Deposition. All right, so we'll get the TV set up. Redirect. For that. Just come back then at 3 30, okay? All right, thank you. <laughs> oh, that hurt me. <laughs> oh, my God. I've never seen anything that funny, like, in a courtroom before. I've seen some funny stuff, but that... Holy man. Look at... She's laughing. They're, they're, they're having a good old time. Like, they thought it was hilarious. Like, look, they're all... <laughs> <laughs> they're they're entertained. Uh, Johnny, oh man, Camille needs to stand up and be like, "Are you not entertained?" I am Camille. I am very entertained. I appreciate you. <laughs> oh, she. I mean, she quit redirect. She actually quit redirect. Like she didn't. She didn't pause. She she got so exasperated that she couldn't think of questions anymore. I mean, they. They destroyed her lawyer on redirect. It wasn't that they destroyed Amber Heard on redirect. They destroyed her lawyer on redirect. I mean, that's amazing. That tells you, though, they have no case. Their entire case on redirect was going to be this. So, Amber, um, why don't you tell me about that time that you went to an ear, nose, and throat specialist, and they told you about how you had a broken nose? Where did that come from, or anything? Did it actually? Did that mean anything? Were they? Were they? Were they price gouging you? I mean, what does that mean? Nothing. They didn't get that yet. 
They couldn't ask any questions about Isaac B because she ended up having that like stricken from her. I mean, all of it, every single thing. Yeah. What if any broken noses? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh, thanks for the 50. Thank you for that tug. You're laughing at cat lady is killing me. I hope you have a shirt with Camille on it. Spanking the cat lady. Oh, I couldn't help it. Oh, that, that really, I mean, that really made me laugh. I can't believe I, I'm surprised they ended. Um, I'm surprised they ended cross as early as they did. But at the same time, I mean, they made their points. They made their points about that. They were fresh in the jury's mind. And Amber Heard's lawyer did not get to remove any of those points at all. The only thing that she got to do is that she got to uh, say that Adam Waldman threw a newspaper at her, which is true, by the way. I will confirm that that is true. <laughs> yes, he he he, he kind of tossed a newspaper. So, yeah, the, apparently that is true. I, I'm hearing from sources again. Again, you know, that's it's, it's at least how I, I wasn't there. I don't know, but I'm hearing that that was actually <laughs> true that he did toss a newspaper, and that's kind of a hero thing, you know, because I would be so exasperated and disgusted by these people. I mean, they're burning people's lives down. What what pisses me off is. Somebody, again, they'll gaslight and they'll destroy, they'll lie, they'll cheat, they'll do all of this until they get a, a, a visceral reaction from somebody. You react out of rage. And what, what happens? You're the bad guy, of course. You're always the bad guy. Pink Panda, thanks for the five. Amber is going to break into Lane's house now and shit on her bed for this bullshit. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, I love it. I love it. Oh, my God. This is funny. I didn't think Cross would be that fun. Justifying thanks for the five there. No statement, but plenty of statement. Thank you for the backing. Cheryl R, thanks five. So freaking funny. I just sent you a new bingo card. <laughs> We're going to have to have new witness bingo cards. So we are going to have to pull up the new bingo card. I got to do that. Gray Fox, thanks for the five. Tug, you're... <laughs> You're going to have some good content for new videos. Can't wait for some more laughs. I got a, I got two new videos that I want to do out of stuff for sure. And I have a video for tonight as well, just to say. And I already have one made. Because you know she admitted that she's losing. She actually, before she went into Cross, she actually tried to change the narrative and they they're admitting that they're losing in public. They're admitting it. You can look at their statements and see it. I'll put a video out on that. Phantasmagorical five. Let's say uh, Tug, did you did you see it, Tug? Did you? I saw a whole lot of no questions. <laughs> uh, Terry Boyer. Yeah, uh, thanks, Phantasm, by the way. Someone need to take uh, two pictures and use the Photoshop to lower the I said he had one and merged them to show it is the same photo. You can tell it's like the there there are there are a few places that they're the same photo. So there's another place actually. There's another place where Amber Heard pulls the same bullshit. Okay, you're talking about the same photograph being used. So you you saw those photographs where the the clarity is cranked up, right? Right. She's done this before. She's actually there's one other place where they where they were. Messing around with the metadata, let's just say. And uh, the guy who puts together all of the the really good summaries and reports, Andy, he uh, he actually put together a report on this when he was talking about metadata and metadata fraud. Let me pull this together. I'll, I'll show you. Like, like, they've done this before. Like, this isn't the first time they've done it. It's just that most people, again, they have no idea about, like, how many pictures were taken they're not showing you everything that's attached to this stuff like they're not they're not even coming close to showing you all of their so-called evidence you know they're they're gaming because they know that they have problems okay so in their narrative remember okay i, I want to remind you of something when we pull this up okay i want to remind you that according to amber heard the uh the December 15th episode, the way that she tells it, she says in the first stuff, she says that on December 15th, Rocky Pennington ends up taking all the photographs. We could go through their statements, but let's just leave it at that, right? 
There are no other dates that they say they take photographs on. Well, if you look at their exhibits and their metadata on their exhibits, you'll notice none of the photographs actually come from that specific day. They come from the 16th, they come from the 17th, and they come from the 18th. That's a problem, right? <laughs> And new, by the way, thanks for the vibe. I think they uh, kept Cross short, so they have time to bring in other key witnesses. I, see, I, I, I don't, I don't think that's it. I think they just made it short and concise. We, you remember how they, remember how Rottenborn rambled and rambled and rambled, and like the jury get, they get bored. You want to make a point and get out. Like that's probably what they went with. They made their point, they got out, and they're going after somebody that is claiming to be a sexual assault victim. You have to be very careful about that. Justice Raven Lee, thanks for the 10. Apparently, it was overheard that A.H. was yelling at Elaine, and Elaine told her if she wasn't happy, she could represent herself. <laughs> oh, my God. That's got to be funny. I Actually, I know for a fact that Amber Heard was threatening her lawyers, saying that she wanted to uh, wanted to get rid of them. I, I know that for a fact. I heard that from a very good source. Uh, Tammy, thanks for the dead tug. That's the second time I laugh so hard listening to you. I laugh. My sides hurt. <laughs> uh, love your content. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. Yeah, I uh, I don't know. I get I get laughing sometimes. <laughs> it just kills me. <laughs> All right. So you see this problem. That's a problem by itself, right? 15th, but none of the photographs come up. Now, it gets even worse. Okay, you were talking about the picture being the same picture, and this is my point here, okay? So if you go into the 16th, the pictures from the 16th, here they are, right? You have all of these, okay? Well, when you go through and you look at the 18th picture, this is the picture from the 18th. Now, when you put a side-by-side -side comparison with a, one of the pictures from the 16th and one of the pictures from the 18th, they're the same picture. Just one has been landscaped and one has been portrait eyes. In fact, you can line them up and you can tell they're the exact same portrait. But they have this exact same grid lining in them. Notice that? They are the exact same picture. So what happened here is that they messed up on their metadata when they were entering it because it's fake. What they meant to do was they meant to say they took this picture, then the picture from the 18th should have been after it, and then the next picture should have been right here. But they messed up when they were going in and clocking their metadata. Because I'm going to say that they uh, they they were fraudulently uh, putting in their metadata. You know, they were they were going in and entering it, doing whatever. They were setting up their own pictures. And they messed up. Because for real, like that one picture, this picture is not from the 18th. Again, it comes from this same series of pictures. You can tell. They're the... You know, you see the same books behind them. And you can see that right there. And again, when you when you switch to the 18th, it's the exact same picture only. Again, one of them is in portrait. And one of them is in landscape. And if you're thinking, well, maybe editing there would change the metadata. No, the original picture, it would still maintain the original pictures metadata so when it was taken if it was taken on the 16th which it should have been according to that it would have still maintained the metadata even if you went in and edited it on the 18th it would make it a brand new picture so talking about them going in and, and playing around you know fudging up the evidence and uh you know taking one picture and cranking it up and actually making it look like two different pictures yeah they've they've done that before They've tried it before. <laughs> yeah, I actually heard. So here, here I heard that uh, Amber Heard was threatening both of her lawyers after the beginning. She was so mad and she fired her PR team right after I heard this. All right. But she was threatening her uh, her lawyers with with getting rid of both of them. She thought the case was going so bad. Sherry Lamb thinks it did. Didn't that newspaper cause a bruise? It actually uh, it. When Adam Waldman threw down the newspaper, from what I hear, like she had her feet propped up and they were barefoot somehow. I'm not really sure why they were barefoot in, in the UK trial, but I hear that they they viciously slash back and forth. Like as the papers fell down to the floor, I hear that it viciously slashed her arms and feet. And she couldn't do ballet for like six whole minutes. <laughs> uh.
Lays thanks for the five. I wonder if the cat lady will have marks on her face tomorrow, courtesy of Angry Turd. She might. We need you to please don't die. <laughs> oh, I felt like I was like, oh my god, this is too funny. That was funny though. I mean, for real. Like I've I've seen some I've seen some funny displays, but I have never seen a lawyer rage quit and i mean that's what she did she rage quit uh redirect like she got in nothing and she didn't get away from so tmz was brought up and tmz actually you know what they flagged um uh, so that every time the uh the cabinet slamming video comes up they do claim the video that it's attached to they claimed uh my live stream yesterday which i've disputed by the way what they do is they're nasty about this too you get 30 days to respond. Well, you know what they're doing? They're running the entire 30 days out. Then they'll probably respond. I'll respond back to them, and then we'll go from there. But they're telling you they have a copyright to it. The only way that they can have a copyright to it is if they bought that from Amber Heard, and they're playing like they did. Now, it's an illegal recording, them slamming those uh, cabinet doors. That's actually a legal recording. Johnny Depp did not consent to it. It was taken in L.A. L.A. is a... Is a two-party consent state so you just can't just go in and record people when you feel like it all willy-nilly debbie thinks for the five wait a second uh, in this picture the injury is under her eye the tro pick it's uh it's on her cheek well you have some you have moving injuries you have all kinds of weird stuff i mean i i i would encourage people to go through we can go through evidence one night like friday or saturday if you want we'll go through entire stacks of it if you want to it'll be fun well he's thinks of i wonder if the cat lady will have marks in her face <laughs> yeah i got that when i that was that's very true though sorry it's not more what can the judge do since ah stormed out before the jury total disrespect hopefully they remember that yeah well i wonder if they will though you know if they even understand what happened there like i wonder how how does that do they perceive like she was trying to violate every rule in the book to get that in? Because I mean, you could see the the frustration. I hope I hope they they understand it. Hey, G Kitty Hook, thanks for the five. This trial should be uh, nominated for Emmy for best reality show. It should. I mean, this is. Oh my God, I'm hooked on this trial. I am. I'm hooked on. I'm. I'm hooked on this case. I very much am. Shabaka thinks for the two seventy nine. Turd is the best trailer trash dumpster fire in years like all the people who ask me like why i cover this case i've been watching this build for years and again there are reasons that it matters and those are important but at the same time it's mesmerizing because amber heard is such an insane just almost a, a, an insane force of nature she's a character study unto herself in what it means to be a false accuser and what it means to be entitled. And, and she's put it on full display for the world. You have open, unfettered access to what these people are. You get to see her. And all of this evidence has been coming out over years. And it's just amazing to see. Nix, thanks to the five. Hey, Tug, uh, do you know why they didn't use the ballet footage? I'm not, I'm not sure. Maybe they didn't. Maybe they didn't see it before that. Maybe they decided it didn't fit in. Uh, maybe they thought they had enough. I, I'm, I'm not really sure. Just to be honest, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe there was some problem with, uh, with entry at a late date. Like they picked it up and they, they couldn't get it in. Like I said, I don't know. Wait. Hold up. The judge is speaking. Give me a second. Uh, that has the hyperlink of the um, online op-ed in it. Um, and I, I know that a mere hyperlink without more cannot constitute uh, republication. However, here, when there's additional content uh, that could constitute uh, republication in this matter. So there is evidence of ownership and additional content uh, that the jury could find constitute republication. And that Ooh. is a factual question that does su survive a motion to strike. Boom! The motion to strike is denied as the, the motion to so strike. So, all right, thank you. That was right, about the motion the to jury? strike. That, there were three parts of the motion to strike where they tried to get the uh, case dismissed. Well, there was one part still open about the headline 
for the uh, op-ed. They just said, no, it survived. She didn't get it struck either. It will go to the jury as well. So it survived. So they decided they just came back like right there. So it survived. I'm glad I flipped over really fast when I heard them speaking, but it survived. So yeah, the judge does not look thrilled. The judge is like, this is stupid. Okay. So uh, Amber Heard did not, did not get the title of the op-ed removed from their motion to strike. <laughs> All right, thank you. you Maybe seated. All right, your next witness. That was amazing. Our next witness is Mr. Io Tillett Wright. Oh he my God! With counsel for Mr. Depp asking questions, and then we'll. Oh, it's going to be video. Right, Io, though, I've I've never seen Io actually. Right. Good blood. morning again. Have you had any communications with Ms. Heard at all, including text or emails or otherwise, in connection with your preparation for this deposition? No. I Have you had any? When's the last time you spoke to her? April of last year, April or May, almost a year ago. Uh, Mr. Wright, when did you first uh, meet Ms. Heard? I met Amber in the end of 2011. And where did you meet her? In Los Angeles. And what were the circumstances of the meeting? A friend was introducing us to each other um, so that I could photograph her for a large portrait series that I was doing at the time. And what was your profession in 2011? I was a photographer and I worked for the New York Times, I think. I don't recall exactly everything, but. In 2011, you were both a photographer and separately worked for the New York Times as a freelancer. I worked for the New York Times as a journalist and photographer. And what was, what is your profession today? I'm a writer and a producer. Producer of what? And between 2011 and through the present, have you had any other professions other than photographer, writer, or producer? Yes. And what are those? I've hosted a television show or two. I made some podcasts. I wrote two other books, two books, three books, three books. I've written three books. Um, a number of things. I don't know. There are more things, but I, yeah, I've always sure. been a multi hyphenate person. To the best of my recollection, uh, we initially met at a mutual friend's house, which I think I already stated. Um, that friend is also an actor and had met Amber at the Children's Hospital while they were both volunteering and knew that Amber had done quite a bit of LGBT activism and uh, mentioned my project to her and then invited her over to our, uh, the other friend invited Amber to her house so that we could all meet and um, Amber and I discovered that we liked the same books and we liked psychology and, and just, you know, laughed and had fun that night. And then I asked her if she would participate in the photo project, I think, or somebody did. And she said, yes. Um, a couple of days later, I went to the house that she was staying at and I photographed her for the project. And then thereafter I went back to New York where I lived 
And I remember her texting me and saying that she was shooting a movie in New York and did I want to get lunch? Um, so we got lunch and we became friends. Okay, please walk me through that. We met in 2011. We started becoming friends soon thereafter. Um, in 20... Very early in 2013, um, I came to LA to spend a couple of months with my then, I don't know if she was my girlfriend or my fiance at that point, but the person that I was in a relationship with, um, in a very serious relationship with. And um, during the time that I was in LA, I spent more time with Amber. We both spent more time with Amber. Um, and I was introduced to Johnny and uh, the summer of 2013, I ended up moving to LA during which Amber and Johnny and I got even closer, very, very close. And then um, we remained close, the three of us for two-ish years. And then all of this happened, this nightmare and uh, Johnny and I stopped being friends and Amber and I stayed friends. Um, and then Amber and I were friends up until the date that I told you that we last spoke. And at some point in time, uh, did you live on the same property as Johnny Depp and Amber Heard? Yes. And when was that? It was August 2013 until... Um, I believe June 1st of 2014, I moved into my own house, so nine months. And um, why is it that you uh, left that property, left living there? Because I didn't want to live for free in someone's property and I wanted to have my own house and support myself. And for how long after that did you uh, stay close with both Johnny and Amber? I stayed close with both of them um, I don't remember it it was a hmm. I sometime in 2015 I think late 2015 maybe um, Johnny and I were no longer I think the period when I really stopped considering Johnny a friend of mine was December of 2015. Okay. Well, let me ask it this way. Um, you never saw Mr. Depp assault or beat Ms. Heard on any occasion, correct? That's correct. I, I just would like to clarify, Mr. Preciado, that's a question you already asked me. So you're asking me the same question again about whether or not I witnessed Mr. Depp assault Ms. Heard? That's right. No, I have not witnessed that. Let me ask it this way then. Have you ever personally seen Mr. Depp assault or beat Ms. Heard on any occasion? No. Now, back to this same paragraph where it says, my experience of Johnny during the time that, he, that we were close from 2013 through 2015 was that he could be incredibly kind, generous, and loyal. Um, can you give me examples of his kindness, generosity, and loyalty during that per period of time? Johnny, when sober, was lovely and magical and very funny. Um, Johnny, when sober, was incredibly lucid and um, imaginative and... I felt a kindred connection with him and a, a shared perspective on the world that I've shared with very few people in my life. Um, Johnny, when sober, understood how much influence he had over people and he was very um, kind to them about it and generous with talking to them about whatever 
came up and he was also when sober very um you know he made time for people's nervousness around him which i witnessed on a number of occasions he also um he had his his number of houses on that street and there was a constant rotation of different people coming to town who could all afford to live somewhere else or stay somewhere else who um, he would let and enjoyed having in those houses, which I find to be um, generous. In the next paragraph, paragraph six, you refer to uh, Mr. Depp's uh, struggles with respect to Oxycontin. You say that in late 2013, after a dental surgery, he became hooked on Oxycontin. Did you ever experience him while he was on Oxycontin? Yes. And while he was on Oxycontin, did you ever experience uh, him to be mean or vicious? I can't answer that with any accuracy because I don't know whether or not the times that I did see him be mean or vicious, he was also on Oxycontin. In paragraph five, where you say that um, he could he could be incredibly mean and vicious, especially when he was drunk or high. When you refer to drunk or high, what substances are you referring to? The substances that I saw him ingest with my own eyes were cocaine and hard liquor, um, marijuana, uh, ecstasy, mushrooms, uh, wine, I, probably some other things, but those are the immediate ones that jump to mind. Um, cocaine and any kind of alcohol would bring out a very, very ugly side of him, um, very misogynistic and cruel and other things. And um, when he would take any kind of psychedelic, like ecstasy or, or, or uh, MDMA, he would become paranoid. When he would drink alcohol, he would become paranoid. Um, yeah. I think that I answered your question. You mentioned that uh, you witnessed him having had cocaine. Did you ever have cocaine with him? No. Were there any drugs or, or substances that you uh, took with him? I don't smoke marijuana. I don't do cocaine for the entire period that I knew Johnny and thereafter, I did not drink alcohol. There was a, I think one week period um, during the peak of my breakup during which Johnny offered me um, some pain pills to get through the intensity of that situation. Um, and that was the only time that I took any substances for three and a half years. No, that's not true. That was the only time that I took any um, substances with Johnny. And uh, yeah, yeah. All, all the other things that I had stated previously about what I do and don't do are also accurate. So I'm sorry, just to, to summarize that, is your testimony that um, when you witnessed Mr. Depp drunk and high, you were not also either drunk or high. Is that your testimony? My testimony is that during the entire period that I knew Mr. Depp, I was never drunk or drinking or consuming alcohol at all. My testimony is that for a one, maybe two week, possibly two and a half week, I don't remember, period, um, on a sporadic occasion, I took some pain pills that Mr. Depp offered me for to get through an extreme emotional pain situation. Um, when I witnessed Johnny doing cocaine, I was not drunk or high. 
occasions that I witnessed Johnny drinking, I was not drunk or high. Um, there was a very narrow window during which I was taking some non uh, mind altering pain pills for a very brief period during which I witnessed Johnny drunk and high. Did you ever witness Miss Amber Heard drunk or high? Yes. And did you ever witness her drink alcohol? Yes. Objection. Did you ever witness her um, ingesting cocaine? Are you are you asking like ever in the history of time have I ever witnessed Amber ingest cocaine? That's the first question. Yes. The answer right. is no. Amber was vehemently against cocaine. Did you ever uh, witness her uh, smoke marijuana? No, marijuana is not her drug. What is her drug? I haven't spoken to Amber in a year, but as far as I know and have known her for the last 11 or 12 years, Amber doesn't have a narcotic of choice. Have you seen her ingest ecstasy? Yes, I believe so. Of yes. choice. How many times have you seen her ingest ecstasy? I can think of one instance in particular when she took it um, for her birthday, like a celebration. Uh, wasn't Do you recall what year that was? I'm an event. Other than the uh, narcotics and alcohol uh, that I mentioned, did you ever witness Ms. Heard uh, ingest any other uh, drugs? Are you asking me if other than... What did you ask me about? Cocaine, ecstasy, and mushrooms. I've witnessed Amber taking any other illegal narcotics, or are you asking me about prescription medications? Can you clarify? Uh, narcotics other than prescription narcotics. I don't know, but I don't actually think of them. Okay. Amber drinks red wine um, when she's not training, or let me rephrase that. Amber, when I knew her, drank red wine in the evenings uh, fairly regularly, with the exception of when she was training for an acting role. Uh, have, have you ever witnessed uh, Mr. I'm sorry, Ms. Heard um, intoxicated? Yes. Right. And how often would you estimate that you witnessed Ms. Heard uh, intoxicated? I, I don't know how to quantify intoxicated if you're asking me how often I witnessed her drunk. Is that your question? Yes. Amber is um, strangely immune to getting drunk unless she's really drunk a lot. So <laughs> I didn't see her drunk very right. often. I saw her um, drinking often, but I didn't see her um, out of her faculties very often. Like, you know, I saw that a handful of times in the 11 years that I knew her. And how would you describe um, how alcohol affects Ms. Heard's personality based on your experience? You know, it depends on the circumstance. If it was during a moment when she was celebrating, it would make her loose. Like if we were salsa dancing, then, you know, she would have fun and be fun and at a party and, you know, inebriated and dancing and having fun. If she was in a stressful situation, um, I think it would just kind of exacerbate whatever the, the feeling of the moment was. I'm going to uh, ask you to state your name for the record. Nobody has yet. <clears throat> this is me. <laughs> In case you have a All right, go ahead. <laughs> Let's bring up uh, Deb exhibit number one again, please. Mr. Tillett Wright, you were asked some questions by Mr. Presidio. And I'm going to take you back up to the first page where you were asked some questions. Um, and he, he started out with, I, I'm just going to draw, draw your attention to paragraph four. 
and you indicated you met Johnny Depp through Amber. Uh, and you hit it off immediately. Do you see that? Yes, I do. Okay. And then you explained to Mr. Presidio that you considered Johnny to be a close friend and you cared very much about Mr. Depp. Is that correct? He became a close friend and I did care very much about him. I still care very much about him. All right. Could you please describe that relationship that you had with Mr. Depp up until I think you said December of 2015? Sure. Um, <clears throat> okay. Mr. Depp and I first met, Amber invited me over to his house with my then partner, girlfriend. I don't know if she was my fiance yet or not. Um, and I think February of 2013, right at the beginning of 2013. Um, <clears throat> and we all hung out, the four of us hung out in his house, um, in his living room, and just kind of talked and got to know each other. And it was sweet. I was mostly hanging out with Amber and kind of meeting this person. It was a trip to meet someone like that, you know, and see his house. And he was very friendly and very welcoming and very kind. Um, and then the next time we saw each other was at, um, Amber and I both like to do what we call family dinners. So we invite people over and cook for them and, and have a dinner party. And, um, Amber did an elaborate family dinner at her house and Johnny and I, and my ex and Amber, and I believe Whitney were there. I don't know if anyone else was there. I'm sure somebody, other people were there. I don't remember. Um, and Johnny and I really connected at that dinner. We were sitting either opposite each other or just catty corner from each other. And um, I left feeling really intense connection to him. And I was like, well, yeah, sure. Everybody probably feels an intense connection to him because of who he is. I'll forget it. It's ridiculous. And then a couple of days later, um, Amber had another dinner, some such, such a dinner at her house. And uh, Johnny and I had another really good time and, and felt very connected and really laughed a lot and whatever. And um, at the end of the dinner, as I was standing to leave with my ex, Johnny came up to me and said, um, I, I don't really know how to say this because it doesn't happen to me very often, but I think I love you. <laughs> and I felt strange because I felt the same way. And I said, that's funny because I had that same experience after the last dinner party too. And then we joked about how crazy and ridiculous that felt. Um, and we exchanged phone numbers and then he he texted me wanting to talk about Amber a couple of times, and I felt that it was like kind of violating her privacy. So I said that I was happy to be friendly with him and happy to, um, I don't remember exactly what I said, but something to the effect of like, you know, I, I'm happy to be, to give advice or to, to help you guys stay in concert with each other, but I don't want to um violate anybody's privacy with the other one and he i think he really respected that and really liked that because he also values his privacy greatly um and then yeah i was in la for a couple more months and i don't know i think maybe we hung out more during that period i'm not sure um i don't remember if they came to new york during the next stretch of time or what happened but um, basically by the summer, I came back to LA to write, um, and had a very bad breakup with that fiance and was going through some things personally that Johnny, um, you know, he was like, I recognize what's happening for you. Uh, it was like particularly bad anxiety related, trauma related things. Um, and he... I, I didn't expect him to offer me any support around that stuff, but he just was like, wait, I see what you're going through. Um, 
you know, this is my experience of it. I have the same thing and let's talk about it. And like, if you need anything, I'm here. And I was like, thank you so much. You know, I didn't really expect that. Um, and I went back to New York for, to be with my family for a couple of days or maybe a week or something. And um, it was very painful to be there. And he had said, if it's painful to be there, you know, just let me know and come back and stay here. And so I did. And I came back and I originally was going to stay at Amber's house because um, she kept her apartment for a number of years while they were together, even though she stayed at his house a lot um, that she paid for, et cetera. And I, she was, you know, the person that I'd known longer. So I felt more comfortable being at her house. And then um, the consensus was that I should be closer to them. And so he said, oh, there's this house that's just sitting empty at the end of the street. Just stay there. I was very hesitant because I didn't want to take advantage of him. Um, and he was insistent and he was very kind about it. And, and he said that he understood fully what having PTSD and anxiety could do and that he wanted to help. Um, so I, I went and I stayed there. And then I was, I'm guessing in August of 2013 and then in September, September, I think Amber went to England to shoot a movie. Um, so I was there and Johnny and I would hang out on our own and Johnny doesn't have a ton of friends um, because he can't. And um, I would go up and hang out with him. You know, we really enjoyed each other. We really liked each other. And so we would just hang out, you know, on a daily basis, eat dinner or, or watch movies and I'd hang out with his kids and got, you know, very like into like a very sweet uncle niece nephew relationship with his kids and they called me uncle io and um mr tillett right uh did you ever call mr deb brother or your brother refer to him as your brother yes i did now i'm going to take you to paragraph five of deb exhibit number one and uh mr presidio asked you about this paragraph as well and at the end of it, you had said, and he could be incredibly mean and vicious, especially when he was drunk or high. What did you mean by that? What I meant by that was on a number of occasions, um, I saw, you know, Amber or he, I think also would ask me to come and help. He and I had more of a like, mano a mano kind of relationship and she and i had a i i was kind of like the only person that would check either of them um for a while and so they would both ask me to do that with each other um so i saw him for example i remember there was a time when um it was very late at night. I was down the hill. So I went up the hill and he was outside by the pool with a glass of what I understood to be whiskey. And she was inside crying um, and very upset in the kitchen, I think. And then I went outside and talked to him for a long time. Um, situations like that or um, and he would say things, he said something to me that night that I, I thought that night by the pool where I thought, Jesus Christ, you know, um, things like she's gonna, you know, all she's got is her looks and, you know, she has no talent and when her tits start to sag, um, and her face gets wrinkly, nobody is going to be interested in her um, for anything. And she's so she, you know, better like figure out another way to survive and shit like that. Sorry, pardon me, things like that. And um, I also witnessed him um, when Amber was in England. Marilyn Manson and Paul Bettany came over at one point and there was a great deal of cocaine and alcohol involved that I witnessed them doing together. Um, I don't 
specifically recall if Mr. Bettany did or did not partake in the cocaine, um, or really much of anything except things that he said and his personality. But um, Mr. Manson and Mr. Depp partook in a lot of cocaine. What, if anything, did Mr. Depp tell you about his struggles with drugs and alcohol? And um, we sat on the couch and he told me a number of things. He told me about his childhood. He told me about growing up in Kentucky. He told me about growing up in very poor and how his mom was verbally and physically abusive. He told me that when he was very, very young, like 13 or something, he started drinking and taking drugs, I think, or at least drinking quite heavily. And he was even kind of like, yeah, it's crazy, I know, but I've been doing it my whole life and built like a tank. And so that was kind of the nature of the conversation. Um, and he told me that he had struggled with ever not drinking or ever not doing drugs. And he also told me that he didn't particularly enjoy being sober. Um, but that, you know, people around him were very concerned. He was very, very um, concerned with his children and he would express shame or regret about times that he had been inebriated to the point of falling down or embarrassing himself, you know, urinating on himself, things like that when his children were around and that he was very grateful to the people who had kind of shielded them and whisked them away. And he told me that um, in his relationships with previous women, uh, his drug and alcohol use had been an issue, um, but that he just didn't really like life sober and that it was too painful to be alive without um, imbibing or, or getting high. And um, he also told me that he uh, had experienced great bouts of jealousy in relationships that had, that had also led to a lot of drinking and a lot of um, rage activities. Um, he told me that that happened with Winona. He told me that that happened with um, Kate and sorry, Winona Ryder and Kate Moss. He told me that that had happened with Vanessa Parody. Mr. Tillett Wright, um, what if any observations did you make about <laughs> Mr. Depp abusing Oxycontin? Over the course of those two years, Mr. Depp told me verbatim that he was addicted to Oxycontin um, and I have a text message from him where he expresses that um, it's extraordinarily hard to kick and that it, um, I don't remember exactly the words that he uses, but he, he, he referred to it to me verbally many times as like the hardest thing that he's ever tried to kick which he's tried to kick most things. He said it was harder than heroin. Um, so he, he was very um, open and verbose about OxyContin, having gotten addicted to OxyContin. So what, if any, observations did you make uh, about Mr. Depp smoking cigarettes and joints, marijuana? Like, Mr. Depp as far as I could see, always had a cigarette or joint in his mouth at all times, to the point where I was confused about how he could function. He also showed me his marijuana closet that had, I don't know, tens and tens of pounds of weed in it. What, if any, observations did you make while you were staying at Sweetser? I think you said that was August 2013 through May of 2014 with respect to uh, the type of alcohol and the amount of alcohol that Mr. Depp was consuming. When I saw Mr. Depp drink, um, it was 
often hard liquor. I believe it was whiskey and gin and tequila, maybe. Um, could also be vodka. I don't know. He had a full bar in his, in 80, the house that they, with his recording studio in it that they mostly stayed in. So um, I know whiskey for sure. And there was also red wine, a lot of red wine. And when you talk about the whiskey and the red wine, how much did you observe Mr. Depp consume on any given occasion of those? Uh, I don't know. The one occasion I know specifically was the one that I mentioned before during the argument where he suddenly had a glass of whiskey. And I remember it being like, I remember clock because I grew up counting people's drinks. I remember clocking that it was a very large pour in the glass of whiskey. If you recall those, I, I think my question was, you know, what if any observations did you make or did Mr. Depp ever tell you about him blacking out? Mr. Depp was very open with everyone that he was a heavy user. And, um, <clears throat> He told me about, I know there was one instance where he had this very large house property. So if Sweetser Avenue goes like this, um, the house that I was staying at, 76 is down here, then there's 78, which is right here, and then up here is 80, and then across the street, I guess, is 82. And 82 is a very large compound. So he and I were staying, I was at 76 or up at 80, and then 82 they lived in for a brief period of time. Um, and he told me about like vanishing into 82, into the, like the property, into the, like, cause it was very lush and very, a lot of trees, um, and went up quite far up the hill. And he told me about kind of like blacking out and going in there on one instance. Um, he told me, I know that he told me that in, Australia, um, he had blacked out, um, but he also told me that he fucked up. So I don't know. In terms of specific blackouts, there were a number. There, uh, I think he said on the plane, he said that he didn't remember what had happened. What, if anything, did Mr. Depp say to you about whether he wanted to become sober and clean. Mr. Depp um, expressed to me that he wanted to get sober for Amber, that he didn't enjoy being sober, um, that it wasn't fun, and that it, it was distressing and exhausting um, and very hard to do. He didn't, he really, really um, resented having to be sober. Um, yeah, he didn't, he didn't want to be. And what, if anything, did Mr. Depp say to you about his perception of Amber's role in him becoming sober and clean? He expressed a number of times that he felt like she was his leash and she was holding him back from doing what he wanted to do in terms of substances and alcohol. Um, oh, I just want to go back to another incident that I remember he told me he blacked out, was on, on the island. He went to the Bahamas. There were two different instances. One was, um, I guess, like they had only recently met, and he told me that he passed out face down in the sand while his kids were there and that um, the staff had like whisked his kids away so that they didn't see it. Mr. Tillerite, when you said that Mr. Depp uh, used the term monster, what do you recall him saying about that? And the language that ended up being kind of settled on was that there was a side of him that was the monster and that it was not who he was but it was something that lived within him that he had to battle. 
and the language that he always used was that of um, battle and battling, battling the demon, battling the monster. Um, so that the monster, you know, he would say things like, the monster will not win. Um, I will not be that type of man, you know, I, I don't want to, I don't want to be that type of man or husband. I don't want to hurt. Uh, he would call her slim, he, I, our slim, our girl, referring to all of her friends and him and her and I. Yeah. What, if any, observations did you make of Mr. Depp, both in terms of physical as well as temperament, when you perceived him as having too much to drink? Mr. Depp would drink and or take drugs. He would get very mean, very surly, very... Uh, paranoid, extremely paranoid. He would weave these elaborate situations in which Amber was having affairs with every man that she ever worked with and every woman she ever came in contact with. Um, <clears throat> he became very demeaning. Johnny is incredibly intelligent, incredibly smart and witty, and he would point his jokes at people, um, Amber's appearance, her talent, um, her lack of talent as he perceived it, um, why he thought that she was actually famous, which he always implied was just because of her looks. Um, and because he thought that everyone wanted to have sex with her. Um, and he would insult his fans. Um, he called them, I remember he called them remoras, which is a type of um, sucker fish that attaches itself to the hull of a ship and puts a hole in it and then sinks it. Um, he would rail against his mother and his sister, um, sisters, pretty much, you know, Anyone that he felt had crossed him or could cross him, um, he became very nasty about. What, if anything, do you recall Mr. Depp saying about uh, his mother and comparing his mother to Amber? Mr. Depp told me that his mom was viciously cruel to him during his upbringing. Um, and that she was also viciously, like, violent um, with him and with his siblings and with his father. Um, he referred to her, pardon my language, as a bitch um, and a cunt a lot. Um, and he seemed to kind of compare them in the sense that he was, he said at one point, um, something to the effect, it's right here actually. Uh, yeah, I already have a mom who was a bitch to me. I don't need another one in my life. He, there was a fair bit of that kind of like, you know, my mom's been awful enough to me already. I don't need another woman who's gonna also be awful to me. What, if any, discussions did you have with Johnny about the fights he had with Amber? We had a lot of discussions about his fights with Amber. Um, <clears throat> what do you recall? In the very beginning, he expressed that she made him feel crazy he was so in love that it made him feel crazy. Um, the very first time that I mentioned, September of 2013, when he and I were alone together a lot, he expressed that he thought that she was cheating on him and sleeping with her co-stars in England on the films. And I said to him, or in the film, and I said to him, listen, you know, I know her, I think, pretty well. 
And I talked to her a lot. And I think, think if she was having an affair, I would be one of the very few people that she would tell about it. And I don't hold secrets or lies for anybody. And I would, I would tell you if that was happening, so you could make your own decisions. But, um, as far as I know, that's really not the case. And I think that she's really in love with you. And I think that she also is worried that you are having affairs because both of you are used to being sex symbols on earth. And both of you need to just accept the fact that you're really in love with each other and lean in and be together and love each other. Um, and he told me that sometimes his jealousy would make him um, feel crazy and outside himself and that uh, he had to get it under control um, and that it would cause them to fight to be specific in regard to your question. Um, <clears throat> he told me about the fight that they had the time that I went up there. Are you asking for specific instances or are you asking about the nature of their fights? No, I, yeah, I am asking for what he told you about their fights and specific instances. Yes. So to continue, with what I was saying from before, he told me about the fight um, in the middle of the night uh, when I was living down the hill at Sweetser, when I, I mentioned that I saw him with a heavy pour of whiskey, I went outside to the pool and spoke to him. Um, and he told me about the argument that they had had and that she gets mean during fights um, and that it really hurts his feelings and that he then lashes out at her, um, and that, you know, she called him old and he then calls her soon to be ugly, um, and talentless and that they get really ugly with each other. Um, he told me, <sighs> about a fight that they had. Um, we went to England that September. Um, it was Whitney's birthday, I think. Amber's sister, Whitney. Um, and Amber was stuck working. My birthday, Raquel's birthday, and Whitney's birthday, the three people who she was the closest to um, all have birthdays in September. Raquel's just before the end of August, whatever. We're all Virgos and um, she couldn't be with any of us on our birthday, so we all went to England to surprise her. And during that trip, Johnny proposed to her, um, and they then, I'm pretty sure that night after the proposal, got in a huge fight, um, which he all, they both told me about separately. Um, and he said, I'm pretty sure that he trashed the hotel room. Let's see. I spoke to him after I went and talked to him after their their fight on the plane. Um, so t t that's the that's the Boston L.A. plane incident. Is that right? That's correct. So, Mr. Teller, oh, right, yeah. I'm going to ask you about the Boston L.A. flight uh, incident. You talked about it a little bit earlier. And you just said now that you spoke with Mr. Depp about it. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. What do you recall of your discussion with Mr. Depp about the Boston plane incident that happened in May of 2014? And I went upstairs to his bedroom, which was like blacked out. Um, and I, I woke him up. I remember shaking his shoulder and saying to him, hey, buddy, like, wake up, which was not something that a lot of people did to Johnny, wake him from his slumber. Um, and he woke up and we had a conversation about what happened on the plane. And he didn't really remember being on the plane. He didn't really remember getting off the plane. Um, he didn't really remember much detail of anything. And, I, and he swore up and down that he was going to stop and he was going to stop drinking and taking drugs and he was going to never do it again. That was that incident. What, what if any uh, meetings related to alcohol uh, did you and Amber attend in this time frame? 
I understand because we didn't go to many meetings. Um, we, we, I took Amber with me to um, Al-Anon, which is a, it's like a sister program to AA for the family and friends and loved ones of addicts and alcoholics, which I regularly attended. So she came with me to a number of Al-Anon meetings and she also had, um, I think one or two phone calls with my dad's wife about how she dealt with helping him um, get off of his drugs and, and drink less. And um, she read a number of books about it. She was watching documentaries about it. She would listen to any radio show she could get on, like anything, anything she could get her hands on that would give her some tools for how to deal with this, she consumed in that period. What, if any, communications did, did Johnny have with you in this time frame about wanting to get back with Amber after the Boston plane incident? We went to New York, and um, remember we were staying at the Ace Hotel in Midtown. Um, and Johnny started reaching out to me. He, he went eventually back to Boston to start filming again. Would have been in like the next day or two because we weren't there for that long. <clears throat> and um, he reached out to me and basically said to the, something to the effect of like, you know, I have to fix this. I will do anything that I can. And then uh, while he was in Boston, he let me know. And I think he was trying to reach Amber too, but she didn't, she wasn't ready to talk to him. Um, he let me know that he had um, engaged Dr. Kipper and that he intended with every fiber in his being to get sober. And that the nature of the conversation at that point was that he, he was going to beat this thing. You know? yes, please describe for me what transpired, what, what you discussed with Johnny and Amber relating to Australia in 2015. After they were, because they were married in February and they went to Australia in the spring. Um, if, if, you know, can I, if, I'm going to interrupt you just for a moment and forgive me, I just want to keep it chronologically there. Um, you you described earlier that you were present for the wedding, correct, in February of 2015? Yes. Okay. Uh, and you also had discussed uh, about Amber wanting Johnny to be sober for the wedding. What, if any, observations did you make about Johnny uh, at the ceremony and with respect to whether he was sober and clean? You know... I don't actually know whether Johnny was, I don't think Johnny was drinking on the day of their wedding. I really don't actually think he was. Let me rephrase that, before the ceremony on the day of their wedding. Because I was going back and forth between their um, respective like private preparation quarters where they were getting ready because I was technically her best man and his son Jack was his best man, but I wasn't one of the girls and felt more comfortable over there with them, but I was helping all the girls. So I was running back and forth on this golf cart between, I was also taking pictures. I was one of two people who had, was friends with them that had worked as a photographer, so I volunteered to take pictures. So I was, um, very intimately with Johnny and Jack leading up to the wedding. And he wasn't drinking, I don't think. I don't, I don't remember seeing him drink. And then let me ask you this. After the ceremony, as you were walking to the reception, yeah. what, if anything, did Johnny Depp say to you about Amber? As we were walking back from the ceremony, um, we were coming into Cafe Los Camarones, which is the, where the party was happening. And I was walking with Johnny and congratulating him that they pulled it off and that they, they did it, you know? And he said, um, we're married. Now I can punch her in the face and nobody can do anything about it. So I'm gonna now turn your direction to Australia, uh, roughly a, a month later after the wedding. Um, 
you were you weren't present in Australia with uh, Amber and Johnny, correct? That's correct. I'm showing you what has been marked as exhibit number three. Do you recognize anybody in this picture? I do, yeah, myself and Miss Heard. I do, yeah. Please describe what you see. I see a number of long, thin cuts. And what, if any, similarity are those to the ones you just described uh, having seen after Amber returned from Australia? Very similar. All right. And are they the same? Were they different ones? I would have no way of knowing if they're the same or different ones, but they're similarly long, skinny cuts like the ones that I saw after she came back from Australia. I'm going to show, Mr. Tellerwright, I'm going to show you what has been marked as exhibit number five. Um, and it's a text message exchange. Do you recognize uh, this text message number here below Arrow's Arc? That's my old phone number, yes. Okay, so so is this, does this represent a text message exchange between you and Amber Heard on 12-16-2015? Yes, it does. Okay. And I'm going to start you at the top with the blue. It says, I need you. Do you recognize who is sending that message? Yeah. Mr. Tillerett, I'm going to ask you to take a look at what has been marked as exhibit number six. Do you recognize the person in this photo? Yes, I do. Please describe what you see in this picture. I see uh, Amber Heard. And I see an injury to Amber's scalp. Okay. And what, if anything, do you recall about seeing anything similar to that when you arrived in December 2015 at Amber's penthouse? I remember this being one of the injuries that I was shown when I arrived at uh, penthouse three at the Eastern Building on December 16th, 2016. And does this picture that's marked as exhibit number six accurately depict the what you recall seeing? I remember this being one of, um, I think maybe two scalp injuries that there were. I remember there was another one as well, but I could be mistaken. I believe there was another one on a different part of her head as well. Do you recognize uh, the picture that is set forth as uh, exhibit number seven? Yes, I do. Please describe for me what what is depicted in this picture that you recognize. This was a picture of Amber's scalp. And does it accurate does this accurately uh, depict what you saw uh, when you were shown it uh, as you testified earlier in December 2015? Yes, it does. Mr. Tillerwright, I'm going to show you what has been marked as deposition exhibit number eight. Uh, do you recognize this picture? Yes, I do. Please describe um, what is depicted there. This is Amber Heard's face um, with a very swollen lip. Uh, and does this uh, accurately depict what you observed when you arrived at Amber Heard's penthouse in December 2015? Yes. I'm going to show you what has been marked as deposition exhibit number nine. Do you recognize this picture? Yes, I do. Please describe. This is the clump of hair that I was shown, I believe, when I arrived at penthouse three on the night of December 16th, 2015. And does this accurately and genuinely depict the scene that you recall seeing? Yes, it does. Thank you. Now, did what? What if any plans was there as of December sixteen, seventeen of two thousand fifteen for? Amber to be uh, spending Christmas with Mr. Depp and his kids. Do you recall? You know, Taking the pictures down while we talk. Yes, I do recall. Um, there was a plan for um, Johnny and Amber and Lily Rose and Jack and uh, Raquel and her boyfriend or fiance at the time, Josh. 
um, to go to the Bahamas. Oh, and Raquel's mom and Amber's parents to go to the Bahamas and spend Christmas on the island together. Um, yeah. Mr. Tillett-Wright, I'm going to ask you, what if any conversations did you have with Johnny Depp about the December 15 incident? I don't think that he and I, I don't know that he and I had a direct conversation about it. I'm not sure if he and I had a direct So what if any, I'm going to show you, Mr. Tillett-Wright, what has been marked as deposition exhibit number 16. It's a text message exchange dated 2-10-2016. Do you recognize this document? Yes, I do. It's a text exchange between me and Amber Heard about a video that she sent me. Okay. Now it starts out, hi, uh, Steve left me a voicemail at 5 a.m. And that's from you, correct? That's correct. Do you remember what the voicemail message was? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Johnny called me at five in the morning and left me a voicemail in the character of um, some kind of management of like a property manager. Um, And he said something about, yes, hello, this is management. And um, I don't remember what he said, but it was something to do with like, we have a situation that we need to change out the something. And it was just a lengthy, just off the wall, nutbag ramble in the character of management. Mr. Tillerwright, I'm going to show you what has been marked as exhibit number 17. And then Alex, I'm going to ask you to play this. Did something happen to you this morning? I don't think so. Um, no, that's the thing. You want to see crazy? I'll give you fucking crazy. That's crazy. Oh, you're crazy. Are you crazy? Have you drunk this whole thing this morning? Oh, you got this going. You got this going. I just it. Oh, really? Really? Thank you, Alex. You can take this down now. Mr. Tiller Wright, do you recognize that video? Yes, I do. Was that the video that Amber sent to you on the text message exchange on February 10th, 2016? Yes. Do you recall watching that video on February 10, 2016? Yes, I recall watching that video at the time that I received those text messages. So I'm going to take you to 21 May, 2016. 
what do you recall with respect to a telephone call you received from Amber? Sure. Um, I was in New York. Um, I was there visiting family. Um, I was in Greenpoint, Brooklyn. I was walking down Manhattan Avenue and I got, I believe a text message from Amber that said something to the effect of like, can you talk? And so I called and I was walking down the street as this happened. Um, she put me on speakerphone. So I was talking to both of them. He just stopped by to pick up some of his stuff. <clears throat> and he has a theory that he, um, either he wants to ask you about or I, and I said, okay, sure. Um, hello, Johnny, like, you know, and he, I think it was, he said, or she said, um, Johnny thinks that you and I together defecated on his pillow. I think the words were used were, um, shit on the, his pillow. So I started laughing and, and I just, I, I was laughing, she was laughing. And, and when I realized that he was serious, I was like, okay, look, you know, first of all, I wasn't there that day. And, and so he got very agitated by the fact that she and I thought it was funny. And he started to get um, more and more agitated. And I could hear him walk away from the phone. He came clomping back down the stairs. I heard like a noise and then the phone dropped. And, um, he said to her, oh, you think I hit you? You think I fucking hit you? What if I peel your fucking hair back? And then I heard the phone drop again and then I heard her scream. I remember her screaming. And I hung up the phone and I called Raquel immediately because I know that she lives one door away and would her and her boyfriend, Josh, who's a big dude, would be able to get there the fastest. And uh, I, I called or texted her right away and I hung up with her and immediately called 911 in New York. And then I called <clears throat> a friend of mine in LA who I knew had met Amber a number of times. And I think I may have placed a second call to NYPD. Now I'm all frazzled and I don't remember, but I think I called NYPD. Mr. Waldman made some statements in April and June of 2020 that that quote well, Amber Heard and her friends in the media used fake sexual violence allegations as both a sword and shield depending on their needs. They've selected some of her sexual violence hoax Amber for the fake the again sword, inflicting them on the public and Mr. Depp. That was made on April 8, 2020. What if any impact did that have on Amber based on your observations? Amber retreated. Amber became <sighs> isolated, um, embattled, extraordinarily uh, distressed. And then on June 24, 2020, Waldman accused Amber Heard of committing a, quote, abuse hoax against Depp. What were your observations of how this impacted him? I think that my previous statement encompassed that. During the time that you were friends with Johnny and you were speaking with him up until you, test you testified December of 2015, what, if anything, did Johnny Depp ever tell you about Amber Heard being physically violent to him? Nothing ever at any point. Do you agree with me that uh, Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard uh, 
had many verbal arguments? Yes, I do. And you were a witness to a lot of those verbal arguments, correct? I was a witness to some verbal arguments. Okay. And did you ever hear Ms. Hurd say anything mean to Mr. Depp in those arguments? Yes. And did you ever hear Ms. Hurd say anything vicious to Mr. Depp in those arguments? Yes. So would you agree with me that when they argued, they were mean and vicious to one another in what they said? I would categorize it very differently, sir. Well, you testified that you heard Ms. Hurd say mean and vicious things to Mr. Depp when they argued and vice versa. Is that accurate? Yes. And although you witnessed arguments, verbal arguments between the two of them, where they exchanged mean and vicious statements, you never saw Mr. Depp assault or beat Ms. Hurd on any occasion, correct? Judge? No, I never saw either of them physically assault the other one. Did you ever experience him become violent as a result of or because of smoking cigarettes or joints? As I've already explained to you probably eight times, I've never seen Mr. Depp become physically violent with Ms. Hurd. So if that's what you're asking me, if he smoked a cigarette and that made him violent, I think you know that that's ridiculous. And the answer is, again, no. Did you ever witness Combative. Mr. Depp become violent in any manner uh, on account of him smoking cigarettes or joints? If you want my honest answer, my honest answer is that Mr. Depp mixed substances constantly. And I keep trying to tell you that he mixed all kinds of things together when he got crazy and violent. So, and upset and paranoid. So, and I never knew what he had taken. When you say, when you say when he got violent, when did you see him get violent? I saw, I saw Mr. Depp throw glasses and dishware on at least two occasions, which I would characterize as physically violent. And do I know if he'd smoked marijuana or cigarettes? Before that, I don't know. If he when smoked two marijuana or cigarettes. Sometime during the time that I was living in Sweden. Mm -hmm. And, and one sets at the Eastern building. And prior to throwing those dishes, did you witness him um, vibing any drugs or alcohol? I couldn't tell you, but seeing as Mr. Depp always was smoking cigarettes and marijuana, my assumption would be yes. Okay. <clears throat> Do you recall um, when Ms. Bredenhoff showed you a picture of a clump of hair on the floor? Yes. Okay. When you saw that, that was more than a day after um, it was allegedly pulled from her head by Mr. Depp. Is that right? Well, if you want to get technical, my understanding was that their fight happened uh, very late at night, uh, which is technically the morning of the 16th. And I arrived at her house around midnight, the night of the 16th. So technically, it's not more than a day after. It's so, in the same 24 hour period. So it just laid around on the floor for a day. Interesting. Okay. So I'm just talking about the hair on the ground that you saw. When you saw it, was it your understanding that it had been there for more than 20 hours? I have no idea what time their fight started or ended. So I don't know if it was 20 hours or 16 hours or 13 hours. But my understanding, again, was that they had gotten into a fight sometime in the morning of the 16th slash late at night on the 15th. I don't know at what point during the which that during that fight in which the clump of hair was ripped out of her head, but it happened sometime then and there. So yeah, sure. My my understanding was that that clump of hair had not been moved since it was ripped out of her head.
All right. Completes. All right. Do you, what's your next, who's your next witness? We, we have another uh, video deposition, Raquel Pennington. It, it's <laughs> a long one, so we could listen to some of it. All right. Let's we'll go ahead and we'll go start. Into- Okay. Well, Rocky today. Pennington. Oh man, we're going to hear about. Okay. We're going to hear about how That's Rocky fine. Pennington. Right. Uh, and your honor, just for your benefit, the jury got punched. Questioning starts with Miss Vasquez on behalf of Mr. Depp, and then I question Miss Pennington at some point, which will probably be tomorrow. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Can I please have you state your name for the record? Raquel Pennington. Um, in what city and state do you currently reside? Los Angeles, California. You've been deposed before, right? Yes. And you were deposed in Ms. Hurd's divorce proceeding for Mr. Depp, is that correct? Yes. Have you been deposed in any other matter? No. What was the purpose of the declaration that you submitted during Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd's divorce? The purpose of the thing that I wrote, which I don't know if it was technically called a declaration or whatever it was, it was to write down my account of events as fresh in my memory as possible. And Ms. Hurd asked you to, to write down your witness account, is that correct? I, I do not remember actually, I think, Did- I don't know. Did Mr. Depp ask you to write down anything in support of any legal filings? I, I, I don't remember. So it's your testimony sitting here today that you don't remember one way or another, whether it was Mr. Depp or Ms. Ms. Hurd that asked you to write down your witness account during their divorce. Is that correct? Um, I wrote down my account. That is the memory that I have. I wrote down everything as clearly as I could remember it as soon as I could. You provided a witness statement in the UK proceedings. Is that correct? I believe so. Do you recall how many witness statements you provided? Just one. And you provided this witness statement to the son's attorneys? I don't know who it got provided to. Did you testify in the UK trial? Um, yes. And for which party did you testify for the UK trial? I believe it was the um, publication. And by the publication, you mean the Sun? Yes. When was the last time you spoke to Ms. Hurd? Perhaps six months ago, maybe more. What did you and Ms. Hurd speak about? Probably um, it was before her baby was born. So we were mostly speaking about her baby at that point. Did you speak to, when was the last time you spoke to Miss Whitney Hurd? Um, around uh, November, October, November of last year. And when you say last year, you mean 2021? Yes. When did you first meet Ms. Amber Heard? Um, I believe it was 2003. When you met Ms. Heard in 2003, you developed a friendship. Is that right? Yes. Would you say you were best friends? Um, we became very close friends. Your friendship with Ms. Hurd, it persisted through her relationship with Mr. Depp. Is that correct? Yes. And you were friends with Ms. Hurd 
through her divorce from Mr. Depp as well. Is that correct? Yes. Other than when you lived at the Eastern Columbia building, which we'll get to, did you ever live with Ms. Heard? Yes. When was this? Twenty seventeen. Twenty seventeen to twenty eighteen. Yeah. Where did you both live? We lived on Holly Drive. Was that a home? Yes. And did you pay rent? Um, no. Did Ms. Heard? Yes. Sitting here today, do you still consider Ms. Heard a friend? Um, I wouldn't consider her not a friend. What does that mean? We don't speak. <laughs> we are not enemies. Why don't you speak? Um, we grow apart. Shonda, can I put my question read back? Yes. Sitting here today, you can't give me one reason why you grew apart from Ms. Heard. I wanted to spend more time with other people in my life and prioritize other relationships and other, yeah, other relationships. Over the course of your friendship with Amber Heard, did you ever see her using illicit drugs? Can you define illicit drugs? <laughs> Illegal. Not prescribed. Um, yes. Did you ever see her use cocaine? Mm. Yes. How many times? I don't know. Countless? No. Less than 10? Yes. Less than five? Yes. If you remember, when was the first time you ever saw Amber Heard use cocaine? I, I don't remember. Did you ever do cocaine with Miss Heard, Amber Heard? Um, yes. How often? Mm. Not often. Was there a point in your relationship with Ms. Amber using more cocaine? Uh, no. Did you ever see Ms. Amber Heard use cocaine while she was in a relationship with Mr. Duff? No, I don't think so, no. You know what provigil is? Yes. Are you aware that Ms. Amber Heard has taken a drug called provigil? Yes. Do you know when she started taking it? Uh, no. Do you know whether Amber Heard continued to take provigil during her relationship with Mr. Duff? No. Did she ever tell you that she had stopped taking provisional? She never told me that. She 
familiar with any of the side effects of provisual? No. Did Ms. Hurd ever tell you that she was experiencing any side effects as a result of provisual? She never said anything about that. You testified you saw Ms. Hurd use mushrooms less than five times, yes? Yes. Each of those five times, or less than, was she in a relationship with Mr. Depp? Did you say each of the five times? Right. Not each of the five times. How many times that you observed Amber Heard use mushrooms was she in a relationship with Mr. Depp? Maybe three. You recall the specific occasions when you saw Amber Heard use mushrooms while she was in a relationship with Mr. Depp? Um, the first Coachella that we went to, the second Coachella that we went to, and Um, maybe at Hicksville. But was I can't Mr. Be Depp, was Mr. Depp at Hicksville? Yes. Around June of 2014, you moved into one of the penthouses in the Eastern Columbia building. Is that correct? I don't remember which month, Freeloader. but I did move into the penthouses. Approximately in 2014? Um, uh, approximately. And Ms. Heard at the time was in a relationship with Mr. Depp, correct? Yes. And it was Mr. Depp who invited you to live in one of the penthouses, right? Uh, they both did. When you say they both did, they both sit you down and invite you to live in the penthouses? I don't remember how the invitation happened, but it came from both of them. This was a penthouse Mr. Depp owned, right? Correct. And specifically, the one you lived in, it was referred to as penthouse one, right? Correct. And when you moved in, Mr. Depp gave you a master key to all the penthouses he owned, right? It could have been um, one of his assistants. When you say one of his assistants, you mean Mr. one of Mr. Depp's assistants? Correct. So one, either Mr. Depp or one of his assistants gave you a master key to all the penthouses that he owned, correct? Yes. Mr. Depp never charged Mr. Group for rent while he lived at Penthouse One, did he? He did not charge uh, him any rent. No. Did either of you get physical? No. And how was this argument resolved? We talked it out. We skipped something there. I just skipped you something. You recalled another argument with Ms. Heard at Holly House, is that correct? Mm hmm What was this argument about? I think that we were setting up for Thanksgiving and um, we were looking for uh, maybe some glasses or some dishware. We had just moved in and we couldn't find them anywhere. And then um, she finally found them in a place that I thought I had looked and uh, we started arguing about that. She thought that I wasn't uh, looking hard enough, I think, and I 
told her that I thought that I looked there. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what their argument was about. Um, was this just a verbal altercation or did you get physical with each other? Um, yeah, I believe that we, I believe that I pushed her. How did Ms. Amber Heard react to that? She, she either pushed or hit me back. Wow. Violent, huh? Interesting. Yeah. You know where she, where she hit you? I think it was on my cheek. Do you recall any other physical altercations that you've had with Miss Amber Heard? Uh, no. Do you recall any specific instances when you saw Amber Heard get into a fight with someone else? Uh, no. In the time you've known Amber Heard, have you ever seen her wear hair extensions? Uh, yeah, yes. Did she have hair extensions in while she was in a relationship with Mr. Death? I, I, I don't know when exactly she had them throughout the time of knowing her. This is a this is good questioning Mark actually. Pennington Exhibit One, Miss Pennington's witness statement in the UK proceeding, which is dated June sixteenth, twenty twenty. Miss Pennington, first and foremost, do you recognize this document? Yes. Miss Pennington, this is a sworn witness statement that you you provided uh, in the UK, right? I understand. I wanted to get to the bottom and make sure that this was the one that I signed and saw the date, and that was the full document. I just finished it. Yes, this is the document. Did you write this witness statement yourself? Yes. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Yes. Thank you. Did anyone help you write this? Um, no. What is wrong with her? Did Amber Heard help you write this? No. Yeah, right. Did Amber Heard's counsel help you write this? No. She had to think about it. Other than your attorney, did you speak with anyone about the preparation of this witness statement? No. Could please turn to the 10th page of the document where your signature is or a signature is? Is that your signature on the 10th page of this document, Ms. Pennington? That is my e-signature, yes. Are all the statements in this document true to the best of your knowledge and recollection? Yes. You previously testified that you went on a trip to Hicksville with uh, Ms. Hurd, Mr. Depp, and some other friends. Is that correct? Yes. Do you recall when this trip occurred? Not off the top of my head. Do you recall who else went on that trip? Yes. Who else was on that trip? Uh, Whitney Heard. Nathan, who was um, one of Johnny's assistants. Um, Brittany Eustace, Kelly Milano, anyone else that you can recall? I'm trying to remember.
No, I I don't remember anybody else. Where were you all staying? At Hicksville Trailer Park. Did you personally witness Mr. Depp become, quote, angry and aggressive, end quote, toward a friend of yours? Yes. Relative to where Mr. Depp was, where were you when this occurred? Um, we were around a campfire. My question is a bit more specific. Relative to where Mr. Depp was when this occurred, where were you sitting or standing? I was at the same campfire. How close were you? In to a circle. Uh, six to 10 feet. What time of day did this occur? Evening. Have you consumed any drugs or alcohol at this time? I think so. What do you recall consuming at that time? Um, I don't remember. Likely wine. I don't remember specifically. Do you smoke any weed? No. Did you consume any cocaine? No. Have you consumed any mushrooms? I believe so. Have you consumed any MDMA? No. Who was a friend that you referenced Mr. Depp became, quote, angry and aggressive towards? Um, Kelly, Kelly Sue. How did you know her? She was, um, married to a work friend of mine. Do you have any independent recollection of how long you had known Kelly Sue Milano by the time Hicksville occurred? More than one year, less than two. What did you witness Kelly Sue Milano doing that evening before Mr. Depp became, quote, angry and aggressive? I witnessed her hang out with the rest of the group. Did you see her consume any alcohol? Um, not that I remember. Did you see her smoke any weed? No. Consume cocaine? No. Did you see her consume any mushrooms? Um, maybe one. So or I'm 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 genuinely trying to remember. I saw I saw her eat some amount. I don't know how much. Did you see her consume any MDMA? No. You testified that Mr. Depp said words to the effect of, quote, get off my woman, end quote, to your friend. Is that right? I testified that. Did you personally hear Mr. Depp say that? Yes. Is this the quote, angry and aggressive end quote conduct by Mr. Depp that you testified to? Yes. Other than telling Kelly Sue Milano to quote, get off his woman end quote, what did you personally observe Mr. Depp do that was quote, angry and aggressive end quote? That was, that was what happened. Then I think Amber, I think they were, Kelly and Amber were hugging on a chair. 
out by the fire. He came out of nowhere, said that. And then I think that Amber and Johnny went back to the, um, to their trailer. Other than hearing Mr. Depp say something to the effect of get off my woman, what did you personally observe Mr. Depp do that was quote angry and aggressive? That's it. Did you hear Amber say anything to Mr. Depp? I don't remember her saying anything. Did you hear Amber Heard raise her voice when speaking to Mr. Duff? No. What, if anything, do you remember about Amber's reaction to Mr. Duff's behavior? She was trying to comfort him. This evening, Hicksville, did you ever see Amber Heard consume any drugs or alcohol? Mm. I didn't see it. You didn't see Ms. Heard drink any wine? Yeah, I don't I don't remember a specific time watching her take a sip of a drink. Was she holding a drink? I don't remember. And this evening in Hicksville, did you see Mr. Dobbs consume any drugs or alcohol? I I didn't see any specific image in my mind of him consume. Did you personally witness Mr. Depp, quote, in a rage, end quote, that Ms. Heard described? Did I personally witness the rage in the trailer? Yeah. No. That's interesting. Did she just fills in the blanks. Did you hear Mr. Depp yelling in the trailer? No. Did you hear Ms. Heard yelling in the trailer? No. Did you personally see that the trailer was, quote, trashed, as Ms. Heard described? The next morning? Yeah. Yes. What specifically did you see in the trailer? Mm. The thing I remember specifically was the light fixtures had been knocked off. But you didn't see Mr. Depp knock off the light fixtures in the trailer, is that correct? I did not see it. So the only thing you know about what happened in that trailer is what Ms. Heard told you and your observations of the light fixtures being knocked off, is that correct? The only thing I know about what happened in the trailer is what she told me and what I saw the next morning. And the only thing you saw the next morning was that the light fixtures had been knocked off, is that correct? That was not the only thing I saw. It is the specific thing I saw. What else do you recall about the trailer? It was in a general disarray. What does that mean? It was trash. It was torn apart. What besides the light fixtures were thrown apart? I've already told you specifically, I remember the light fixtures. The rest is a general disarray. What is a general disarray to you, Ms. Huntington? Stuff off the counters, uh, cushions thrown around, things strewn about on the floor. Did you see Ms. Heard shortly after she returned from Australia? All right. Why don't we just stop yes. right there? So that'd be a good breaking point, I think. I'll okay. Okay. All right. Perfect. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and break for the evening. Again, do not discuss uh, uh, this case with anybody and don't do any outside research. And we'll see you in the morning at nine o'clock. All right. Get some sleep. Okay? How Rocky there was like pulling teeth, honestly. Uh, a big. I'm not Rocky, but I O till it right was like pulling teeth. I was like, oh my God. Such a and not because of the not because of the nature of the of the of the claims, but because of uh but because they would go along with anything. I mean they were just they were a witness for hire, I just essentially. Have a few items. I just just for the record, I want to make sure exhibit uh plane of one, two, four, eight from yesterday actually should be corrected in the record to plaintiff's 1248A. Is that correct? 
That's correct, Your Honor. Thank okay, you. Okay, good. All right. And so the witnesses tomorrow, are they live, remote, or do we need a rem We have web one, link? one live witness tomorrow. The rest are all video depositions. So they're all depositions, so we don't need a WebEx link? No. Okay. Jesus all right. Web. Other than that, jury instructions and verdict forms. Uh, I have received jury instructions from both parties. Thank you for that. However, I have not received agreed upon jury instructions as requested. Um, so I'm not sure if that has happened or not happened as far as getting an agreed. Your Honor, we have been trying to meet and confer with them oh. for a week. Well, you know, I, that... Your Honor, they're identified and emailed to Sammy. Okay, so the ones that you agreed upon? Yes. Okay, that's fine. So if you could do the same and just give me the, which ones you sure. agree upon, sure. I'd appreciate that. Um, if we can get uh, also by Thursday your objections to the ones that you don't agree upon in writing to me by Thursday morning, okay? Yes, can we Honor. Can we get that? just so I know what you're objecting to, because I only have two hours on Friday morning from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. To, to, to deal with this issue. So I want to make sure we're all prepared to get that done at that time frame, okay? Understood, Your Honor. All right, yes. great. Anything? Your Honor, I, I just want to make clear, we we haven't seen what they sent until they sent today. So okay, that, that's fine. we to confer about this for a week. And I don't, I'm not interested oh, quit in anybody's crying, point, but I understand, Berg. but we'll just go forward from here. And if I can get them Thursday morning, that'd be fantastic. Quit okay? crying. All right, Thank great. You, All right, have a good evening and we'll Thank see you in the morning. You. Okay. I swear. Hey, let's talk about something real quick. I want to, I want to riddle you something. Okay, so you know that, you know that uh, message that Amber Heard sold to uh, TMZ. Let me let me just pull this up real quick because uh, somebody sent me something, and I think it's um it's actually pretty fruitful to know. So Amber Heard, as you probably know by now, sold a picture to TMZ that um that was supposedly from 2012. You know, taking the taking the time frame all the way out there. Let me pull it up in front of you because there's a point to this. Okay, so just. Give me a second to it. There's actually a, it's actually a, a good point to this. In fact, got to pull it up though. There we go. All right, give me a second to find it. Here we go. All right. So you remember this po picture right here with this note? I want you to drink this in with me, okay? She says this is from 2000, and uh, this is from the new timeline, right? Where he busted her lip. This is a note he left her. Okay, so somebody sent me something, and it really is fascinating. So that's supposed to be a letter from Johnny Depp, right? All right, so riddle me this. You see her, her T's? You see that T that looks like a cross there? Yeah. Isn't that the same writing style? Like, isn't that her writing? Like, she wrote that note, right? I mean, look at that. Especially the little T's. Like, she wrote that, right? There he is. Thank you for the membership. Well, thank you. Welcome. Thank you for the membership, too. Welcome to Tugs Thugs. I didn't put that one together myself. Actually, I'm going to post that online. I could save that for a video, but you know what? Fudge it. It ain't enough for a video, actually, but uh, it will go into another video uh, debunking some other stuff. But let me post that. Uh, I can't remember who sent me that. I'll have to look. That was a good catch, though. If you have stuff like that, I do read your emails, you know? Okay. Let me post this. Amber Heard's 2012 picture she sold. To, I'm just typing this real quick. TMZ. The note on it. She said. Maybe I wrote. Um, why does the handwriting match her? One second there. I just want to make sure I put that out there because it uh it does matter. Like 
like all that stuff does. Oh God. I had the court pulled up too. I don't know if you could hear that. I think I turned the sound off already, but the, uh, I had the court feed up and the court feed after a minute, it goes to beep, you know, that, that horrible sound. And it, uh, it, it is an horrible, horrible sound in your ears. Yeah, you know, I think it's funny. Like the whole thing with the, the newspaper, like with Adam Waldman is so funny because you know, like she blew that all out of proportion like crazy. I mean, the reality of that, we'll talk about it in just a second. Darius D, thank you. Welcome. Thank you for the membership too. Welcome to Tugs Thugs, by the way. Natty Sparrow, thank you. Welcome to you as well. Thank you for that membership. Welcome to Tugs Thugs. Thank you both. You know that Adam Waldman is their boogeyman, right? I mean, just being real about this, you know that Adam Waldman is probably the most hated person. Uh, she probably, I'm going to say currently that she hates Adam Waldman more than Johnny Depp. Why? Because Adam Waldman, she couldn't ruin his life. Yeah, I mean, if you look at that handwriting, it's also like the ends are the same. That's her handwriting. Look at this. She is so full of crap. Look at this stuff. Look, the ends match too. Look at that. The ends and the T's. Man, I got to send that to somebody real quick. You must, uh, you must excuse me for one second, you know? Because that's... Uh, that's flagrant. I mean, that is flagrant. Like, they, stuff like that annoys me. Because you can tell, like, she for sure did that. I mean, she set this up. It kills me when these people do that. Like, they fake, I mean, they they, they fake fake evidence like it's not even it's not even close to being real they fake this evidence and there's like plenty of proof of it i gotta send that over to uh let's just say somebody that should see it i think so you're gonna have to just Bear with me for one second. It needs to go where it should go. I realize it was it, it. I wish it would have made it into the courtroom, honestly. Because if it would have made it into the courtroom, then you could ask questions about, hey, let's uh, let's pull this person back and ask them about their picture. Because I think that would have been a perfect question, you know. Like I said I can't remember who sent that. If you wanted credit for it, um, hit me up again, and I will give you credit for it for sure. You know, I'm just writing somebody real quick. Here we go. I'm sending that where it needs to go. Let's just say. I thank you all too. Like I said, I, I try to make sure that stuff again, I don't know. Uh, I don't, since it's not in the courtroom, I don't know if it necessarily matters, but at the same time, you know, at the same time, I just, I find it, like I said, I find it fascinating that she would pull that thinking that nobody would even fact check it, but that's the problem. Her entire story has been that on display every time. Like, if you look at any of her story that's been set up this way. In one second. Let me pull this up here. I mean, any of her story has been that way. Because once you put any of it under a microscope, like I said, you start to notice all of the problems, all of the issues. All the, the the fact that none of it holds up to scrutiny. She never expected anyone to question her story. She actually thought that since the since the ACLU and since the richest guy in the world were on her team, that Johnny Depp would pay. Look at this. Her only evidence for injury is right here. 
This is it. A tabloid picture with three scratches. That entire story that you told, that she told, this is her, this three linear marks. That's her entire proof of injury. Can you imagine? Dawn, thank you and welcome. Thank you for the membership too. Welcome to Tugs Thugs. And Jester, thank you. Welcome also. Thank you for that membership too. And welcome to Tugs Thugs. How did John, JD's lawyers do today? I thought they did well. Um, some of the questioning of Iotiller right, I didn't think was helpful or good, to just to be honest, if I'm I'm being very honest about that. Um but it's boring. <laughs> like, like, what's the best way I can say that? It was boring to watch. And I figure if I think it's boring because I'm a, I'm OCD and I feel like I need to watch things, uh, what is the jury who is forced to be there think? You know? Because, you know, they can't be enjoying themselves. I think the lawyers did fabulous, though. Like, they destroyed. And I do mean destroyed. Her stuff. Yeah, actually, I have a bunch of her arm pics. And what's fascinating is that when she gets with uh, Elon Musk, she has an army of marks appear. I personally think that she was going to set up Elon Musk. That's just my thought on it. I'm not saying that to help Elon in any way because uh, Elon paid for this stuff. I think that's true. I think that is absolutely true. I think that... uh that she she paid for that there yeah the the writing on the mirror matches up too you're right and i was looking at it as well you know people are pointing that out let me mention this real quick before we move uh forward with some stuff we'll talk about a couple of things we'll catch some super chats all that good stuff but let me mention uh the new shirt real fast so if you're in the mood for something to wear you know one thing i can say today is i think johnny deb's team stepped on a b <laughs> Oh, that's a good, uh, we, we have a, we have everything from Amica shirts and on, but this one, it is pinned at the top of the description. If you want to get one profits, they go to this little thing we call charity. So we've sold 11 so far, get in there. I don't know how long I'll leave them up. Um, I've enjoyed them right now. I've never been a big merchandise person. I usually do a couple of things here and there, but I've been having fun with it and it all goes to charity. So who cares? Right. So we can have a good laugh out of it. Batsy, thanks for the 20 tug. Compare the writing in the mirror. Yeah, I'll pull those up in a second. I'm not going to put them aside. I'll just pull it up, you know? Is that supposed to be depth? Yeah, it has a depth face. Look, <laughs> it's got a little depth face, <laughs> a little depth glasses. See? Yeah, I thought they did a good job. I, actually, that's not mine. Uh, that's Peter Gilmore. He does all my little shirt uh, shirt designs and stuff. I'll, I'll love it. Uh, Swish, thanks for the seven. Can we compare the, her writing with the mirror? Yeah, we'll pull them both up. Is Tug your Twitter handle? No, my Twitter handle is at that umbrella. It's not that umbrella guy. That is a poor food critic, apparently. <laughs> that guy probably gets some of the most hateful stuff. Actually, I've had to, you want to hear something crazy? So I had to ask people to stop harassing that guy because, you know, he's some kind of food critic. And um, I mean, he doesn't have anything to do with anything. So, <laughs> you know, he, he had, he was, he was doing food reviews, you know, and, and he, he had like some, like I said, he had some kind of little food review thing going. And uh, I had to, I had to ask people to stop harassing him. It's bad. Like don't, typically I don't want to have anything to do with those folks, but I, like I said, I had to, I had to ask them to stop harassing him because uh, it wasn't me. And I felt, I felt bad for him. You know, again, like at least I know why it's happening. That dude didn't do anything wrong. Like, I'm not saying I did anything wrong, but that dude did less than I did <laughs> because that dude has no idea what was going on. He's probably like, oh, my God, why are all these people writing me, telling me to off myself? Do they hate my food reviews that much? Oh, poor dude. You know, so it's at that umbrella. Yeah, I'm pulling up that picture real fast, though. I'm pulling up, uh, I'm pulling that and the... Uh, the writing one side by side. It is kind of unfair though. Like I said, I feel weird asking people like point your harassment this way, kids, not towards that person. I mean, come on. <laughs> like that is not, 
that's a sad place to be. Please just uh, keep your harassment to me. <laughs> and what a weird world. What a weird world. Hmm. All right. Let me pull these together now. Here we go. I got them set up. So here are both of those back to back. You can see like here is that writing. Again, I know it's a little blurry the way I took the shot there, but you can put it together. Oh, yeah. You can see quite a few. Oh, yeah. The H. The H design where they don't they don't grab. So you can tell the H's are the same. S, wide S, wide bottom. See the wide bottom. Yeah, this is her for sure. There's just no, there's no, there's no questioning it. It's all the same stuff. I mean, it's all there. The ends. Yeah. TMZ, good job fact checking that stuff, huh? <laughs> Oh my god. Like these media places, they're like, oh, I got a scoop. It's like, no, you don't have a scoop. You got a scoop, all right. You got a like a shovel full of kitty litter. I mean, really. You know, you need to fresh step your butt back to logic. <laughs> Come on, man. Dude, let's see. Batsy. Let's see. I got that. I got that. How's it going, Batsy, by the way? Darius takes the five. When last lady is asked, is A.H. your friend? Someone whispered the answer. I can't understand. I boosted audio and someone's talking in the background. She has a lawyer there with her. Um, so that was... Uh, now, now, what's interesting about the lawyers representing these folks, remember, none of Amber Heard's friends are gainfully employed. Okay? Like, none of them. None of them have anything positive going for them in their lives at all. So when you hear whispering and stuff like that, you have to... You don't ask, is that a lawyer? You ask, who's paying for said lawyer? Because they don't have any money. Because they said they're all broke. You know? Because life dropped them like a bad habit. You know? And it's sad, too. Like, when you think about everything that's going on in this case, Johnny Depp supported their lives. Remember, like, Raquel Pennington that was speaking at the end of the day, you, you know, she, she made bead jewelry and there's nothing wrong with you making bead jewelry that's not what i'm trying to say what i'm trying to say is she made bead jewelry and lived next to johnny depp like you don't do that without someone uh propping your life up johnny depp propped her life up gave her something better gave her something real and what did he get for it he got nothing he got nothing but a bad time. Like, that's disgusting when you ask me about it. Like, it disgusts me. Jersey Girl, thanks for the 10. JD, she knew old obscure blues music that I liked. AH, Carly, who? Sign? Huh? Nope. She 100% studied him to win him over to uh, and then destroy him. Actually, I got a better one for you. So when Io Tillett Wright was speaking, Io said that they became fast friends because of Amber's love of books that they read and psychology, which I'm going to guess that it's probably I'm going to I'm going to guess that it's uh, probably more sociology like identity. You know, it's identity laden because that's what I.O. is uh, obsessed with because it's a reflection of self. I.O. is a, a self-obsessed. All of these people are self-obsessed, which, again, I'm not saying anything wrong about, like, if you want to better understand, like, why you identify a certain way or whatever. I mean, I don't care about that. But what I'm saying is these people are they they're always looking for validation and they want to find a mirror like Io wants a mirror. And they found it in Amber Heard. She pretended to be the mirror. She sold them like the person that's also into eclectic jazz. And old books of poetry and all of these heady topics is into identity pop psych and, you know, like bubblegum articles. Uh, really? Like, again, that's Amber Heard. That's a that's a commentary on who Amber Heard is, because Amber Heard is whoever Amber Heard wants to be to lure you in. 
Again, people like that are really dangerous because they become the thing that you think you need. You know, everybody has a hole in them. Everybody does. It doesn't matter how happy you are in life. You, you feel that like if you meet someone that has that, they're almost addictive. When you meet that person, I'm not talking about a love interest. I'm just talking about somebody that is so interesting that you're like, huh. Mira, thanks for the two. I sent you something on Twitter. You sent me in DMs. If you tag me into something, I'll probably never see it. I'm just telling you. You probably have to mail it to me. Uh, let me check. Yeah, if you tag me on something like where I've been covering the trial, like today, um, I'm going to guess I'm getting about uh, notifications and tag-ins and stuff. I'm getting at least 10,000 a freaking an, an hour. So I can't. I, I, you know, apologies. Like I, I want to respond to people, but I can't even find where you're talking to me normally. You know, so I, I, it's just a big jumble. I respond to people here and there, but man, I can't find anything on that where I where I post about the trial while it's going on. A bomb. Thanks for the five. Hashtag justice for Johnny Depp. Ticket tie. Ticket tie. Thanks for the five. Those uh, witnesses were so unprofessional and just uncomfortable to watch. Seem forced. They did indeed. Sarah, thanks for the five. It stuck around till seven. Thanks for the coverage and the giggles. Peace out, people. Indeed. Russian aloha. Your voice is so sexy. Mm, thank you. My voice is so sexy. That's what I tell myself. I'm like, hey there. I'm like, ooh, Tug, you sound fly. I'm like, ooh, I know I do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my wife is telling me today she was like you say the dumbest stuff you like they have no filter no filter whatsoever <laughs> you just say whatever comes into your mind some days uh, I don't care I don't care I have fun you know and if I say something and get myself in trouble ah, you guys will, you guys will forgive me I don't care all right thanks for the five is it just me or is it cringe how uh, she looks at the jury I'd be really uncomfortable. It is very cringe. Vaughn, thanks for the two. Her lip is busted on the opposite side. Yep, you see that in the picture there. Rick Hale, thanks for the 449. Stream gel for you, Tug, for copyright material for TMZ. Here's something to help bail you out. Yeah, um, TMZ will be nailing me for that. You know, they'll they'll be going after me for, I'm sure. Actually, I have three. Okay, this will be the third stream that they've copyright hit. And they just sit there because they won't answer them because they're jerks. Because they know that we uh, we don't support them. So screw it. Is it against the rules to leave a court before the judge dismisses you? Yeah, the way that she did. You're supposed to go with your, uh, you're supposed to go with your uh, representatives. That's how she worded the ruling. So, yeah, the way that she just stormed out, uh huh. It was actually very against the judge's ruling. Sandy thinks of the twenty. What is your email? I have info on Amber and Elon. My uh, email is two words slammed together. Okay granular g-r-a-n-u-l-a-r -A -A like a grain heaven h-e-a-v-e-n granular heaven at gmail.com why is it named that i don't remember <laughs> it's been a long time it just is gabriel badwell thanks for the two you got no filter tug but we love you anyway <laughs> indeed thank you scott thanks for the five i think that note is johnny's writing they both have the same t but johnny's r's are distinctive i don't i mean they got that you think that like the H's are the same. The S's for her are the same. The uh, the N's are the same. Whew, I don't know. Hmm. I'll go through it again. But man, it looks close. I'll look at it though. I'll check it. I'll, I'll look over there. I mean, I tell you, it really. Because I mean, like usually you go off of um, like, like when you're talking about like uh, um, autograph authentication, they usually do. They do th what three points is what it is three points so that's four points but yeah I'll look at it I mean if you've got somebody that's weird and and mimicking someone else maybe you know I'll check it out though for sure. Crystal thanks for the super chat the picture on the side of her forehead where her friend I O said is a bruise but it's a mosquito bite I just <laughs> I couldn't find half of the supposed IO is just, you know, it, it, IO would say anything. IO just agreed with everything. You want I'll show you something weird about IO in a second. 
Hyperforce, thanks for the five. Was this the last chance JD's team had to call a witness or hold a deposition? They can call more people. Um, they have time to call rebuttal witnesses and stuff. They could, they could, uh, they could ask to do something like that as long as they have time. They have to have time. What's his face? Thanks for the five. Bro, a resident at ECB debunked the claim that James Franco lived there. Yeah, he didn't live there. Like, like, uh, that's not true anyway and that was debunked a while back like i know that uh i know that andy had somebody on to talk about which was good which was a good interview but that was actually debunked a while back in something else i read and i can't remember what it was but um it was around 2020 when they first started talking about that that's when the the video came out because they were saying, well, maybe maybe he was just right there. He also brought an overnight bag. I mean, come on. Franco's going to come crash at your house with his overnight bag, but y'all are just going to have cuddle party and, and you know, toast some s'mores. Come on, give me a break. Right? <laughs> Thanks for the 10. Is it just me, or do you feel like Amber looks significantly different from her younger years? Yes. She looks so different. It's plastic surgery different. There's a lot. There's a lot there for sure. Between you and the Death Battle crew, I've gotten away from you two. So thanks for being you, Tug. <laughs> Thank you. And some please, thanks for the five. Looks like she had some zits on her forehead that she picked at. Did not look like a handful of hair was ripped out. Well, her hair picture is ridiculous anyway. Okay, that's actually, uh, that comes from, again, it comes from the Josh... Drew deposition. Like that's not it's a, uh, you know, it's a, uh, or not deposition, but witness statement rather. It'll take it a minute to load. It'll, huh. the Josh Drew witness statement is so long. Like it's got so many article or items attached to it that it'll crash at least once. So it'll take me a minute to load it. It's always screw it up. I hate that deposition in a way. I love it because of what it has, but I hate it because it always crashes there. Med Scientist, thanks for the tip. Received my Amica cream mug today. May pour a mega pint in a bit. Cheers, Tug. Awesome. Appreciate that, too. Appreciate you getting it. I'm glad it came. What's his face? Thanks for the five. Be honest. If you got 14 million, would you marry Amber for 15 months? Yeah, and then I'd leave. I guess I could. <laughs> you know, I guess. Like, uh, I would I have to share a home with her? Because she might kill you. I mean, like, she's dangerous. Like, for real. You know, I could joke about it, but she may murder you. Like, she, sa she sounds dangerous. Like, it's not a question of, but, you know, if I, if I don't have to stay in the home, yeah, just leave, you know? I get to keep my 14 million no matter what, right? You know, I, um, yeah, I mean, Miss Umbrella might not be thrilled about that one, though. Here's the hair. Okay, you were talking about, we're talking about the scalp picture first, okay? There's two pictures of the hair, actually. There's a hair on the floor, and there's the hair pool. So this is the hair pool. Actually, I'll show you something that's really a dead giveaway. So this is the, the hair pool, right? Yeah. Now, I want to show you something in the scalp that a lot of people don't catch. Watch this. You see this right here? This is not just a trick of lighting. This has got to be extension or... It's either extension or a wig because look, there is a white piece in the hair. You see this right here? You see how that's in and around? Like, look, it's not the hair itself and it's not reflection of light. It's a piece that's in there. I said it's got to be one or the other. Gustav, thanks for the five. Anyone else think Amber and Elon could be siblings indeed? Hey, Joan, thanks for the 10. Thank you. I thank you. Appreciate you. Hey, Sparrow, thanks for the 10. Hey, Tug, been here the entire day. Really enjoyed cro today's cross. So fun. I had fun with it. Recently found an article about Turd who asked the police to erase her domestic abuse uh, arrest when she met Johnny. Want a link? Yeah, shoot it to me. Shoot it to me. Shoot it my email. Granularheaven at gmail.com if you would. Maybe something I haven't seen. Hey, Mr. Waters, thanks for the two. I love your work, too, man. I like your pictures. Thanks for the backing there. 
Amber Heard, thanks for the five. I can't wait to win and spend all Johnny Douche's money on Starbucks. <laughs> Nail polish and winky faces. Man. Man, oh man. Amber Heard. <laughs> That'd be really weird if that was a real Amber Heard. Could you imagine? Could you imagine the insanity to that? But look at that anyway. You know that's like a tag or something, right? You see that, right? Now, on top of that, you have the, I mean, these are the pictures from that entire incident. See, they're almost all in here, you know? These are the ones I was talking about before. And when you see the actual, let me, let me, let me show you the pictures just real fast. Okay. Oops, there's a knife. Okay. So, when you look at them, again, look at how overexposed. I always look at, like, the shirt. It's supposed to be white, but it's turned brown from overexposure. Shedding grimes, thanks for 10. Blame it on Boo. <laughs> Looks like dog hair. Yes, indeed. We will look at that in a second. I think it is. How viewers unit? Thanks for the two. It's a strap on. Let's call it what it is. <laughs> Hashtag Lola. <laughs> indeed. Ew, but look, like, okay, there's one picture here that is so overexposed. Like when I see this, like if I'm not paying attention, the first time I looked at it, I thought that was a mirror. Like, this is the way my mind processes it. You know those mirrors, uh, those, uh, rather, those uh, cabinets with a mirror and a light at the top? I thought that's what that was because of the way the lights and the darks are so stand apart. But look at the, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to get another clear picture, bro. I mean, look at these. Like, these are the pictures that they're talking about. These are those December ones. Like, here's probably the the clearest one. And, like again, I agree. That's either a sty. It's one of two things. It's a Botox scar or a mark, or it's she had a sty removed. Like they didn't go into the you had medical work done there. I, I, I would have loved to hear them like throw out some more accusations there, but you know, at the same time, I thought they they tore her up across. <laughs> so, all right, here's the hair though. Like, look at it. No roots. Like I said, it's messy. Missy, Mr. Leafy Vapors. Thank you for the five. No statement, but plenty of statement and backing. Thank you, Mr. Leafy Vapors. Now, look at this. There are no roots. There's a tangle, but there are no roots on any of this hair. Let me zoom it in just so we make sure there's no misleading at all. Now look. See? It's knotted a bit, but it's not. Again, there are no roots. Like, if I grab you by the hair and I rip it out of your head, that's what I'm doing. I'm ripping it out of your head. You're going to have rooting and everything else, and there's nothing. There's absolutely nothing. It's just a, well, it is what it is. It's fake, you know? A Twee, thanks for the 10 there, and the wreck sticker. Also, thanks, Twee, for the 5 and that other sticker that's funny. Gloria, thanks for the 2. AH pushes JD and pushes him over and over again. What the hell? Exactly. Or is Vec? Thanks for the two. Kelly Milan equals Kelly Sue. That turd mention? Hmm. I don't. Hmm. I don't remember the Kelly. I'd have to. I'm going to have to listen to see what the Kelly thing is. When did she mention Kelly? What was she talking about? Because I don't remember. I don't remember the Kelly mention. Like there was so much in there. Just I don't remember. But, hey, Eva, thanks for the five. So hilarious when you said. Crazy cat lady was three stooges all rolled into one stooge. I was dying with that comment. It was like a comedy skit. Oh, she was funny. Like I, I was dying there. I was dying. Email, yeah. I'll, I'll look at it in a minute. I, uh, <laughs> I can't. Uh, oh, Kelly and Hicksfield. That okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it is. Okay. Yeah, Kelly. So Kelly Sue is just this random name that was thrown in. So there are 14 incidents that she alleges. One of those incidents transpires. The earliest one happens in Hicksville. That's the one where she says, where she first brings up the, he led me around by my, <clears throat> actually, he, they, she said he was doing cavity searches is what it was. He was like, where's my cocaine, winch? And he starts doing a cavity search, which is like, again, what in the hell? Like, why would he think you would uh, be shoving his cocaine up your hoo-ha, you know? <laughs> I mean, it makes you wonder, like, like, does she do stuff like that normally? I mean, it, is that is that like a go-to thing for her? Because, like, uh, you know, I don't, 
I don't think that my wife's drug muling around shit in my house, you know? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what did he, did you watch a little bit too much blow before the weekend? And he was like, oh my God, you've been drug muling from Pablo Escobar. You're like, no, Johnny's going on the Pablo again. He thinks he's George Young. Oh my God. <laughs> I mean, what, what is this? <laughs> oh, it makes no sense to me whatsoever. I mean, it's like, it, it really, it's like somebody watched like that and they were like, drug muling? <laughs> I gotcha. Gotcha there. Gotcha, son. And you're like, no, nah, it doesn't make any sense. That's not even, how, that's, <laughs> that's not even how they drug mule. Okay, Amber, I'm sorry. They don't shove the balloon up their hoo-ha. They eat it and, and they bring it back up. <laughs> They don't, they don't, anyway, like this, this ain't, this ain't Shawshank Redemption for, you know, the ladies. Oh, don't have a, don't have a Bible to ride your rock hammer. That's okay. Introducing Amber Heard's hoo-ha. Johnny's like, where's my rock hammer? <laughs> like, oh my God, what happened? Uh, that was a little Shawshank meta, by the way. Enjoy that one. <laughs> Oh, geez. That's so, it's so bad. So bad. Like I say, when I make fun of this stupid stuff, I'm making fun of the terrible narrative. <laughs> oh, Twee. Uh, yeah, Michael thinks for the vibe. I get it. They're taking so long to answer every question, killing their time. Twee, thanks for the three and that super sticker. Actually, Twee, thanks for the four and, and the hippo and, and another four and another hippo. I like that. Thanks for the additional tens. There's two of them actually for uh, two wrecks and another two fours for the uh, for the additional two hippos. And also, Twee, thank you for the uh, for the ten with the hippo in the chair. Thank you for that. Seriously, all of that together. That's awesome. Zip, thanks for the five. Man, these people have selective memory loss. Must be a bug going around. P.S. Just got paid. Sending my support for the new PC. Thank you. Appreciate that. Julia, thanks for the 15. Another using Parasite. Yep, that's Rocky for sure. Jennifer, thanks for the two. Rocky P is Amber 2.0. Yep. Let's see. Aretta, thanks for the five. Thank you for your coverage, helping get the truth out. I appreciate that. Well, uh, Sarah Blogs, thanks for the five. The subtitles on here say Mr. Depp is Mr. Death. Yeah, and Miss Hurt is Miss Hurt. Like you, I didn't hear her right. Yeah. Io is an arse. Doing a great job here, dude. I hate Io. Like, I can't stand the lies. Do you know Io actually threatened uh, that incredibly average with litigation if he continued to cover this? I may, would you all like a video on that? Where IO threatened to sue a YouTuber because they made a video on what was going on. Junior, thanks for the two. Game over, indeed. And Spooky Spoon, I like that name. Thanks for the 449. And watcha, watcha. That's good stuff. All right. Yeah, I know a lot about some of these folks. Like I said, I've been watching it now again. You know, you have people that have been doing it longer. I just think that's. IO is a creepy. Yeah, very creepy. I'm Dan Ramirez. Thanks for the two. This person make me sad. Again, make it stop. <laughs> exactly. This dog lover. Thanks for the two. Investigate the background coughing. Very suspicious. I think a lot of the background is lawyers. Remember, they all have lawyer teams with them. So, you know, you could see, um, you could see the lawyer with, uh, with uh, Rocky. Send it to Cringy. Thanks for five. I need a mega pine after this. Who's the things for the five? Sounds like this guy in Amber's team had a nice powwow. Yes, indeed. You could tell that coaching. See, Ash, thanks for the 10. Go check out the DUI guy on Twitter. Yeah, well, I, I was checking this stuff out earlier. He's in court watching today. Had some interesting things to say about the jurors. Yeah, I've been looking over his stuff. I thought I, I, I like his Twitter anyway. Sky Dakota, thanks for the five. A hello from Ireland. And thank you. If there's something that you notice, let me know like that. Thank you. Thank you from uh, uh, hello from Ireland, man. Thanks a million from all your coverage and your views. Uh, who will do the documentary on this case? As in Amazon, Netflix, etc. Ha ha! It'll be someplace attached to Warner Brothers or Discovery, and they'll do a hit piece. They've already done it once. You know that. Uh, you know somebody mentioned 
somebody mentioned uh, Marilyn Manson, for example, yesterday, and it got me thinking about this. So um, they said, well, Marilyn Manson's guilty. I saw the uh, I saw the documentary and I thought. Did you see the documentary on Johnny Depp? I'm just curious because, you know, there was one of those, too, right? And. Apparently, a lot of people, maybe I guess, didn't. They didn't realize that it existed. It was just a giant hit piece. It was nasty. It's a really nasty one. Yes, Ro, thanks for the vibe. Looking closer at the hair. I don't see any root uh, stream or any hair. Yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. You know, it's crazy, isn't it? Well, thanks for five. Legal Bites reports an altercation ending with Cat Lady telling AH if she didn't like it, she could go ahead and uh, represent herself. That, yeah, there was a, a report of that. Like, I don't know who actually know there. There was a report with that with a like a super chat that came over reporting it. I can tell you for sure that when the PR team got fired, like this, this happened for sure. Uh, when the PR team got fired, there was a there was threats coming from Amber Heard toward Rottenberg and a Rottenborn and Crazy Lady, telling them both that they better get together or they're gone. And she has fired multiple teams before, for sure. So <laughs> you know the threat. I, I wouldn't be surprised. You know, I'd like to know who sourced that that threat though. I'd like to know where it came from, Kim. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you for the membership, too. And welcome to Tux. Oh, yeah. And also, Kim, thank you. Welcome again. Thank you for the upgraded membership. And welcome to the Tuggernauts. Appreciate that. Yvonne, thanks for the two there. JJ, no more tears. J and J. <laughs> These people, man. Can you imagine? Like, she stopped. Did you know she just stopped crying, right? She just stopped crying. She just stopped doing anything. She was just like, I don't have to try anymore. It's all over. Right? Tristan, thanks for the tune. No one cares. So, <laughs> indeed. Kim, thanks for the 10 as well. I like that super sticker. I, I, I don't remember that one very well. I've seen it once before, so I like that. Like the gamer chair there. I feel like that. That's the kind of chair I'm sitting in right now. <laughs> thank you for that Aaron thanks for the five IO sleaziness reminds me of Stanley Poole from Bioshock massive liar except for himself seems to be a gossiper oh yeah IO Tillett is one of those na you can tell one of those nasty mean freaking would cancel you in a heartbeat they, they, they remind me of the Twitter monger crowd IO Tillett wrote an article back when in uh, Refinery 23 I think it's called called why I called 911 and has actually written much of their claim to fame is writing on the coattails of JD, putting out hit pieces on him. Mr. Leafy Vapors, thank you. Welcome. Thank you for the membership, too. And welcome to Tugs. Tugs. Thank you for that. Yeah, uh, I.O. Till It Right actually wrote some. Uh, I.O. Till It Writes, indeed. <laughs> uh, oh, I can't stand I.O. Some dude, uh, thanks for the five. Very clear memory for specifics on this trial, especially when he looks left. Previous career, though, too hard to remember. Exactly, exactly. I, I, I freaking Io is is a is a bully for hire. It's like a bunch of them. Uh, Chan, thanks for the five. This guy, Johnny, cannot have many friends. Oh, this guy, Mister Depp, was uh, really open with everyone about his drinking issue. Pick a lane, clown. <laughs> You know what Johnny Depp's problem is? He's nice. He allowed himself to uh, to have one parasite bring a, a crew of parasites in, and they leached off of him for years until he said enough. And then afterwards, they decided to to suck him dry and throw him into a gutter and let him die. Because you know what? He can identify who they are. So they decided to kill him. They thought their final act would be to... to Leave him dead in the gutter. Because, you know, like, Io was testifying about stuff that they would have had no recollection about. Oh, I wanted to show you something real quick. Amber Heard, thanks for the two. I'm too rich for you pores to understand. Bye. <laughs> you pores. Amber, is too rich for you pores to understand. I like that one. That's funny. 
Let me see. IFOD. That is funny. So, I lied about something today, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you proof of this, okay? What if I could say I could debunk part of their uh, their testimony? What if I could tell you that there was proof out there that shows that they weren't where they said they were? So, remember that little part about how they were in... Um, it was about the birthday mess, right? About poop gate and all. Remember that? Just give me just a second. I got to grab this real quick. So, remember IO said that IO was around and, you know, witness for part of that stuff, right? I mean, you caught that, right? All right. Well, what if I were to tell you that IO actually was not in the area at that time? In fact, I was lying about this. And JD's team is, is aware of this too. I don't know why they don't bring this up. Bayes, thank you and welcome. Thank you for the upgraded membership to the Duggernauts. Thank you. Let me see. So I'm going to share this with you, all right? I'm going to share you a little secret. So I want to share you a picture. This may not look like anything at first, right? It's just a just an Instagram post, right? But here's the problem. You notice the, the date behind it, right? You notice that? April 22nd, 2016. Yeah. Okay. Now, that means it would be the day after. This would be the day after the party before they go to, uh, before they go out to, um, what is it? Uh, Coachella or whatever, right? If you look at their, if you look at their, um, uh, geotagging throughout some of these days like here they're at joshua toy they're not in um they're not in the right areas there are actually a few pictures that exist from that area here okay so here's um the 20th okay so the day before here's the thing the day before the birthday party you know when they're they're supposed to be around they're supposed to be hanging out with amber heard right they are at give me one second. Brook okay, here's 20, right? They're in Brooklyn. They're not in California. <laughs> Cause they're obsessed with uh posting about themselves, right? So see that? Brooklyn. That's where they're at. Brooklyn. Here's where they are. April 20th. Notice that? So they're not in the area that they're saying. They go from New York. They go all the way over again. They're going over to uh, to uh, uh, Coachella. They're not in L.A. <laughs> they're not in L.A. They're lying. So they're not available for that time period that they say they are. Jack Drakes, thanks for the five. Hey, Tug, this is a YouTube video called Cream by David Fern. It reminds me very much of Amica Cream to a T. I'll check that out then. Amica. Lexi, thank you. Welcome. Thank you for the membership, too. Welcome to Tug's Thugs. Sir, happy. Thanks for the um, five. Keep it up. Yep. Work it out. Work it out. I mean, just like when you look at this stuff, lie o till it right, exactly. I mean, there's a lot of stuff like that, though. Um, so the best exposure, there was one person that exposed I O till it, and that would have been, um, that would have been the same person that really exposed a lot of this case. That would be, oh man, did that close? That would be. Um, Incredibly average. Incredibly average has been covering this for quite some time, you know? Incredibly average has been all over this case. Oh, by the way, I want to throw um props to Rakita Law. He passed four hundred thousand subscribers today. Myself, I passed two twenty five today. Woohoo! Thank you, all you people. You know? Two hundred and twenty five. God. I never thought like like I remember when I started, like I said, I uh 
I saw a channel that had 10,000 subscribers and I thought, my God, <laughs> you know, that is so many subscribers. And look at it now. I mean, it's crazy. 225 we just passed. I mean, <laughs> no filter, like I said. No, <laughs> no filter. No filter. Miss Dogliff, thanks for the five. Not proud of this, but I've taken MDMA in the past, and the worst crime I committed was trying to declare love to her and hug complete strangers. I've taken MDMA. It's like it's the love drug. You're you're like not in the mood for uh for doing anything bad. You know, if Johnny Depp managed to survive like taking ten uh ecstasy pills, he would have been like dry humping light sockets. He wouldn't be trying to kill anybody. I mean, come on. You know what I'm saying? Like like ecstasy doesn't make you want to hurt people. It makes you like it makes you happy. It makes you um it makes it, it makes breathing feel good. It, what it's doing is it's massively dumping serotonin in your body. It 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 is a pleasure overload, and that's why people uh, when they stop taking it, it's so bad because it bottoms out your uh, your emotions. You have no serotonin balance. It dumps it. It's dumped it all, so major depression sets in. You know, that's why people feel so it's not just like you crash. You also your mood crashes because you're like, oh, because, again, you've taken all that pleasure. You're like, ah, oh, yeah. So eight to ten of those. I mean, again, you know, and it makes it makes you horny. <laughs> you know, and again, it kicks up all pleasure. Sensory. Well, ten of those. I mean, my God. I'd be like, ooh, like I said, you you wouldn't want to dry home a light socket. I mean, it's just not going to work. Like, he's not going to be running around chopping off fingers and putting cigarettes out on his face. Just crazy. Like, like that didn't even make sense. Marianne, thanks for the 10. It must be so lonely for JD to be trapped by his fame. I feel sad for him. Money isn't worth no privacy in your life. Actually, he has a pretty good life these days. He's uh, He's been doing what he wants. You know, the one thing about the trial is it's afforded him to go back to music and do other things. I know from very good sourcing. Let me say this about Adam Waldman. I want to clear something real quick. And I want to say this. I want to be very clear about it. That newspaper incident. It happened in the fact that Adam Waldman had a newspaper and he ended up like setting it down like that like he didn't you know she makes it sound like he beat somebody with a newspaper or something like it, it's not like that like what she's done is she's tried to make him out to be this monster but she needs a boogeyman and he is her boogeyman because adam waldman picked up this case and he described it very well like one of the things that really disturbs me here too I'm, I'm always afraid of this, and I'm not saying that this is true, but I feel like this. Like, J.D. has so much advocacy for him. Adam Waldman, man, he has suffered for this. Like, he he has these people. They're, they want to take him for $100 million. Like, they, they want him to be part. If they don't get J.D., they're going to go after Adam Waldman and say, well, Adam Waldman ruined my life. Like, that's what they're trying to do with counterclaiming. If they don't win that, they're going to go after him. He lost his social media for this. He did everything he could to win. And again, I'm not saying that's a, he, he, he wouldn't do it in a heartbeat and again, but I want to make sure that he doesn't get hung out to dry either. People everywhere understand that he, he went to bat and they, they'll create any lie about him they can. So Adam Waldman in the paper thing, it's, it's, it's funny because it's, it's, got like a kernel of truth to it, like a tiny little bit of truth in it. But the reality of it is that it's so overblown. You know, it's 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 not real. It's like 0.1% real, and the rest of it is... That's what she does, though. You see it with everything else, you know? Like, oh, he was carrying a newspaper? You know? <laughs> oh, my God, he must have beat me with it, you know? I'm sure when it... He could have like dropped a, a page from it and it, it 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 was caught by a fan and it, you know, again it <laughs> it it went Ginsu on her feet. She was like, I couldn't walk. He sliced my feet up with the newspapers. Like, oh my God, please. Cindy a cringy, thanks for the ten. I used to love ecstasy. It raises your serotonin. You come down, yeah, and had me sleeping all day. Yeah, you crash hard. Like it's a, the whole 
thing. Now, what can we do for Adam? Um, I mean, you know, right now there's nothing that needs to be done, but I'm telling you, like, if they want to go after Adam and he needs support, dude, I'm there. I'm there 100%. And I hope everybody in there, mama, comes out of the woodwork for that man because that guy is the reason that we know about this case. That guy, he followed, he had the courage, his conviction to go out to, to go to war for this stuff, and he will not be hung out to dry for it. Like, I'm not saying that J.D., I don't think he would ever do that. But what I'm saying is I don't want publicly, I want as much public. Like, I need to be very clear about what I'm saying there. Like, he's still, as far as I know, J.D.'s lawyer. Like, he's still there for him. They're connected to each other. So that's not a, a relationship that's in jeopardy. And I know the people that would be close, that, that were close to him, you know, the, the, uh, the friends there, they're all still friends and everything. As far as uh, there's never been any issue that I know of. You know, Adam's, like I say, he's good people. Everybody loves Adam while I'm in there. But I want to make sure publicly that that stands. So I'll, I'll be very clear in how I'm saying that. Kenshin, thanks for the 20 there. Tug, look at when uh, Amber Heard at the end was told by the judge to sit down uh, with her counsel. She blatantly walked straight out the door before the jury. Yeah, I saw that. Was pointed out and located a law stream. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I caught that. Estrella, thanks for the five. I've been watching your videos for over two years. I pledge to become a member soon. Hey, you've been here. You supported the channel for two years. You are a member. You've been coming here every day for two years. You know what? You're a member. So I appreciate it. You don't need to pledge anything. <laughs> That's hilarious, though. I like that. That is funny. Just five more years, baby. <laughs> All right. I love it. It's funny. David, thanks for the five. Did you pick up that she said Josh Drew walked the police around the penthouse, but she said she walked her over broken glass? Yep. It's it, She interchanges. Okay. There's also, there's always been this debate in their statements about who supposedly took the wine spillage pictures because in some statements, Josh Drew took them, and in other statements, Amber Heard took them. So that's that's kind of a, a, an interesting thing, too. 2012, uh, A.H. left before the jury. In this video, ju uh, jury's going to remember A.H. before a lot more. This is a very, very, very bad day. It's a bad day for them. Oh, God, it was a bad day for them. Sarah W., thanks for the two. Shocked, not cried about a paper cut from newspaper. <laughs> exactly. Uh, all right, Andrew, go have your breakfast. Cheeseburger. <laughs> it's funny. Cosmic uh, Neighbors, thanks for the five. The TMZ photo is photoshopped on her left side. Look at how big her left eyeball is compared to the right. It's stretched out to the left side. Let me look at that again. I pull it up right now. I got it in the background. Yes, Ro, thanks for the five. I've been following this case with you since 2020. Thank you for all your help. Ask me anything. <laughs> uh, well, like I said, if we ever need, if somebody like Waldman gets sued, and, it, and he would need anything. I, I really, I want to make sure, like I said, that everybody is still there. You know, they're ready for war for that guy. Because, you know, again, he is a huge advocate There is something wrong with that picture, actually. Like her face is weird, you know. Like her, uh, her expressions. Have you ever noticed how like off and here? Let me put this in the background. So I want to play something in the background while we're talking, okay? Like while I'm reading super chats, I want to play something. Give me a second. Um, let me see. So you know the, um, so they were playing her. Uh, they were playing her deposition in the background, or they were playing her deposition, rather, in the court, right? And she, uh, you know, she, people were, I saw people commenting on, like, how nasty she seemed, like, how, like, mean and gross she seemed, uh, you know, like, how different she tries to come across. And, and I, I forgot that a lot of people may have not ever seen her, uh, her divorce depot. So, 
This was her divorce depot from 2016. Same stuff. I'm not going to turn the sound on because you don't need it. I just want you to watch her while it's playing. Because look at her. Remember this. She claims PTSD, right? She's claiming all this emotional damage and stuff. If she has all this emotional damage, then where is it? Because it's not showing there, is it? I mean, maybe mentally she has some damage, but it's not showing, you know, in any of the stuff that you're looking at there, you know? Some dude thinks for the two is the this guy high on Amber Supply. That's funny. Susan thinks for the two. Uh, you're enjoying this way too much, Doug. So am I. I had fun with that. Bill thinks for the 20. I swear we need to get a t-shirt of Camille. Being a patriot saying if cat, sm cat lady smiting. Uh, that's funny. What's his face? Thanks for the five, bro. A resident of the... Okay, yeah, I, I hit that one for the... Yeah. Jukes, thanks for the five. Yo, I commented on your cat lady raging quit. Uh, tell me that doesn't look like Amber is crying after she left. <laughs> it did. I saw that. Lentes, thanks for the two. Uh, she left before the jury. Nix, thanks for the five. Hey, Tug. Do you know why we didn't use the ballet footage? I, I did not actually mention that to Shabaka. Thanks for the three. Uh, Turd is the best trailer trash dumpster fire in years. Indeed. <laughs> Indeed. I mean, look at her. Look at her freaking expressions. I mean, it's so fake. It's so fake. Like, look at look at that. Look how fake she is. Like, when you look at that. That's why they fought. They fought to keep that out of today. Did you notice that? They didn't want to uh, let her let them enter that that footage. Spy, thanks for the 10 there. Number one fan. Thank you for that for sure. Appreciate you. But look at look at her. Like she's eating. Uh, maybe she's passing gas then. I'm not really sure. Could you imagine having to live with that? I mean, she's just she's like <laughs> She's like nine bacos short of a crouton or something. I don't know. <laughs> she's really weird. I don't know. Ooh, she's messing with me. She's just creepy. Poor JD, man. Like it, it. It's weird to find out. Like you know, when you think about when you think about. She is. She's like uh, you know. <laughs> She's like a picnic basket short of a, I don't know. <laughs> uh, hey, boo-boo. You're like, no. Look at her, like, doing her motions and stuff. Again, she's supposed to suffer PTSD now. But look at the way she's carrying herself and stuff. Her her acting's horrible then, too. Just a second, I hear a kid beating on a window. Give me one minute. I got a glass door here. What? I'm trying to get in. I have to walk around my desk and go to me. Okay. Well, fish them out then. I'm, I'm, I'm laughing. Why don't you fish them out? Fish them out with something. Get you a little net. I know, get you a, get you the net, the oxalotl net, and fish them out. Or, hey, play around in the backyard. I don't know. Hey, you can come through here. You go upstairs. You want to come through here? Okay. All right, anyway, folks, I'm coming back. <laughs> that's my, that's my darn kids. I get the pool outside and <laughs> had the bugs in it. She's like, uh, oh, well, I'm there, Dad. I'm like, all right. It's just funny. Let's see. Strix, that was beautiful. Absolutely devastated. Thanks for the two. <laughs> Anderson. Thanks for two. Let's go. 16K. We got up to 18 today for a while. That's good. Don't cry, baby. Thanks for the five. Brutal win, Camille. Indeed. Estrella, thanks for the five. I wish they'd have shown Elon Musk text while they showed Jace James Franco. That would have been funny. Tristan, thanks for the two. Move to strike. 
Michael, thanks for the two. Amica Cream fixed tire tracks when ran over by a bus. Yep. Mr. Hat 84, thanks for the five. Is this Night Court reboot? <laughs> it did feel like comedy, didn't it? Oh my God. It felt like a comedy. I see. Max Nation for Health Plus. Thanks for the two. Does all this count against her minutes? Um, yeah, for rebuttal, it I I think all of that counted against her time, you know. Diana, thanks for the five and the super stickers, the little hippos. Thank you. Keaton, thanks for the two. Where are the dancing lobsters? Indeed. Nix, thanks for the five. She uh she's so angry. Braden off angry face gives me serotonin. Herds Craigslist lawyers, indeed. Heisenberg Kennels, what's up? Thanks for the two. Judge Johnny Depp's brother and Sean Bat are in stitches. God, I kept laughing. I was dying myself. Thanks for the 50. Thank you. Tug, you're laughing at the cat lady kills me. I hope you have a shirt with Camille spanking a cat lady. I'm thinking about making something for that stuff. Ace, thanks for the two. Life alert, courtroom edition. <laughs> Life alert. <laughs> I've fallen and I can't get up. <laughs> I've objected and I can't get up. <laughs> oh. Oh, it was too funny. Like, she she messed up big time today. I mean, it was. Was it not funny? Are you not entertained? I was. I was very entertained. Mama CEO, thanks for the two. AH had a nose job. Oh, did you notice? Did everybody notice IO Till It Writes? Uh, weird freaking little uh, nose ring, by the way. I kept thinking, like, I thought it was a, a booger that nobody was like nice enough or, or too polite to point out. I kept thinking, man, why doesn't somebody tell uh, uh, Io about that nose booger? You know, you can see like you could see the little uh, nose ring. Like if you go back to that coverage, like Io has a little bitty nose ring. And I just I kept thinking it was a no, it's a little nose ring because I could see it. At first, I thought I thought booger and then. Uh, no, that's not a, that's not a booger. That's actually <laughs> something else. Let me see. Angie, thanks for the two. Give SNL skit ideas. Man, I wish they would have taken that. They'd be funny for once. You know? Mama CEO. AH has had a nose job. She has indeed. Like her, her ENT, like that stuff meant nothing. Like a lot of ENTs are frauds. You know, like quite a few of them. One of the uh, one of the most fraudulent practices are ears, nose, and throats. They'll tell people they need they have deviated septums, and they'll do uh, like like if you've had a nose break or something, yeah. Like I I, I did have to have uh, the interior fixed one time because I couldn't breathe well through one side of my nose at all. But you have to find somebody that's reputable, and she wasn't going to prove where it came from or anything. You know. Liam Prime, thanks for the two. Your laugh is contagious. I got laughing. I was dying. Andre, thanks for the two. And I just have to let you know that I'm laughing about the same things. <laughs> Good. Yeah, I'm glad people found it fun. Digital, thanks for the five. This day will live in infamy. How many objections in five minutes? Mind blown. <laughs> just released years of anguish watching the cringe. I mean, I got laughing. I couldn't stop. Pommy Bears, thanks for the eight. Amber probably has scar tissue damage from cocaine. Yes, it will do the same thing. It will eat through the nose lining, you know. Her uh Rocky told us that they had physical fights, that she was doing blow with her, you know. Diane, thanks for the super sticker. I like that one. That's cute. Um Pink Panda. Peak Panda, thanks for the uh, super sticker. She's so angry. It's hilarious. She's literally telling Amber her lines. Hey, give me, let's see. Well, Heisenberg Kennels, thanks for the two. She was snipping catnip during lunch. <laughs> Sess, thanks for the five. And the super sticker. Diana, thanks for the five. And that super sticker as well. Bob, thanks for the vibe. The guy in the back with the blue tie is also a YouTuber called the DUI guy. Yeah, yeah, I was catching his stuff earlier. Huh? I appreciate people telling me about that, too. If you see something you think I should check out, make sure I know it. So thanks. Um, 
Tristan Lynn, thanks for the yes, sir. Uh, IO, uh, <laughs> IO, incredible story. Uh, IO, yeah, the incredible average story is freaking. You need to check that out. People need to check out incredibly average there. Just blowing. Yeah, yeah I, that is a good question. How much how much scar tissue in your nose do you have after a nose job? Don Designs, the cat lady trying to audition for Pirate Six with that voice she did. Uh, don't cry, baby. Thanks for five. Rotten Born in silent mode. I thought that was funny. Like he just was like, oh God. <laughs> Adrian, thanks for the 10. Uh, I appreciate everything you do. Thank you. Shabaka, thanks for the seven. Do you know which law school she graduated from? <laughs> I have no idea. I think I'd do a better job with a license from a Cracker Jack Bops. So maybe that was the same one. How many times did she repeat? <laughs> a lot. Day KT, thanks for the uh, five. It's so interesting how she suddenly remembers after cross-examination when she couldn't seem to remember anything. That's true. Marianne, thanks for the 10. I, <laughs> I've uh, been posting her hair. It looks like Cruella DeVille from 101 Dalmatians. She finally fixed it during break. <laughs> Dark Age, thanks for the five. I was in a meeting. Did Cross finish? <laughs> yeah, we finished up pretty easily today. It was fast, wasn't it? You know, Diane, thanks for the... Uh, when why did they change lawyers um you're talking about when we, we, you must have been talking about uh i don't know like as you were talking about with uh with that with uh with cross maybe you're maybe you're talking about when it switched over and thanks for the uh two look at who dropped the i'm so scared mask exactly Derek thinks it's in, so listening to the door part, uh, how did Amber's toes get scratched from the door that swings open towards Johnny? Because she kicked it open and hit him in the head. Means he was closing it. Yep, exactly. Bernadette, thanks for the five there. No statement, but plenty of statement back into. Thank you. Which was it? A lug or bug? That was Little Umbrella Girl. That was uh, the eight-year-old. She's over, she's playing with her swimming pool when she came in. The baby, uh, she, she can't go... Um, unobserved like, like not that little is unobserved she's just in the back you know but she can't be by herself like that because she's only two so <laughs> her the eight-year-old she's not unobserved like I, I can see her i still have a clear line of sight i can't stand like after i worked in uh after i work with kids for the long time like i can't stand for my kids to be out of my sight like it it, it fills me with panic panic you know it's like um unhealthy panic not like like a healthy like a you you work around you see enough monsters in the world and you you can't stop unseeing you know jamie thanks for the 279 anna riley thanks for the 20 hi from melbourne australia love your work tug this helps a little toward the new pc thank you thank you for that appreciate it jericho jack thanks for the five objection your honor she can't say that <laughs> indeed Layla, thanks for the five. No statement, but plenty of statement. Appreciate that. Don, thanks for the 10. Anyone else think that it's odd she's not using JD uh, look alike glasses like she was during JD testimony? She must have gotten LASIK on the break. <laughs> Indeed. Sergeant Fubar, thanks for the five. I keep trying um, to purchase a couple of shirts, but it keeps telling me my emails are invalid. Help. I'm not sure uh, what to tell you on that. That's kind of a weird. You can write their support if that's a, because uh, I don't. I don't know. I mean, that's a weird one. You know, I, I would help for sure if I could. Um, but I'm not sure with a. Uh, you know what's funny? The uh, so. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Margarita, thanks for the five. This might be a dumb question, but I'm confused of all the sidebar. How does it affect cross time for JD's lawyers? I guess that goes against her time. I'm I'm not really sure. I don't I don't know how the timekeeping for that goes. That'd be a lawyer question, but it's a good one. Quicksilver, thanks for two. New song idea. She's uh, got Nancy Pelosi eyes. Stephanie Dam, thanks for the two. 16K watching, only seven li seven K likes. Smash, please. Thank you for that. So Barra, thanks for the five. Hey, and thank you, Miss That Umbrella. We appreciate you. Thank you. <laughs> Alain, thanks for the 20 chocolates from Miss Umbrella. Thanks for living inside your husband for all that. <laughs> Thank you for that. 
Trisha, thanks for the 10. Thanks, Tug. That worked. Pick is finally clear. Worth another 10 bucks to you. Woohoo. <laughs> I appreciate that. Dingo Gal, thanks for the three. New shirt. Amber, turn me into a newt. <laughs> oh, there's so many. We could I could make shirts all day. I need like a I need to figure out a Camille Vasquez shirt. Like I want something where we can we can make something with her, you know. Like, I got to figure out a shirt with her, you know? Batman on a bike. Thanks for the A. Looks like you've won this battle tug. What's your next challenge going to be? <laughs> well, yeah. we'll see how this one goes. This one goes. And I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I really would like to uh, see, you know? Uh, so they're like anything. Somebody mailed me about this too. Okay, I'll. Uh, I want you to. I want you to be careful about this. There are fake accounts of everyone, including myself. There's a fake me that runs around. It's a. Uh, they take any YouTuber or anyone else, and they'll post links to things like WhatsApp. If you don't see the little check mark by my name when I'm on YouTube, that's not me. Okay, and if you can tell if it's me on um, on Twitter or something else, you can just click and go to my main profile. So, you know, I'm not going to post a link and tell you to go to it. Just make sure people are real. Okay, because there are a lot of fakes out there and I can't control if you run across a fake me somewhere else. You know, um, I have links pretty much taken out except for anyone with wrenches here. But people still can get around that sometimes because YouTube is terrible about it. You're real, right? Thanks for two. Do we have a uh, as a uh, Dio Brando shirt? <laughs> I uh, I don't see. I'm not sure which one. If Tug starts asking for for <laughs> iTunes cards, actually they've been uh, they've been like putting out WhatsApp. I see them on Instagram too, and it's it's bad. Like it, it it annoys me. What they'll do is they'll go to places like Twitter. They'll block me, right? And then after they'll block me, they'll come in on my same message chain and post. So you have to really be careful about that stuff because they'll come into your own message chain and you won't see them. Italians do it better. Thanks for the seven high tug. I got unexpected company. Didn't know. Didn't. I got unexpected company. Don't they know I'm watching this? LOL. I missed the last two witnesses. Please somebody tell me how it went. Io was boring. Okay. I was boring. So there you go. Rocky is only about 30 minutes in and Rocky so far has been interesting. Rocky has claimed uh, Amber. They got in a, a physical altercation. They said that Amber has indeed used cocaine. And uh, there were a couple other things as well that, that they threw in there, you know, but it's only 30 minutes in. Yes. Amica cream for all your daily needs. <laughs> I don't know why I threw that in there. Some of the super chat window is frying again. God, it will not open right. I think I'm getting close to the bottom here, but I can't tell because uh, YouTube freaks out every now and then. It's freaking out today. Ina, thanks for the five. My tremendous intuitive sense of female uh, creature informs me that you're in trouble. Jack Sparrow, indeed. Carol Ed, thanks for the 14. Great job, Tug, my friend. Thank you. Chris Vick, thanks for the two. Weird wobble. AH looks like she was tranquilized. Richard, thanks for the two. She smells like cats. I'm a cream of disappointment. Matt, thanks for the five. Hey, Bob, did you involve the... Do you involve with telehealth, particularly out of state? I, um, I, okay, for, for, so if we, I don't meet with clients as much anymore. Like I do other stuff. Now, if you need, uh, if, if somebody needs assistance, we don't typically do out of state. Um, we usually work with things like 10 care and whatnot, but 
for for me, like if I knew somebody or you ran across me on channel anyway, it would probably be a conflict of interest for that. Plus, I don't know how comfortable I am putting like here's one of the things I've been careful about. Uh, people haven't figured out where I work currently. <laughs> and uh, yeah, because the last place. OK, there, there was a there was a. The last case I covered with Vic Mignogna, those folks found an old place I work, and they attacked it, and they tied up their phone lines. They were trying to get me fired, and I mean it was just crazy. So, you know, you can imagine what these Amber Heard crazies would do. You know, you can just imagine. Sergeant Fubarn, thanks for the five. She smells like tuna. Trisha, thanks for the twenty-five. Tug, is it my gadget or the filming blurry? Uh, um, like I said, I, the, the, the camera is a little, a little blue, like from the, from the courthouse. But if you look at people's shorts from the courthouse, they have a little bit of fuzz to them. They're not beautiful, you know, like the, the, uh, the, uh, evidence slides are nice. They look good, but the other stuff looks weird. Dingo gal. Thanks for the three new shirt. Amber turned me into a newt. <laughs> that one is there too. Jamie, thanks for 279. No statement, but plenty of statement. Harley, thanks for the 20. Your coverage and commentary are phenomenal. Thanks, Tug. Dang thing is not rolling back up. Lilith, thanks for the two. Can someone block the bots in here? Actually, the um, people that are in, they're not actually bots. Like, there may be people, they're not supposed to spam. If, if people spam, they could get timed out. Uh, if you use certain language, let's just say that it's if it's if it will take down the channel, like you drop an in bombs and you know bundle of sticks in people and stuff like that. I don't need that in my chat. If you want to support Amber Heard, though, if you want to troll, I, I don't care. <laughs> but as long as it's uh, you know, as long as it's appropriate. You know, there's an inappropriate method of doing things too. And I don't really care, but most of the, like, like for spamming, some people will post the same thing multiple times, but the bots, when, when I turn on subscriber only mode, that's, that's a hurdle that the bots usually can't get by. That's why you don't see a bunch of like porn codes and stuff because, uh, I've got on, like, I don't have anything held as far as, comments are concerned and i don't have the youtube holding you know mean word feature on but i do have a link feature like you can't you're not supposed to be able to post links unless you have a unless you have a wrench and yet they still get away with it it's weird huh <laughs> i mean you're not supposed to be able to do it unless you're a, a mod so we have to turn on subscriber only mode that's why everyone does it now some people slow their chats down a lot i just i've never i don't know i don't like restricting speech you know, and I don't know. It makes chaos sometimes, but I don't know. I like it. Dingo gal, thanks for the three. Shirt. Cartoon Camille. I got a jar of dirt. <laughs> yeah. I'll be reunion. Yeah, they were talking about earlier. They were talking about earlier. You guys and X too. Yeah, see, they're they're usually a few mods in now. If it gets really bad for a mod too, you can always write me, you know, and just put like in the title mod and just point out what the problem is and if i have to like if the bots made it through or something i could do something but like one day we we had a, a real problem that people had to take care of but it doesn't happen that often like i can't there's a new thanks for the two hashtag monster turret i like the early, there's a few super chats I don't think I hit at the very beginning, and I can't get it to roll back to that point. Like it's just, it's weirding out, and I hate that. I'll check it later, and if I missed your super chat in there, I will mention it. I will catch it up probably on the weekend or something. I don't know. I've never had to catch them up before. I just can't see them on the on the thing here. Like I said, I do not like skipping people. Like if you pay... If you support the channel that way, I I think it's disrespectful 
not to go in and, and catch your statements. Like I've seen people complain about having to read super chat. I thought you're reading money. <laughs> like what is your problem? I find that to be like a problem. I, I you know, I hope to God I get to the point one day when I'm like <laughs> reading money, <laughs> but I don't think that'll ever happen. You know, <laughs> I, uh, I appreciate it. You know, but I say that because I hate missing anything you did. Hey, Denise Clark, got some art things for the five. Do you think the note from 2012 may have been random? Maybe uh, stepped out a uh, return, an opportunity to use his message. For, it it could have been anything from the 2012. It could have been anything. And they just grabbed it. You know, we don't even know. Eben Flo, thanks for the 10. Did Amber find her defense on Wish? <laughs> That's true. That's a good comment. It feels like it. Uh, make a wish. <laughs> they were like, please, somebody save me. <laughs> and they were like, well, you know, uh, um, there, are these home <laughs> there are these homeless lawyers that we, uh, we have down at the soup kitchen. And she was like, I'll take them. <laughs> oh, Lord. Do you think the note from 2012 may have been random, though? An opportunity to use his message for her own agenda. I, like I said, I think that she just pulled up. See, we don't know the we don't know the reasoning behind anything that comes up. Like we don't actually like like if you don't like if we don't have context, you know, if 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 we end up with a with a note, just a random note out there with no context, like what what does it really mean? Like you know, when you have a picture and uh, it's it's Amber Heard holding a post-it note. Like if she's, I don't, she's not an arbiter of truth. She's never going to tell me what's real. So when I see this, why should I believe her telling me what this is? You know, she went in her story. Her story went from Johnny and I, we had this magical time. You know, it, everything was great to, well, he was beating me off and on already. Like, like I, what, 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 in the beginning, like from go, she turned it on the stand. She turned it into from go. He was already beating me. Like from the beginning of the relationship, he beat me. And I found that in my therapist notes. No, she mentioned it in the notes that she was, she mentioned that to the, the lady, Dr. Don Hughes, she was putting crap together with and her therapist and stuff. I mean, all she's doing is self-reporting. Like none of it matters. And she did an online concussion check with a nurse. <gasps> I mean, who has ever heard of such? You know, I mean, really? Yeah, funny. Thanks for the two. No statement. Plenty of statement. Thank you. I started watching your stream. Been watching you for a while now. I've watched all day. Never came before work. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I um, I just, I'm glad. I appreciate the support too. Considering like what I I've, I've done to cover the trial is I've taken off work. <laughs> I just I had to. It was like I'm gonna I'm gonna either cover it and talk about what it is. There are a lot of people out there that are, you know, there are a lot of professional. Uh, YouTubers, and that that's fine if that's your job. I don't trust YouTube to. I think I could probably make enough to support, possibly, as long as YouTube didn't demonetize me. But you know what? The, the problem is that I want to be able to like help people. I want to be able to give like mental health and stuff, God, and you know. And I, I don't, I don't feel good about that. Otherwise, You know, if I'm not, I like some of the, man, look at this. The I stepped on a B with different colors on the shirt. Look at this real quick. I suffer from the shiny squirrel syndrome. I find something that entertains me for a minute. And I'm like, yeah, but look at this with a different color. I like that color. Like I had it on black and I like the black. I like the way it blends. But man, I like red on a lot of stuff. It actually looks good. You know, I like that red. We do have to figure out a Camille one, though. What pink looks like. <laughs> the pink is kind of cool. Uh, like the kids would like that. 
green. The green looks good too. I like the red though. Yeah. A beaver's unit thinks so too. <laughs> Objugulations heard say. <laughs> Indeed. I have more fun with you, Ted. Well, thank you for being here, Jenny. I appreciate you folks that show. Like I said, if you like, if you want panels and you want to do stuff like that, I mean, you have you have some of the good lawyer, like like Ricada puts on a show like that. If you want, you know, if you want a specific type of humor, you know, like if you want more edgy humor and stuff, you can do that. But I don't know. Like I, I try I. I, I try to run a clean show to a point, which again, that's no statement on anything. I could be an asshole just like anybody else. I use profanity and stuff, but I try to remember that people, while they're watching that, they, they may be at their home. They may be at work in the, in the day. So I try to keep uh, the live streams clean to a point where you can watch the trial, enjoy it. And I don't like doing panels. Like I just don't enjoy them. I just be honest about it. I, I like talking to you guys. Like if I want to talk, I'll sit down. I'll look at what the chat has to say and I'll talk to you guys, you know, cause, uh, like you're, you're, you're more valid than any guests that I could have on. I've said this before, but I mean this, you know, like, a guest is just another person like myself that picked up a microphone. But what's the difference between a guest and and you there? Nothing. Like, like your opinion is just as valid. So I like to see what's said there. Yeah, I mean, another mic, another person on the mic goes a long way. Give me one second. I saw the kid walk by. I want to see what she's doing. Give me one minute. I see her moving around doing something. Okay, she's playing there. Like I said, if I, I did therapy with kids for the long time and what, what are you doing? I'm trying to figure out what she's doing. She's sitting out there. She's playing around looking at me. I, I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to end here is what I'm going to do. Since it's late, I'm going to drop a video in roughly. If you will do me a favor, I'm going to drop a video in 10 minutes. So in just 10 minutes, it's going to be called Heard Admit She's Losing. And what I'm going to ask you to do is when it comes up, there are thousands of you. If you will hit it right when it comes up and just let it play all the way through. If you'll do that, it'll push it in the algorithm and it'll get it out to more people. Because I'm curious what will happen. Like usually I get about 250 people in that first minute. And it does great with it, but I want to see what happens. Like if we get a thousand people to hit a video in that first minute. I would stay live and tell you to do it. But when you're live, apparently it does something to the thing and it, it knocks it off. I've also, uh, they've slowed down about reviewing videos. So the titles, if my title seems a little more... Um, existential maybe or something like I, I don't have a lot of choice with it you know it's not giving me a lot of choice for what to do so i'm working with that what i can work you know but like i said i want to see if people if they they hit a video right away if it if it helps push it you know what happens to it Cause they've been really restrictive. Like uh, one of the things I noticed, I, I, I'd like to show you this actually. One of the things, let me see if I can do this. So one of the things I noticed is that if I use specific tags and I use the word, like, like say I use a word like um, admits. So I used Amber Heard admits in the title and it demonetized and throttled it. It turned it yellow and it waits for approval. If I say so, I had to take the word admits out. Like she's admitting thing. I can you put it in the, the thumbnail, but I can't put it in the freaking title. It's weird. Like that it's such restriction right now on what you can say. Like they are clamped down. This is the most restrictive topic I have ever covered in my life. <laughs> like here. I've covered a lot of topics on here, you know. Um, there are a lot of things you cannot talk about here. 
it's it's strange like it's a it's a bizarre thing you know but in the tags uh, there's something about some of the tags that it won't let you it won't let you like talk freely that's one of the like a lot of people don't understand like if your titles like somebody was saying well you use the word wreck a lot i use it because i can get away with it <laughs> you know uh, that that's a i mean that's just the reality of it like if i find a word that i can use i will use it it's, it's strange because there aren't um there aren't a lot of uh words that are easily used like you know uh, for example in tags like i can tag the statement depp wins or depp winning but i cannot say johnny depp wins for most things if i use the entire word it it causes the video it'll demonetize and throttle it like i said they're dragging their feet about approval I have a video that's been setting for 13 hours now. And if they're timely, well, you can't afford that. You can't be timely at all. So it kills the video. So, you know. But yeah, she's actually changed her tap gig up. And that's, uh, it's true. Like it's, uh, she's been changing up her um, tap gig, but she knows that she's losing. She actually admitted this publicly. That was the amazing thing about it to me. I didn't necessarily think it was amazing that that she knows that she's losing. What I think is amazing is that she's admitting it. You can see it in her in her statements that are coming up. What program do you use to create a pulsating logo? Which logo? What are you talking about for logo was? Oh, you're talking about where I'm speaking? The The thing underneath it is actually just my voice coming through. Um, I'm using StreamYards, though. That's what I connect to the... When I'm talking to you, I have to use something to uh, to connect between us. Some people will use... Uh, some people will use a, like a different program, but I use... A, I use StreamYards. Like, I, I like StreamYards. Actually, a pretty good program for uh, for connecting live to people. I don't know. Like again, if anybody's kept up with that, I think it's pretty good. If you uh, if you get into YouTube and do stuff, but it's not a it's not a a moving uh, logo. But the stuff that uh, like like where I talk of where where I do the intros and stuff. Let me show it to you real quick. Um, you could do a lot with it. Actually, give me one second. Making sure of something. I'm looking at something real fast. I was checking something with the tagging thing because I was curious about something. Like I, like I said, I get up my mind on something and I, I have to know. I did a uh, when I started covering this trial. I got. Uh, I found that you know I couldn't use specific tags, so I started referencing what tags would go through on YouTube, and I found out things like. If you used justice with Johnny Depp, you couldn't put the tag through. Like it wouldn't go like like you would get demonetized for it. And if you get demonetized, it throttles your video is what it does. So it doesn't reach it may reach an audience over time, but it won't right away. So it it causes it a mess, you know? Causes it real problems. I did a lot of research on that because I was curious, like, why, again, this topic is the the most censored topic I have ever covered. And pe other people have said this, too. I'm not the only person saying this. Like, Yellow Flash, you know, a, a lot of people who didn't cover it all the time have been shocked when they've come in because, they, you know, they think it's just complaining, but it's not. Like, the... <laughs> The level you have to go to to cover this and to get anything out there, sometimes it's it's quite insane. Like I like I said, I've never had to censor, and it's not just censoring your words; it's about very creative word choice. 
like, like for example, I, I can say like my title says Heard is losing. I can't say Amber Heard is losing. If I say Amber Heard is losing, you know, um, no. It's just like I said, it's weird. But anyway, let me make sure. No. Again, if you would, in four minutes, a video is going to go live. So I'm going to get off here. Okay. Scott Cardinal, like that. I think that answer is that. Let me see. Celeste, thanks for the two. No statement, but plenty of statement. Appreciate you. Stella, thanks for the two. You should make a t shirt with an Umbrella Live logo. You like the little Umbrella Live logo? I, I like that logo. I could put one on. Uh, Beck, I do like it. It was actually uh, made so it would cover up any logos when we when we stream. <laughs> as dumb as that is, that's the truth. You know? But, yeah, I mean, I think that'd be fun. I could put that on there. I do like the little live logo. This one right here. I like that one. But yeah, anyway, so three minutes, like I said, if you would, there are 5,000 people here. So it'll be just three minutes away. There will be a, a video go live. If you would hit it in that first minute and just let the whole thing play. Like I said, I don't care if you watch it, just let it play because I want to see what it will do algorithm wise. If like a thousand people or 5,000 people hit a video in its first couple of minutes, because 200 or 300 people will shoot it up so much. Well, if 5,000 people watch it and they watch the whole thing through, again, be like eight minutes, just let it play in the background. It'll be amazing to see. But anyway, I'm going to end now because otherwise it will mess with it. So again, two minutes, <laughs> it, it will go live. But I appreciate you. We will do this tomorrow. Thank you, folks. And I'm going to end here. Again, watch that video. Two minutes. I, I want to see, and I appreciate the heck out of you. So just watch it. It will go live on the channel.